I've spent over a year of my life and 1,000 days in some of the most crazy mod packs in Minecraft. My journey through the multiverse has taken me through a desert, an ocean, I've become a wizard, I've installed random mods and fought among us, all while hiding secrets and clues in these videos for you to find. In this movie, you'll see everything and everything you need to solve the final riddle of this puzzle. First to get there, there's a prize waiting. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and buckle up for one long video. This is 1000 Days in the Minecraft Multiverse. As I loaded up the world and started in day one, I spawned in and landed in a swamp, which in 1.0 was way more common than it actually was. There was only about half as many biomes as we enjoy in current Minecraft. I immediately started with exactly what you'd expect, punching trees to get tools and crafting those into stone tools shortly after, grabbing coal and some initial resources. Since I'm in a swamp, I figure, why don't I build with clay and bricks? It's something that I've never really worked with before. So I mined up as much of that as possible. But in day one, with building with such an expensive block, at least in early game, I had to do the whole hide in a dirt hole to make my way through the first night. So I built a spiral staircase down to the bedrock level and found a lava pool and then remembered I don't have a skin. So default Steve for me right now. Day two, I figured, you know what? Why don't I do 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 my way right into diamonds? So I started with a strip mine on level 12. I found a little bit of lapis and dug my way into a bit of a cave system with no armor on me whatsoever. This is extremely deadly and pretty stupid. Avoiding skeletons, which are rapid fire snipers in earlier versions of the game, I got a little bit of gold and a few additional resources heading back up to the surface in the daylight and started building the framing for my house with cobblestone in the base and oak planks for the floor. Basically all the building blocks that you actually have to work with in an older version of the game. I did make some shears though and was able to get all of the wool I needed from one sheep, so they all get to live, and made a bed to end the second day. Day three, I was finishing up the floor and breaking my way through all of the trees and smelting up some stone to get bricks. This is going to be one expensive house according to Minecraft old economy standards. Placing down all the logs, I forgot horizontal logs weren't exactly a thing, so it's all vertical for me, planting a lot of cactuses and smelting up as much clay as I can into as much bricks as I can. A stack of clay is only a quarter stack of bricks, so this is going to be really hard on resources. But sugarcane is infinitely plentiful, and I'm planting as much of that as possible for early game because I'm going to want it very soon. Day four, I did a little bit more construction on the house and then figured I'd go exploring. So I made a boat and then realized how absolutely hot garbage boats were in older version of Minecraft, breaking when contacting a leaf. Yeah, that makes sense. I ran around shearing all the sheep, forgetting that sheep in this version can't regrow their wool, so I'm gonna wait a while for that before collecting as much clay as possible from the bottom of the swamp and heading off to the top of a high mountain close to my base to try to get a general lay of the land and see what's around. I gotta say, with an older version of the game, none of my Optifine or anything else, seeing that fog in the distance feels kind of claustrophobic, makes the world feel very small. But as the hour rolled over, it's time for our first upgrade. Version 1.1 of Minecraft bought beaches and hills, and you could finally enchant your bow, which was pretty cool. Golden apples changed their recipes, and this is back when you can craft a god apple. So if I can get enough gold, I'm definitely gonna be getting some of this. And sheep can now eat grass to regrow their wool, so turns out I didn't have to wait too long. So I climbed down the hill with the version updated and went to the beach, crafting a boat since there's no lily pads in sight and it might just survive the trip. I found my way into some plains with some spruce trees off in the distance, and I thought, you know what, spruce wood looks really good. So I tried to harvest as much of that as I could before it got late enough that I needed to go back and hide in the hole in the floor, smelting up a lot of stone into stone bricks so I could decorate the walls. Day five, I turned all of the logs into planks. They all turned into oak because spruce wood wasn't added in version 1.1, just the the trees were. So I made a lot of them into chests and then supports and then finally crafted my first piece of armor which was a pair of pants. I grabbed a little bit of sand and started smelting that into glass for windows into day six when a skeleton tried to snipe me from the lake and like I said skeletons are super deadly in earlier versions of Minecraft. But trees are so much better with one piece of bone meal guaranteeing the tree growing. So it's a lot cheaper in this old one. They also catch fire a lot easier. So they kept bursting into flames around my little lava pool, which was super unfortunate. But as I continued to harvest sugarcane and organize my resources, this hour went by pretty fast. And now it's on to version 1.2. This was the first major world generation change and where you're gonna see those much more harsher chunk borders. It also added jungle biomes, redstone lamps, and iron golems. So villages could finally 
actually defend themselves. It also apparently breaks doors as I walked out of my house and found them completely messed up. I finished up the floor and sheared a bunch of sheep and then end the night was attacked by a ton of mobs, creepers and everything trying to get through the door. In the morning, I survived, but some of the mobs are still hanging around and a creeper, for the first time, actually blew up part of my house. Don't worry, this won't be the last time, and that's really bad. After quickly repairing the grounds, I jumped into another boat, and thankfully it didn't die on a lily pad this time, and then found my way to a few cows for some leather, traveling over a chunk border, suddenly ending up in a desert village, which had just suddenly appeared. Right next to it was a swamp with some pumpkins, so you can tell the train's all sorts of messed up. And looking at these old villages, I remember there's no beds in them, so I made my own and slept inside. On day eight, I raided all of the books that I possibly could, so that I could speed run my way towards an enchanting table and did a little bit more mining for coal and iron. I still don't have a full set of armor. I kept running through the desert and then back through the swamp, harvesting my sugarcane and then sleeping as quickly as possible to get through these early days to the versions of Minecraft that are a little more forgiving. On day nine, I was mainly smelting up the clay balls to get more bricks so that I can continue building my house, converted the sugarcane into paper and then started crafting books. But that's not the recipe. That actually changed a little bit later. So all you really need to do is convert the paper and stack it vertically, which is so much cheaper. So I made all of the bookcases that I possibly could. I also smelted up all the iron and finally made my full set of iron armor. So it was that much less likely that I'm going to die using bricks to continue building the house. But like I said, this is going to take a lot in early Minecraft. This is super expensive. Minecraft 1.3 was the first time villagers actually did anything. It introduced emeralds and ender chests and it introduced all the different woods, which is technically a 124, but this is the first time I'm gonna get it. And logs can finally be placed sideways, but it's not exactly that easy. On day 10, it was basically the quest for spruce wood since I had unfortunately converted all of it into oak planks somehow in a previous version. I made a couple of buckets and then ran my way over the desert, sailed my way over the ocean to the spruce forest, grabbed as many logs and some iron as I could and worked my way back, grabbing an ender pearl on the way, my first world. On the way back though, I found a jungle biome, which just came into existence one version before. So it was cool to grab some of this wood since now it actually meant something. As it rolled over to day 11, I was still harvesting the second half of the jungle tree without efficiency on my tools. That takes so much time for running through the forest, trying to find some cocoa beans. To be fair though, I don't think I actually ever planted them. I grabbed a little bit more leather, ran through the spruce forest, sailed back over the chunk border ocean and landed back in my house right at the end of day 11. Day 12, since this floor can now be made half a block thinner and I'll have a little bit more headspace down at the bottom here, I started ripping out all of the floor and converting it to spruce top slabs. I also tried to change all of the logs to be horizontal, but the mechanics on this were a lot different. It was based off of your orientation to the block, not what face you're replacing it against, so it's all sorts of weird. I made a bunch of chests though and started working on a dock outside, adding some windows to the front of the house and really just starting to decorate. Day 13, I continued working on that dock, setting it out over the water and just having a place to go fishing from, even though I wouldn't go fishing for a little while. Started working on a spiral staircase from the bottom all the way up to the top and experienced my first absolutely cursed block that I couldn't pick up and was just sitting there taunting me. But really it's time to start harvesting things up and securing my overall area. I made some area to plant the pumpkins and planted torches all around my base, making a little bit of a rudimentary farm to the side of my base to grow some wheat. I also started doing the speedrunner style nether portal and it went horribly wrong, but thankfully I didn't turn all of it into obsidian, but unfortunately I was out of time and it was time to upgrade again. Version 1.4 was the first named update of Minecraft and it was the pretty scary update. It added wither skeletons to the nether and walls and anvils to the overworld, including flower pots, which is something that you would think had been there from the beginning. Item frames were also added, so it's finally a lot easier to label your chests. All right, I don't have the best of luck with the nether, so before I went, I made a little flower pot and just planted an oak sapling there. But I left the portal and went through, held my breath, and spawned inside a nether fortress. Gundo, luck is king! Tweaking the brightness since it resets on each one of these upgrades, the settings were a nightmare to deal with. I found my way to the first garden area, getting all of the nether wart and soul soil from here. Eventually hitting the exterior transition and finding my way towards the blaze spawner. Now, this is a lot harder because you don't have a shield to block the fire bolts, and easier at the same time because you can just swing your sword like an absolute madman. Except when it breaks, and this is back in old Minecraft when 
when an axe was really just a tool. So I was pretty much done heading back to the portal. The logs were a lot easier to turn horizontal now, so I switched all of those over and then found my first slime bouncing underneath my staircase and grabbed my first couple slime balls. Day 15, I woke up and needed to organize all of my chests so I had control of everything. But then it was time for another expedition, bouncing around on another boat and the dramatic pause seeing if it would break when hitting a lily pad. Thankfully, no, it actually survives. I grabbed a lot more spruce and then took some bones around and tamed all of the wolves that I possibly could. I wanted an army in this world. All it takes is me bopping something once and they pretty much finished it off. It's awesome. I think I topped out at seven tamed wolves over here on this continent, which was pretty great. Day 16, the cursed chunk borders continue and I lost my first wolf to that fall. But thankfully I made a new one. Uh, so the head looks so derpy compared to the body. I sailed from landmass to landmass so they would teleport towards me, but eventually took a journey just a little too far and lost them on the edge of the jungle. I'll have to return later for them when I can travel a little bit better, maybe with boats or leads. On the way back, I found and killed another Enderman, which I'm just glad pearls are dropping at the higher rates. That's absolutely fantastic. Before making it into my house and getting to bed. Day 17, it's time to go back to the mines to grab a lot more resources. Like I said, golden apples are craftable in these older versions of the game, so I want to get as much gold as I possibly can. I found my way into a really dope cave system, which is the older generation just, it hit a little bit different before making my way into a ravine and you guessed it, an abandoned mine shaft. Some things are just always consistent for me. I crafted up a bunch of torches and made a new pickaxe after mine broke before the hour alarm was up. Version 1.5 was a little bit of a quieter one, really only launching Minecraft Realms and allowing you to enchant books. There was a lot of bug fixes in this one though, so not a lot of new blocks to interact with, but really just a good version to lay over and go through the caves. Day 18, in looking through the ravine, I saw a little bit of mossy cobblestone, which meant a skeleton spawner was embedded into the wall. The loot inside was pretty much nothing, and a little bit of gold and other resources through the ravine was pretty valuable until I found my first diamond singular. Oh, actually, there was two. But that was enough to get me into a diamond pickaxe, which really opens up my possibilities. Mining obsidian without any enchantments is the slowest thing ever in all of Minecraft, and it absolutely hurts my soul. With that on board, though, I worked my way through all of the ravine and eventually tried swimming up a chain of water, which is now the second most hard thing to do in all of Minecraft. So I went back down to the bottom of the mines and just strip mined my way around, finding more diamonds, before digging straight up and breaching the surface on day 19 over in the middle of the desert. After a short Short run, I found my way home, smelted up all of the iron, and crafted my enchanting table, finally popping it into place, and remembering that enchanting is going to be super expensive in this version. I continued the staircase from the lower level to the upper level, so all of my house actually connected to all of the rest of my house, converting all of the walls to stone brick. But it was once again time to harvest all of the sugar cane so that I would have all of the paper. You know I'm prepping for an elytra, you know. 40 days from now. But the main thing I need right now is clay. So after crafting a diamond sword, I went out and dug as much of that as possible and put a little bit of netherrack in place to fix the funky lava that I had messed up. Day 21, the two blocks of dirt in front of my house just really isn't cutting it. So I spent a little bit of time terraforming the land and making the entrance to the house a little bit bigger. Planting more bricks around the entire structure, I think I've hit the top of where I wanna go. So it's time to start working on the roof. One last thing I wanted to add to the house though, with all of this extra height is a bit of a loft that I'm gonna put my bed on. So it's technically gonna to be like two and a half floors tall. I harvested all of the wheat from the little farm and then decided to move the farm somewhere else. So I jumped around, planted a little bit different and moved all of the farming to the opposite side of the house. So I'd have a space for my wolves. So I was finally able to get them back home. Or maybe I could get a horse because version 1.6 was the horse update. It added horses, hay bales, terracotta, which was still called hardened clay back then and as well as leads. So you could finally lead mobs around instead of just holding up some food and hoping for the best. Thankfully, a premature lead in slime form started bouncing its way over all of my crops and I was able to get just enough slime balls to make a couple leads. Maybe I should go rescue the dogs. My boat once again shattered into a million pieces as soon as it touched a leaf, so that totally makes sense. And I ran across the desert over to the other ocean and went to where I thought thought the wolves were, but I made a bit of a wrong turn, finding my way into a village with a bunch of horses around it. I didn't have anywhere to sleep though, and I didn't bring any wool, so sorry sheep, you helped me finish day 22. 
On day 23, I started looking around through all of the villagers. It might not be the updated trading, but there's still some good things in here if you can get the right combination. I also thought maybe I should go tame a horse in the horse update and then immediately remembered that I don't have a saddle. So I tied a horse to this post and left them there for the rest of the playthrough. I grabbed all of the potatoes and carrots in this world because that's the only way you could get them before dropping down a boat and sailing over towards the swamp where my dogs were waiting for me. I grabbed three of them on leads because I only had three leads and sailed them all the way back towards my side of the ocean. Losing one in the travel on my way back to the base, the other two were finally safe. And on day 24, I set them up with a nice little area to the left of my house while planting all of the carrots and other crops around my base. I then spent a lot of the time just working on the roof, smelting up all of the bricks that then got crafted into the stairs at a loss and then placing all of those stairs onto my roof. I can't wait for stuff. Stone cutters. Day 26 though, it's back down into the mines, trying to find a few more diamonds and a lot more resources. I grabbed some more gold because again, I'm trying to hit that gap hole gang and fought off all of the mobs, including way more creepers than I used to remember. A few endermen were down here, but no pearls and zombies kept attacking continuously. I did though from the ravine pillar my way back up and found an entrance a lot closer to my base at the little lake immediately in front of it. But as the night ended, it was time for a new version. Version 1.7 is the update that changed the world and was a massive overhaul of Minecraft's world generation. It also includes dark oak and acacia trees, stained glass, a ton of new biomes, and the infamous conversion of the rose to the poppy. All right, now the terrain generation has changed, let's try to find the stronghold. I threw an ender pearl and followed it through to the desert. As I continued following it through the mountains, I hit a chunk border where suddenly it went from mountain to desert again, with a bisected village immediately on the connection of the two. Another eye of ender led me to a desert village that was abandoned and empty, or the zombies had already killed everybody who lived here, and another sent me back the way I came. I was attacked by the zombie that ended Phil's hardcore run before another enderman dropped me their pearls. I'm actually starting to get a few of these things. On day 27, I watered my way down into a ravine, hoping that the stronghold would just immediately be accessible. Unfortunately though, it wasn't. I mined all the coal as possible to get as many torches as possible to make my way through these caves, and I found a dungeon, but no stronghold. As I rolled over to day 28, the dungeon had an infinity book in it, which is gonna come in handy, but really, I just wanted to make my way to the stronghold. I was snuck up on by a creeper who blew me down to half a heart at one point in time, and another blew me down to just two. I need to be a lot more careful, or I'm gonna have to start this whole process over again. But as I was just tunneling off in one direction, trying to follow some monster sounds, I finally saw a piece of cracked stone brick, and I entered into the stronghold. And this thing is the smallest stronghold I've ever seen. It's like four rooms all together, so I was immediately into the portal room, which had all of one eye in it. Anyway, that was something for a few future version of me to worry about. Version 1.8 of Minecraft is where we get diorite, granite, and andesite, as well as slime blocks, banners, sponges, mutton, and ocean monuments. There really was just a lot here. I started day 29 gathering all of the stone brick from the stronghold and iron bars just to save time and be able to not have to smelt anything anymore, before creating a vertical shaft all the way up to the surface in order to find my way here pretty easy. I spent a little bit of time bullying Technoblade's cousins on the plane for a lot of pork chops, then got all of those cooked up, earning my first achievement, which is the precursor to advancements. You're gonna see a lot of these multiple times throughout this world. I killed my first witch in the world and looked over another chunk border finding an ocean monument just sitting right there before starting to sail my way back home. I slept in the wilderness and on day 30, continued my way through an extreme hills biome, finding my first patches of granite andesite and diorite, grabbing a few of all of the blocks so I'd have different resources to be able to do different parts of the build. I made my way through several biomes before finally returning home and enchanting being a lot more affordable now, it was finally time to enchant a lot of my gear. That is once I had new versions of it, a lot of it was basically broken at this point. So I went down into the mine to get a few more diamonds and was lucky enough to find some. As I surfaced back out of the mines on day 31, I took some time to integrate polished andesite and a few other different blocks into the overall build, making it instead of just solid walls, a little bit more variation. I made a diamond chest plate and got it enchanted with protection three 
pretty nice, which means I'm gonna be a lot harder to kill now. Made a new pickaxe and was able to get it with some nice enchantments, efficiency, and I'm breaking right off the bat. But I pretty much spent the rest of the day finishing up the first design for the roof of the house before going to bed. And that was really it for that hour. So it was time for the big one, the combat update. This is when combat in Minecraft changed and you had to swing your sword a little bit more intelligently. This also brought end cities, the elytra, my favorite thing in Minecraft, beetroot, the most useless thing in Minecraft, and shields to correspond with the combat update. And since this wasn't really a, not a lot of new blocks, I wanted to spend some of this time just really investing in my base area. I went to enchant my second pickaxe and it got silk touch, so I actually combined them together with an anvil to get a pretty god tier early pickaxe. Enchanting the rest of my armor with just some base level just to make it that much easier to survive. I crafted up a shield and went to the nether because now I'm gonna be able to fight blazes on the terms that I'm pretty familiar with. And it was a lot easier. I caught fire a lot less and I was able to get over a dozen blaze rods, which means I'm practically never gonna need to come back here. I made a diamond ax and lucked out on the enchantments on this as well. So I have two silk touch tools now and decided to do something different with the basement, converting it to be all nether brick, giving it a very different vibe than what it had before. Crafted up a lot more chests to increase the storage space in all of the basement and did it my first inventory management montage leading into day 33 where I pretty much just did a bunch of random chores around the house, replanted all of my crops, and then used a couple leads to pull a few sheep from across the river back over to my base and into a pen where I was able to breed them up and start making more sheep. But yeah, that day was over pretty quick. Day 34, I'm still doing more things to improve the base, putting down some paths and making a brewing stand so I can start making some potions and set myself up a little better. I don't know if making these with swamp water is the best idea, but I think it's gonna give them a little extra tang. I also worked on more details for the house, building out the side entrance and its roof, connecting it with the front porch and redoing that from brick to wood and setting up just small details here and there. I like it, just I don't love it yet. Day 35, I did a few more additional details to make the bottom of that staircase feel a little more connected with the rest of the house by connecting it to the rest of the house. I also started demolishing the roof. I think it's just a little too steep of a pitch, so I'm gonna break it down and just make it one block thick, and that actually looks so much better from a distance. I kept collecting sheep from around my neighborhood with leads and crafted all of the spruce wood that I possibly could into additional slabs to replace all of the floors and make the whole thing look just a little bit taller as this update came to a close. Minecraft 1.10 was a chilly update, adding the strays, ice planes, but also some hotter things like mesas and magma blocks. But with new blocks available, it's time to go out exploring for things. I quickly enchanted my bow with that infinity book I had found a few versions ago and made a lot of bread so I'd be prepared for the journey. Planting a few hay bales over the one place where my basement and main floor don't really connect and hiding the blemishes. But out I go walking across the desert, putting down a boat which actually has oars and is not awful and is a little bit more durable and I can actually steer and it moves at a reasonable pace. Oh, I'm so glad to have good boats back. Before making my way to a village who right now really only serves purpose from the blacksmith chest to raid. However, a few sheep donated their wool to me and I was able to make a bed and sleep underneath the stars. Day 37, my journey continued, moving across the desert and savanna where cows were more than willing to donate leather till I eventually saw a mesa biome. I grabbed a stack of red sand and a couple stacks of terracotta, which is now actually called terracotta before raiding my first desert temple of the entire playthrough. And things were looking pretty good. There's some decent loot until you get to the last chest and oh my God, there's a God apple in here. That is an amazing find because about now is when you can no longer craft them. But the rest of the night was pretty quiet. Just hunting spiders for spring and trying to kill as many endermen as possible from our pearls so I can open the end portal. But you know what, at this point, I'm pretty far out. So on day 38, I figured I could do the whole speed runner lava cast make a portal thing. And it turns out, yeah, no. I was able to actually get that through for once. Not bad. I ended up deep inside of a wall in the nether though. So I had to spend a lot of time just checking my coordinates and digging in a straight line, hoping to find my way to open air. I eventually did grabbing a little bit of soul soil before making my way across a lot of the terrain and digging my way back into the nether fortress that I knew my portal was inside. Fighting off a few magma cubes and other mobs before safely returning home. And that basically took all day. 
Minecraft 1.11 was the exploration update, and it added a lot to the game, including shulker boxes, so your inventory was a lot easier to manage, totems of undying, all the different variations of the pillagers, woodland mansions out tens of thousands of blocks away, and a full overhaul to fishing. I farmed and looted crops, and planted a little bit of glowstone to make the dock look a little bit better with trapdoors all around them. Very 2012 Minecraft lighting. Before placing a few additional blocks to add some great radiation to the brick layer of the building as well. And now this is finally looking nice with a nice bay window over the library. I continued on the path blocks, planted some nether wart down in the basement, and fought off the last few endermen for the last few pearls I needed to finally open the portal. Day 39, it's time to kill the dragon. I ran across the desert and mined my way down through the shaft of cobblestone through the middle of the sand, planted all of the eyes in the portal, took a deep breath, and jumped right in. Thankfully, the platform was right next to the end island, so all I had to do was dig up to get to the surface. Unthankfully though, the older versions of the dragon fight were a little more dangerous as she's far more aggressive. I bowed the crystals from the top of the platform and was constantly hit with fireballs and flung along as she made multiple dive runs out, sometimes taking me under half health. I was not prepared on food for this, thought I'd be pretty good. As I worked my way to shoot one out of the cages, I finally pulled off an awesome MLG, and you don't know how awesome that made me feel, before realizing I couldn't shoot through them because the hitbox was different. So I had to tower all the way up and punch it from underneath, with the dragon continuously knocking me off of my perch. So in order to make sure that I would actually stay alive as she took another dive at me, I had to eat the god apple. With the last crystals defeated, however, the fight pretty much turned in my favor. My bow was pretty powerful. And once I realized the pattern of fireballs and diving run, I was able to move from side to side and avoid a decent chunk of damage. The most dangerous thing from her was by far the damage to my ears, as sound settings were really poorly mixed. But as she made one final perch on her pedestal, I was able to come in with the sword, slay her, and not get to look at it because two endermen tried to kill me so I didn't get to see the cool light show in the sky. How unfortunate. I did, however, gather up all of the experience and the dragon egg to display on my home before running through the portal with only two and a half hearts remaining. Day 40, I cooked up some additional food so I could finally recover back to full health before harvesting all of my potatoes and making a little display area for the dragon egg outside of my house. But it was time to return to the end, heading back in through the portal and now with a different goal in mind. I pillared up to one of the end gateways and threw a pearl through and then was bridging on one block from island to island, finally finding my way to an end city, which was the smallest end city of all time and literally only had one shulker inside of the whole thing. From the top of it though, I cranked my render distance to maximum and saw another end city with a ship just over the horizon. Running over to that and collecting as many shulker shells as I could muster, floating my way through the upper levels and collecting the high tier loot near the top of these was pretty great. I crafted my first shulker box and collected an ender chest to interdimensionally ATM all of these things back to my base. Before heading over to the ship, finally floating in air, I purled onto the ladder to catch myself before clearing the ship and finding a pretty amazing fortune pickaxe with fortune mending and unbreaking all in one go. But what I was really here for was the wind. You all know how much I love to fly. Once I landed back at the end gateway and went through the portal, it was time for another update. Minecraft 1.12 is the world of color update, introducing a whole bunch of different colored blocks, including beds, concretes. It also introduced parrots and replaced achievements with advancements, so you're going to see all of those notifications over again. Back in the main world, it was time to organize all of the loot that I collected from the end cities and to set up all of my shulker boxes to really just hit home on how much I had accomplished. I crafted up as many rockets as I possibly could before enchanting some diamond pants and getting some pretty decent early game enchantments. I also combined a few iron helmets since I don't have enough diamonds for a diamond helmet right now. I actually have an extra shulker box that I can just use as a nightstand. That's how fancy I am right now. I did a few enchanting of books, just trying to see if I could get anything interesting, eventually being able to add sharpness three onto my diamond sword. It's not five, but it's not nothing. I also upgraded my bow with the flame and power three enchantments, so that's looking a lot more deadly. On day the meaning of life, I spent a lot of time outside harvesting all of my crops and planting the beetroot. Yay. Before a slime came and started messing up all of my garden. I promptly murdered them for the offense. Replanting all of the potatoes and then realizing it's a lot harder to fly in this version. Actually, I had to ladder onto the roof of my house and I still 
fell and broke my ankles. But on the second attempt, I realized you have to space bar three times and not just two. So I was finally able to take to the skies. Soaring over this Minecraft world just feels right. It is my favorite way to travel in any version of Minecraft and it's the quickest way to find new things, like this village, which had some decent obsidian in the blacksmith chest, which is really all you need to get from here. Sailed around, grabbed a couple beetroot from another village that was in the ocean, and then grabbed some dark oak, the first time I had picked that or any mushroom blocks up in my world. But really, day 42 was just my excuse to fly around my entire world and generate a ton of chunks. Near the end of the day, I found an igloo and decided to stop and sleep here. Day 43, I somehow spawned outside of the thing from the bed, that was strange, before continuing sailing around the entire world. I made my way back to the house and used the leather to repair the elytra because it is way cheaper to repair in this version of Minecraft, before doing a few more aesthetic bits around the house, some coal in that little side area, and a few mushrooms dotted around just to give a pop of color to the whole base. I did some more book enchanting, just trying to get some good resources, and then planted some more netherrack and soul sand and nether wart just to make it look like the nether was seeping out of that portal and corrupting the overworld. It's a small detail, but I love doing it. But instead of going to bed, I finished the night just creeper hunting in the desert, trying to get as much gunpowder as possible to craft another round of rockets for another set of flying. Minecraft 1.13 was the update aquatic, and it finally brought life and color to Minecraft's gravel-filled, pretty empty oceans. This is what introduced coral reefs and kelp, and stripped wood, and dolphins, and drowned and tridents, as well as phantoms, which is simultaneously the best and worst mob ever added to Minecraft. And given this update, it makes sense to go find a new ocean, doesn't it? I flew as far as I could in a new direction, immediately finding some kelp and grabbing it and adding it to my inventory, as well as murdering a few of the fish that now lived in Minecraft's waters. The red ones turn orange when you stab them. Really strange. But as I was sailing around, I found two witches' huts and was able to kill both of them for just some a little bit of gunpowder or redstone. I found an ice spikes biome and took advantage of silk touch to collect a few stacks of ice and raided any sunken ship that I could find, which also led me to many different buried treasures and some turtles camping out on a beach. I collected the eggs and honestly, I don't think I ever did anything with them. In my flight though, I found this one lone tree planted on top of an extremely high hill and named it the world tree. When the world download is available, you can go check it out. But as I was sailing over another ocean, I saw some drowned in the distance and here's what I'm really looking for, a drowned with a trident. Hopefully I can get my hands on it. As I was able to kill it though, unfortunately not. Now I know you can drop a Nautilus shell for it, but I only killed the Nautilus shell drowned after the trident drowned. Hopefully I'll be able to do that trick later. Day 45, you can't really tell because it's storming and it's dark outside, but I kept sailing around finding another patch of drowned, none of which unfortunately were giving me a battle fork. I watched a dolphin kill itself on a magma block and then found my way to another desert village, grabbing all of their bookcases before raiding the nearby temple and getting some pretty good loot with diamonds and golden apples galore. Having shulker boxes and the ability to fly over the landscape just makes things really easy. Oh, and, and they broke. Confined once again to the ground, I decided to tame a horse to hopefully help me get there a little bit faster since I finally had a saddle. Unfortunately, these horses were slower than my current walking speed. I tried out several of them before finding one that was actually kind of fast, I got it to the ocean, and then it wouldn't get in the boat. And then I realized other things couldn't get into boats in this version of Minecraft, so I had to abandon the horse and sail over the sea by myself. <laughs> Holding up in a little cave in the wall, smelting some iron as the day came to a close. Day 46, I finally made my way back to my home continent, back over that extreme hills biome, before seeing a couple llamas and deciding, ah, oh, I can ride them, can't I? And no, you can't put a saddle on a llama. So I made my way through the woods, raiding books from any village I happened to come across, and found myself a new fast horse on this side of the ocean. I also grabbed some sunflowers, which is just another color and detail that I could add to the swamp and spent the entire day riding this horse over and through multiple different generations of land to my home at the center of this Minecraft world. Day 47, I leaded my horse so that they wouldn't wander off and used all of those bookcases to do some decorating in my house. There's not a lot of options back here, so I'll take what I can get. I banked all of the resources that I collected in my journey and used the different trapdoors to add a little bit of flair to the second floor. But really, with fishing being overhauled, I spent the rest of this day fishing, trying to hope for a couple mending books or some other high tier loop. I got fish. Minecraft 1.14 was the village and pillage update, and this is where we got all of the better villager jobs and the concept of raids. This is also where we got wandering traders, pandas, 
cats and bamboo. All things that you would think had been in Minecraft a lot longer. And since it's the village update, why don't we go find a village? I jumped on the horse since I can't repair my elytra and Skyrimed horse my way over mountains and through valleys across the terrain. As night set this day though, the Phantom Menace dived down and attacked me from the sky. I was ready for them. It's not really that much of a threat with a shield and decent armor, but what I need for them is the Phantom Membranes that they drop on death to repair my elytra. I only got two from the first fight, but it will be enough. As I rode through the desert on a horse with no name, I was able to get my way back to one of the desert villages. But however, without beds, these villagers don't consider this a village anymore. So they were all just kind of wandering in random directions. That didn't stop a ton of zombies from spawning, but in all actuality, this place was probably worth abandoning. I got my horse, ran for it, made a bed in the middle of the field, slept, and on day 49, continued my journeys on my no-named horse through a red desert and into another one. I found just this one piece of minecart track sitting on the ground, and when I got off my horse to investigate, they disappeared, completely vanished without a trace. I spent about five minutes looking around for my horse, and then they just booped back into existence off in the distance. Getting back on, I found my way to another desert temple, which had some pretty good loot in it with a couple golden apples and then found my way to a second one of those desert temples as I continued through and found some more decent loot. Emeralds and gold was the big things here. The chaos gremlin in me though decided to wreck this cursed sand and I kind of buried myself alive briefly, but don't worry, I got better. And as I was recovering from that little traumatic experience, I repaired up my elytra so I could finally fly again. But I'm not gonna leave my horse behind. So on day 50, we continued galloping our way through the desert, picking up sugarcane and other resources that we would need back at home. I continued riding the horse around for the about half the day when we got to a river. So I grabbed a lead to be able to lead it across. And when I got off again, it full on Illuminati vanished into another dimension. Again, I waited for a few minutes, just stood there and watched and eventually started moving around but no horse it's just poofed once i took to the sky and saw just over the tree line was another brand new village so i consoled myself for missing my horse by stealing all of their hay bales don't worry, I traded it back to one of the villagers and they paid me handsomely to get all of their wheat back. Who says capitalism isn't fun? Thanks guys. But the main thing I wanted to do was teach a few of the magic so they could give me a spell that I desperately needed. Going on into day 51, I locked myself in a house with one of them and tried to just really teach them the spell that I wanted, but they kind of got stuck on aqua affinity. Another one looks like they were actually interested in learning different things. So I spent half the day just going through all the different options until there you go. Bam, mending the book that I want, except it's super expensive and I can't afford it. So I spent the other half of the day bone mealing several different crops to get trade resources to send to their farmers to be able to get emeralds to then give to the librarian. And I needed to wake them up in the middle of the night to do more trades. And that basically took the whole day. Day 52, as I had finally completed the cycle and had enough emeralds, I went to where my villagers should be and they were just gone. Apparently they had gone off to the horse dimension. I found another one who was willing to learn magic, but once again got stuck and just wouldn't give me what I wanted. At some point, most of this village was librarians and none of them were changing jobs or books. It was weird. So I decided to fly away and abandon them forever, making my way into a Mesa abandoned mineshaft, which has a spider spawner, which is super easy to disable. I flew into a new Savannah village and they were willing to learn magic as well. And this was actually working a lot better. And I was getting some good enchantments, but I was really only here for one thing. But once they got stuck again and didn't really want to change jobs, I took my aggression out by stealing all of their melons. Now it's time for Minecraft 1.15, and I really only have one note in my patch notes here. Bees! So I started the day alternating between trying to teach the villagers the magic spell that I wanted and stealing all of their hay bales. Don't worry though, I got two of them into a prestigious magic academy right here in the side of the mountain and spent about half the day once again just breaking lecterns trying to get the book that I wanted. Eventually one of them was ready to sell me mending, but I needed to make a book. So I just found some leather sitting behind one of their houses, I have no idea where it came from, and then sailed over to grab some sugarcane for a little bit of paper. Finally. I had the book that I needed. I immediately enchanted my elytra with it and then closed the door on their entirely safe dormitory before flying my way back to the base, picking up a few blue flowers just to add more color to the swamp. I was occasionally just fighting mobs for the experience so I could repair my elytra as I was flying around. And before the night was over, I had sailed my way home. 
Day 54, I started by taking stock of all of the enchantments that were sitting on the books in my chests and taking that sharpness five book from one of the desert temples and putting it onto my sword. Then I used a lot of the new worker blocks to add a lot of detail and life to my house with cartography tales and composters and anvils and smokers and lecterns just adding a lot here and there. As I started to set up a little bit of a campsite outside, I saw five people with gats rolled up just sitting in the lake. And you know what? I'm having none of that. Get out of my swamp. Day 15. Since I have Bad Omen, and I know that there's a villager locked in the mountain who couldn't die, maybe I should head back to that savannah village and take on my first raid. As I was flying through the sky towards it, I didn't end up at the one that I intended to, and instead found one where there was the sunken ruins above ground with a bunch of trident drowned just kind of staring at me while I was on top of this tree. But it was also kind of a good place for a raid. With a bunch of running water and a few pits, and this tree and house to stand up on top of in the middle, it was a pretty straightforward combat strategy, bowing everybody down with flaming infinite arrows. In between waves, I would go down and try to fight the drowned and get a trident, but it turned out that might not have been the best idea. So I instead focused my attention on trying to keep the villagers alive. I didn't actually do anything to protect any of them during this fight. I really just kind of shot things from on top of my tree. As the third wave spawned in though, and evokers were finally in the game, I started to get a little bit nervous. These magic users will summon Vex if you're not super quick to kill them, and thankfully I was able to get this one down before they were able to summon any of those flying rats. But with it starting to get dark, I slept and the raid continued into day 56, using this specific corner of the tree to cheese a lot of the fight. I grabbed the first totem of undying in my world and then back up on top of the tree to bow down everybody who just formed an orderly queue of murder. I had to deal with a couple of X here and there when I wasn't able to take down an invoker super fast, but as it went into the fifth wave, things were starting to get kinda dicey, with a lot of Vex and a few Ravagers on my tail. So I jumped out of the city and into the water, and didn't notice it at the time, but the last villager died about here, meaning the raid was unfortunately a defeat. But that doesn't despawn all of the mobs, so I still had to kill all of the evokers and Vex and the Ravager, which was just hovering over me. Spent a little bit of time running around the village collecting all of the spoils from the battle, but really this was now a ghost of its former self. So I grabbed all of the blocks that I could from the base and then went underground to try to fight off a few of the drowned and get a trident. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring a Nautilus shell, so poor drop rates and I got nothing. On day 57, after sleeping in the now abandoned village, I organized all all of my resources into a shulker box and then took a buried treasure map from the sunken ruins to go and find some treasure. I found another desert village which I could use for a future raid, maybe they'll fare better, and some good loot in the treasure chest. But as I was flying around I found a beehive and an actually abandoned village. Considering no one ever lived here and I didn't even need to get them all murdered, I grabbed all of the hay bales that I could to just have more around the house as well as all of the mossy cobblestone which at this point in time didn't really have a crafting recipe so it was the only way to get it. I was gonna wait till night so I I could collect the bees in their hive and take them back towards the base, so I decided to do the swamp diamond trick to just get a few additional diamonds. As I was mining my way down though, this happened. Yeah, that's not a scene you ever want to see in your hardcore world. Having your totem pop is extremely scary. So I boxed myself back up, put another extra life in my offhand, and mined my way down literally to bedrock, and found eight diamonds just sitting there waiting for me. I love this trick, it's the best thing ever. But after that, I sailed over and grabbed the beehive with three bees inside, and then sailed over to a nearby village, fighting off two children who really wanted my autograph before calling it a night in somebody else's home. And that's where we update to Minecraft 1.16, the nether update. This entirely overhauled the nether with new biomes and a ton of new mobs, including hoglins, piglins, brutes, and bastions. This also added ancient debris and netherite armor, which is the rarest, most expensive item in the game, and I'm gonna get at least one piece of it before we call this playthrough a success. Waking up in the village, I organized all of the treasure that I had currently collected into both of my shulker boxes before flying over another abandoned mine shaft. There are a few chests right here which had a couple name tags, that would come in handy, but the big thing that I saw was an abandoned nether portal right here. This could get me home a lot faster. In quickly getting it repaired and lit, I jumped through 
and found myself in an updated nether with the better nether textures. You forget how bad this place actually used to look. I got a little bit of quartz for experience just to repair the mending items that I had on me and then sailed through the nether trying to get my bearings of where exactly I was. I saw the nether fortress which is practically at zero zero dug my way in and was quickly able to follow my torches back to my portal and return back to the swamp. Spending a little bit of time to bank all of the resources that I collected so far I grabbed all of the gold that I had been saving for all of this time once I couldn't craft a god apple placed up the beehive in the ominous banner just by my home and brewed up a little bit of sunscreen so when I went back to the nether I wouldn't die a fiery death. On day 59 I put some basic enchants on a piece of golden armor and planted all the blue leaves around my crops so the bees would fly around and pollinate my crops while going from point to point. Then it was off to the nether flying around and collecting a few piglins in a hole and giving them a bunch of gold and generally they seem pretty happy about that. It's not so much when the gas shot at us and almost killed all of them. But they traded me a decent amount of loot here before I went flying through the nether again, finding a spot where I can dig my way down to Y15 and create a one by one tunnel filled with TNT. It's time for some netherite mining. Now I only had about half a stack of TNT and the explosions were fun, but only a little bit productive. I was able to find four pieces of ancient debris, which is a single netherite ingot. That will have to do though. So I sailed my way back towards the nether fortress, jumped in and got an advancement again. I really don't know. They seem confused before portaling back to the base and continuing on my upgrades. Somewhere along all of that, it had ticked over to day 60. So I started the day with my my second inventory management montage before smelting up all of the ancient debris and crafting and enchanting a new diamond helmet. Once I made my first netherite ingot, there was really only one thing I could do. It was time for the full super villain look again. I finally have a piece of netherite. With the diamonds into the helmet form though, my chests were looking a little empty. So I converted all the diamond ore into raw diamonds that I stored inside my boxes. When I went upstairs though, I had a little bit of a surprise waiting for me. Now that was super unfortunate. So I spent the rest of the day basically just repairing the damage of what happened here, placing down new logs and bricks and converting a bunch of logs to sideways that I had missed at some point in time before putting down all of the torches. This is never happening again. Day 61, I spent a little bit of time organizing my ender chest before dirtying up the basement a little bit and adding a few iron bars here and there for accents. I also wanted to make a mushroom, just add some additional detail to the swamp. So I spent some time crafting a larger, more 3D version of the big mushrooms that you sometimes see in dark forests. This was kind of tricky because every time you place one of those blocks and break it, it affects the sides of all of the ones around it. And then as long as I was working on details, I made a stone cutter and started making a few just natural looking boulders here and there around the overall base. I like the combination of mossy and regular and andesite. It just looks good. And that little bit of water right there, oh, it's just such a cool detail and I love it so much. But once again, a bunch of bad guys with crossbows just rolled up into my swamp. And you know what? I think I have an idea how I'm going to end this video. Before it was time to do that though, I finished on all of the bouldering around my base, put a few extra torches there, and found a wandering trader spawning by my base and being very excited to give me two llamas with two leads. I tied them up because they'll forget about me killing their old master eventually and prepared for the raid. Minecraft 1.17 is Caves and Cliffs Part 1. This includes dripstone, deep slate, amethyst geodes, goats, axolotls, glow squids, and copper, mossy caves, and the lush caves blocks, and so many new ore retextures. But we're not doing any of that right away. No, we start this version with another raid. My elytra on my back and rockets in my hand, I flew over the landscape, heading back towards that desert village that I had seen before with a large tower that I could turn into a bit of a fortification. I sailed over a shattered savanna biome, which looked awesome and accidentally triggered the raid on this random unsuspecting village. Poor for them. I barricaded one villager inside their house and grabbed a bunch of terracotta because I had forgotten building blocks, using the golem to take care of most of the first wave and setting up a rudimentary base on top of another house. The strategy here is the same. Infinite arrow flame bow is going to be the MVP. I set up a bit of a wall so I wouldn't be attacked with arrows from all sides and then just started picking down all all of the enemies, both from a distance and when somebody got up close. After the third wave, it just kind of got stuck briefly for a little bit, and I was really confused. So I slept through the night, and then in the start of day 63, was basically just running around trying to find the last raider. 
I got into this little cave, saw some copper blocks, and grabbed those really quickly, before finding a witch embedded in a 1x1 one one dirt hole, killing them and triggering the next wave. I wasn't super quick on taking out evokers this time though, so a lot of vex were able to come and attack me, and the ravager behind me looked like they were just about able to make it onto the roof, but thankfully not. Taking out those major threats, it was just picking people down from on the walls, which was a lot more relaxing. And as it went into the night, and I finished off the final couple attackers, it was time for the final wave. This was the big one, evokers on ravagers, multiple magic attacks, and a little too many enemies for me to manage. They once again got in a little too close, and I had more Ravagers and Vex that I could actually deal with, being attacked from all sides. I grabbed my shield out of my backpack and tried to hold it up to prevent a couple attacks, but was taking far too many hits, popping my totem when I fell off of the house, knocked out of my perch, and now fighting on the ground floor. I bowed as many enemies as I could and tried to take down whatever seemed to get close to me, maintaining distance from the heavy hitting enemies as best that I could. Kiting everybody around the village in a constant circle, knowing two villagers are locked inside, I was picking up totems just as quickly as I was using them to actually finish this fight. But I was determined, I was actually going to save this village. And once the Ravagers were down and the Vex had basically despawned, I was once again trapped to just one enemy that I couldn't find, and it was too far away for the bell to reveal. I went back to that one by one hole that I had found the witch in earlier, and found a single pillager there with their axe in their pocket, slayed them, and the big notification rang out. Once I released the villagers though, they didn't seem too happy to see me and the whole fireworks and gifts that they're supposed to do basically didn't happen. So I flew off in another direction, finding ravines and looking for some of the cool new blocks. I found some copper and was able to grab that up, realized that I should, you know, use the fortune pick on it instead and turned it all into raw copper, slept through the night again at the bottom of this ravine, went over to the shattered savanna biome to get a few more blocks, digging into another ravine and finding a big portion of dripstone. I wish I had this in my main hardcore world. But it was time to return home, sailing over the swamp and spending all of my rockets, coming up on a desert temple just in time and getting a little bit of gunpowder, which was just enough to send me to yet one more ravine, where I found a glow squid and a couple of axolotls hidden in the water underneath. Turning around, I saw a second, and when I went to fly up to make another bucket to get them, a bunch of pillagers had just rolled up on me. I guess they heard I had just defended a local village and they came for revenge, but they didn't get too far. I fired off one of the crossbows just for an advancement, throwing it in the trash and grabbing my second axolotl friend in their buckets and all the way back to my house. I released them into the swamp to immediately disrupt the entire ecological ecosystem as they started attacking everything in sight before going inside to smelt the copper and placing all of the blocks around to get that final little aesthetic touch for my base. But as the dripstone was set underwater, the coarse dirt set along the edges, I placed a lightning ride on top of my house to protect it, took to the sky, and took one final glance at everything that I had accomplished in the last 17 hours of playing in this Minecraft world. This was a unique trip through history, something that I had never done before, and something that made me look at Minecraft in a brand new perspective. I dropped off all my gear in the fancy nightstand and laid down to rest at the end of this story. But now, let's talk about how I'm going to survive, thrive, and escape the ocean in the next 100 days of Hardcore Minecraft. As I spawned into the world, it was dark. I was actually trapped inside of a sunken ship, which was hilarious because I actually recorded that intro before actually even loading up this world. As I started breaking all of the blocks and the water rushed in, it slowed down my ability to break the planks and I started to drown. Thankfully, at under half health, I was finally able to break to the surface and found the teeniest, tiniest little island right next to me, one whole block of sand. The good news is though, being around a ship means I'm not gonna have to worry about wood that much. And I started breaking down the masts and digging into some of the lower areas for immediate supplies, food, and a little bit of armor. I used the wood to make a couple rudimentary tools and continued breaking down the ship, setting up just a little bit of a platform. And then I remembered wood is going to be really hard to get in this world, so I broke down all of the legs, but kept the wood central platform just because it looks nice. Used a door underwater, sorry bedrock players, to be able to break everything while deep under the ocean, and then went down to do a little bit of mining. I got into this little mini ravine and once again got it to the point where I nearly entirely drowned at half a heart on day one. 
This is starting pretty difficult. As the sun rose on day two, I realized this is actually gonna be somewhat difficult. I used some of the cobblestone that I had grabbed from that mine to make a little bit better legs to support the central platform and scavenged more wood from the wreck, trying to get as much as possible. Using a door and going down into that ravine, I was able to get some coal and iron and smelt that up. And yes, I'm using a mod that gives me the 1.17 raw stuff. It means if I ever get fortune, it's gonna be so much better. But I cooked up all of the potatoes, and that's a mistake, and did some fishing to ring out the day. All right, day three, and I created a boat and started sailing away from this central space. I don't want to cannibalize the boat too much because I eventually want to raise it up and sail out of here. But as I was going over the water, I found some flint and some bone meal. And that's because of these guys. These crabs are my best friends ever in this entire playthrough. You see them, all the little legs? They look super dangerous, but no, smiles and happiness and fantastic. They scavenge up sticks and bone meal and string from the bottom of the ocean and just set it floating to the surface. Like, hey, look no, here you go, have some string, which is awesome. <laughs> so as I'm sailing around, looting a couple different drowned areas that really didn't have any drowned around them and hitting up a few other sunken ships for some mediocre loot, I was stung by a puffer fish, which scared me. I'm not ready for mobs to be attacking me, even though there are sharks surfing around in the distance. But I used the sunken ships to get basically all of the wood in this world until I eventually am able to buy a sapling from a wandering trader or finding it in a boat or something, and then sail past another huge batch of drowned that I am woefully underprepared to fight. Day four, I started with some more fishing. I still don't have a bed, so I really need to go through every single day to be able to survive. I used the door mining technique and started setting up a little bit of a mine shaft down to diamonds and then started chiseling away at some cobblestone. I have so many cool extra blocks because of some of the mods that I installed and why not use a roof as a ramp? That'll look interesting. And then in continuing to break Minecraft's rules, I started building a circle. But you know, Minecraft wasn't too happy with that and sent a few phantoms after me, forcing me to hide underground. I'm at half health with no food. I cannot afford this fight right now, so I just continued digging down to the bedrock level. On day five, I dug into an underwater pond, which was pretty cool, and there's some lava right next to it, so I have everything I need. I swam back up after the morning had started and cooked up some eel meat to be able to just regen back to full health, even though it didn't really work, and continued on my sacrilegious circle. I made it all into farmland and planted some pumpkins and some carrots. I don't have potatoes, cause I ate them all, but this will have to do. Using bone meal to make everything go up to full speed, I realized that my circle was wrong, so I'm gonna have to do it all over again the next day anyway. So I went down to the mines to avoid more phantoms since I still don't have a bet. Day six, I just started strip mining down at Y11. I need some better armor and tools if I'm gonna survive. And I found some diamonds, about three, which was enough to get me a pickaxe and I made a shield so I won't get jumped by anything else. I started hearing a lot of mob noises, so I was digging around randomly and found a bunch more diamonds, about 10 so far. And then a bunch of zombies who couldn't get me into a hole and I decided this wasn't worth dying for. Day seven, I'm officially survived a week out on the ocean on a little five by five platform and that's all I got. I started making some chests to store off all the resources and went sailing around for more sunken ships in this area. There's a lot of sunken ships in this area. I'm now not worried about why my ship crashed or maybe I should be more worried. But I basically did that all day and night, sailing around so that the phantoms could never keep up to me, hitting all of the different sunken ships and I actually found a compass, which will be great for finding my way back home. But that's basically all I did, sailing around and grabbing more flint and string from my special crab be friends in the hopes of being able to make a bed soon. Day eight, I'm just sailing around for more string and more bone meal to be able to actually set up more resources. And I'm gonna have to go find some more dirt soon so I could get more food actually growing. I found an abandoned nether portal, grabbed all of the gold, not a lot else there, and then killed a scuba diving drowned. I didn't think they needed scuba gear, but okay. Kept raiding ships for resources and I finally had enough to craft to bed. And I took my first nap Eight days into this world, I was starting to get really tired. Day nine, I was just sailing around and trying to find more things to go loot when I found this awesome double crisscrossed ravine. It actually opened up to an underground cave system with a bunch of mobs in it and an abandoned mine shaft. Very on brand for me. 
There was diamonds just sitting in the floor and as much wood and string as I could carry, which was an awesome come up for me. I mined up a bunch of dirt as well to be able to increase the farm. And really, this was super dangerous. A creeper dropped me down into a bunch of zombies. Day 10, I also found these scoria blocks, which just look absolutely beautiful. And I used a lot when I was building on MCX, but I have them now. More diamonds across everywhere. I'm gonna have enough for almost a full set of gear by the time this is all over really early, which is great for my long-term survival. And I grabbed all of the dirt that I can. Everything on the surface is just sand. I made a pillar of cobblestone so I'd be able to identify this place when I needed to get to it later, raided the ship, and then headed back home to complete my farm and call it a night. Day 11, we're over 10% of the way through the whole challenge and it's time for me to start growing food. Primarily, I'm gonna be eating carrots just so my vision is gonna be great and I made sure that the platform was both decorated around all the edges and supported all the way down to the ground. I started making a second circle while hearing a bunch of different fish sailing around and looking at all these weird things that were around me. I completed construction of the platform on day 12 using all of these different fancy bricks and crafting myself an iron shield and a few diamond tools to upgrade my gear. Now it's time to get into the create mod. The main way this you can power one of these things is with a water wheel. So I used all of the cool new blocks that I had to decorate it and set up a few water wheels to be able to set up some early create stuff. Planting all of my carrots and eating them to keep me from starving. I actually had grabbed a few potatoes earlier from one of the sunken ships. I don't know if I mentioned it, but yeah, now I'm growing potatoes too. Day lucky number 13, I set up a press, which allows me to convert iron bars into iron plates. Bonk. I'm gonna need these for all sorts of things in the create mod, which is a great way to automate a ton of the things I need to do. Crafted up a lot of the pumpkins and found an underwater skeleton who tried to snipe me. I had none of that. But I'm still really early game. Just getting food and making sure that I have the resources that I need is all I can really do right now. Day 14, I need more resources. So it's time to head back to that abandoned mine shaft that I had found and get more stuff. The limestone blocks are gonna be really useful as well as just all of these strings from all of these spider webs and everything that I found in these treasure chests, including a golden apple, which was a huge win. I did get bit by one of the poison spiders, but thankfully I was able to run away and box myself up in a corner to survive. Okay, and here's where something went wrong. I stopped recording for a little while to go have dinner with my family, and then I came back and I wasn't recording yet, and basically here's what happened. A, I got attacked by a zombie and a skeleton, and my sword broke, so I'm fighting them all with a pickaxe and an ax, and they get me down to about four hearts, so I eat the golden apple to survive and about now is when I notice that I'm not recording. So I run away and I'm just fighting them with a pickaxe here. And you can see just how messed up I actually am. And even though I don't have a weapon, I'm using a diamond ax primarily and just getting as much as I can before mining my way up and getting the heck out of here. Sailing back home, I found another entrance to this thing, like about a hundred or so blocks away, which is kind of the other side. We'll come back to this later. I just set up another pole for now and then sailed back home. Day 14, I'm feeling like Matt Damon, but I'm on the ocean instead of on Mars. Maybe I should do Mars for another one of these videos. I crafted up an iron halberd to get a little bit more reach so I can hit things that can't hit me and then sailed back towards the mines, stopping at a drowned temple on the way and fighting far too many drowned. Once I got back, I went to that new entrance that I had just found and started torching up the cave with a lot of enemies around here and just started working my way through. Creepers were a big risk. And as it rolled over to day 16, I was still down there collecting resources. Lapis for enchanting will be super useful, as well as all of the different metals and materials for upgrading gear. Gold is great, diamonds are better, but that's really all I found. I loaded up my inventory as full as I could go, jumped back into the boat, and saved sailed back home, stopping at one more sunken ship while I was on my way. I slept and then day 17, I had to increase my storage capacity and then did a ton of inventory organization. I know how much you all love to watch time lapses of me moving items around chests. Oh, exhilarating. Collected a little bit of food and then headed down to that lava pool and used the water bucket to get enough obsidian for an enchanting table so I can start upgrading my gear. Day 18, I'm actually looking for a fight now. Since I have the enchanting table, I wanna go around and start getting more levels to get some early enchants. I used the secondary entrance this time again and found a ton more diamonds, like 
20 more diamonds without even really needing to look too hard and a bunch of gold. I also found dolomite, which is a beautiful block that I'm gonna use a lot in the builds on the base. It rolled over to day 19 as I was stuffing my inventory with as much as I could carry. And I realized I didn't have a bow, so I crafted a diamond hunter's bow, which can two shot basically anything. It just takes a little bit longer to draw. But I kept bouncing around, fighting all the mobs for levels and grabbing as much dolomite and other awesome looking blocks that I could for more base builds. I found another spider spawner and torched it up. And as my inventory was full, headed back to the surface and started sailing back home. Day 20, I'm able to make these blocks look amazing because of some of the things in the mod pack. So my base is gonna look pretty unique. I wanna make something that's a little bit higher up. So I started making stairs to a dolomite platform with a bunch of different blocks on it. And then phantoms attacked because I forgot to have slept for another three days. So I quickly took a nap and then in day 21 continued on that platform and harvesting all of the food that I could. I went down to the mine shaft and did a little bit more digging around just trying to find resources and then remembered, wait, I have a huge mine that I could go to and collected a bunch of wood from there to be able to build more weapons and sticks and then a bunch more blocks of dolomite. I love me some pretty blocks. It rolled over to day 22 as I continued my way over in the mine shaft and this was gonna become a bit of a common occurrence. Sail over here, grab as much as my pockets can be filled with and then sail back with all of the loot. I passed another huge pocket of drowned and one of them this time had a trident and as much as I want a trident for this playthrough as it would be so on brand, I don't think dying 20% of the way through the video is a good idea. So I continued sailing all the way around in a circle since I knew how to get back home from the compass, searching for sugarcane. And there you go, I found some sitting on an island, which was just enough to get me started. In the morning, I raided another abandoned nether portal and found some okay stuff and kept attacking sunken ships for wood and high tier resources. As I made my way back to the base, I started growing a little bit of the sugarcane on a small scale farm and then started making, as I made my way back to the base, I started growing some more sugarcane on a small scale farm and then used the little bit of leather that I had to craft up a few bookcases for some mid tier enchants. Day 24, I built another portal and then, <sighs> Deep breaths. All right, we can do this. Let's go to the nether. I spawned in a relatively safe place, grabbing a little bit of quartz so I can do some upgrades to my redstone abilities and then some crimson wood, realizing that this is actually a really great place to get wood and sticks and resources. This is how I'm gonna be able to build almost anything. The problem with that is that the nether is super dangerous and that's even with just the vanilla mob. A ghast spawned and tried to bomb me from close by, but I was able to punch the fire ball back and got a high tier advancement. Pretty cool. I then spent some time collecting glowstone, even though I would literally never use this. This dust just went into a chest and sat there for the remainder of the 100 days. I didn't use it at all, never needed it. But as I was walking around, here's where I noticed that the nether was way more dangerous. There was this evil koala standing on the ceiling and a mosquito which started flying at me. Thankfully, I was able to pop it in one shot, but these things are super scary. You'll see the jump scare later, don't worry. But all of that scared me out of here, so I popped back to the overworld and then was immediately attacked by one of the murder koalas, which just sounds absolutely horrible. What the hell was that? It's like a murder koala. Oh my god, that is awful. I also captured both of the piglins in boats and started setting up a navy in this world as well. I got a I gotta keep on brand, everybody. Day 25, it was back to the nether, and now I know to look up, because those things drop from the ceiling and try to kill you. I took all of the gold and made two very rich piglins, but one of them was a child, so they just disappeared. I have no idea what happened. And then, here comes the jump scare with the mosquitoes. They latch onto your face, it's the worst thing ever. I used gravel to get myself down to a lower level because I saw a nether fortress in the distance. Setting up a ladder to get my way back, just in case I need to run, and then digging my way into one of the entrance points for this fortress. This is one of the earliest times I've found another fortress, so I feel undergeared for it, even though I'm in partial diamond right now. Using the nerd poles, though, to keep the wither skeletons away is a great way to stay alive. I was able to get my first blaze rod just from a random one that was out in one of the hallways before finding my way towards the blaze spawner. There's a piglin in there that I didn't want to risk shooting, so they just, they, they live in the floor now. 
but I was able to spend some time to get a dozen blaze rods and then quickly ran my way back and jumped back into the overworld. First nether trip was a pretty big success. I'd also grabbed some nether wort, so on day 27, I planted that so I could start getting into potion brewing and then started sailing around for another take at the mines, getting more scoria so I could continue decorating my platform the way I want. I got about three stacks of this stuff. I do not want to have to come back here for it anytime soon. I also grabbed all of the dirt that I could and made my way onto another little island while fighting some drowned, using the high ground to my advantage. But then got home and on day 28, used all of these scoria bricks to outline the top section of the base. I made a diamond rapier to upgrade my weapon game and then went sailing around trying to find some drowned with a trident. I found some more sugarcane and a nautilus shell, but no one with the weapon that I wanted. I kept raiding a combination of sunken ships and underground caverns, another one with a huge abandoned mine shaft through the center of it before returning home in the rain. Day 29, I actually spent all of this day on just a couple little inventory tweaks around the base. And the main thing I did was built a spawning platform about 30 or 40 blocks away from my main base to try to get a zombie villager to spawn so I can cure them and start working on an actual village for trading for high tier loot at the base. Kind of works. I got a creeper and a child who spawned on the base, but I was attacked by phantoms and a skeleton that had spawned somewhere I didn't plan. Thankfully, this time I had a bow, so I was able to fight the phantoms off, but I still called it a night before fighting the creeper and the kid. Day 30, I wanted to decorate the nether portal area a little bit and make those couple blocks of soul sand look a little more intentional instead of just sitting in the middle of the floor. I used a bunch of nether brick and some crying obsidian and a few shroom lights and the warped wood and some creeping vines, and I'm pretty happy with it. I also moved the enchanting table up to the top level to separate out the create stuff from the magic stuff. It kind of works. I then spent the whole night looking into more of the create mod to figure out what I needed to do and fought off all the mobs that had spawned on the platform. Day 31, I needed more andesite and more zinc, so I went down to the mines underneath my base. I then also found a zombie spawner not too far away, digging from behind the andesite. So this is great. I can set up a grinder by my base now. I went down a little further and found, you guessed it, another abandoned mine shaft. This one intersecting with a sunken ravine and a dry one just underneath my base. I was able to find my first bit of copper and some eh loot in the spawner, but it was overall a good day. All right, day 32, here's my thought. I need to make bookcases for level 30 enchants. And one of the places I know I can find books is the library in the stronghold. It should be really easy to get to because it's a completely flat world. So I crafted up some eyes of Ender and threw one. And threw one. And it didn't go. Uh-oh. Okay, so here's what happened. When I originally built the world and made the mod pack, I created a world that didn't have a biome in which a stronghold was actually allowed to spawn. I was panicking at this point because I was like 10 hours into the whole recording and I didn't want to lose everything. So I found a resource pack which would tweak the terrain generation and allow for strongholds and other structures to spawn. We're going to add a new rule. We're not allowed to go to any of the floating villages around the world. They're gonna spawn, there's no way to turn them off and strongholds on. It was kind of an all or nothing solution, but this is the way that we can actually, you know, beat the game. So I drug in the new mod and reloaded the world and went into my base and threw an ender pearl and this time it actually worked. Whew. Sailing along that direction, it was immediately clear that the terrain had changed with huge icebergs jutting out of the top of the ocean. Plus, this was cold water, so I was able to find kelp and a couple more drowned. One more with the trident who didn't give it up. And then a child in a full scuba suit because that, you know, of course that was gonna try to come kill me. When swimming down though, I ended up dropping into a cave that the water had forgotten about with several creepers and everything surrounding me. I almost got exploded. I boxed myself up and immediately dug straight back to the surface. Which as it continued into day 33, I was throwing pearls back and forth and digging down to try to find my way into the stronghold. Triangulating this was actually pretty difficult and swimming through all of these caves, I'd expect to find a stronghold. I found diamonds, but no stronghold. I was at this for a while, just continuously digging up and down and experimenting. I found a ravine somewhere along day 34, which you would think would have exposed everything, but it didn't. And then into day 35, I was just keeping going back and forth. At this point though, I had basically used up all of my eyes of ender 
and hadn't found any. I'm gonna have to craft a couple more to try to see if I can really nail it down. So I started heading back towards the base, planted all of the kelp so I'd have a ton more and slept for the day. Day 36 was a little bit more inventory management. And then I upgraded my bow and properly named it. Sean's crossbow has nothing on this thing. I went back to the nether to have my face sucked by bugs and collected a lot of gold, thinking I was gonna trade, but accidentally murdering a piglin. I didn't kill the second one though. While I grabbed a little bit of basalt, the trading happened in the background. No pearls. Day 37, I kept mining out on all the gold and kept throwing it to my one favorite piggy boy. A ghast shot a fireball at me here, which immediately doesn't seem important, but it will in a little while, I promise. But I ultimately struck out, heading back towards the base and killing everything over on the monster platform in the hopes of getting a zombie villager. I'd gotten a couple pearls from one of the last trades that I actually did. So I went back with just the two of them in hand and tried to find the stronghold again, using them to basically narrow it down to two blocks that it was really stopping over and then digging around and finding a cave with a bunch of mobs, but nothing when it comes to the stronghold. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's bugged. So I headed back over to the mine shaft to just get a couple resources and upgrades and a lot more string just because I want to be able to make wool for things and marked this specific entrance. Heading back to base to do a little bit of fishing and think about what I'm going to do next. Day 39, I need to capture a couple blazes to upgrade my create mod stuff. I made the blaze burners and then headed off to the nether to do a little bit more trading as well and found a, two pieces of ancient debris in a ghast fireball pit hole, which is awesome. I never found another piece, but two's nice. I threw a bunch of gold at my favorite piggy boy and then went over to the nether fortress to capture a few new blazes in their new homes slash working chambers. I struck out on pearls on the way back, so my favorite piggy boy just happened to have disappeared and that was basically it. Day 40 was all about the create mod. I made a mixer to be able to start making brass for some of the upgraded things that I'll need, but it wasn't spinning fast enough. So I worked my way through all of the integrated tutorials, which these things are amazing. Every mod should do this before finally figuring it out and getting the thing spinning. That took most of the day though, so I set up a grindstone first thing on day 41, which immediately broke the whole system. Whoops. I fixed it though, lit the brazier, and was able to get some brass coming out of this thing, which was a huge accomplishment. I then went and replanted all of the farms because this is gonna become automated really soon. On day the meaning of life, I was down in the caves underneath my main base, fighting around and just grabbing all of the resources that are around here. Coal was great, ender pearls from endermen, you know, with murder was also nice. And the skeletons were too busy fighting each other that they didn't really fight me. I eventually found the cave spider spawner and was able to torch it up. So the whole thing was actually a lot more safer. And then heard a very specific huh. There was a zombie villager down here, which was huge. I set up an area to corner it into and capture it into a boat and then killed the non-villager zombie and it just stared at me. My friend, we're gonna do amazing things together. Day 43, I set up a channel directly to the surface immediately on top of my new villager friend, going back for a potion of weakness and a golden apple to cure them. While they were doing that, I went around and did some strip mining, trying to find a couple more diamonds, no dice right away, and got the advancement heading back to my new villager friend and they're cured. I can start a village now. Day 44, it was time to establish that little water channel into a bubble column. When I got down there, there's a creeper trying to hitch a free ride up to the base and I wasn't having any of that. So after taking care of that, I tried getting the boat into it and I kind of pushed them into a wall, suffocating them a little bit and then kind of suffocated them a little bit on the way up. But I was eventually able to get them into a boat and over towards my platform. I was finally, finally not alone. Day 45, I converted my new villager friend into a farmer because that's the thing that I have the most of right now. And having a lot of food being auto harvested and collected by a villager means that they're going to breed a little bit more often. Now, all I really need to do is find this one a friend. I went back down to the mines, hoping that another zombie villager would spawn and found a couple diamonds so I could get off of this iron pick I'm using temporarily. Bought off a bunch of mobs, went back to craft that diamond pickaxe and used a power book that I had sitting in my chest to upgrade my better than a crossbow and combine my diamond pickaxes. So 
I had a much better one now. Day 46, I went in the opposite direction from where the original stronghold had spawned, about a thousand blocks out, and was just collecting on a few different ships and throwing pearls. It also had me by a village that I can't go to, remember the rules, and some ice spikes, so I'm starting to see a pattern of where these things spawn. I used the eyes and swum down through the caves, throwing a few in third person to make sure I don't miss them, finding myself attacked by several children at the same time. Yeah, 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 that, that's on, that checks out. As things rolled over to day 47, I was continuing to collect resources because I'm finding a lot of good stuff down here, but I'm not finding a stronghold until digging in behind this bit of lapis and I found some stone bricks. I had made my way into my goal. I was immediately attacked by a creeper and a bunch of mobs because there's not a lot of place for these things to spawn other than in here, so it was super crowded. And you know what one of them was? A zombie villager in full gold armor. So this one is definitely somebody I had to capture. Day 48, I continued exploring around the stronghold, fighting off a ton of mobs and eventually making my way into the library, which is what got me started on this whole quest for the stronghold in the first place. I loaded up my inventory with books and then continued clearing out the area, finding the portal and breaking the silverfish spawner somewhere around the time where it rolled over to day 49. It had all of one eye in it. So in putting all of mine in, I'm five short. The good news is though, I can just dig up and and I know exactly where I need to go and I need to head back to my base anyway. I need supplies to convert my zombie villager friend back into a normal villager. Day 50, we're at the halfway point of the overall project. I crafted up some weakness potions and I upgraded my pickaxe one more time with unbreaking. So that way I'd be able to keep it for longer, made a golden apple. Thankfully, my villager friend sells apples. And with everything on board, sailed back towards the stronghold, which takes about half the day at this point. I found a few seals floating around on the ice. The sounds were really cool, but they were sleeping, so I didn't want to bother them. Fought off a ton of mobs while I was underground and cured my zombie villager friend starting a new bubble column to get them towards the surface. I realized though, I didn't have any soul sand on me. I had forgot that. So I started getting some obsidian to make another portal to go get that. Day 51, my villager friend is cured. And, and they're a nitwit. Oh, great. I made the nether portal, stored off the things that I didn't need immediately and came out on a pretty different place. I was attacked by one of those angry cousins of the Striders. I love Striders, this thing, not the biggest fan of it. But thankfully, I was in a soul sand valley, so I grabbed all I could. I also mined up trying to see if I could get somewhere close towards the normal nether portal. I was actually quite low in the nether and just didn't find my way up to the surface, so I went back through the portal I got here and then started building my way back up. I used kelp to flesh out and fill out all of the water, so everything was a bubble column, and then tried to sail in. It didn't work the way I was expecting, but we did make it back to the surface and I took half a day sailing my friend back towards the base with them camping out in the back of my boat, pushing them up through the farm and introducing my two new best friends to each other. They don't seem to be talking though and sleep as far apart as physically possible. Um, I have some work to do to play matchmaker here. Day 53 though, my villagers were talking to each other and after some potatoes were thrown around, a baby popped out. My village is starting to grow. I don't need the monster spawning platform anymore, so I started tearing that down and making a fancier spot for my villagers to live on directly adjacent to the farm. I'm hoping that I could leave them access to this thing so they could constantly be getting food. I worked on that for pretty much the whole day into day 54 when I noticed that everybody was trying to run away and swim off of my platform. I can't believe they're doing this to me. I cure them out of zombiness and they're both just trying to leave me and abandon me. So I popped them back up into the farm and started building some walls around everything. Once again, finding them just running off in a random direction, floating their way towards oblivion. I captured all of them in boats and made the walls just a little bit higher, having to spend all of the day constantly herding cats. A creeper at one point just popped onto the platform. Somewhere is obviously not lit up. So I was able to get it into the water so it wouldn't do any damage and bow down. 
I started day 55 by recollecting all of my villagers and convincing them all to return to the platform so they didn't just constantly swim off in one direction. And that took about half the day. I eventually fenced in the entire farm area, hoping that that would prevent any further issues. I literally just spent all of this day trying to convince my villagers to not drown themselves. I don't know what's wrong with their AI in this world, but they don't like it here. Day 56, I really wanna go get a trident and I need a couple other things. I started sailing around finding villages that I couldn't visit, but eventually finding an island that actually had some grass and some seeds available on it. I can grow wheat now. I was also fighting off any drown I could find, so that way I could eventually get a trident. And I came across a floating jungle temple. Now, this is dangerous. It's not just a village, so I ventured inside, finding a couple diamonds, which was nice, just a little bit of loot. But I continued sailing through the new chunks, finding a little bit more grass and a little bit more seeds to be able to continue setting that up, and more drowned. This time, another one with a trident, who I used to kill most of their friends. I was able to get not less shells, but again, no battle fork. But as the sun set on day 57, I found the largest island I've found yet with sugarcane, sand, seeds, and a tree. I can actually get a sapling. I can actually grow trees now. Day 58, it was back to the base and continuing to convince my villagers to not be eaten by sharks as I started demolishing all of these additional platforms. I'm assuming somewhere I have left a gap where they're able to walk their way through. So these things just won't work. That led into day 58. 59, which it took two days to demolish all of this stuff, and I just built them a secondary circle that was completely fenced in on day 60. And I'm talking no way to access and get off of this thing at all. I don't want these people swimming to their death anymore. It did turn into an inadvertent mob farm though with a few spiders attacking me in the middle of the night as I was finishing everything up in the rain. Day 61, I finished the entire platform, fencing it all in so there's no way to get out of here. I was gonna build a house, but you know what? The open air accommodations sounds nice. I watched a fish drown itself inside of a composter. I have no idea how it even made it in there. And then created another bubble column to get all of my villager friends up into their forever home, accidentally suffocating a few in the floor, but thankfully none of them died. Day 62, with my village now established and secured and prevented from running away, it was time to get a little bit more involved in trading. The melons and pumpkins are going to the farmer who sells me suspicious stew that poisons me. I'm guessing I should be concerned. But I did a lot of the trading and then went down for some andesite and also harvested a lot of the kelp to get more into the create mod. I started building a platform underneath the raised platform that I had currently established, and I'm gonna move all of the water wheels to under here, which on the morning of day 63, I was continuing on that overall project, getting all of the water running so that I can build a system that can support a lot more stress and be able to control more machines and run them a little bit faster. I disassembled and removed all of the create things, doing all of the gear transitions to get me to the point where this was running at maximum speed. It took a little bit over a day though to get that running, so on day 64, I finally had the gears turning fast enough that the entire system was going to be up and functional. Watching this press run at full speed bonking out iron plates makes what I was using 20 days ago look downright slow. But I also started work on an upgrade to the farm system so it would automatically harvest everything that was planted inside, MCX style. A65, I was finally putting those saplings to use. I hadn't planted any of them that I had collected until just now, so now I had a near infinite source of wood so long as I continue to get saplings and I had a lot of bone meal to make this possible. I started setting up the radial farm auto harvester that I've done in MCX which oh man I wish more of you watched that series. Turning the whole system on the auto harvester started spinning and I started smiling. On day let's kill all the Jedi I finished up the auto harvesting machine using a hopper and an upper which is an upside down hopper from one of the mods and amazing to auto collect all of the potatoes that were harvested making a Fletcher so I could start trading sticks for emeralds and get more arrows. I went to the nether and found one of my friends tried to escape to hell instead. I got them back onto the platform. No escaping the platform. And then went back to the nether to trade more gold with my piglin friends so I could get a few more ender pearls so I could get a few more eyes of ender and start prepping for the end dragon fight. I actually want to kill it on day 69 because that would be nice. So on day 67 I was primarily just getting ready to do that. I also also know that clerics trade for enderpearls, so I tried leveling this one up immediately and got the wrong trade. That sucks. 
but really just spent all day on day 67 in the economy of my world. On day 68, I was two pearls short, but I figured if I headed over to the stronghold, maybe there'd be one in the chest or I could find an enderman and kill them to get it so I'd actually be able to do the dragon fight on the day I wanted to do it. I raided another jungle temple and found a few pieces of bamboo in this one. So that's a huge come up for me and returned to the stronghold chamber. Like I said, I am too short, but I'm hoping to find them around here. I also used my fortune pickaxe with the raw gold to be able to get just more supplies for trading, went to the nether and found an enderman and an ender pearl right away. So now I only have one to go. I kept digging around to try to find the surface and eventually broke through, finding my way to an entirely separate nether fortress from the one that I had actually raided earlier in this playthrough. Somewhere along the line, my helmet broke though, because as I was trying to trade with my piggy friends, they also tried to stab me in the face, which is just, that's just not cool, bro. They didn't give me pearls either, so I fought my way back through the nether fortress, hoping to just get a little bit closer, get lucky in the soul sand valley, and there was an enderman. I hunted them down, slayed them, and they dropped the pearl that I needed. I immediately portaled back to the overworld, went over to the room with the end portal in it, and lit it. I was ready to go right on time. Day 69, I jumped through the portal, and it was time to fight the Ender Dragon. I was in a really cool spawn here, secure on multiple sides, and actually pretty close to the surface. I dug my way up and started bowing on all of the crystals on top of all of the walls. I was very careful to not look at Endermen here, after they almost killed me in my Series 2 Hardcore World, and I was far more geared then than I am now. But after a relatively easy round of shooting all of the crystals, this bow is amazing, I was down underneath the dragon stabbing her in the bottom of her throat. That sounds so violent when you put it that way. Each shot from this diamond bow does a huge chunk of damage, so the fight was somewhat anticlimactic. After just two cycles of it flying around and then dropping down to its perch, just hovering there, I was able to kill it without too much of a hassle. One Enderman tried to ruin the day, but after all, the egg was mine. But you know what? I came here and I really want to leave with another trophy. You know, you know me, you know how I like to fly. So I threw a pearl into the end gateway and let's find an elytra. Turns out there was an end city just at the edge of my max render distance, 64 chunks cranking that thing all the way up to 11. The only way off of this platform though was to fall with slow fall, which was terrifying. But I grabbed some chorus fruit and in taking pretty much the whole day to bridge across gaps and navigate my way through, came to the end city. Shulkers was another good come up though. So on day 71, I was also trying to fight my way through to collect as many shulker boxes as possible. But what I wasn't expecting was to be attacked by this little blobby thing, which after one hit from me, collected all of my gear and cloned everything that I had. Oh God, this is terrifying. Turns out that's called a mini block. And if you ever hit it with a melee attack, it clones your gear. So I got the heck out of there as quickly as possible. I found a second end city a little bit later that day. And this one was a little bit bigger, but again, no ship. The good news is though, I was able to see one in the distance. So I crafted a shulker box to increase my carrying capacity for all of the loot that I've been finding at the top of these structures and grabbed some end stone, which allowed me to bridge over and then bridge up directly into a ship. I grabbed my wings and then the dragon head and soared my way back towards the goal. Around day 73, I found a huge virus, you know, the size of me, just standing by the platform. This totally isn't a metaphor for the last year or something. But I yeeted that thing with a vaccination arrow, throwing a pearl through the gateway and returning back to my just barely not underwater world. Day 74, I'm harvesting a lot of the wood and I did some more time to organize my inventory, throwing all of the veggies to my villager friends so they'd make more and bone mealing everything I could so that the auto harvester could do its work. Really, this was a pizza party in all but name. If I had made Minecraft pizza, I would have given it to the villagers too. I was happy to have defeated the dragon and have my wings. We were celebrating. But as I woke up on day 75, it was time to get back to work. 
really. I had 25 days left in this world, and there's a couple more things I want to do, the least of which is escape. I ended up stranded in this ocean world, and I don't want to stay here forever. I sailed around, raiding another abandoned portal, and collected a few treasure maps to get some high-tier loot, throwing some fish to my seal friends, and fighting off another drowned with a trident. And this time, this time, they dropped it. Finally, I had an ocean-themed weapon worthy of this playthrough. Day 76, I went back and bred more villagers because I need librarians so I can get mending, unbreaking, and loyalty, and riptide, and so many other enchantments to really finish this thing out. I spent the better part of the day just placing and breaking a lectern, trying to get the enchantment that I want. First priority, mending, which I eventually got for 22 emeralds. Not a bad sale. I then enchanted the trident, getting impaling four and loyalty three for free. So this was exactly what I needed once I combined the two. And then finally, I made the diamond crossbow. Okay, yes, Sean yeeted me in the head with this thing, so I want one too. I enchanted it and then hung up my existing longbow to rest on the main platform of the rig. This thing was going to carry me the rest of the way. Day 77, I'm sailing around and breaking down all of the other sunken ships that I can find to get different types of wood. I have saplings for oak, but I want different accents and tones because I'm going to start raising the ship and I need the full supplies to do it. I sailed back, found a location, and started rebuilding the ship block for block with a few improvements of my own on the surface. Day 78, the main goal for this day is to get this ship seaworthy and floating and probably not wet on the center. I'm winging this design, by the way. I'm trying to figure it out as I go, cannibalizing as much as I can from the old ship as far as the masts and every bit of planks just to get this ready to go. So on day 79, I could get the front of the mast put together and start actually setting up the body of this boat. I saw some sharks and or whales just doing a little bit of circular breakdancing, but again, day 79 was all boat work into day 80, which was harvesting all of the wood and the sticks and making a bunch of extra planks so I can actually build out and finish draining the center of the ship to make it dry using gravel on the lowest level and buckets to clear out all of the stairs. Day 81, we finally had an actual floating vessel so it's time to start building the upper deck. Since I have enough wood, I used logs for a lot of the edges just so it would look good and started raising up all the masts for sails. I flew around finding one more villager that had went off in a random direction, and as I was continuing to build the boat into the evening hours, I heard a her I hadn't heard before. A wandering trader had spawned on my platform. This was huge for my ability to find things, because they were selling both jungle and acacia saplings. I made as many sticks as possible and harvested all of the crops that I could afford to do to get as many emeralds from my villager friends as I could manage, accidentally clicking one of the beds and going to sleep. Thankfully, they didn't despawn, and on the morning of day 82, I collected all of the emeralds and traded for one of each sapling, and then got two free leads for no reason whatsoever. Nothing bad happened. Clearing out my oak trees to plant a few different things. I used my trident to take pot shots at a couple sharks that had been sailing around and harassing me for the entire playthrough, which just felt nice, and then once the jungle trees had grown, collected more jungle wood. And a banana. Yummy. Day 83. The ship is starting to come together, but I need to make it sails. And to make it sails, I need string and wool, which means it's back to the mine shaft to collect as much spider silk as I can manage. This crossbow is overpowered as heck, and using my sword to harvest up all of the spider webs that I could, I was getting to the point where the sails were in sight. I collected some more limestone and a few other blocks just so I could have building materials and not have to come back here again, and continued one-shotting creepers with the crossbow or fighting them off with the sword and blocking their explosions. Having an elytra to get to and from the mineshaft though, that made this trip so much more enjoyable. On day 85, with a shulker full of building blocks and other resources and enough wool to set up more than enough for the sails, I started enchanting some books with some of the extra experience levels and converted another one of my villager friends into an unbreaking villager. Only unbreaking two though, but it's probably good enough. On day 86, I collected out the acacia saplings and it was time to upgrade this platform to be better suited for growing trees and sugarcane. I moved the farms to both sides and then planted multiple trees in 
and the bamboo in the center, lowering the dirt to actually be part of the platform. This way it looks intentional, not just like a mess. On day 87, I built the crow's nest to the ship and also started constructing the sails from the wool that I had gathered. My original intent was to make it look like this was actually sailing and moving, so I built them all out and billowing, but it actually looks weird considering it's about to crash into the platform, so I'm gonna have to take those down. Instead, I went with a look where all the rigging was in place and the ship was preparing to sail out, which was true. I was gonna sail away from here a conqueror of the ocean. On day 88, I finished up all of the rigging and it honestly looks so much better like this. It's just, ah, it's perfect. And I started collecting all of the wood that I can and continued trading with my villager friends. I'm gonna stock the ship with all of these resources when I go to leave. On day 89, I continued trying to retrain my villagers to give me the magic that I wanted, trading in sticks, potatoes, and carrots for more emeralds so I could eventually sell the books when they did. I got an Unbreaking 3 villager and had forgotten in the moment that I had an Unbreaking 2 villager, so they just kind of fell through a hole on the platform. That was weird. But eventually traded up everything to grab the books so I could fully enchant my Elytra. On day 90, though, it was time to start stocking the ship. All of the gear and resources and valuables that I've collected over the last 100 days are going to go in this boat and leave with me. And that's all I'm going to take on to my next challenge. I eventually found a cat just running around on the platform. They got themselves stuck in a boat. So I did some fishing and saw my Unbreaking 2 villager just standing out in the water menacingly. I tamed the cat, threw in some more potatoes and carrots for my friends, and then went sailing around for one last pass of exploration around the ocean before leaving this world. And what I found was another underwater monument. While watching the orcas fight the guardians, I felt compelled to go into that battle myself and take on this monument. Have this be a very on theme final battle for this challenge. So I quickly sailed back home, did a flyby of another villager that had somehow escaped containment and slept the night going into day 91, crafting up all of the resources that I need. I made a diamond fishing rod so I could get better gear, enchanting it to try to get some puffer fish for water breathing potions. Because everybody seems to get very touchy when I use the doors. Sorry, bedrock players. And I figured doing it with potions on board would be a little bit of a mix up. I was eventually able to brew six of them, which should give me more than enough time to take on this monument, so I packed them up in a shulker box, grabbed a little bit of wood for doors, because not sorry bedrock players, and sailed on my way towards the monument, giving that villager just a little bit of a buzz on my way out. You want to see my patented way to attack an ocean monument from above and get the drop on the top guardian? Just watch this. Turns out I misshot it though, and wasn't actually over the monument, whoops, so I had to just swim in through the front door. With a trident though, you know, the thing that's actually designed for this kind of combat, this is a lot easier than I remember, and I was able to take down the first Elder Guardian in just three hits. So the biggest deal is navigating around this maze. The trident makes it great, and I was eventually able to find and immediately murder the second Elder Guardian as well. Eventually get into the front door where there are far too many guardians out there and far too many in the vault room which i was able to mine in a brief stint of being missed on the mining fatigue at one point i got freaked out by a random advancement that i had collected which scared the heck out of me and as it rolled over to day 94 i swam my way out and was then attacked by the orca who had just given me some kind of buff uh, they couldn't make up their minds. But with the monument clear, I swam my way over to the iceberg to get my elytra on and start flying and found an igloo just sitting here. There's two villagers down here, but again, we don't get free villagers, so I left them be in their cages. How nice of me. I soared back towards my platform, flung my trident in a random direction with no target in mind whatsoever, and ended the day there. Day 95, my ship needed a proper flag to sail under. So while I was also organizing and storing all the enchanted books off on the side, I made a loom and started crafting a banner worthy of the HMS Lagundo. Throwing it on the main sails and using some of the create mod stuff to mix up and make the ship look a little bit more alive. I also torched it so, you know, mobs wouldn't spawn on here. That's something that I hadn't done. And at one point a zombie tried to take over the boat. Day 86, it's the small details and decorations on the ship as I prepare this thing for its maiden voyage. Using a lot of the different modded blocks, I was 
was actually able to figure out that I could make chairs. I could have made a chair this whole time and sat down. I went deep into all of this, making tables and eventually a chair for the captain for this ship. I'm gonna sail in style. But all of that construction got me tired, so I went back to bed. Day 97, we are in the end game as I'm preparing to store off all of the resources from the monument and label the chests so that all of my gold, supplies, and valuables would be stored off and ready to go. I collected as much wood as possible in case I ended up running aground again that I could build another ship and a platform with saplings in storage as well so I would never run out of supplies. I found a buried treasure map that I hadn't yet explored as well well sitting in one of the chests and what better to keep on a pirate ship than a buried treasure map on day 98 i got trapped in the combine machine but don't worry i'm invincible and continued to trade resources with my villager friends crafting up a few books enchanting them and getting my elytra up to full quality i fished throughout a majority of the day because it just felt very on brand and stored off a lot of food in another barrel on the ship before seeing a zombie piglin having made their way through the portal and you know what i had to put this fork to use again but as the sun set on day 98 and rose on day 99, it was my final day to prepare for the journey. I spent a lot of the time for some reason placing and breaking gravel to get a lot of flint to trade with my archers and smelting up all of the gold I can carry and breaking down all of the logs that I could collect. Really, it was that last bit of cleaning your house before leaving, which is all I did today. And then on the morning of day one. I stored off all of the remaining supplies that I had collected, the valuables on my ship, and then went up to the top of the main mast and raised the primary sail, having it moving in the wind as the ship was about to take off. As I flew up and out on my platform, again buzzing by that villager who had just decided to leave randomly, I marveled over everything that I had created. The platform, the ship, all of the create technology, and my new village. I had started literally inside of a sunken ship on the bottom of the ocean, and now, after 100 days, I assumed my place at the captain's wheel of my boat, watched the sunset for the final time, and went to rest as I would move on to my next adventure. And that, my friends, is how I survived 100 days in an ocean-only world. If you enjoyed this video, if you really liked it, leave a like, leave a comment, it really helps me out. And you know what? I'm live on Twitch right now. <laughs> Come join me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Lagundo, where we're playing on the Hardcore Series 2 world, and I'm in the process of draining an ocean monument when this video goes live, so it's very on brand. It's very on theme. Come join our Discord server to be a part of an awesome community and come take part in everything else that we're working on. I got a bunch of big videos planned and a bunch of fun challenges, so I'm hoping you tune in. It's good to be back in the 100 Days series. I'm hoping to be doing more very, very soon. So that's it for me. Until next time, everybody, be good to each other, and I'll see you next time. After seeing how much you all loved the ocean, I figured I should do the exact opposite of that. And while I was sailing away in my boat, escaping the endless waters, something happened and pulled me, dropping me into the sand into an endless desert as far as the eye can see. And I survived, thrived, and conquered the world. And as I loaded into the world and spawned day one. Now, there's no trees, there's no water, there's no grass, just dead bushes and cactus and the occasional ruins that have a few of these cactus planks inside, which is my only source of wood right now. I started looking around over the sand in every direction, seeing what landmarks were available, and then I saw it right away. That monolith just kind of called to me. It spoke to the deepest parts of my brain, and something tells me that that had something to do with why I ended up in this desert. While I was watching it though, I didn't look where I was going and accidentally stepped on a rattlesnake, getting bitten and over time being reduced to a half a heart on day one. So this is starting just perfectly. I grabbed a few more cactus planks running as fast as I could to dodge some crocodiles that started chasing me over the desert sand, trying to make sure to give that obelisk a wide berth. I did not want to get too close. I figured out how to make cactus planks 
by turning the cactus into cactus needles, combining that with sticks to make planks. So I needed to punch down all of the cactus and I grabbed a pear, which I ate and reduced me from one heart to half a heart. So it's going even better. Using the one wooden pickaxe I had made from all of the cactus planks so far, I grabbed a little bit of cobblestone from around an exposed bit of lava and then dug down into a desert temple, finding some rudimentary loot, including my first diamond to get me started. So you can say day one was a bit of a mixed bag. I finished the night by crafting up a furnace and starting to cook a little bit of the sand into glass because I'm gonna need it. Day two, I ran out and found a few bits of seeds and fruit just kind of floating there next to some zombie flesh. Not gonna say no to any of that. Walking my way into an abandoned village. Now I'm still at half a heart, so any of these zombies could kill me in an instant, but one of them burned up in the lot and a few more were trapped inside of their houses. If I'm ever able to get the supplies I need, I can cure them all and make this a pretty great base. I looted all of the hay bales, grabbing a ton of bread and drank a lot of water out of the well, which I need both because of one of the mods that I installed in order to recover any health. So basically I spent all day setting up a little bit of a base of operations, planting a lot of cactus so I could start getting way towards a lot of planks through the much longer way of making it work as well as looting all of the hay bales all of the spider webs for string and all of the grass for dirt which is going to be at a premium day three i have a bed finally from one of the houses that still happened to contain one that didn't also contain a zombie and i was doing everything i could to get the last little bit of supplies from around this village i had some decent stuff from the temple and the village itself, but really not a lot to get started too well or to venture too far. So I went down into the mines to get a little bit of cobblestone to be able to just build better tools, being chased by creepers who helped me mine a little bit to upgrade all of my tools to stone. And having torches, I was able to run down and grab some copper and some iron, just really starting to get geared up and get the basic supplies that I needed to survive. I boxed myself up inside of a very small house, was attacked by very, very many husks and just ran away from the village. I, I'm, I have no shame there. Day four, I dug my way back into one of the towers and was attacked by more creepers right by the central square of town. I guess they found out it wasn't abandoned anymore. Harvesting all of my cactus to be able to make another round of planks with sticks. I basically spent all of this day just breaking as many of the cobwebs as possible and grabbing as many blocks as I could to be able to build a rudimentary starter house. But into day five, I realized that this place was just not in the best condition. So I grabbed everything I could, went out for Firstly, in search of sticks, and secondly, in search of just anything I could really use. I was jumped by this goblin trader who jump scares me several times throughout this video, and there's a lot of good trades here, but I don't have anything that they'd actually want. I found an abandoned nether portal with a little bit of decent loot, some flint is going to be extremely useful early game, and then walked finding a second one of these monoliths, which I guess are violets now? I made sure to give it a little bit of distance and then saw an actual active village just a few hundred blocks away and in walking in realized that this one wasn't a mirage. There was villagers here that I could trade with and people that I wasn't going to be spending this whole trip alone. After taking half of the video last time to get villagers, I was super excited to have them on day five. I walked a little bit further and saw an oasis with a cow and a sheep on it and a bunch of grass and two trees, which I was lucky enough to get one palm sapling out of, as well as a few blocks of wood from the forester and this double tower which would make for a pretty awesome starter base. But as I was standing on top of it, I realized that I wasn't the only thing to visit the village today, and um, yeah, it didn't really go well. The next morning, I realized about six of the villagers had succumbed to the plague, so I'm going to need to be making more of them very, very quickly. But you know what I need before that? Money! Turning a bunch of their own wheat and the wheat from the other village back into them to grab emeralds that I was then able to trade with the forester for a way to actually get wood for building. This was basically my loop, trade in wheat, steal their hay bales, turn it into more wheat, trade it in again, and get more logs. As I ventured out to see what was around the village, I walked past this crypt 
which broke its way up to the surface. Going down, I found a lot of zombies. And I mean a lot of zombies. I was finally able to make my way in and throw down a bunch of torches, getting some okay loot from the chest in the center, before realizing that that spawner was just the tip of the iceberg. There was six different staircases down to lower levels, all of which were pouring up zombies faster than I could damage them, and they all just ended up meeting me at the entrance to the thing, making an inadvertent mob farm. I spent basically all day there just getting additional levels before setting up a little bit of a bed and some private storage on the top floor of the tower. On day lucky number seven, I went over to the oasis and grabbed all of the dirt from over there to be able to set up an initial farm. First setting up for the trees and then making sure that I had enough and then setting up a row of crops to be able to plant a lot of the melon seeds that I had just gotten from the crypt, which I could both use as a food source and trade with my farmers if I got them up to their next level. Bone meal causes a lot of dead bushes to spawn, which is awesome for long-term sustainability because that's a ton of sticks. I saved an iron golem from one of the cacti in the middle of the village and healed them up, aren't I a nice person, before setting up a balcony on the top floor of my tower to overlook what has just now become my kingdom. Day eight, I ventured back over to the crypts and made my way down one of the staircases using a bucket of water to keep the zombies at bay so they wouldn't actually be able to make their way to me to nibble on my throat. Finding a ton of good loot down here and a ton of zombies. I spent over half an hour IRL, which meant this rolled over into day nine, where I found several high tier enchantment books, apples, some iron diamond tools, and so much else. And I barely scratched the surface of this place, but it always got overwhelming. And I was thankfully able to set myself up just at that entrance staircase, farming for levels again with my new diamond sword and more zombies that I could realistically count spawning faster than I could kill them. On the way back over to the village on day nine, I saw an elephant running around with an invisible wandering trader on top, which is great way to be able to get some saplings and I completely biffed it and forgot to do that for the entire 100 days. But when I went to go to bed, some disaster struck and I don't know what happened here and a few husks just made their way in and removed a few of the villagers from my village. Whoops. On day 10, I checked back in with the wandering trader to make sure I didn't really miss anything. I did. And that they had nothing of value. They absolutely did and I didn't notice. Before heading over to the trees, trying to get more saplings and using a bow and arrow to take out a few of these crocodiles from a distance, one of whom followed me to the center of the village, trapping me on a pole for the majority of the day until I was able to figure out how to craft a halberd, which gave me a little bit of an extended reach. So I was able to hit them and they weren't able to hit me. And then the zombies attacked. And I mean attacked in force. It took the entire night just running around critting them all to be able to make sure that they didn't get to any of my villagers. I'm a merciful ruler. Day 11, I continued bashing mobs around the village as well as looting more of the crypts, blocking myself in whenever things got too overwhelming to make sure that I wouldn't get dead. I came across this weird experiment chamber that had a brewing stand, a lot of soul sand, and some more good resources in the chests, which is pretty valuable. I still am not able to make my way down to the third basement level. There are far too many zombies there. But when I went back up, the world was overcast and cloudy, and there were tornadoes, which were attacking everything. And I do mean everything. Every single mob that's not a tornado gets attacked by these things and thrown up into the air. I did what I could to save the wandering traders and my villagers, but eventually had to just retreat back to my tower and hope for the best. And on day 12, uh, we lost some more people. As these things were throwing me around, I was reduced back down to half a heart. So I kind of just had to sit back and watch as my villagers were yeeted around and crashed into the ground at violent speeds. Once they were safe and sound, I boxed a few of them inside of their homes, sheltering in place until I could figure out how to make the living tornadoes go away, grabbing a bunch more wood and finishing up that balcony to overlook on the kingdom that I was now protecting. On day lucky number 13, I surveyed out around the village again, heading in a different direction and coming across this cool double ravine, which went all the way down to diamond level. I used the oldie bucket trick to make my way down and up, searching around for more diamonds, and all that happened is I got jump scared 
shared by another goblin trader. I found a lot of lapis and forgot to do the lapis trick. Don't worry, I'll remember later in the video. So I called it a wash and headed back towards the village, finding another elephant trader, and then tried to figure out if I could get leather from their elephant. Don't worry, I can't actually, so they survived. I spent the night harvesting up melons and crafting melons for trading, which I will use eventually, as well as sugarcane to be able to just make sugar and paper because who doesn't want more sugar cane? On day 14, I really need to not just be drinking random water that I'm finding everywhere. So I investigated the best way to make a water filtration system so I could get purified water. Turns out I need charcoal, which is easy enough to get, sand, which was really easy to get, and just a little bit of wood. So I was able to make that up and it runs off of charcoal and I get purified water bottles, which is a huge step up. I then took a little bit of the extra wood and made some stairs off of my tower towards the central area of town so I can more easily make my way in and a nice little retaining wall just so things are starting to come together. Day 15, I headed out in another direction with some better water in my pack. I was able to go a little bit further, finding another desert temple that inside had a golden apple and some diamond horse armor, both of which would be pretty useful later on the line. I grabbed a lot of iron for more tools as well as to be able to make an anvil, stopped by a ruined portal finding basically nothing inside, and then found another active village. This one with a temple and this very fancy house just outside of its city limits. The temple only had a few enchanted books of note in it, but the house had a ton in here in quality and decoration. Plus, a lot of water, a lot of grass, and a lot of wood. I slept there, and on day 16, cleared out a few of the random mobs that were standing around everywhere, refilled all of my water bottles, and found another wandering trader. Again, not really selling anything valuable. And while the elephants won't give leather, the llamas do. I stopped by the village, stole all of their buttons, and was once again attacked by those living tornadoes. And they also got hit by the zombie virus. So... I might just be an omen of bad luck. So I did what any brave hero would do and abandoned the village, running back to the one that I knew about and hid myself in my tower. On day 17, I banked all of the resources that I had collected thus far and traded a lot of the zombie flesh that I'd been getting from the crypt with my cleric to level them up and hopefully get good trade. And it's time to get started with the create mod. I can get leather by using this from a few different sources, including grinding down saddles and armors. So I made a grindstone and then figure out, oh yeah, I need to power this thing, making a little bit of a water wheel and setting up some rudimentary gears to be able to get the whole thing spinning. I threw in the diamond horse armor and okay, that requires the bigger thing. So without an idea on how to get any leather, I was kind of stuck in this moment. So I thought, why don't I head back to my first base, grab everything from the abandoned village, and then go back to the first monolith to try to ask it for some help or some guidance to see if it could point me to anything valuable. And, uh, well, you'll see. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. I was going to do a whole bit about, like, asking the monolith for guidance and all sorts of... <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, well, that's a little anticlimactic, but uh, uh, okay, let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> nice! I was able to drop down on top of the spawner, immediately torch it, grab all of the gold and all of the resources and a sick banner from one of the chests, and then made my way back up. Yo! <laughs> Thanks, Monolith! I got exactly what I needed! That's perfect! This is wonder- You're my favorite thing ever. Woohoo! Oh, there's a village there too. Oh my god, uh, yeah. All right, that wasn't how I was expecting it to go. But shortly after, I did find a desert temple that had multiple golden apples, multiple diamonds, and multiple other great things. I slept off at a random village before popping back out the next morning and stealing all of their hay bales. Then found they had something even more valuable. They have pigs. <laughs> they have... Did I bring my leads? I don't have my leads. I'm coming back for you. 
I am coming back from you, for you, and I am going to steal you. Techno's cousins, I'm coming to free you. On the way back, I crossed over what looks to be a gigantic spider nest, and <laughs> I'm not touching that thing, as well as a pillager outpost and a random llama who just happened to donate their leather to me. Back at the base, I ground up any saddles that I currently had in order to get a little bit more leather so I can craft some useful tools, put the banner on my shield to to make myself look that much more threatening and then continued building out on the wall to make the village look a little bit more worthy can you believe it's already day 20 and we're one fifth of the way through this whole video so far i started the day just by doing a little bit of wood gathering a little bit of resource collecting trading some emeralds for some lapis just to get my villager leveled up but i need string and wool to be able to craft a backpack so i can carry a lot more in my pocket so i headed back to that spider nest thinking that I would just break a bunch of cobwebs, but they had full blocks of wool in the middle of this thing. So you know I had to drop in and get it. There are a lot of other side paths, but I am not that brave. So I grabbed what I could, shoved it in my pockets, and then booked it back home before the end of the day. On day 21, I was finally able to craft a backpack, which gives me a whole secondary inventory of things that I could hold. Bundles should really work like this, to be honest. I did a little bit of trading and then worked to improve the tower even further, making it look just a little bit more Lagundo worthy and something that I would actually live in. Another wandering trader popped by, giving me a free emerald, which was pretty great. But other than that, I really didn't have anything of value other than their llamas of course, but I found another way to make leather, and that's through blood magic. Now, this is this is new for me, so I didn't know exactly how to make this thing work. I set up the blood altar and then was looking through all the recipes and was attacked by some tornadoes, just, you know, randomly getting distracted as you do, and then looked up the recipe for a sacrificial dagger. Yeah, you have to hurt yourself in order to charge up the blood altar. And I spent a decent chunk of day 23 doing this before realizing that with the food and water mods that I had installed, this was a really, really bad idea. And it took all day and I have no idea how much blood I actually put inside of that thing. And I was starting to get a little frustrated, so I thought, you know what, can I ride an elephant? And it turns out, no, you can't ride an elephant even if you tried but you can harness them up and keep them forever. I used the little bit of leather that those llamas had donated though to make my backpack medium, which was a ton more storage space. Day 24, I found a sheep in the sand ravine, just randomly, and got them leaded up as well, grabbing a little bit more iron and coal and just a bit of the resources that we needed. I found one of the desert temples that I had looted previously and grabbed all of the saddles that I had remembered I had left there, finding an unlooted one shortly after with a bunch more saddles and more diamonds. This is the primary way that I found diamonds for this entire let's play so far. I found another random village and spent the night stealing their hay bales and crashing there before the morning of day 25, when I realized that they had two cows and I wanted two cows and I had two leads. I bred them up and using the three leads that I had in my inventory, trekked those cows across the desert past the fancy house and all the way back to my base, making a little bit of a pen to keep them inside and having all of the cows I was there and now I have infinite leather. Literally day 25 is just the cow adventure, but you know what? It's a huge milestone for the world. Day 26, I took all of those saddles and ground them up into leather, which was enough to finally make a canteen, which can hold as much water as five bottles. This greatly increases my travel capability, as well as breeding the cows together. And then I did a little bit of trading and then prepped a bunch of torches to head over towards the crypt and thought, you know what? I should really enchant my stuff now. So I went over to the ruined nether portal to get just a few blocks of obsidian from there, as well as a book that I was able to craft from a random piece of leather that I had to make an enchanting table and finally get that down, looking at the first couple enchants on my gear. Now that I was all purple and shiny, I still had a few enchanted books that I had gotten from the crypt that I wanted to put to use. So I needed to search around to get a lot of iron to build an anvil, finding a patch of dirt, which would be awesome I could set up more farming land with it when 
Okay, I know everybody loves making a meme about me not paying attention, but that totally just snuck up on me. I cooked all of the iron and set up another row for melons and pumpkins to be grown, bashing all of the zombies that were coming across, tag teaming with my iron golem friend here. I was able to use a couple books to be able to increase my levels of protection on a few pieces of my gear, and then on day 28, it was down into the crypts to attempt to make my way down to the third basement level. I used a lot of one by one holes and walls and blocking up different tunnels to be able to secure my way through, eventually finding skeletons with iron swords that, if they had hit me one more time, would have taken me down to practically dead. On the lower levels, I started finding more and more diamonds, which I've still yet to mine a single diamond, and I think I found maybe a half a stack at this point. Bashing zombies over walls and using my patented bucket trick to hold back the horde. As it rolled over into day 29, I was in here for quite some time and very, very surrounded. There are a ton of spawners and a ton of pieces of loot in here, including more diamond tools. Now I basically have the full set. If I was going to be playing this world for a very long time, this thing would be better than the Octo Chunk with how many spawners are active inside of this space. I continued into day 30, finding more golden apples and more enchanted books, working my way through and finding even more diamonds as I started hitting the lowest basement floor of the entire facility. And the loot was just unreal, and I've cleared five out of the six staircases down to the lower levels, but I was out of water and it was storming again, which meant we were getting tornado attacks again. So it was time to head back to my village and do what I could to protect them from the storm and kill all of the tornadoes downtown before they completely eliminated my village and to do that it was time to upgrade my bow and i immediately put a few of the books from the crypt to work to make my armor and weapons that much more powerful but on the morning of day 31 it was just me and jimothy over here just standing out in the middle of nowhere and then a tornado attacked and uh jimothy was gone as well as basically everyone else in the entire village. In fact, at this point, the only one who had survived was the forester that I had trapped inside of their home. Luckily, I had another village just relatively close by that I could potentially go and say hello to. Unluckily, I didn't want to have to come all this way every time I wanted to do trading. So on day 32, I was out in search for a lava pool. I found my way back over to the fancy house, grabbing a few of the supplies that were hidden underneath hay bales and behind cobwebs, yoinking all of the books from the upper floor to immediately increase the level of enchants that I could actually do back at base. I found a lava pool and committed every speedrunner's worst nightmare, grabbing enough obsidian for two portals, so I'd be able to set up a little bit of a nether highway to be able to get villagers from one place to another. It's time to capture, uh, kid, kidnap, uh, relocate a few villagers back to my home base. Coming through the portal and holding shift, I was very glad that I did, because I spawned right on a cliff over an ocean of lava, as seems to be tradition for me. I was looking out at the landscape and I was like, yep, that's the nether. Before writing down the coordinates, heading back towards my village, before establishing a second nether portal on this side. However, before I was able to write everything down, I was attacked by a bunch of piglins, forgetting to wear their colors when coming onto their home turf. Turns out the nether has goblin traders as well, and I very quickly grabbed a few pieces of nether wart from them, which would come in extremely handy, before writing down the coordinates and coming up with a plan. But I wanted some extra luck, so... I took one of the cows and just um, just walked them over to the monolith and provided a little bit of a, an offering, a sacrifice, anything to appease it so that potentially this next little bit would go my way. You'll be fine, cow. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll be totally okay. Just don't think about it too hard. On day 34, I walked back over to the first of the two nether portals that I had created because it was lower in the nether and it's far easier to dig up than it is to dig down. Knowing where my goal and where my start were, I just started chewing a tunnel through trying to get from one portal to the other and I was successfully able to do so. 
When I was finally able to talk to that goblin on the other side, I traded in a little bit of netherrack just to get more emeralds because capitalism is king for legal reasons. That is a joke. For setting up a little area in the new village to entice a few of the villagers to make their way over. I grabbed the working stations and a bed, waited until night, and then replanted the bed directly in front of the portal, goading one of the villagers to make their way in and then blocking them in so they couldn't really go anywhere. Once I broke the bed, they popped through the portal. And then once I headed into the nether, it was a quick trip through the tunnel, leading a few villagers that had made their way through before a gas came and blasted everything in and started to really put everything at risk. I was able to take it down and then successfully re-encourage my villagers to stay within the area that I had designated for them, pushing them all the way through the portal and then plopping down some beds so that they would reassign themselves into my village instead of where their home was. Repopulation complete. On the morning of day 35, I was trading with my villagers through the little safety hole in the side of their home, cooking up all of the potatoes just to get a little bit more set up. I accidentally let one of the villagers out and they just walked away into the desert, just off in a random direction. So I thought, you know what? What if I make my way all the way back to the village and break all of the potential workstations so that they'd stop trying to pathfind to these chunks instead? And while that was great in theory, and it allowed me to capture a few more villagers and transfer them back over towards the actual primary village, it did nothing for the one who was just randomly wandering in the desert. They stayed there out in the sands for the remainder of this 100 days. But I transferred these few villagers over. It took literally all day, but finally the village was a little more popular. Oh no, the tornadoes are back. On day 37, one of my new villagers was starting to feel the call of the monolith and was being pulled towards it. Now, I don't like being this close to it. I feel this weird crackling in the air, but the villagers seemed relatively unaffected. Even when I tried to trap them in a hole, they basically just kept escaping my sand pit traps. They're a little too smart. I was able to use barrels to lure them back towards the village and get them reassociated with a new role before trapping them inside of a house so they couldn't actually go anywhere. Now, three villagers is not going to be enough, so I started throwing a bunch of bread into that house, knowing that they'll eventually make more if I just make sure they're well fed. On day 38, I thought, you know what? It's worth the risk. Let's try. Let's see if they'll stay in town now. Nope. Nope, they do not stay in town right now. But I cannot live on just stolen hay bales alone. It's time to actually start growing some crops to have an actual sustainable, renewable food source for both the villagers and for myself. I set up a 9x9 grid, planting carrots and bone mealing the heck out of them to be able to get as many as possible. Plopped down the books that I had stolen from that big house with a little bit of wood from around here, and then just farmed throughout the remainder of the day. On day 39, it was really just making sure everybody felt the love. Wheat for the cows, bread for the villagers, trees for me. So everybody had exactly what they wanted. I kept working on the tower, finishing up the last two corner posts and making it fully oak. So everything was looking pretty good. Before doing a little bit more trading with my cleric villager, and then hold up, wait a minute, do you see that? I I didn't do anything wrong to this person and they increased the rates on me they're charging me more they're charging me interest now is this because i kidnapped you from your home village and set you to work here in this village with no recourse or attempt or way to ever return home to your family hmm i'm on to you on day 40 it was time to head back into the nether and when i went there i found another villager and another iron golem i thought you know what they're feeling lonely i should pull them back over to the overworld and then they didn't have a job so i made sure that they had that and then i set up all the trades and then a vein goblin came through so i traded some carrots with them leading into day 41 where i was just spending all of my time making sure that I can do a lot of farming and trading to get a little more emeralds and make sure everybody's well fed, you know. And then I went to the nether and there was a magma cream there. And, and then I thought, you know what? Oh, I could go back to the overworld and use that magma cream to brew up some potions of fire resistance. And no, I'm not stalling. What are you talking about? All right, I totally was. I'm always nervous about the nether, especially with the mods that I install in these run-throughs. But I went through and was finally looking around, finding 
That's a fortress. Well, now that I know where a fortress is, on day 42, I started staircasing my way down and across and bridging over all of the lava, mining up a little bit of quartz for experience and just to have some of that in the inventory, before popping in and looking around and immediately walking directly into a blaze spawner. The first few kills were pretty hard because they were setting me on fire a lot, but once I had a single blaze rod, I had brought the potions and the brewing stand and everything else that I needed and I was able to brew up some fire resist potions which then made the rest of the blaze rod gathering trivially easy. Coming prepared makes this pretty simple. I spent all day doing that and then on day 43 was basically walking around trying to find other resources that I could get in the nether. I grabbed some more nether wart both from a garden and from a chest finding more saddles so I could get more leather and then realized I was running out of food. So I had to eat a golden apple and some cookies, grabbing a little bit of glowstone so I could use that for potions and I actually used that this time around before being attacked by ghasts and nervously running across the bridge hoping that they didn't just blow it out from underneath my feet. A little bit of capitalism and then back through the portal finding a new zombie villager who has just been walking around so I can increase the size of my village. I trapped them inside one of the blacksmiths and the golem was super helpful in just kind of killing them that sucked the next morning I figured out that was my cleric that had gotten killed unfortunately and I was not having the best luck in keeping my villagers alive so instead of focusing on them I focused on myself a little bit just enhancing the tower and doing another set of inventory management montage which I know is everybody's favorite part of all of these videos. But on day 44, it's time to make sure the village is actually populated. And there have been more villager deaths in this video than I care to admit. I did a little bit of trading with all of them and opened it up, hoping that they wouldn't run away. And they actually stuck around this time while I took care of the cows. But one of the cows tried to escape. Yeah, I don't know what's happening there, but now at least my village seems moderately secure and new villagers are being born, so we can keep working on getting this all set up. I set up I set up a lectern so that the new villager would become a librarian and I could start getting into enchanting and spent the night capturing endermen in boats and stabbing them repeatedly in the face and then finding some new leather just sitting around everywhere. Day 45, it's more pumpkins getting my first villager up to master tier so I can get golden carrots if I'm willing to invest the money in them. Right now bread is cheaper. Can't grind up the leather horse armor despite thinking that I could so it's still just relying on saddles and my cows for leather right now. I did use the grindstone to remove the enchants from a few of the books that I was likely not going to use, mainly ones related to water because there is no water in this world, to build up a few more bookcases and increase my enchanting level, throwing any food that I have left over on the farmers. And on day 46, once that villager had fully grown up, it was time to spend time with them to teach them the proper magics. I was breaking and replacing this lectern for the entire day and got absolutely nothing worthwhile. Curse of Binding, yeah, that would be great. I buried them in a hole so they could think about it overnight and repeated the process the next day until I eventually got Sharpness 5, which wasn't exactly what I was hoping for, but is still a really good enchantment to have. I locked in their trades and then spent the rest of the day just trying to raise enough emeralds and making a new sword that I could get it enchanted and then set it up with a Sharpness 5 book on top of it. Day 48, I'm still farming, but just because I have that one sword doesn't mean I don't want to look into some other weapons. A giant flanged mace is an option, and you know what? I just kind of want to bash things with a giant flanged mace. So I spent some time collecting more endermen in boats throughout the remainder of the day because I want to start getting ready for endgame. I found this spider which was thrown on its back, and I'm just going to leave this here because I laughed at this, and you all should get to laugh at it too before walking into another random village that I had found in my exploration, crashing here and on day 49, looking around and once again stealing all of their hay bales. I am the desert bandit. But it turns out they had a monolith as well, and the just the feeling I get around these things, it really kind of creeps me out. I don't like it. I walked around checking out a few of the other desert landmarks, including this well, just grabbing a few of the slabs and finding some free money and emeralds downstairs. Coming into another village that was actually being protected by its iron golem. I have no idea what the ones back at my base are doing wrong. They had a desert temple also right at the end of their village. And as I went to walk up, it exploded. 
That's super unfortunate. Day 50, I completed my raiding runs, finding another abandoned nether portal with just a couple things in its chest. When I saw these fellas with their crossbows loaded and pointed right at me. Now, I am not ready for a raid quite yet, so I can't kill the pillager captain by my own hand. Instead, the fire will do. But I was able to eliminate this raiding party of bandits. I mean, who would go around to villages stealing stuff? Unforgivable. For finding another oasis with a second sheep. And now that I have two, this is huge. I got them back to the base and I can have infinite sheep if only I could get some grass. Day 51, I was doing research on how I could make grass grow in the middle of the desert. The create mod looked promising, infusing water into a dirt block in order to make grass, but that relied on one thing that I wasn't gonna find, kelp. And there is no kelp anywhere in this entire world. My only hope is a wandering trader, and I don't think they're gonna trade that to me. Uh, my luck is not that good. So instead, silk touch is likely the way to go. I made a ton of bread and threw it to all of my villagers and just waited for more to be born. Taking the time to practice my boat clutching and I am not dream. After that, I basically just spent the whole night torching around the village so fewer things would be spawning and killing my villagers so that the babies actually had a somewhat decent chance of survival. On day 52, I found a shaft that dropped all the way back down down to diamond level, which made me think I could actually, you know, mine some diamonds at some point in time in this entire playthrough. I'm over halfway through, I'm almost in full diamond tools, and I haven't broken a single diamond or block yet. As I was running around, I saw the most terrifying thing I've seen in all of Minecraft to date, and immediately pillared out thinking, I do not have enough arrows to fight this thing, running as fast as I could, and I have no shame in saying that I stood in the middle of town, bounced in a circle, and waited for that thing to despawn. But I knew I would need arrows, which meant it was time to make a Fletcher for the village. And on day 53, while fighting the husks that were attacking in the morning, I made a big mistake. I had accidentally bopped the iron golem while fighting the zombies, and they almost one-shot me down to just three hearts. Once that was handled, I went over to my new Fletcher, and thankfully, they were selling arrows right off the bat. So I don't need to worry about finding flint and I don't have any chickens in this world. I went back down into the mines and double checked that that little evil millipede had disappeared and instead was surrounded by a thousand creepers, which are much easier to manage. I know how they work. I found some lapis and did the trick to finally break my first diamond ore, finding a lot more shortly after that. As I was mining down at one point, I accidentally dug through a piece of bedrock yeah, that's a sentence that you hear now, and found myself in another dimension, surrounded by deep slate on all sides, creepy sounds, and skulk growing as far as the eye could see. This place was extremely unsettling, and this is the deep dark, or at least a version of it that is available in this mod pack. The skulk blocks would randomly trigger and trap, and I don't know if they would damage me or anything else, but I'm not giving them the opportunity to even try. I finally broke down into an actual chamber and found skulked zombies and multiple wardens. These things move fast and I do not even want to see how hard they hit. If this is anything of what 118 is going to look like, this is absolutely terrifying. I saw enough, so I ran immediately back up my tunnel, broke the block that was above me, popped it back into the tunnel that led me to the overworld, made my way back up to the surface, having spent three days on this mining expedition and banked all of the skulk and random stuff that just kind of felt gross. Day 56, I was teaching more magic. This isn't Hogwarts though, so they're not exactly getting what they want that quickly. So I had to spend some time also doing some melons and working on the cows. I'm really tr gunning for mending right now, just so I could finally get that book and be just have my gear last a little bit longer and I am not having good luck because in today 57 I was basically doing the exact same thing. I made a diamond mace and a diamond chest plate to better increase my armor and my offensive capabilities, smelting up all the gold and cooking a decent bit of food to be able to get me through these days. I am starting to get pretty well geared. Day 58, I'm a few diamonds short to complete my set of armor and tools. I want multiple pickaxes for both fortune and silk touch. 
and I saw some diamonds down in the deep dark. So I mined my way down, broke my way in, and found myself in another tunnel. There's a bunch of diamonds embedded in the walls down here, and I was able to get everything that I needed and more. But before I got greedy, I popped back into the overworld and then went exploring in a different direction in the overworld caves, where those creepy sounds weren't constantly in my ear. I found more diamonds in a ravine, and then in setting my way across, I found some unlit torches just sitting in one of the tunnels, leading to a giant set of double doors, which just looks super ominous. The place was trapped and aggressive and had mobs spawning from the spawners, even with light supposedly disabling it. But then the spawner would automatically break itself. I fought my way through several rooms of this little mini stronghold, in a sense. It looked abandoned and worn and weathered before eventually getting to the loot with an amazing bow on it, which just, that's such a huge upgrade, as well as a good old fashioned regular skeleton spawner. My shield broke, so it was time to finally upgrade to an iron shield, and I went in and was able to bash everything and mine up all the bone blocks, digging a shaft directly to the surface. Now I basically have an infinite source of bone meal, which means I have infinite everything. Day 60, we're almost two thirds of the way through this entire video, and I spent it basically farming. I still basically have to rely on plants for all of my emerald generation so that I could go and get any books or do any purchases. But it's hard to know what I can actually trade if I'm not keeping track of everything. So between all of my supply runs, I basically spent the last 15 minutes, 10 minutes of the day, just organizing all of my inventory. On day 61, I saw both fortune, but also efficiency four in the enchanting table. And I figured instead of going for the certain thing, let's risk it and go big. I spent a little bit of time trading with all of my villagers and breeding up the cows just to get myself up to the proper level and basically worked on all of the houses to make them a little bit safer. And then the next day I went back over to the nether, finding several more iron golems that I just kind of disposed of before being jumped by two ghast right outside of the portal and this was a bit of a problem i was able to bow the first one down when i was attacked by a murder koala walking along the ceiling and then jump scared by the ghast right behind me only a few hearts down i dropped my bow in a panic losing it in the fire and then being reduced to just two hearts. I ran through the portal, boxed myself up, recovered, and realized that that awesome bow that I had just gotten like two days prior and shot all of twice was now completely gone. I spent the rest of the day mining up quartz just to get myself up to level 30 so I can enchant my diamond pickaxe, and then found a piglin and threw a bunch of gold at them, making them the wealthiest piggy on this side of the block, and tried to do a little bit of trading looking for some resources that I could really use. Got a lot of boots and some blackstone, but nothing too awesome. I returned home and had a vain goblin trader actually follow me, and they wanted carrots for emeralds, one for one. So you bet your butt I spent all day making a ton of carrots and then just threw them into their face. I started looking up other ways to make diamonds and those crushing wheels that I never get to in create but are always recommended me were really tempting. But I had quite a few already so after doing another day of capitalism I made myself another diamond strengthened longbow. This thing takes a little bit longer to draw but it hits like a truck. On day the best console ever I enchanted my pickaxe and was able to get silk touch which means I'm gonna be able to get dirt. I spent some time also enchanting my bow and then using my new pickaxe to break melons far more efficiently, grab a bunch of clay pots and grass from over by the fancy house, and then ran my way back throughout basically taking the whole day to make the whole trip. Now that I had grass, I could actually breed my sheep up and get infinite wool because they could actually regain their coats. But I was so far out so late in the day that the sun set and I was too far away from any beds and had to fight a bunch of mobs all the way home to make my way back to safety. It was chaotic at some point, but I don't think I was ever really at risk of dying. I was pretty well equipped in diamond armor and protection enchantments. I found my way into another random village. I got a little turned around in the desert at one point, looting their blacksmith, finding a ton of diamonds and some other weapons, and the zombie virus trapped inside of one of their houses. Oh well, they're doomed. Their local ruined nether portal didn't really have much to speak of, but their desert temple had quite a few golden apples and a lot of bones that are gonna come in handy. They also had a crypt full of zombies, and I knew I didn't have the time to clear this one fully, 
so I just looted the first floor, torching up as much as I could and bopping everything for a little bit of free experience and getting myself back up to level 30 so I could do more max here enchanter once I returned home. I found yet another desert temple that had a lot of iron and some decent mid-tier resources. More golden apples is always nice. And on day kill all the Jedi, I remember the sand is coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. But I was able to find my way back to the village, building up a little bit of a potato reserve, considering I didn't really have any of those up to this point, banking all of the saddles and weapons and other items that I had collected, and spending the day just decompressing back in the village. Day 67, I wanted to avoid more golems and villagers making their way into into the portal and getting stuck in hell so i set up just a little bit of a gateway to block that off taking full advantage of a silk touch tool to be able to trade melons much more efficiently or bread for all the villagers meant new people that i was going to be able to trade with the following day and i used the forester to get a bunch of different woods leveling them up to master tier as well finding some diamond tools that are good but not great i took one roll at a level 30 enchant and got only unbreaking bit of a bummer trading a lot of emeralds for a lot of bows that i would just never use to level up the fletcher and get myself back up to level 30 grabbing my first protection 4 book from one of my other librarians but instead of hitting max enchants i realized i needed to repair my boots with feather falling because i do not want to die to gravity the next day it was time to set up the sheep pen and i set up a little bit of grass between all of the palm trees that i wasn't really harvesting right now making sure that they had everything that they needed and breeding them up so that way we would have more wool and you know what at this point i think it's time to find the stronghold i've spent over two-thirds of this world now and it's time to go out and search i found another wandering trader that was trying to sell me cactus in a desert not the best economic choice following the eyes of ender off in a direction that i hadn't ventured out at all i came across another desert temple that had some okay loot in it but nothing really too amazing to speak of and then was tag teamed by a creeper and an enderman just watch That was honestly way too close, and that set the tone for this trip. It was gonna be a tough one. On day haha -ha, funny number, I ran into another village stealing a little bit of their gold, another temple grabbing basically just the gunpowder, and spent almost the entire day just wandering off in the desert going as far as I could. At one point, the eyes started pointing down and I dug in, and yeah, these strongholds are a lot cooler than the vanilla ones. I dug into a gigantic library infested with spiders and was able to deactivate the spawner, running through to all of the crypts, finding bone meal and prison cells and a ton of resources and loot that would really just make things so awesome. There was diamonds sitting around here in some of the graves that was totally not a bad thing that I was desecrating, right? And then, oh wait, protection for diamond chest plates just sitting out in the open? Thank you. I also realized that I had done this entire trip without pants on, so I finally popped those on. Spending over a full day and fully filling my large backpack and my pockets with more loot than I could possibly carry. These strongholds are something else. I did eventually find the end portal itself, breaking the silverfish spawner and realizing I was going to be one eye short because there was no eyes in this portal. Digging my way up to the surface and wouldn't you know it, the tornadoes were attacking. I quickly headed to sleep so I didn't have to deal with other mobs and on day 71 started building a little bit of a forward outpost at this side of the location, storing all of the inventory that I didn't need to carry with me 100% of the time and building a nice little arch and some chest storage and a little place to camp out on this side of the trek to the stronghold. I compressed a lot of my resources into blocks so i had a better idea of how much i could carry and set a water elevator down into the stronghold doing some more looting and just finding everything that i could there was a ton of stuff in here and i mean a ton i could probably spend 20 days just looting the stronghold i barely scratched the surface of this thing but as the tornadoes continued to attack in the night and into day 72 i was primarily targeting endermen to get the last few pearls for the last few eyes that i needed when i came across another village on this side of the desert and a ruined portal i looted the village for anything that was valuable and checked out their desert temple basically just finding a lot of gold before sleeping here and then on day 73 putting the effort into completing the nether portal and popping over to the nether now i had waypoints on all of my other portals so it was really easy to just know which wall to dig through and 
work on a two by one tunnel getting myself from point a to point b i had a bridge over lava at some points but it really was just a matter of doing the work to find my way back to the village on day 73 where i banked a lot of the resources that i had and then just started preparing a care package for the end i set a lot of firework rockets in my inventory once i found an elytra i wanted to be able to fly everywhere grabbed a bunch of blocks for bridging between the end islands and you could tell i was going into this fight confident the dragon was going to fall i filled up all of my arrows ran back through the nether towards the stronghold portal grabbed a few more sugar cane just for some additional paper down into the stronghold threw in the eye and jumped through into the end it was time for a dragon fight. I immediately set up some Enderman safety huts before looking at any of them this time, so that way I wouldn't just get bopped into oblivion unexpectedly. And with a longbow and a pretty good shot that I had been training for some time, it was quick to eliminate all of the crystals. The only problem I had was not only Endermen were spawning in this world, the farmer zombies followed me to this dimension as well. And the dragon herself was yeeting me up into the sky, which was my main source of taking damage. But a dragon fight, if you've seen it once, you have seen it many, many times. The, the difference is in the details. I was shooting her as much as possible when she perched. I would just teleport behind her with an ender pearl and just stab her in the throat repeatedly. Or I guess bash her in the throat since I'm using a mace. That's bludgeoning damage, right? But at one point she threw me up so high it was going to be instant death because I didn't have a water bucket in my inventory. So I landed on one of the towers, saving myself from going curse splat, but having to block zigzag my way back down to the surface in order to actually engage in any combat. I got a few pearls in my inventory from that point forward, just to make things easier. And from then the battle was sold with a trusty diamond longbow doing additional damage on top of being enchanted. This fight was over in under two days, sniping her out from the middle of the sky, collecting all of the experience and grabbing the dragon egg, heading back to home. I respawned back in the village of Victor, immediately wanting to put the dragon egg on display. I built up a little pedestal just to keep it on, thinking, you know what, this is great. I should remind the villagers just how awesome I am. Refilled on all of my arrows because even though I had this egg, I was not done with the end right now. I was AFK for a little bit, just Googling something quick. I forget what it was when I was attacked by a tornado in the middle of the village, throwing me around, but I'm not scared of these storms anymore. I've killed gods. I did a quick jaunt back through the nether, down into the stronghold, and back into the end. It's time to go get our wings. Now I've modded the end that it looks almost unrecognizable from the barren landscape that you would normally see in vanilla Minecraft. There's a ton of different biomes and creatures and also apparently giant virophages that are just flying around trying to infect everyone. Social distancing, please. I found my first end city and parkoured my way through it using the levitation to get up to the top tier loot, but unfortunately this one didn't have a ship. But that doesn't mean I wasn't here for multiple things. The gear at the top was definitely nice and shulker boxes would definitely come in handy at one point in time i ended up pearled inside of a wall which was a little strange all of the loot at the top was honestly pretty great there was a bunch of the different spartan weapons with different enchantments and allowed me to have more versatile toolkit depending on what combat i was involved in but with no ship i went from the first end city to the second using ender pearls to teleport across some of the gaps something that i normally never do and then at one point i was just surrounded by a ton of of farmers at every angle in the water. This is when things started to get weird. One of the viruses tried to get me as well, but thankfully they're not a waterborne pathogen, just like the Enderman who can't bot me as long as I'm sitting in one of these fountains. But as I started to run out of water, good water, and I was out of arrows, it was time to turn around and head back home, wingless only for now. On day 80, I was storing all of the loot that I had collected from all of the different end cities, and with an almost full backpack again, that took a full day of inventory management montaging. I spent some time naming my pickaxes so I would knew which one is silk touch and which one is the money maker and was re-upping with all of my villagers and all of the supplies trying to get another round of librarians born so I could learn new magical spells when I was filtering my water and I noticed something had changed. Wait. 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 <laughs> Wait. This was not like this before. This, this was... Mm, that's gonna this was not like this before 
Oh, great, and there's an eclipse. Wonderful. Um, oh, mighty obelisk, you have accepted my offering? Um, hmm, I don't know how close I should get to this thing. <laughs> that, that was made out of something else before I killed the dragon, right? Right, that was not, that was not this. Would you shut up? <laughs> Thank you. Mm, I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned. The obelisk is now officially freaking me out. But even if I was freaked out, work had to continue. And on day 81, I enchanted my axe, hoping for silk touch, but just getting efficiency. Harvesting all of the crops for more trading with the villagers, and then started building myself up a little bit of a final resting place for when this challenge would be complete. It's desert theme, so I'm gonna go with a lot of sandstone and make a pyramid. But I wanna make sure that I'm using smooth sandstone so it looks awesome. And on day 82, I built up a bit of a pyramid and it looks uh, looks really dinky. As my new librarians were finally growing up, the first one gave me mending on the first try, which was awesome because some of my tools were starting to run on the low side. I quickly grabbed the first mending book, locking that trade in and setting my chest plate to be the first thing that would never ever break on. Me. As I kept just trying to figure out what was going on with the monolith, I was continuing to build out on the pyramid and realized I didn't like the current design. So I set up a few spires around it and set up a bit of a vertical wall, kind of similar to regular vanilla Minecraft pyramids basically building my version at about the same scale. On day 83, that was the main thing that I was working on, using a combination of smooth and regular sandstone to have a lot of texture in the walls, even though I don't have a lot of space to work with. Once I had actually put it all together, it was starting to look good, but I wanted to mix in some red sandstone as well. Thankfully, you can grind up granite to make red sand, which you can then craft into red sandstone. So I went down into the mines, harvesting up a bunch of limestone and a bunch of granite. Just some beautiful decorative blocks all together. But this pyramid was gonna look pretty empty on the treasure side of things. So I thought, let's go back down into the deep dark where I can get a lot of diamonds very quickly. Now, I just wanna say this in general. There are two problems that I have with the deep dark as it's implemented in this mod. First off, those sound effects that are constantly playing in the background are ridiculously creepy and had me on edge for the entire time that I was down here. And secondly, either I had the absolute worst luck or the diamond ore that are in the deep dark are not fortunable, which is very not fortunate for me who wanted a ton of diamonds. But I spent several days down here, working my way through all of the tunnels, collecting any diamond ore that I could see, which was a lot, mind you, and eventually finding my way into another large cave system. Down here, there was a ton of these purple candles, which despite being not lit, were still glowing, creepy, as well as these awesome blue crystals, which glue all the time, which just those were cool. I wanted all of those right away. I went and I harvested as much diamonds as possible to I had basically a stack of them sitting in my inventory before marking my territory and heading back up to the overworld, being surrounded by alligators, but thankfully able to juke them pretty quickly. Day 87, I started grinding up all the granite into red sand so I could integrate that color scheme into the base as well, and then replaced all of these smooth sandstone towers with limestone, using all of the different textures available through the grindstone to come up with something that just looked really unique. I placed four of them around the pyramid at all of the corners, and then used all of the smooth sandstone that I had collected to completely finish off the roof of this thing on day 88. Integrating in a little bit of deep slate tile, and then starting to store all of my riches inside. It's not much, but it's honest work, using the crystals to add this little bit of ambiance and glow and magic, and then finally getting the smooth red sandstone integrated into the walls to set up a little mini onk pattern that matches the vanilla Minecraft pyramids. Day 89, I realized I should probably just go all out and went for stairs across all of the top 
to make it look that much more detailed, which took a good chunk of the day, mixing in some regular sandstone stairs so the thing still looked weathered and real and not just perfectly smooth and pristine, uh, where this desert would be buffeting against it for quite some time. I harvested a ton of sand through the remainder of the day, so I'd be able to do some terraforming on day 90, making sure that the thing would actually look like it kind of belonged here and wasn't just plopped down on the surface. I moved my bed and stacked all the diamonds that I currently had, all the redstone, and all of the lapis and iron, which primarily did fill the space, but it's a little light on the diamond side, no judging. Then on day 91, I realized there was one challenge yet in this world that I had not yet accomplished, and that's doing a raid. I know I could try to kill the wither as well, but I don't think I have the time to get enough wither skeleton skulls. So instead, I started moving the fletching table over to the tower, having my source of ammunition stored where I plan to hold up, basically, and then sealed them in to make sure they didn't get lost or go to a different bed. I did a little bit of trading with all of my villagers to get emeralds that I then turned into a ton of arrows, slept through the night, and then just spent all of day 92 preparing for battle, culling a lot of the cows to make Make another set of water skins two of them so I could heal that much more without having to stop to refill and then blocking up all of the windows that are currently available and sealing all of the villagers into their homes so that way whenever a pillager did come they wouldn't be able to get through the door on day 93 I ventured out to the pillager tower that I had found almost 50 days ago at this point and immediately bowed down the captain the first one that I was able to see I thought, you know what, why don't I try a level 2 raid? I spent a little bit of time bouncing around the tower and bashing all of the pillagers that I saw, but another one with a banner didn't spawn right away, which made me think, eh, maybe I should just do level 1. This is a sign. I ran back to the village, watched the progress bar fill, and it was time for a battle. And this time, I was doing the raid boots on the ground. You've seen me snipe at enemies from on top of a tree several times over now, or use a farm where I'm just biting at their ankles. This time, I wanted to make it interesting and face everything head on, standing right in front of them. The first wave is practically a pushover. It's only three or four mobs. It's when the ravagers come in that things actually start to get pretty challenging. Thankfully, with a flame bow, I'm able to do a decent chunk of damage from a little bit of range while still being somewhat at risk. I got to wave four where evokers started spawning on top of the ravagers and that's where things got even riskier. See, from the angle that I was shooting at a lot, the ravagers were tanking a lot of the hits, meaning that the evokers were able to spawn multiple waves of vex, which is something that I usually try to avoid whenever I'm doing a raid. Those little flying rats will absolutely be my death. They got me down to just a single heart, and I'm holding the totem in my main hand, thinking if they hit me again, at least the totem will pop. But thankfully, I was able to get off a golden apple and get myself pretty well regenerated, running around, fighting off the vex throughout all of the night until the morning of day 94 when i found the final pillager trapped in a hole and i just kind of shot them anticlimactically and the raid was over i released all of my villagers banked all of the totems and took advantage of the increased trading rates finding that i had taken some casualties throughout the night one of my farmers was gone several of my librarians had also taken a hit it must have been the Vex that had flown through the walls to do that damage since none of the corporeal mobs could actually go through. So I spent the day just watching the sunset and tried to think about what I was going to do for the final five days. In the ocean, I could just build a boat to sail away. And now I had made myself basically a tomb. Was it some kind of subconscious thing? Was I going to just lay down to rest here forever? I didn't want this to be the end. I have so much more that I still want to do. As the day started to come to a close, and I was starting to prepare my plans for the next morning, I heard it. Thunder in a desert just doesn't happen. I'd spent the entire time here. Those storms never make it this far into the hot, arid climate. And I was walking around, waiting to see what happens. The lightning was striking the monolith. I started feeling this pull, this call to go closer, to investigate, to see what was happening. While still being attacked by random mobs and having to defend myself, things started to accelerate pretty quickly. Alright, um... <laughs> uh, okay... 
What's going on here? Yo, yo. Yo, <laughs> what is going on? What? 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 No. No. No, 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 no. What's going on? What is 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 what? What is going on? What is going on? No, 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 no. As I started flowing up further and further, being pulled higher into the sky, there was a flash. And what happened next? Well, you're gonna have to wait until the next video to find out. Hey everyone, how's it going? Guess what? You're a wizard, Lagundo. But now, the story of my 100 days multiverse adventure continues. It's time to get magical. But before the challenge even started, I had to pick a background. And I mean, come on, you all knew exactly which one I was going to pick, right? My wings on my back? and empty pockets I spawned into the world day one. I spawned on the coast on the side of a spruce forest and this world looked similar but different. There were small details that just made it look unique. I was able to quickly jump up to the sky and realized I was gonna be able to fly for this entire 100 days where I wasn't able to at all in the desert. All of the mobs looked just a little bit different and the terrain underneath the water was just something magical. But we start as we mean to go on with basic wooden tools and just getting the very first few resources. Oh. That hurts. That hurts a lot. Oh my goodness, that hurts so much. Okay, never fall. Never fall is what I just learned there. I bumped my head on a tree and realized, ooh, fall damage would be bad. Jumping down into a little cave to get a little bit of stone and using my glide ability to fly around and grab food. But as the night started to set and I hadn't set up any semblance of a shelter, I was surrounded by mobs, including a desert husk with a trident. That's scary. But I did the bravest thing I could and ran away, jumping from treetop to treetop till I found an isolated island, torching it up to set some semblance of safety, going into day two, where I went underground to mine coal. And this is something that's important. You see up in the top right, I'm gonna have weakness and slowness basically whenever I'm indoors, which is gonna make looting and mining pretty difficult. I'm born to fly and only fly. I went back along the route of where I had explored previously, finding this grave that I almost immediately looted for just a few bits of supplies. But it turns out, since I need to fly, I can't wear heavy armor. Anything better than gold is locked away to me. So I put the boots back inside the grave. I don't want ghosts getting too mad at me now. Day three, I really just flew around and kind of forgot to start recording right at the beginning. So right near the end of the evening, I made my way towards a desert village where after sleeping on day four, I looked around and saw what they had to offer. There's a waystone in the middle of the town, meaning I could warp here whenever I wished later, and a guild master who had quests and jobs for me. This is starting to feel like D&D. But I needed emeralds. You need to spend money to make money. I continued searching around, seeing a haunted forest with Vex just floating around inside. Uh, no thank you. Before making my way towards a pillager tower not too far off from the town. I glided up to the roof of that and found this strange silver eye. And that's going to be really important. I also found a balloon, which looks ridiculous in my inventory, but gives me an awesome soft jump and lets me float down to the ground nicely. And that, combined with my wings, I can really catch some distance. <laughs> with that little bit of an extra flight boost, I found another village registered in at their waist. Took out a few of the zombies that were ravaging the town and jumped in one of the beds, just crashing on top of the guildmaster's house. On day five, I continued soaring around, looking for a really ideal place to put down roots. I don't want to just stop anywhere this time around. I found this interesting tower, and since I'm able to get to the top, 
It's kind of like cheating. I can unlock all of the top tier loot really early and instead have to work my way down. I used the crossbow that I got from the pillager tower to fight some other pillagers while looting all of the things and finding a book that was starting to talk about spells. The weakness effect though made this pretty difficult. So with the shield in hand, I just had to bop them far more often than you would think to eventually break them all down. I grabbed all of the books that I could so I'd be ahead on enchanting whenever that time would come and slept here going into day seven lighting up as much as i can and breaking all of the spawners so that i can actually clear this tower out i don't think i'm gonna live here but there's so much here including another portal that's almost completable right on the fourth level there was also an iron golem and i'm afraid of iron golems in minecraft hardcore so i just happened to kill it while leaving it in its cage no no right the next day, I continued my search for a place to put down a proper base when I saw this giant moth just chilling in one of the swamps. I was afraid it was hostile, so I threw it some bread. Do moths like bread? Do moths even like bread? I don't know if moths like bread. Before sailing over another pillager tower and then just spontaneously starting a raid out in the middle of an open field. I had no idea why this happened until I found this lit well in the middle of the woods. Going down the bridge, I found an underground city with villagers and golems and shops and everything. This might be what strongholds are in regular Minecraft worlds. I slept here and then got far away from the raid. I have literally just a pair of shoes on, so there's no way I'm gonna be taking on evokers in my current state. I found a nice clearing on the side of a mountain right next to a river and thought, this is as good a place as any to call home. Started putting down roots with some barrels for storage and a little bit of farming from the river to be able to plant crops and keep myself alive. Going into day 10, all of the crops were starting to go down, all of the basics with some bone meal to give me just that little bit of a jump start before finding a crack in the mountain and starting to mine my way down with the roofs high enough that I wasn't getting woozy. So I started grabbing some copper and then working on some small details to make this place feel a little bit more like home. Into day 11, as I was flying from treetop to treetop and mountain to mountain, I stumbled across a different kind of village, a tradesman town with all sorts of different workers with all of the jobs preset all around and a lot of loot in their chests. This is awesome. But also right next door was a much more interesting kind of abandoned mine shaft. But this is underground and I don't like being underground and I have no armor. So I was at half a heart as I was just running my way up here and trying to escape. And I thought, nope, nope, we should head home. So on day 12, as I was continuing to explore my area, I found yet another of these towers with all of the rooms set up. One level down, there was witches and I already had weakness and poison and these things are terrifying. I used several golden apples and a good chunk of my food reserves just to stay alive, only clearing about two floors of this space. Poison gets you down to half a heart. It won't kill you on its own, but considering that witches throw harming potions, which cover a huge area, they are almost certainly gonna end up killing me on this run. On day 13, I flew towards the tower to approach it from a different angle, working my way down along the outside of the space to break spawners and find TNT having been hidden in different positions. I went to open up one of the trapdoors and it went badly. So a little bit of loot was lost, but I continued working my way through to all of the books and the knowledge, you know, the things I really wanted. But as I was fighting the witches looking level down, there was another wart down there, which could lead to potion brewing, which is a huge step up so early. But the witches and the weakness are just debilitating. So I had to run away again at the end of this day after being poisoned multiple times. And on day 14, in studying all of those tomes, I learned how to craft a wand and this would be my primary tool for this entire playthrough but i needed to figure out how magic worked because you're a wizard lagundo just didn't quite happen so i spent the whole day just testing out all of my different spells and seeing exactly what they would do. Feeling a bit prepared and emptying my pockets to make space for more loot, on day 15, I headed back over to the tower, clearing out all of the rooms and making a little bit of space to jump in and grab the nether ward. With emeralds from the tower in hand, I grabbed my first guild charter and took a look at the jobs that they wanted me 
need to do. With no limit, I claimed all of them and then immediately accidentally used the item and left the guild. So on, so on day 16, I picked up two additional guild charters and then immediately went to work. And this magic with the wings on my back, I'm able to fly around and explore the world freely less than a fifth of the way through this 100 days. This is my favorite mod pack yet. I landed my way back home, placing out and banking a lot of the hay bales that I had um, acquired from several of the villages that I had visited since arriving in this reality, and used the moss to make the place just look a little bit more interesting. A drowned attacked me out of nowhere, and there was another one waiting underground. Turns out my magic doesn't really work well in water. I'll have to remember that. And I can run out of mana, which means I won't be able to cast spells until it can recharge. Something else to note as well. I went back to that moss and threw it a little bit more bread, hoping that we could be friends, right clicking it and jumping on his back. And oh my goodness, can I fly on top of this thing? But it never moved. On the way back home, I found an abandoned nether portal, grabbing a few blocks of gold, as well as some gear that I could actually use and stumbled across a giant spider's nest. I'll come back to that when it's not pouring rain. I encountered my first mini boss in the world. Mobs that know the ways of magic as well and either have protective wards or offensive spells that they can cast against you. This one took almost the full night to kill, but you get greatly rewarded when you're able to take one of them down. And they dropped a pickaxe with silk touch. An enchant that I was very happy to have at my disposal. I ended the night by jumping down that well, thinking it would be another underground village, and it wasn't. It looks to be some kind of dungeon. I'll come back to this, I promise. On day 19, I'm taking advantage of my mobility, searching around for more of those towers to be able to loot a lot of the chests near the top of them, as well as taking on the quests for the guild, killing whatever mobs they want dead. I'm starting to get a hang of my strengths and my weaknesses, and clearing the towers is becoming a little bit more straightforward. I found another birch-colored village, just something that felt much more real and alive with its surroundings, grabbed anything that wasn't nailed down, and then slept in one of their beds for the full Goldilocks experience. On day 20 back to the tower, since magic wasn't really doing the trick, I resorted to some more conventional warfare, but still basically tried to fight the witches at range. I know they're just kind of an average mob, but for some reason in this world, they just crush me. Finally able to clear the tower, making my way into the library and finding another spell book. This one telling me that there's no place like home, and that spell would come in so handy in the future. So since there's no place like home, I went back to it and started doing some work, banking all of the resources that I had collected so far, growing the nether wart, and checking my fit. I can't wear diamond armor, so gold is the best I'm gonna get. I started building a bit of a tower so that I wouldn't be sleeping down on the ground and would have an elevated, safe position to camp out in. I always love working with the different blocks that you get from these mod packs, and the fir wood and the rope just make this look interesting. I went to sleep, but a blood moon had risen, and that meant I was camping out and staying in the tower for tonight. There were a bunch of mobs that kept spawning, so I did a little bit of work towards one of my guild professions and just killed everything that I saw. Thankfully, being able to fly out of the situation is a good way to stay alive. After that very eventful day, day 23 was actually somewhat quiet. I cleaned up the last few mobs that were stragglers around the base, did a little bit of breeding of the cows, and started building up an enchanting setup so that I can make myself a little bit more easy to survive. Also, the base needed some work, so I'm not having to jump everywhere, but as soon as it turned night today, I instantly slept and kicked it over to day 24 because I had work I wanted to get done. First up let's go clear that spider spawner i need a lot of wool and string for a few of the things that i want to set up as well as some experience for the job balancing exactly where to stand so i don't get the weakness is tricky but i'm starting to get the hang of it and then back in on day 25 i cleared the main chamber and then found a different kind of dungeon just adjacent to it separated off by a single open block at the ends of most of the tunnels are these chests with a decent chunk of loot inside, so this raid was definitely at a profit. But the wandering trader out front wanted me to buy a slab for 33 emeralds. And you know what? I killed their llamas just to make a point. 
26, it's more base work. I set up all of the bookcases to get the enchanting up towards level 30, almost there, and more stairs and slabs and using the moss blocks that I had to just give some life and vibrance to this little cove of what I had set up. On day 27, I forged a new set of armor, did a little bit of tinkering with the nether wart, and then peeked my head down into the dungeon that was right there next to my base. Until I get enchants, I'm not ready to take this on. I don't know why, I have a bad feeling about this place. On day 28, I once again checked in on that wandering trader, and yes, they're as crazy as they were before before going to finish clearing out the spider dungeon. It led into an abandoned mine shaft, so I had multiple different things to worry about. And as I was running out of food, that dream warp spell is chef's kiss perfect, returning me back to my bed safe and sound. I forged a really awesome looking diamond sword and then flew around to find the one final spider that I needed to kill to complete my next guild quest. On day 29, it was rainy and I wanted to fly. So I sailed around checking out all of the different landmarks and little structures that dotted the world. There was portals with okay loot that I wasn't about to put on, hot air balloons that unfortunately didn't have anything inside, and then this structure where I dug into basically the end of one of these dungeons. I went the mumbo peace love and plant sort of route since I have constant weakness in being inside these structures, and lava doesn't care about weakness and will burn things just the same. I saw this series of pressure plates on top of sand and I thought, hmm, okay, this will almost certainly kill me. Accidentally tripping one of them, but I was able to get away before it actually went up. I got to the point where I started to hear witches and nope. Found my way to a small little hovel that was dug into the side of the mountain that had nothing inside and spent the day sailing over glaciers until I hit a desert directly adjacent to it with an ocean monument hidden underneath the ice. That's something to remember for later. On day 30, I checked in at the Waystone to register myself to this town and then started finding my way towards an inn. Yes, this is absolutely D&D. And found something that let me summon sheep whenever I wanted. Don't worry, nothing happened to them. In a nearby ravine was another enhanced abandoned mineshaft with a huge pile of emerald ore just sitting here. I used the waystones to warp from village to village just to see how that actually worked, and it cost levels, so that feels pretty balanced. I headed my way south through the desert and found a desert pyramid, which had an old eye inside another piece to the puzzle. As I did that, a blue moon started to rise and I was feeling lucky, punk. And in feeling lucky, I realized that I had found an invisibility cloak at one point in time, and this thing is just super useful. On day 31, I had to update a few of the mods and my sword disappeared. So I forged myself a new iron battle axe. That's some diamonds just wasted. As I was working on my gear, I heard a random explosion underground and having just cleared a dungeon with a similar explosion, yeah, I think I knew what had happened. So I went down into the dungeon to look around and I really gotta thank Mumbo for this strategy until I made my way all the way to the end to find and a somewhat underwhelming but nice bit of loot. I continued into day 33 and I realized just how massive this dungeon complex actually was. There is a puzzle that I solved by just breaking the wall and a piece of TNT that was waiting for me before making to the library and having to burn a good chunk of it down to fight witches. As I started to run out of resources, I headed back to base and that's when I realized that the bookcases had also gotten deleted in the update. That's unfortunate. But thankfully, I had raided enough libraries that I was basically able to get myself back up to full enchanting almost immediately. On day 34, I chopped down a few trees to get the enchanting all the way up to level 30 and enchanted my first piece of gear. Fire protection isn't ideal, but I've dealt with a lot of lava so far. But since I'm preparing for the first big build that I actually want to do in the world, I spent a lot of the day just farming and collecting wood before calling it a night early. Before I start on the build though, why don't we go explore? the nether. As I popped in, I realized just how much fuller and more robust the nether is in this reality. There is all sorts of skeleton riders and a ton of different variants of blazes right away. I'm going to be fighting fire almost constantly in this world, and these soul fire blazes are absolutely no joke, taking me under half health without even breaking a sweat. 
Do blazes even sweat? So the first one I killed, I grabbed a blaze rod and immediately popped it back over to the overworld, realizing I had accidentally started a forest fire while brewing up some fire res potions. Or at least I would have if I had magma cream. Didn't think that through. So I returned to the nether the next day and started hopping between structures. There's these little blackstone outposts that had bastion maps that would lead me to their headquarters, as well as a ton of ghast tiers and a piglin spawner just chilling there. There's also Ponyta, who had made their way. Apparently, this is a Pixelmon video now. And I found a stronghold and several awesome looking blaze statues. Overall, I just spent the time running around grabbing a bunch of awesome looking blocks and getting a lay of the land. I'm not going to be actually searching for blaze rods until I have a fire resistance potion. On day 37, standing on top of a piglin pillager tower, yeah, that is something that exists, I realized, oh, I can get fire res from trading. So I grabbed a few piggy friends and lured them into a hole with capitalism and spent the time trading for all of the resources that I could. Unfortunately, while there was a bunch of good stuff, there wasn't the one thing I was looking for. I landed on top of this blackstone structure half sunk into the lava and realized that the flaming horses were passive, which is pretty convenient. They're terrifying. Before making my way into this large gauntlet space with this glowing pixelated eye, which I just could not break, even with diamond tools. Something about this is strange, and I'll have to check it out later. On day 38, I used the brazers and statues and a few of the nether blocks to decorate my home base before returning right back to the nether, just trying to search around and see what I could see. I tried a few other things to activate that eye block, but nothing seemed to do the trick. So I ran around grabbing some wood from a small little idle spot and landing on top of a bastion and using magic, which they don't really seem to notice or understand to work my way over to the chests for some basic loot. I just broke the chests and ran. I had no idea what I even got. I just wanted to get out of there. And as it rolled over to day 39, I landed on top of a ship and oh boy, the loot in this thing is astounding. Three fire res potions is exactly what I needed. And I finally, finally was safe from the flame. And the chests in here, so much gold and a pair of amazing netherite boots that I just can't wear. That was the most heartbreaking thing I had to deal with the entire playthrough. On day 40, it was time to raid the fortress. Now that I had fire res in my pocket, I could safely make my way through and get blaze rods. Now what I need them for is a little different than what you would need in the normal world. I'm mainly getting this for ocean brewing because the eyes are a little bit more involved. But I fought my way through the hallways, fighting off wither skeletons as well, before also dealing with the Giga Blaze, or the Mega Blaze, the Inferno, the Extra Blaze, the, the Shielded Blaze, the thing that lost to phantoms that I'm very upset about. Looting the chests around the fortress and finding several nether eyes which was the next step in my journey towards the end of the game. And with my real target complete, it was time to head home. Day 41, it's time to get my gear enchanted. I am a magical man and I need magical tools. And you know what goes great with magic? A bunch of amethyst and a bunch of emeralds. So I went over to one of the abandoned mine shafts to just go get as much of that as I could. As I was looting this abandoned mine shaft, however, it crossed through to a skeleton fortress of some kind with a lot of enemies, but a lot of loot inside. I found an enchanted golden apple just sitting in one of the chests. And while that was cool, it wasn't worth dying over. So I warped out with the amazing loot in my pocket. Day 43, those barrels on the coast are both heavily insecure and not enough to hold everything anymore. I'm getting so much good stuff from my exploring and acquisitions of chests laden throughout the world. So I started work on an actual proper base built into the side of the hill. Not a hobbit hole, more like a bird's nest, which continued into day 44 as I started setting up a proper storage room on one of the walls and inventory management literally took all day. <laughs> and I might be one of the most disorganized hardcore players in the entire world because it took me another day 
to finish building the remainder of the chests and to get all of the items moved over to this instead of the barrels down on the coast into day 46 where I finally had something that I was happy with. As it became night, I took on my guard duties and was fighting creepers and endermen and spiders just to rack up the kills so I could earn more emeralds for the job. Flying from place to place, finding another village and sleeping there. On day 47, I eliminated the last few stragglers, which was just enough to complete my guild contract, before landing at another inn, grabbing anything that wasn't nailed down. I found a pillager patrol just camping out next to the river and was quickly able to eliminate them, flying around and seeing where they had come from. There's this huge manor and graveyard that was established here, and I was not prepared to be jump scared by a vindicator out of one of these tents. I was at two hearts. That is terrifying. On day 48, I turned in a few of my quests, reaching level three in the guard profession, meaning they really trusted me to be good at murdering stuff. But with Bad Omen on, I thought, maybe I should upgrade my gear. And I started looking at getting enough ammunition and better weapons and utilizing that invisibility cloak because I had a plan for what to do at the midpoint of this adventure. And I'm not doing the raid just for fun. I need eyes which are only dropped by evokers, the source of their power. So I flew over to a desert village that if something happened to it, eh, boxed a few of the villagers into their homes, set up some very basic rudimentary offenses and got to bop it. I ended up relying a lot on the whole put them in lava to kill them strategy because that really is just efficient. And the first wave of pillagers also included one of the mini bosses who had this constant drown effect on me in the middle of the desert, which did no damage, but freaked me out. As it rolled over into day 50, we were into wave three, which meant I would start to dealing with ravagers and witches. And we all know how much I've been having trouble with witches so far. But my main strategy was basically keep distance, blast with magic, and then act anybody who comes close if they want to die. <laughs> See what I did there? I was able to burn one of the evokers using the most lethal weapon that I had, grabbing one of the magical eyes, as well as a totem of undying, which is huge, flying away to avoid Vex, and on the way back, finding somebody who thought this was a good time to be buying stuff from everyone. But the battle continued into the night, with me primarily relying on my magic to defend me. And then this shenanigans happened. Okay, what? <laughs> There's no way that counts, right? There's no way that casting a spell suddenly chunks off seven hearts and you're killed instantly. That feels unfair. Who adds that to a mod to just spontaneously kill a player? So I'm casting Transmogrify Memory on you and you're gonna forget that that happened. Just leave a comment that says, wow, that was weird. I can't remember day 50. But the next day I crafted the backup wand and started flying to the village. And since I had what I needed, I declared a truce. All right, you can have this village, okay? We'll call it even. This is, this one's yours. I, I don't need this, okay? I got, I got what I came for. I got my eyes. You all have a wonderful day. You have a great day, okay? Do me a favor and no, 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 no. Personal space, personal space, personal space. No, 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 no. Are they still following me? They're still following me. Okay. So they're just, are they still following me? Ow. Oh, I'm taking damage from being on fire. Okay, that's it. I cast Transmogrify Memory again. Day 51 also does not exist. With another type of eye in my possession, day 52 was pretty easy. I mainly focused on repairing and replacing a bit of my gear and some items that had mysteriously disappeared from my pockets, cleaning up a few mobs that were just wandering around Haven before calling it a night and getting some rest. In day 53, my next target is under the sea. Don't worry, you'll, that joke will make sense in about two weeks. So I went fishing and immediately got the ingredient that I needed and was able to craft up some water breathing potions. 
These are going to help immensely as I go to take on the Elder Guardians for their eyes as well in that ocean monument I found a while back. And I gotta say, this being in a really cold climate didn't help that I was constantly taking frostbite damage on top of everything else and having to keep track of the damage, the beams, and the underwater breathing was really stressful. Also remember, magic doesn't work well underwater, so I had to rely on my axe a lot more to take out all of the Elder Guardians. Day 54, I'm continuing exploring around, just trying to find more landmarks so I could find all of the different types of eyes. I stumbled across what very much looks like a cult house with skeletons and cobwebs, and I'm pretty sure I heard some screaming coming from the basement. I fought my way in through the roof, and oh yes, this is totally a cult of some kind. Grabbing a wither skeleton that was just sitting on an armor stand. That will come in handy later. I worked my way through the house, killing cult members, and freeing a few villagers that they were torturing in the basement so look at that i'm the good guy on day 55 continuing my loop i found my way into a desert pyramid and while i really only broke one spawner and looked in one chest i was i was starting to panic so i just dream warped myself home to get myself out of a sticky situation i'll do that a lot i banked all of the resources that i collected from several of the houses planted some drip leaf just to make the base look a little bit more inviting then flew over to the nearest town stole their waystone and brought it back to Haven, officially naming my foothold in the world. If anything, this is more important going outbound than inbound, so it's a quick start on any adventure I need to do. Day 56, I literally spent all day looking up all of the different enchantments that were available through all of the different mods, figuring out what would be good and what I could potentially get, and crafting up and enchanting a new set of armor. It's a really quiet day. They can't all be winners. Day 57, I flew back towards the village that I had done a raid in, and since it was completely abandoned and no one was here and everyone was dead, I grabbed their waystone to return slash replace the one that I had borrowed from the town that just happened to be the closest to my home. I fought my way back to the pyramids. There were two actually pretty close to each other, grabbing a bunch of loot, primarily gold and diamonds, filling out my collection collection quite nicely. As the sun started to set, instead of using my mana, I spent one level at a waystone and tested the incoming portal, and it works beautifully. On day 58, I was going through some of the loot that I had found at one point and realized that the ukulele would give me random potion effects if I used it, so power of music, and I crafted a diamond longsword, just something that would look intimidating and hit pretty hard. And look at me, I'm a bard now. I used some of the blocks that I had acquired from the cult houses as well as a few other sources, just to continue spiffing up the base and making it look a lot more interesting. Before returning the waystone that I had gathered from the other dead village back to the original village that I had borrowed it from. From there, it was out exploring again. I'm so glad I have the magic and my wings because there was no way I'd make it to the end without having to cover this much distance on foot. The air is the only way to travel. I made my way to a giant spruce forest, which was honestly kind of intimidating before stumbling across a pillager factory where they build their war machine instead of just stand out and wait to threaten everybody. There were villagers less than 100 blocks away. They don't have the best choice in real estate. And there was another one of those underground cities about 200 blocks from that. This one was more fully prepared with farms and full workstations underground, but also kind of creepy because they had a nether portal that was built up in the middle of their town that they had caged off for some reason, likely because something dangerous made its way through. I was able to mine the portal to repair it, to head to the nether and see what I could find on the other end, but I didn't have a flint and steel. And I ran around the town for a good chunk of the day, just trying to find a flint and steel. As I was sailing though, I found another bit of stone ruins and landed and saw a reference to something that I immediately knew would be terrifying. If you get what's going on on this day, please leave a comment because I don't want to date myself too hard. I jumped down into the structure, opened the book and saw the riddle. You see me in ore, lakes, tube coral and orchids. Blue is obviously the answer. So I flipped that and was escorted down into the lair of the killer bunny. There's also zombie spawners on here, which I did my best to just lava as much as I could and stand in a way where they couldn't hit me. But this bunny was super fast and I'm pretty sure it would kill me in a single touch. So I had to resort to catching it in lava to burn it alive. On the way out, I wanted to see what would happen if I had flicked the other lever just for fun and whew,
But as I continued my adventures out into the world, I found another tradesman tower, another village, another waste stone, and from there I headed home. On day 62, I put my new farming staff to the test, and wow, it does make things so much easier. Cooked up a full stack of baked potatoes, Mumbo would be proud, and headed off in the opposite direction, just trying to cover distance to see what the world had in store for me. There was another tradesman's tower on an isolated island, along with a dirt igloo? Is that a digloo? A, a dug trio. That's what you'd probably call it, right? Day 63 was kind of more the same, just flying around. I am super spoiled with having wings and being able to just elytra fly wherever I want. I am, whew, I'm gonna really regret the next 100 days when I can't fly from day one. But on day the best console ever created, it's time to find the stronghold. I grabbed the nether eyes out of one of my chests and threw them, being pointed in a direction and instantly sailing in the sky that way. It took me over glaciers, underwater, and above mountains that were practically to build height. Caves and cliffs is gonna be amazing, y'all. As I looted everything that I found in my way. There was awesome desert islands and savanna villages where I would sleep to just continue sailing away during the day. Finding a new cult house and grabbing their wither skull because this is way faster than killing them in the nether. The eyes eventually started pointing downwards where I saw shafts of sand just fallen away to stone underneath. Now I don't do well in caves, so I had to utilize the lava bucket to do a lot of this. I just don't have enough torches to clear it. So I used a waystone to get home and on day 66, and on day 66 while I was playing everything, stop everything Halo Infinite released. Da 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 da, da 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 da. On day 67, once I've gotten my taste of the multiplayer beta, it was time to to come back to Minecraft. I warped to the waystone at the town near the stronghold and stole it. I need to put it somewhere more important. Making my way down into the stronghold itself was pretty easy. I was actually really close with my cave before. Now this place has several different traps and tricks and puzzles. A lot of redstone goes into making this a little bit more interesting and complex. Then again, sometimes all you need to do is place blocks. In digging through the last little puzzle room, I made my way in towards the enhanced end portal and this is where things get interesting see i have a lot of eyes in my inventory but you can only put one of each type into the portal meaning i have some exploring to do and it's time to get grinding on day 68 i realized i could craft an additional one the witch's eye which i got from killing witches with that in i was halfway done now is where exploring comes into play the next eye i'm targeting is the black for pirate lore and legend, which means having to find a sunken ship with a treasure map inside. It took the better part of day 68 just to find one, and the first treasure map that I searched, well, didn't have it inside. Which continued into day haha -ha, funny number, where I searched another three shipwrecks and came up empty handed. I was starting to think that the black eye might just be a myth. Doubly so on day 70, where I'm not even sure that sunken ships are real, and I really stopped finding basically anything. I've explored most of the Western Sea at this point. Day 71, as I started hitting the first inkling of a new continent, I found other treasures, just not the thing I needed. Late in the evening, I found a drown spawner with a bunch of interesting loot inside, which was cool, but found another treasure map. And finally, after three days of searching, saw the black eye sitting in the corner of a chest. Lucky for me, that last sunken treasure was somewhat close to a jungle and mushroom combination island, which looks amazing. I found a mushroom pyramid that didn't have any TNT, but had some decent loot inside. But thankfully there was a jungle temple with a treasure hidden deep inside. Hmm, I wonder where you could watch a video where somebody would make a better version of this. But with two more eyes in my pockets, I yeeted myself over to the closest town, slept there and continued the search on day 73. Having a map that would point me to an underground bastion. And I didn't know what that was, but it sounded interesting. I followed along on the map until it basically looped me back over home. So I stopped here, banked the resources and the additional eyes into the portal. So I was that much closer, slept through the night. And on day 75, remembered I knew where a mineshaft was and I need to find an eye in a mineshaft as well. Using the powers of Thor, despite being underground, I was able to take on a few of the skeletons and loot every chest in the mine. There was nothing here. There was, however, an invisible zombie, which was just an absolute nightmare to fight. Thankfully, they weren't immune to the sun, 
Once back inside the mineshaft, I was reminded of that skeleton fortress that was just a few blocks off of it. And I thought, you know what? Let's loot this while we're here. I had to run back to base to get a couple more torches so I could fully secure the structure, warping back and jumping back down underground using the glow sticks and more traditional torches to just clear everything. There's a bunch of tipped arrows and different enchanted books for bows and projectile weapons on here, which is really gonna make me a lot more powerful in non-magical combat. Day 77, I used the waste stones to pick up where I had left off searching on that bastion map route because there's seemed to be a lot of frozen stuff ahead of me. I found a huge frozen tower with another enchanted golden apple on the roof and not too far from it, a giant pirate ship filled with strays. I was tempted to burn the whole thing down, but just tried to magic a few things away and looted what I could from the local chests. From there, I continued following that map, heading into the night and using lava to keep myself warm to avoid frostbite. I found a massive igloo filled with witches and zombies and multiple spawners and just was hurling magic in through the door while breaking the spawners sneaking in through the walls. This took the whole day to clear, the whole night, and unfortunately, there was no eye inside. But just as I started to fly away on the morning of day 78, a somewhat familiar shape caught my eye. So I went in, and it had a basement, and it had two villagers waiting there for help, but I really only wanted this blue orb that was sitting in the chest, so I immediately warped home, and then warped to the end portal, and slotted the eye in, three to go. Next up, it's time for a change of scenery. I've been in cold climates for way too long, so I went to the nether because I need to get some ore from bastions for the next eye. And there's a lot going on in the nether with all of these little sections and this desert pyramid, which had a bunch of loot in the chests, but I don't think I'm allowed to get it. I flew over to the closest bastion, pillaring up so I wouldn't be targeted and using magic to bat down all the fruits. Just getting revenge for my first life. I dug in through the walls, making sure I was always isolated, just trying to loot, just trying to root around and either find the ore that I needed in a chest or embedded into the structure somewhere. Making sure that I could never be caught off guard from brute and there was always a block between us but I didn't get much luck. Going into the next day, I went into the second half of the bastion, working my way down and still being very careful, having to deal with blazes, so I used my final fire res potion. I eventually started making my way down to the chests, which had, again, great loot in it. And you'll see that this bastion took me three days to raid because I've made mistakes in bastions before and I wanted to take my time. I was in the structure for maybe 45 minutes total. As I started making my way down to the central lowest level gold area, so I could just grab a ton of loot and a bunch of diamond armor that I can't use, there was a magma cube, which was a mini boss, which had all of these different effects, which were really causing me to panic. I flew up crashing into the ceiling and then falling down into the lava. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh no, this could be really bad. I'm on fire. So I just dug through the wall, blocked it off behind me, and decided, you know what? This is a silly place. Let's go check out another bastion instead. I flew around, looting a soul sand jungle temple that had a nether eye, not very helpful, and eventually coming across another bastion that had the distinct pink ore that I was looking for. With fortune, I was able to break only two pieces of it to get everything that I needed, and I wasn't gonna press my luck. Love stealing. So once I had what I needed, I dream warped my way home. The next morning, I used that ore with an eye of ender to craft the next eye that I needed. And now there are only two to go. I still have to loot mine shafts and I have to kill the wither. I was racking my brain, trying to remember any mine shaft that I had seen in the entire playthrough. I went back to the one that I saw that was right next to the first tower that I raided and struck out there. Then remembered that I thought I saw one underwater over by the ocean monument, all the way over in the frozen lakes. But then I remembered that this is underwater and I can't breathe underwater. So I walked back home and the next day with some water breathing potions actually in hand, you know, being prepared can help. I searched my way through this aquatic themed mineshaft, struck out on the first chest, but on the second, I finally saw 
that dark blue sphere that I was looking for, and the next eye was mine. I spent some time just swimming around, bopping drowned that I was finding, but once I got hit in the face with the trident and it did four hearts of damage, I panic warped back to base. No way I'm dying at this point. Day 86, knowing that the next thing I was gonna have to do was fight the god of death, I spent all of this day preparing my gear, reinforcing it, adding additional enchantments, prepping additional potions, and ending the day by slotting in the next to last eye into this portal. If I was gonna die, I was gonna die getting as far as I possibly could. I did some looking on my map for a good place to spawn the wither in. Isolated, controllable situation, and big open space so I wouldn't get caught by surprise. This island with the Tradesman Tower is great for me, not so great for them, as I spawned in the wither and watched it immediately obliterate a chicken. R.I.P. But this is gonna be no ordinary wither fights. No, this fight, I'm just yeeting myself through it repeatedly. You see, I found out through some accidental damage that the dash spell doesn't only throw you forward, it damages anyone that you come through, meaning that I can just constantly zip zap my way back and forth and anime style slash my way through the wither every time I went by. It counts as a melee attack, so it works for both phases. This might be a little anticlimactic, but you know, I know magic, so killing gods is a common thing in D&D. This is fine. I grabbed the wither eyes and another star, running back to my base and using all of the iron that I had, crafting up a beacon and setting my home as a literal beacon of light in this world. I rested easy that day, knowing that I only had one major challenge remaining. On day 88, I started putting together a bow and a little bit of gear to prepare myself for the final battle, the final challenge. But as I got that together and I flew into my storeroom, I realized that this place is not fitting of a person who had just killed a god. So it was time to invest a little bit more into the base itself. I expanded out the floor, replacing it with actual wood instead of stone, and worked on the back to create a little smeltery slash potion brewing area that fit the vibe of what I was going for. Ran out of wood, so I spent day 89 going over to the fir forest and just felling trees from top to bottom. Going back into the first tower that I had originally looted to just grab a few miscellaneous blocks and see if I had missed something when I was early and much weaker. Spent a little bit of time just sailing my way through the caves, but despite setting up all this amazing cave generation, I'm here to fly and I wanna soar in the clouds. And a view of the clouds is what I want from this tower. I want to immortalize and memorialize a few of the things that I've accomplished along the way and build something that's not huge, but dense. I'm somewhat inspired by Looney's luxurious loft in Deceit Season 2. I spent a couple days just throwing kind of random elements together to come up with something that I really, really liked at the end of it, with the tower expanding out and becoming somewhat crooked with fences everywhere, and then a stone roof, and then trap doors on the walls, and then the exterior to give it a little bit more dimensionality, and a roof that's not entirely solid, which meshes with my need to be always available to the open air. This tower took three days to build, but in all honesty, is something that I really like. But I want to make sure that it's filled with things that are worthwhile, and I want to flex on this world before I potentially leave it. So I crafted up all of the ores into emerald blocks and just left them sitting on a mountain, because who would rob a wizard? Using all of the nether blocks that I have to make the portal entrance make a little bit more imposing. That place is scary after all. Did a little bit of decorating around the waystone, since that should look magical too, and took a look at my haven from across the river on top of one of the trees for one final time before warping towards the end portal room, slotting in the final eye, igniting the portal, and jumping in. Once in the new dimension, I took to the skies, space, and stars around me to see a much more intricate and involved end fight. With this being remastered, there was no chance of it. My magic didn't seem to affect the crystals, and they needed a good old-fashioned projectile to hit them. But in the moment, I kind of forgot that I had a bow and arrow, 
So I'm using my best PvP strats and blowing up the end crystals manually, knowing that I could stand underneath them and take literally zero damage. I flew from tower to tower to do this, making sure that I caught these awesome blue bars when I blew up this one. Those will come in handy to decorate my base later. Blasting all of the crystals, sending the dragon into a rage. Once she was mad at me, I remembered, oh yeah, that's right, I have a bow. So I pulled that out of my pocket and started slinging arrows in her direction. Also, when she perched, I stabbed her in the head a lot until she yeeted me up into the sky. But I have wings too, so that really wasn't too much of a threat. Flying around and flinging arrows and magic at the dragon, the main thing I needed to do was not make a stupid mistake and crash into her, having her obliterate me in a few hits. And thankfully, I didn't. I knocked the final arrow, sent a flaming projectile in her direction, and freed the end. I gathered up all of the experience, which put me up so many levels, and went to get the egg with it falling into the portal back to the overworld. I followed, spawning at Haven, knowing that I'm going to have to go all the way back to the world spawn to pick up the egg. So I flew over the mountains, retracing my steps to the very beginning of this journey, and there, sitting on the beach, almost exactly where I started, was the egg. With a little bit of effort and a single torch, I was able to get that into my pockets and returned back home, using those bars to do a little bit of decorating. Like I said, I just wanted it to look good. This place needs to be worthy of a grand master wizard. So I bred the cows and thought, there's a few more things I can go get from the end before I'm done. The main thing I wanted to do was check out this boxy structure, which was right next to the island. I tried slotting an Eye of Ender into it, that didn't work. I tried putting the egg onto it, that didn't work. And it cost me a minute to break four obsidian to get that back. So I thought, instead, let's put the egg on top of the tower that I wanted to memorialize my successes. That looks good. And as long as we're talking about making memories, it's time to hang up my first set of armor. That stuff had gotten me through almost the full 100 days, and it was on its last legs. I did this for 1k days as well, so it made sense. I crafted and enchanted a full set of armor because, you know, I had the levels. Setting up an armor stand to let my original armor rest in the tower. I returned back to the end and set myself towards the end gateway, seeing a giant space whale floating underneath me. I had no idea if it was friend or foe, but I warped through the gateway to a much more expansive and alive end. Instead of endless wastelands, there was forests and fields and black stuff that made you go blind, which was a little unsettling. I flew into a house of purple wood and found some cool cosmetic blocks, sailing into the first end city that I uncovered, grabbing the multiverse's most useless elytra, as well as a bunch of gear that I can't use. This almost feels wasteful. I want other people to be able to get this stuff. Getting into day 96 though, I wanted to fly through the end and see just what was here to offer, if this could potentially be the site of a future chapter. There's these huge mushrooms and these glowing crystals, which I can use for light. Another one of those strange structures that uh, didn't take the crystals. And in searching, my pockets were getting full. So I crafted up my first shulker box, dropping in a lot of the loot that I had found and finally having a bit more inventory space when an enderman just came out of nowhere and decided to bot me. I flew away, half health, dropped a bucket of water and stabbed it from inside going, haha, you can't catch me, grabbing a bunch of this wood that looks far more magical than anything I found in the overworld. This fits my vibe a lot better. I grabbed a lot of the flora from around the end, hoping I would be able to plant it in my own magical grove with lily pads and glowing trees and just massive structures throughout all of the end as I sailed my way back towards the end gateway through a pearl and returned home. And on day 98, some of the things that I found in the end look really great in my base. Some of them I can't plant, unfortunately. The glowing spore blocks? Those are awesome, and I threw a few of them around to replace some torches, give it a more magical vibe. I set up the elytra as almost a crest on the back of my base, built a glowing crystal, because everything magical needs glowing crystals, and finally made a netherite ingot that I've had the resources for sitting in my chest for almost 40 days, making my pickaxe be the best that it could be. I sailed back towards the bed and started to prepare for the final little bit of a challenge that I wanted to do in this world. But when I woke up, it was still night. The sun was nowhere to be seen. 
I flew out into the distance, a crescent moon in front of me, and something felt off. There was this tingle in the air, something that felt familiar and dangerous, and then I saw it. Oh, not again. So far in my journey through the multiverse, all of my trips have been in carefully curated and built mod packs. Things that I make to be cohesive and balanced and have a plan. And I put a lot of work into those. But what if I didn't? What if instead of building a mod pack with any sense or reason, we did it completely randomly at the mercy of a random number generator and a roll of a dice? So instead of surviving in something normal like an ocean world or a desert world or a magical world, Let's just load up Minecraft and load a new mod each day and see what happens. But with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Load up the world day one. And I rolled and got unhealthy dying. This doesn't feel like it's gonna matter much in a hardcore video. I spawned immediately in front of a village, which is speedrun strats right here. I'm loving it. I looted everything that wasn't nailed down, made the one tool that everybody uses for about 20 blocks worth, and then lets it break. Got some stone tools, killed a cow, got some food, continued looting the village, killed their iron golem, and used its iron to make a bucket to MLG my way down into a ravine to grab even more resources. But as it started getting dark, I had all of four torches to my name. So I went back up to the surface, slept in a bed, and rolled again, getting a Magicka card game as my second mod. As I started up the day, I set the iron to smelt and went for a quick boat ride just to check my surroundings, finding some dark oak and some pumpkins. So I'd have a food source and different types of woods, which is gonna be nice. Making a set of iron armor and starting to build a little bit of a tiny house. Since the mods are gonna be so different, I'm gonna go for as small as a house as I can just to make things interesting, do something different. With a ravine, I was able to get really deep very quickly. So I was, you know, at the right level just to set myself on fire with lava, killing mobs and running around for resources as the day rolled over to day number three. And this time I got, as it rolled over to day number three and I got better carrots. Oh boy. I also installed JEI because this is gonna get really complicated. So I went back up to the surface and started planting all the crops that I have, which is pumpkins and wheat and potatoes. So no carrots. I sailed across the ocean in search of the elusive orange root vegetable and found an ocean monument. Ain't no way I'm touching that on day three. I found a spruce forest, so I got yet another type of wood, but I ran out of food, so I just sailed home and turned back. On day four, I can make a gun out of pumpkins, so this is going to be fun. I fought off the mobs that were camping out in front of my house. Door campers can't escape them. Building out my little two by one starter race to just get it to look a little bit more homely. The pumpkins growing out back are now doubly important, which is wonderful, as I was fighting skeletons for bone meal so I could get pumpkins so I could craft the pumpkin pistol before heading to bed. Day five, I can make myself a crown? Yes, I love it. Who needs to be an MCC? I'm already royalty. I'm just kidding, Scott. Please invite me. Started with a simple little A-frame pitch route to get a little bit of the shape figured out with different stones, raiding out the bookshelves and hay bales from all around the village and consolidating all of that to my home. In the evening, I was fighting creepers and skeletons just to get a few of the early game resources that I need, finding two villagers stuck on a ledge in the ravine. I tried to help them up, but it didn't really work. I was able to use the gunpowder that I got to craft a set of pumpkin bullets and... <laughs> This is ridiculous, and it's only day five. Day six, I want this in the main game. Woodcutters, yes! This is gonna make a wooden house way more efficient to build. I exterminated most of the local wildlife for food, finding another ravine and jumping down into it. It intersected with the mine shaft because this is a Lagundo video in hardcore. Grabbing lapis and shortly thereafter, finding some diamonds a little bit further down in the world. Not bad pace. I made myself a diamond pick, grabbed the food, and then ran straight home before the night ended. On day seven, I got the Stronger Snowballs mod, which will come in handy later. I did some detail work around the house, framing all of the windows with posters or setting up what would look like shades around all of them, around some glass panes that I just quickly smelted up. There's some snow on a nearby mountain, so I sailed over towards that and found a completable portal right here, just a few blocks of obsidian down. I grabbed all of the snow, using my pistol to great effect. 
and captured a swamp zombie villager. Man, I wish I could move them to the hardcore world right now. I figured I'd go through, but I waited until day eight when I got a grappling hook mod. Anybody here been playing Halo Infinite? You knew I turned around immediately to get myself a grappling hook. I went down in the mines to grab enough iron to make a hopper, thinking that I could set myself up with a very cheap, very early snowball farm with a snow golem. It didn't exactly work, so I did more free range approach with a few stacks of snowballs heading into the nether on day eight in one of these challenges. Day nine, I got some fancy windows that I'm not gonna use for a while because I'm in the nether. I went looking in several directions and found basically dead ends. So I just started digging through a wall, hoping I'd eventually get to something. I emerged in a crimson forest and this grappling hook is a little difficult to use. Getting off hoglands and making my way towards a bastion. I'm in a bastion in day nine in a hardcore world video. This does not make sense. I stole all of their gold because we love stealing and boxed myself and one of the piglins up trading everything I could, hoping to get ender pearls and fire resistance potions so I'd be able to make my way home more safely and fast track my way to the stronghold. I had nothing and I had no blocks to get out of there safely. So I used all of the obsidian that I had been traded, making a portal back to the overworld and preferring to traverse over the that throughout the night instead of risking traveling in the nether. That went into day 10 where I can make a block of charcoal. Look, not all of these mods are gonna be winners. I spent over half the day just walking home. It takes quite a while to travel when on foot. I forget that. Once I was home, I smelted up enough logs to get enough charcoal to make a block of charcoal. And yeah, it's a block of charcoal. I did a little bit of work on the roof, so it was a productive evening going into day 11 where we got launchers? Ooh, this could be fun. I went down in the mines searching for the materials I would need, iron, gold, and redstone specifically, finding a lot of zombies and a couple diamonds. I didn't find everything I needed for the launchers, so instead I took all of the resources that I got and used them to finish up the roof, having it mostly finished by the end of the night. On day 12, I got bouncier beds and yeah, they're really bouncy. I went back down again, getting the little bit of redstone that I needed to craft up an iron launcher. And it throws you some decent blocks in the sky. Not as much as the bed though. Grabbing a little bit of glass, just so I'd be able to use that in future recipes and harvesting a little bit of gunpowder to upgrade that launcher to the gold tier. On day 13, I can make diagonal fences, which is amazing, but also ridiculously cursed. I upgraded the launcher to gold and it's almost high enough to get me out of the ravine. But if you miss, you fall and hit at only one heart, so don't miss. I jumped in a boat and went sailing out in search for carrots again, finding a mending golden chest plate at a ruined portal, which is kind of nice. Grabbing everything I found at a sunken ship before, before landing at the other side of this huge ocean, raiding a village for a couple diamonds and sleeping in one of their beds. Going into day 14 and... <sighs> It out of the Squid Game dolls. Come on, let's be honest. I knew that this was gonna happen at some point, but I didn't think it would be this early in the video. I stole all of the carrots that I possibly could, spent the day sailing across the ocean back towards my house where I used those diamonds and obsidian that I had found to make an enchanting table to protect on my gear. I grew a bunch of carrots with bone meal just so I could get those all set up and then made a sharp carrot and attempted to stab some zombies with it. <laughs> I mean, it works. On day 15, I can make obsidian tools. So I went down into the ravine and turned all of the lava that I could find into obsidian to just get obsidian for the tools. The first Squid Game doll attacked me and whew, that thing is actually kind of scary, but I don't know how hard it hits. It says that they're really lethal. They can also open doors, which is a really good thing to know. So I spent the rest of the night just stabbing everything as it made its way through, slept, and went into day 16, where I can now crouch to make crops grow. I got attacked by one of those little child dolls and that was actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> And I know about this mod because I'm doing a Sky Factory Let's Play over on Facebook, link in the description, and it's busted. I got a wall running enchant on my boots, so I do this weird Titanfall kind of thing whenever I touch a wall. I'll figure it out as I go. Adding a second launcher, which puts me way up out of the ravine, but I'm gonna need a landing pad if I'm not gonna break my ankles every time. So I made one out of some waterlogged slabs, and I did that about another dozen times that I didn't show you. 
<laughs> to test the wall running, though, I started setting up these little walls that I could jump from one to the next to the next. Kind of like the Colosseum in Titanfall 2. It was a lot of fun, and that was honestly the rest of the day for me. Continuing on being able to make obsidian things, now I can make an obsidian boat. So I went back down and forgot where I had left that lava, eventually finding a separate place that had lava in it, getting enough pieces for an obsidian boat. I put it down in the water and... Yep, that's exactly what I expected. Heading over to the nether where it's way more useful. I spent so much time sailing around here and this is awesome. Strider riding is awesome, but this is awesome. Until it sinks. Oh no, great. I'm stranded in the nether. I'm just gonna let the next mod speak for itself. Oh God, it's so cursed. Single player, hardcore minimo version. Oh god, popoy sector world. Oh, I hate it. Oh, that's right, and we're stuck in the nether. Ah! Oh no, it's everywhere. Oh, it makes everything. Oh no, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. But I was able to stem the lava so I could get my obsidian boat back, sailing into another bastion and finding a fortress a little bit further down in the lava lake. Once inside, I was pretty quickly able to find the blaze spawner and used a lot of those snowballs to do damage from range, which was kind of cool. I'm glad I kept them in my inventory for here. But there was no inside to the fortress. And this is like the fourth time that this has happened to me, that the first nether fortress I find has no nether wart inside of it. I sailed back in the obsidian boat, sailed back in the boat in the overworld, and went back to bed to sleep. D19 added moo blooms back to the game, so I went over to the birch forest that's somewhere close to my house to see if one would spawn. I gave it a good old honest try, running around and trying to find everything, and then spent the rest of the day playing with the raw, <laughs> and then spent the rest of the day playing with the wall running enchantment, which is so much fun, in all honesty. I love games that let you do wall running. These Squid Game dolls, though, they are kind of a bit of a nuisance right now. I did spend a little bit of the night running around and capturing a cat in a boat so I could tame them a little bit later. But there were way too many mobs, so I slept in one of the houses going into day 20 where I can now do vertical slabs. I don't even need to miss a cat video for it. So since I got a decorative block, I spent most of the day just doing decorative work around the base, vertical slabs around the entire foundation, some trapdoors as very thin shelves on the interior, and just making the place feel a little bit more like home. I then went over to the nether using that obsidian boat to sail back to work to the second bastion that I had found, and we're gonna do a little bit more raiding in this space. Considering I couldn't find Nether Wart in the fortress, we're gonna try to find it in the bastion, but it wasn't the right type, so instead I just traded in a lot of the gold that I had on hand to try to get some pearls and some potions. And doing that with the Squid Game dolls just constantly peeking in my ear drives me nuts. Day 21, my storage got a huge upgrade with sophisticated backpacks, which I instantly made and started heading away for a stronghold with a lot more able to be carried without having to wait for shulker boxes. I broke three eyes along the way, which was ridiculously unfortunate. I found the stronghold intersecting with an abandoned mineshaft because... <sighs> I found some books in the library, which will be great for level 30 enchants, and a compass, which will be great on letting me find my way home. And of course, I'm exactly three eyes short. That always seems to happen to me. On day 22, I got the Ben 10 mod, so yep. This is going about as well as I planned. I crafted the instruction book and almost all of this is gonna require really weird ores that I'm gonna have to generate in new chunks that is rarer than diamond. I'm gonna let you in on a secret here. I don't really get into this mod too much. It's way too high tier. I marked the stronghold position and sailed back, which took literally all day. On day 23, I can milk all mobs, so I spent some time milking all the different mobs. I also tamed my cat, which is nice. Now I have a friend in this world. Doing some general work around the base, harvesting and cleaning up all of the crops, waiting until it got night, catching some endermen in boats, and using that obsidian axe for those sweet, sweet crit damage, but never getting any pearls. Just really bad luck on the drops. I tamed a black cat that I found wandering throughout the woods and showed it the launcher. You honestly all have no idea how many times I use that launcher just for fun. Day 24, and there were so many mobs counting outside my house. That pumpkin pistol is coming in really handy. I dug all the way down to the bedrock level because I wanted to see a bread bedrock block, but I'm 
thinking now, I realized I probably needed to go to new chunks again to get those blocks. So I expanded a little bit of a farm in the center of the village instead, trying to focus on building up infrastructure around here and killed another Enderman in a boat and didn't get a pearl. As I slept and went into day 25, I got my favorite mod from the MCX SMP, Easy Villagers. I can put them in little protective boxes and carry villagers around. No more having to worry about complex redstone machines. Being able to crouch to grow crops is extremely overpowered and I am a god of gardening. I grew up an entire huge field of everything, building a villager breeder, putting two villagers and a bunch of resources in and getting a villager baby out immediately. I put them in the incubator and then made a very quick little system with a hopper to just auto grow them all up into parents. I demoed one of the houses to start up a little bit of a trading hall, sleeping, and the next day getting an evil wandering trader mod. Mongo has joined the game. I continued setting up all of the different trading stations in this new house, first going for a cleric, thinking that they would trade me for ender pearls, then realizing that I don't have my super reliable way to get a ton of emeralds really easily, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. So I went for a Fletcher so I could get sticks to emeralds for that trade. I fought off a few Endermen late in the night and didn't get pearls again, and I'm starting to think that there's something wrong with this axe. The next day I got teleporters, which would be huge. I could just put one over the portal and one over here. That'd be great. I need obsidian and redstone to make them work. And oh look, obsidian tools don't work on redstone. I'm starting to think that this is a bit of a bait. I have no redstone to my name. So I went down into the basement area of the base and found a ton of iron, but only one little patch of redstone. And investing that in the teleporters right now, maybe not a good play. The next day, I got a better flint mod, so I plopped down a bunch of gravel trying to get flint, and it took a little while. <laughs> Eventually, I was able to craft the flint into a flint block, and corporate wanted me to see the difference between these two blocks. They're the same block. I grabbed a few of the villagers who were grown up out of the breeder and threw them into the boxes for some early trades to try to see if I can set up on a positive emerald loop. I was leveling up the cleric and killing Enderman with the axe and still not getting any pearls. I'm thinking, maybe there's something wrong with this tool too. I made an obsidian sword, and as soon as I started killing things with that instead, yeah, they started dropping loot again. Oh, okay, that was what it was. So I enchanted it and went to bed. I forgot I got this mod actually, but you can wax wood now. Okay, I need a beehive, but I need silk touch for that. So I moved the enchanting setup outside and set it up for level 30 enchants, cut down trees for sticks for emeralds, and then went over to the other mine shaft trying to get some redstone and some other supplies that I need for more trading stations and more launchers. Found a lot of gold and some decent redstone. Now that I have a diamond pick and know when to use it, it's definitely making sense. And was able to find and clear out the cave spider spawner, primarily using water just to keep those uh, poisony buggers away from me. While I was down there on day 30, I got always a wither skull and this is overpowered and broken, but I'm not going to the nether and I'm not even thinking about fighting the wither just yet. So I ran back home and started doing a little bit more trading. I saw a beehive really late at night, so quickly made a campfire and just planted one under there, figuring it would passively generate honey that I could go get to then start worrying about waxing my house. I killed an enderman to get the last pearl, and I'm starting to think that I'm ready for a dragon fight soon. On day 31, I got a mod that if you held a bell in your offhand while fishing, the bell would ring when there was a fish on your hook, which allowed me to watch some YouTube videos for a little bit while I was AFKing for half of this day. I prepped all of my gear, food, and supplies, and spent the entire rest of the day heading back over to the stronghold, dug my way back in, and built up another portal, and then just didn't ignite it. Don't know what I was thinking there lit the end portal, and was ready to jump in. Right before I entered the end, I unlocked wood armor, which is super helpful, let me tell you. And the first thing that I was unprepared for is that the end is filled with Squid Game dolls. Lots and lots of Squid Game dolls. Squid Game dolls that hit you for five hearts if they happen to get a hold of you, and there were more of them than there were Endermen on this island, so I died. A lot. Look, I spent maybe four hours trying to do this dragon fight with the dolls enabled, so I shut them off 
and then we went through again on day 33, where it was a lot more of a traditional dragon fight. Bowing down all of the crystals, knowing all of the angles, and I'm feeling at this point like this is an absolute breeze, just bowing down the dragon and killing it when it's on its perch on day 34, stabbing her in the throat, collecting all of the experience, the egg, and remembering to turn the mod back on before we go forward. And you know what? This whole installing a mod every day is starting to get a little time consuming. So let's do it in batches. I installed 10 mods to cover the next 10 days. Those include trash cans, storage doors, apple skins, chisel, bamboo everything, seals, cookable berries, bridges, gnomed, and loot beams. So Minecraft is basically destiny now. Those were immediately apparent and I really like them actually. I'm probably gonna install this in every mod pack I ever make from going forward. This stuff is really cool. I crafted up a garbage can, which destroys any item put inside of it, which is extremely helpful and then use the chisel to decorate all the different types of planks around my house to give it a lot more character. Late into the evening, I remembered I had sweetberry bushes right in front of my house, so I picked and cooked a few of those, and it has 30, 30 saturation. That's ridiculous. Next day, I used the end stone to decorate the enchantment setup just because I think it looks nice. Harvesting a bunch of dark wood to start making a bridge over from one of those little outcroppings to another. I made a set of storage drawers to hold the bulk materials for a few of the different blocks that I had multiple stacks of right now. And now that I had a lot more coal on hand from all of my mining trips, spent some time torching around the house to secure a greater perimeter of safety. And whew, is that gonna become very important very soon. On day 37, knowing the coordinates of the stronghold, I dug to where that would be in the Crimson Forest over in the nether, and then lit a portal. I got jump scared multiple times by a few different piglin attacks. Apparently my gold crown doesn't count as gold armor. Dug my way up to the surface, found my way over to the little drop shaft down into the end portal room, and jumped over into the end on day 38, purling over to the outer islands, now with the squid game dolls enabled to try to find a end city. There's one relatively close to my first gateway with the ship attached. So I just pillared directly up to the ship, nabbing some high tier loot and my first wings, flying over to the top of one of the nearby end cities to loot the chests over on that side, which continued into day 39. Now I don't have rockets, so I'm primarily relying on gravity to get me from place to place, but I was able to get my first shulker box, which expanded my utility even more. And since I didn't have to worry about pearls, just flew through the gateway to return home just in time to sleep and kick it off to day 40, where I was doing a little bit of organizing my inventory and get my armor fully and properly enchanted with level 30. Crouching is overpowered. It even grows sugarcane. You can't even bone meal sugarcane, but me going eh, 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 makes sugarcane grow. I love it. With that on hand, I used a bunch of rockets to fly around, finding a nearby spruce village and sleeping there. On day 41, I continued flying to explore the local area and found a jungle temple and a completable nether portal right close by. Just on the other end of that, there was a wandering trader with no llamas, which was strange. Once I talked to them though, they attacked. Okay, so that's what it's like when Mongo is evil and deceit. I was a bingo fuel though, so I really only had enough rockets to barely get me home before calling it a night. Day 42, being able to crouch harvest bamboo is just so exciting, I love it. And turning all of that into sticks is working really well to get me emeralds. I can also craft up iron farms, but I need buckets of lava for that. I flew over to a nearby lava pool and then did my best Tanisha impression to give myself a crafting table to make several buckets of lava turn into iron farms, each of which gets a villager and gives me a lot of iron. <laughs> On day 43, I did a little bit of fishing first thing in the morning to get some fish to be able to breed the cats, to be able to make a few more of them so I can creeper-proof certain areas of my base and also to prepare myself for a creeper farm that I think I can build to make sure I'll be able to fly everywhere. I turned a lot of the bamboo into the new blocks that I had access to with fences and blocks being used for decoration throughout the village and the iron farms are finally producing. On day 44, since I can now fly, I went back over to the nether and flew over to the fortress and since skeletons will always drop wither skulls, I only had to kill three to prepare myself for a potential wither fight a little bit later. Maybe this is what it's like being dreamed. 
I flew home and placed them in a decorative position on my wall for now. I have them, but I don't think I'm quite ready for that battle just yet. On day 45, I did a little bit of wood harvesting and collected all of the resources out of all of the iron farms, which was just enough to allow me to make a bunch of hoppers that I could pretty much automate this solution now. Routing all of their outputs to a singular double chest, it's loud and it's kind of annoying, but it totally works. But I spent the rest of the day crouching to grow the fields to power the villager breeder and crouching on the bamboo to get more sticks for trades as well as more bamboo fences to be able to decorate the village. And this iron farm is kind of loud, but it totally works. And I'm starting to feel like I have everything under control which is time for the next round of mods. Next round of mods, I installed Rats, the Mimic mod, Piggy Banks from MC Dungeons, Cursed Earth, I can make dice now, sword displays, infinity and mending, colored lanterns, craftable portal recipes, and oh. The second I joined, there's little sussy boys everywhere. These things spawn in droves. I also do the kill sound when you kill them, which is so much fun. I enchanted the bow, trying to see if I could get infinity or mending before I had to worry about combining the two, and crafted up a blue D6. It was not exactly what I expected, but it's still pretty cool. When it got to the night though, I realized how dangerous and broken this Among Us mod actually was. As one of the imposters hit me for eight hearts of damage, damage bolt they absolutely fly i was able to escape just barely going back to the home and sleeping into day 47 where i was baiting the among us imposters into the water to be able to stab them from underneath when they couldn't kill me these things hit like a truck it is awful so i quickly re-enchanted my armor to get higher tiers and got two new villagers to be able to get books i immediately want protection for and mending before the next night's even gonna happen and that's because i am spamming on that bed the second the sun goes down so no red imposters spawn day 48 Easy Villagers makes cycling trades a breeze. All you really have to do is click a button and it'll get you a new set of trades like that. So getting mending and protection is really just a matter of patience and not accidentally clicking it when you get the trade that you wanted. That totally didn't happen, don't worry about that. But as I was in the process of trying to get the books that I wanted, a plague doctor with a couple of rats on leads started to walk through the base and yeah, that, that, that that feels very concerning as i was once again spamming on the bed before it could get dark into day 49 where i set up a few more villagers i have both of the books that i want but i thought i could set up a few toolsmith villagers to get iron trades in it's still expensive but it is a very reliable source of emeralds now that i have a very reliable source of iron coming from those iron farms i disenchanted and upgraded my pants got another protection four book made a second set of diamond boots but didn't see any good in chance on those while running was starting to become a little more of a liability than actually working and this plague doctor is legitimately freaking me out just floating around here on day 50 i remembered that on deceit i'm the traitor so i spent a good chunk of the day just running around and killing these among us people and yeah in my notes it just says was a traitor on here too decided to kill them on day 51 i think i have a strategy for whenever the imposters try to kill me throw it on a bucket of water they can't swim against the current and I can just shoot them down with my new bow it's a one hit kill but only if I'm at full draw and they move way too fast so if they target me first I'm in trouble I'm starting to keep track of how many of each color I've killed in the chest right next to the wood because my organization is amazing but every time one of them targets me it's just this panic run to try to get two blocks up or a water barrel down to be able to shoot them before they can stab me I have no notes for 52 to 56. Really? I have no notes? Starting on day 52, I go on a little bit of an expedition into the nether, using my very few rockets sparingly to cover over individual lava lakes and walking on land to make the distance to be able to find more landmarks. I really need potions if I'm going to take on the wither or really at this point progress any further in this world and since a fortress failed a bastion might just work i found the right type of bastion digging in through the back wall making sure that i was never accessible by piglin brutes and just carefully nipping at everybody's ankles and looting all the chests i worked my way down and in this last minute of i just have to go for it dropped down and got the nether ward, attempting to tower up and then being knocked off of my pillar, panic running and sealing myself into a corner 
corner, digging very slowly all the way back out until I was back into open land. From there, I did a combination of using my coordinates and an obsidian boat to cover the lava lakes and then towering upwards and sailing over in air to cover just that last bit of distance to get back to the portal and cross back into the overworld around day 55. From there, I dug out a little spot and made a place for all of the nether wart that I had collected, which unfortunately is crouch proof. It is uncrouchable. It cannot be crouched. So this is the one thing I'm actually gonna have to wait for. As the potions brewed, I just did some long range sniping on all of the imposters that I happened to see until there was one inside of a house. So I named them sus and kept them inside. They're my pet forever now. Day 56, I realized there's one last thing I need from the nether before the wither fight, and that's a ghast tier. I want regeneration potions to counter the wither effect to make sure that I can, you know, stay alive. But with all of the other random mods, ghasts are extremely rare for some reason, as there's just Among Us and Squid Game dolls running around everywhere. The first one that spawned gave me an advancement because I shot their ghast fireball at the last possible second to kill them with that, but no tier. The second one was the one who dropped the tier, so I immediately ran back, started brewing up some regeneration potions, and again, spammed the bed so that I wouldn't be killed in my sleep. And with that, it was time for another round of mods. Now, chickens will drop feathers. You can sit on basically anything. There's nice, beautiful falling leaves, scuba gear, spike traps, additional banners, compressed blocks, uppers, classic bars, and chimes. On day 57, I enjoyed the beauty of the world. The new little leaf particles running off of the trees, making a few iron stands for a few of the gold swords that I had collected, and making some compressed cobblestone, which looks a little bit different than all of the other gray blocks that I found, thankfully. I started digging out what I knew would be the shell for a creeper farm. Since I had unlocked Cursed Earth a little while back, that will actually spawn mobs like nobody's business given the right conditions. So the next day, I was using all of the wood to just make as many trapdoors as possible to start at least one small chamber of the creeper farm. We're going to use iron spikes as the killing platform for this because why not use the mods as long as they're there? And uppers makes it really easy to just filter all of the resources up to a singular barrel instead of having to worry about a big complex redstone machine. Once that was sealed, it was time to spawn the wither because that's what I need to get cursed earth. So I took a deep breath, checked my armor, and here we go. And with obsidian armor, my protection enchants, and a really solid bow, I was able to quickly get the wither down to its melee range. I used both of my golden apples and one of my regeneration potions as my primary healing to keep me alive, but at the end of the day, the wither fell okay, without we're much doing this. Still have yet to be withered. Oh, cool. Yo! That went really well. That went really well. Wow, I was expecting that to be way worse. I mean, we're fine, right? We're fine. We're fine. How long is Wither gonna keep affecting me? Two minutes! That goes for so long. Okay, we're just gonna cover this up and pretend it didn't happen. What are you looking at, Cal? You're fine. It says a lot that I had just killed the god of death in yet another reality, and I'm hiding underwater from a bunch of red sussy boys who just want to stab me in the throat. This mod's balance is way off. The next day, since I had let it get dark, there were so many imposters spawned. So I had to basically spend the first half of the day just shooting them down from range, just constantly missing the shot until they go zip, 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 and are just standing still again that I could actually hit them. But once I had done that, I used the Wither Roses from the Wither Fight to spawn the first few blocks of Cursed Earth, crouching so that it would spread and take over the entire interior space. Also, since I had a Wither Star, I started setting up a beacon. I have infinite iron, so I could get a top tier beacon in relative ease, and that would make me feel a lot safer from the Among Us people. D62, I already have a tier three beacon and it's just waiting for the iron to generate to get it up to a tier four. I went to go check on the creeper farm and nothing had actually spawned. 
I was checking out all of the uppers, sniping any imposters who were close by, and working on the roof of the trading hall, just waiting for the whole thing to kind of click. As I replanted all of the nether wart, I rechecked on the farm and nothing had yet spawned. It was kind of weird. I was checking on all the configs and all the back end. The color for the cursed earth was wrong. We fixed that immediately after, but it just didn't seem to be working. The next morning, while still stressing over the farm, I had a little sit just to try to clear my mind and think. The sound of the bamboo wind chimes directly above my head just kept whispering to me, Bobcat, Bobcat. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So I walked away, just trying to get out of render distance so that all of the mobs that were in this general area would despawn and then the cursed earth would take priority. And once I did, uh, it worked a little too well. Looking inside of that thing and seeing that many imposters, that many dolls, those, that is probably the most lethal few blocks in all of Minecraft across any reality. That is legitimately terrifying. But we're only a few days until Christmas, so you knew I had to put one of those Santa hats on, right? So, there you go. Ho, ho, ho. The next day, collecting over half a stack of gunpowder from the farm, I decided to go out flying to see what the world had in store. I found a sunken ship with some eh loot inside, making my way over towards the Shattered Savannah and the first loot pig who I killed on the side of a river for a bunch of emeralds and diamonds. From there, I found a desert with unfortunately no temple immediately visible, but I did find a patch of drowned with about half of them wearing scuba gear and one of them with a trident. I might not have walked away with a battle fork, but I did walk away with three quarters of a diving suit. If I could find a pair of pants and get the full set bonus, we might use that a little bit later in this playthrough. The nearby buried treasure had a lot of everything, and I take all the things. Flying my way back to base to deal with the very loud creeper farm, which I don't even think I can call just a creeper farm at this point. I did a little bit of trading before sailing off towards the stronghold the next day, finding a mushroom biome only about like one degree off of where I had gone in my first path. I could have found this way sooner. But I flew over to the stronghold and did something that you might not be expecting. These mods are honestly really powerful. The next day I was building the portal inside of the village, which is now right here and I don't need to go far for it, using some chisel block to give it a really nice marble look. Once the portal was there and with an extra few stacks of rockets in my pocket, I flew over the void towards some new end cities to get shulker shells so I could have shulker boxes on top of my backpack to have even more inventory space. The diamonds and high tier diamond gear that's in end cities definitely wasn't that bad either as I found upgrades for both my helmet and my boots, as well as a backup elytra. But after only about 10, 15 minutes of end raiding, I returned back home so that on day haha -ha funny number, I could use some of those new decorative blocks to make the place look really good. After the trading halls looking nice, I organized all of the loot that I had collected into different shulker boxes, realizing that I, wait, it's, oh, it's day 69, so never mind, that's, that's more mods. I can measure things now, I can excavate ores, I can make pumpkin spice stuff. Decorative blocks are now available. Pirate hats could be findable. TNT foods, which seems like a bad idea in hardcore. Some expanded combat, being able to drink beer. Eternal winter, which is concerning. And then, oops, there's a homicidal duolingo bird. What? But on day, haha, -ha, funny number, I built out some of the new decorative blocks just to give the village just a little bit more spice. And then organized my backpack and colored all the shulkers so I had an idea of what exactly I had and where I would put it. I made a quiver to open up even more inventory space, being able to stack multiple stacks of arrows and it just kind of living on a phantom inventory slot on my back. And, uh, oh, it it's snowing now. The mob farm is literally overflowing and there's very little I can do to slow that down. And I just realized I could wear the backpack as a backpack and I didn't need to hold it in my inventory for the last 60 days. On day 70, I went over to the tent that I had started making earlier with the checkered wool and turned it into a beer tent, setting up a few kegs and preparing to brew different ales to be able to get their enhancing effects. It takes 20 minutes though, so during that time I flew out and around. Since the water's freezing by my base, I need to go get sugarcane from other places. 
But I spent the rest of the day putting up some of the new decorative blocks to make the tent feel a little bit more supported, some tables, buttons, and connecting the path to the main path network of the village so far. On day 71, I committed a sin. I made pumpkin spice baked potatoes. Now you see, I, I, I feel bad about this. I, I do legitimately feel bad about this. I regret everything. On day 72, I flew out in the last cardinal direction heading east from my base and found pretty much nothing but frozen and cold biomes. There's even more huge icebergs as well as taiga forests and snow covering the ground in a lot of places where I hadn't seen it before. It's almost exactly on the chunk border. Every new chunk is basically frozen. I also finally ate one of those pumpkin spice baked potatoes and they poison you. So mad respect for the mod developers. These things are war these things are awful in every language. But as I went home, the beer was finally ready, so I drank a few and it gave you special effects. I should have saved some of it, but I just downed eight mugs of beer and felt no negative side effects whatsoever. Turns out my Minecraft character is an absolute champ. But I need to switch back to good food, so I'm back on the berries and the pumpkin spice has been sequestered off into a barrel, never to be touched again. I grabbed some more sugar cane as things are continuing to get worse and snow is piling up. I grabbed a full stack of food and then made a Spanish textbook because I need to see what this Duolingo bird is all about. These imposters though are relentless. I spent the morning shooting them before heading off and trying to find a jungle. Sailing over, sailing over an ocean monument and actually getting mining fatigue, which was not what I was expecting to happen. I did eventually find a jungle, but the colors were muted, darker, looked like a taiga forest. And I'm thinking, this is not a good sign. There's probably something I need to do about that. But first things first, I need to see what this boss is about. I needed to find a parrot and smack it with a Spanish textbook in order to summon it, and that's exactly what I did. Flying away, phase one is literally four bow shots to just take it down, and from there, it spawned into phase two with some really terrifying sound effects, but just kind of standing there and tanking the hits. It took quite a few more bow shots, and then phase three spawned. Okay, I noticed two problems. Problem one, it appears to be immune to arrows. <laughs> Problem two, it's holding a shotgun. <laughs> oh no, okay. All right, so let's do this. Let's... I do not know how well this is gonna go. Let's find out. Ow. Okay, Duolingo, <laughs> come here. Oh no. So as I loaded back into the world to get some final screenshots thinking that would be the end of it, I was fine. I was standing over the bed, but the world had, the world had changed. There was a massive snowstorm outside with layers of snow coating everything far quicker than ever before. I went down into the farms to grab more rockets materials and there's just, it's a whiteout. You can barely see more than 15 blocks in any direction. Flying is at this point is practically impossible. I'm just standing here looking at a mess of things. Also, strays are spawning now and shooting me with slowness arrows and they have really strong armor on at the same time as well. And this just feels, something feels wrong. Something feels like it, it, it doesn't make sense. Tried to fly around again to get out of the storm, away from it, but it's just a wall of particles in every direction as far as you can see. So I slept thinking that would reset the weather cycle and nope, uh, no it's not. And some of the mobs that I've been seeing this entire time, they're gone now. Sus has disappeared altogether. The Squid Game dolls, I've barely seen one of them since. Almost every mob that's spawning seems to be either a skeleton, a creeper, a very fast creeper, or a stray. Trying to venture out is basically just 
fighting an invisible wall of snow, so I contained myself to the village, trying to see what I could do. I put down a ton of torches, but it didn't slow down the snow at all, and I realized that my farmer villager was no longer harvesting crops, or at least the ones that they had harvested weren't getting replanted. But I slept again, and my hearts had gone down. I lost another two hearts just out of nowhere. Now, one went down from the unhealthy dying mod, that makes sense, but the rest... I, did, I hadn't died again, I just slept through the night. I tried venturing out even further, but I have to sail just a few blocks over the water to avoid just crashing into anything, to have any idea where I'm going. All I really have to go off of is the beam of the beacon and the compass that I have in my pocket to point me, to let me know if I'm heading to or from my home. It, there's no indication whatsoever of where I'm going or where anything is, the world, has frozen over. And now it's three sleeps? About to be four. Okay. And it hasn't changed. It's it's too early. <laughs> it's too early. This is this doesn't make sense. This is this is not one this is uh, I should have more time. There should be more time. I should I shouldn't have to go yet. Why is this one falling apart just like all the others? This should be helping. It's not. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, not again. Look, we had a deal. Alright, we have a deal. I'm supposed to be able to just take my time and go one at a time, one trip at a time. We had a deal. We had a... Mm. This is too soon. It's too early. This is not when this is supposed to happen. Do you hear me? We have... I have more to do. I have more time. I need more time. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Alright. I get it. I get it. I get it. Just... <sighs> Just make sure I'm not alone in the next one, alright? We'll talk about this later. Have you ever heard the phrase, be careful what you wish for? So this time, there's no mods. It is a pure vanilla instance. The twist, however, is that every 25 days, the server is open to the world and they have one objective, kill the Lagundo. And with hundreds of them and only one of me, can I survive? We're gonna find out. But it's time to get started on the journey, loading up a brand new world, day one. I spawned in a savanna biome, which is something that I don't have a ton of experience in. I gotta say, acacia, not my favorite wood. I don't think that's too much of a hot take though. I did find an acacia village and they do be wild in with cursed water and a nether portal directly in the middle of the village, which gave me a fortune pick right away, which was huge. I did a little bit of mining, prevented some cursed water from breaking this reality, killed their iron golem to get some early game resources, some magma blocks, some netherrack, and did a little bit of searching in the nearby caves. I realized I should probably turn on shaders so this one looks like every other multiverse adventure, and then took a quick nap amongst all of the bushes around me. Day two, I used that magma block to mine out iron underwater, which is an absolutely S tier move. As I just continued walking in a random direction, trying to put as much distance between me and spawn as possible. I found another nether portal, which had some basic gear, and another village, which I would end up calling my home for a good chunk of this challenge so far. I established a quick forward base, stashed all my gear, planted a bunch of sugarcane, and then killed another iron golem, sleeping into day three, where I just looked around and saw what I could find. A bunch of melons everywhere was great, and then I used more underwater mining until I came out into an aquifer into a huge underground cave. And I have to say, complimentary shaders makes this really easy. I crafted up a shield, and I am very undergeared, but it's time to go get some diamonds right away. Day three and I already have diamonds. The last world that I did this in was my 2000 days hardcore world. So that feels like a good sign. I continued walking around and mining down on the deep slate level into day four, finding more diamonds, gold, and redstone, all components that I know I'm going to need. I'm still squishy as heck though, without any armor, but a shield is doing wonders. I dug my way into a geode, 
which in any other situation would be great, but doesn't help me here. I returned back up to the surface at about the midday point using a lighter and a sword to get some cooked steaks really easily because that's how food works before calling it a night as every villager was trying to borrow my bed. Going into day five, my first diamond spent was going into an enchanting table and using the leather that I had to build some bookcases. I am very much in speed run mode as I wanna be prepared as possible for the first hunt so I'm not just mowed down instantly. One of the villagers wanted to trade sharpness five with me, which was amazing right off the bat. So I spent the whole day bone mealing to get enough wheat to trade with a farmer to get enough emeralds to lock in their trades right away. That is such a huge win so early on. And then on day six, it's time to get into more resource collection. I chopped down all the acacia trees, which again, is not my favorite, but I can trade them all with a Fletcher in stick form to get even more emeralds. I made some shears and harvested wool from all of the free range sheep that were around the pace, making a few additional beds so that the villagers would continue to expand on the town's population. Doing more stick trades and more crafting, that was a really solid day of economics. Going into day seven, I'm one week into this world, harvesting all of the wheat fields for anything that is at full capacity, trading that with the emerald, just getting them leveled up. They want melons, which is awesome considering I have a ton sitting around here, before jumping in a boat and going to explore more around the savannah. I used the flint and sword technique to make sure that my food reserves were staying at max and stayed up late tonight, trying to hunt down spiders for some bows for some string, because I have a few upgrades that I want to make. Day eight, I was still mentally recovering from the absolutely scuffed speedrun that I had done with the Scuff Boys. Go watch that video, it's a lot of fun. So I kind of forgot where I was. I ran around searching for a lava pool, decided to go down to the lower levels instead, and ended up fighting mobs in a large and deep slate cavern. Here I found more diamonds, more gold, more resources, and an enderman who dropped an ender pearl for me. That was a big win. I grabbed obsidian from a lava fur, more diamonds whenever I saw them, so I have enough for a portal, and ran out of arrows while fighting so many creepers, digging myself into a one wide tunnel and then just pillaring straight up to the surface. And I was at like negative 50, so that took basically the rest of the day with an unenchanted pickaxe. I crested into the water on day nine, not too far away from the village that I was currently based at, smelting up all the gold, cause I'm gonna need that for both bartering and golden apples and building a quick nether portal right here by the base to venture out into another hellish dimension. I invested four of my emeralds into stacks of arrows so I'd have enough projectiles to fight ghasts, slept very quickly, and on day nine, we ventured out into the nether. I quickly turned off shaders so I could see a little bit further and saw not one, but two nether fortresses in very close proximity to where I had entered. I used a little bit of the gold to trade with some piglins that were just wandering around randomly as there wasn't really a bastion to jump into, getting a few resources and several pearl trades. I spent the rest of day 10 and into day 11, strategically clearing out the nether fortress. This is the least geared and the earliest that I have ever been in here. And this is far better than the pace that I had in the scuffed speed run. Maybe this is where all my good speedrunning skills and luck went to. Who knows? We'll never know. It couldn't have gone better. But finding wandering blazes and making sure to bonk any wither skeletons that I saw with head high posts for them that I could just sneak my way under, I was making good progress. I got enough diamonds through the chests in the fortress to craft a diamond chest plate, which was a major one from my iron one that I had started this trip with. Eventually finding my way towards the blaze spawner that was available to open air. I spent a good 10 minutes here just collecting blaze rods because I wanted to make sure that I could just have what I needed. I captured a few straight endermen in boats on the way back, getting enough pearls and enough blaze rods that as I returned to the overworld late in day 12 to do a little potion brewing, I did inventory on what I had in my inventory and I can, I can go to the end? Is this a good idea? I'm not sure this is a good idea. Let me sleep on it. Day 13, I slept on it. It's probably a good idea. At the top of end cities is amazingly powerful diamond loot. And that can save me a ton of time on enchanting, resource gathering, and levels, which I will also get a ton of if I happen to kill the dragon. So I crafted up enough rockets that if I happened to find an elytra, I'd be able to get home safely. Enough emerald trades for arrows so that I'd have enough projectiles for the fight since my bow was basically unenchanted 
crafted up my eyes of Ender and threw one and the journey was on. I spent all day following the eyes, almost due west, as far as they would go. At this point, I was nervous that we were gonna start hitting on the world border because this dimension was far more limited than any other. It was set up as an arena of sorts, and it was gonna be collapsing each and every day, losing blocks and potential outroads and methods of travel. As I continued to follow the eyes, I actually sailed over an ocean monument, which tempted me for the gold, but I'm not sure was a risk I wanted to take this early. Wait, I'm talking about risks and I'm about to go to the end? What am I thinking? But I did find a portion of the stronghold exposed to water, dug my way in and started on stronghold nav. In the library were a ton of really solid books. In the well were a ton of exploding creepers and a child who wanted to bite my ankles. And as it rolled over to day 14, I found the stronghold portal. I broke the spawner and had one eye in it. And wouldn't you know it, I actually had enough eyes to go to the end? I jumped in the portal and I can't believe I'm doing this. This is day 14 and I'm fighting a dragon. But thankfully for this one, there's no Squid Game dolls to constantly mess with me or additional end mechanics. This is a pure classic vanilla dragon fight. And that I can do in my sleep. I use arrows to knock out most of the end crystals, having to pillar up to one of them, but making sure to keep my feet hidden because explosions don't affect your face, children. Keeping a few ender pearls at the ready in case I got heated up in the sky so that might be pretty safe. I used an axe primarily and bow down the dragon and with no enchantments, this took quite a while, but the dragon did eventually fall. With 66 levels of experience in my pocket and the dragon egg safely stored in my inventory as well, this is the point where normally you would go home, but I was on a mission. As much as killing the dragon was nice, I was here for the loot in the end cities. So I pillared out towards an end gateway through a pearl. And as it rolled over to day 15, I marked my coordinates and then started running through the end, bridging over gaps, torching my way around before I eventually found an end city. Shulker boxes are actually gonna be really nice here too because I'm gonna be on the move a lot and any additional inventory is gonna be extremely useful. That many shulker boxes, however, was quite dangerous for me. Near the top of the first tower, I got some excellent gear, a silk touch iron pickaxe, which is gonna come in really handy, some diamonds, gold, you name it. Found an ender chest later, and using one of the chests here and a few shulker shells that I had collected, started crafting shulker boxes so I could store all of this loot. This continued for several days, going into day 16, where I also found an end ship, which had some more resources in the chests, and an elytra at its bow. And with that, being able to fly around, I actually flew in the wrong direction for a little while, coming up on the world border in the end, with an end gateway directly in front of it. Lucky me. As I used that end gateway to return home, and then jumped in the portal to return back to the overworld, I was feeling pretty good. I had a lot of what I needed, and I still had more time to prepare. Day 17 was all about enchanting. So NCD loot is really great, but sometimes the enchantments aren't exactly optimal. And I had put some really basic protection on the diamond chest plate that I had. So I used a grindstone to get rid of that and tried to optimize the enchants a little bit using some of the 69 plus levels, nice, that I had from killing the dragon and a few shulker boxes after that. I was able to get my gear to a pretty good spot and then took a look over the other stuff that I had collected and, ooh, this hurt, but I burned it. There's no way I'm gonna risk this falling into enemy hands. With a full set of diamond gear and a partially enchanted elytra on my back, 17 days into this fight, I am really feeling prepared for what's coming. I spent the night flying around, basically hunting creepers for gunpowder for both TNT and rockets. I'm gonna need both of those pretty soon. I also needed a lot more iron to set a few surprises for my guests who would be joining me in this world. And I went searching out for all of that. Going into day 18, I continued the burning and God, this feels, I feel a little guilty about that one. I made an anvil with the iron, named my bow, haha <laughs> funny, and started combining swords and armor pieces to get the best enchantments I possibly could. 
Using sticks for emeralds was my main way of generating revenue right now, and trading that into the farmer to be able to get some better food was really important. I also stocked up on arrows since I didn't have infinity, and demolished all of the houses because they're made of logs, and logs can become sticks, and sticks can become money. As I slept and rolled over into day 19, I went generally exploring around the world, finding a few ruined portals, looking for a god apple, but this is in the hardcore world, so that luck doesn't translate. Going underwater, just searching for more resources before digging into a large, normal air cave. Here I found an abandoned mine shaft because it's a hardcore video, but I'm collecting all of the gold and lapis that I could find. At this point, my gear is pretty well up and I just need resources. Going into day 20, it's more enchanting, getting the best possible enchants I can find on any of the gear that I have. I combined with the flame bow that I had received to fully equip the elbow and then did more trading for apples that I turned into golden apples. Protection four would start going on all of my armor so I'd be a little bit better off and unbreaking on the elytra so it would last longer before heading to bed and calling it a night both in the game and IRL. I get back to this the next day. Okay, so I just realized I didn't have shaders on. So sorry everybody that the last part of the video just kind of looked like garbage. That's my fault. Day 21, I harvested all of the crops, trading that in for more emeralds, and then trading those emeralds in for additional resources, digging a pit just barely underground to hide the villagers that I had been cultivating and protecting for these past 20 days underground, mainly from other players. I don't want them to find my base. This is way too close to spawn. I spent the night hunting creepers for gunpowder just to shore up my resource Resorves. I spent the night hunting creepers for gunpowder to re-up on rockets and show up my reserves for explosives before running around and looting any other ruined portals that I could find anywhere close to spawn, as well as any other villages. I found another one since all of the villagers back in my home base already had jobs and trades. I spent some time just re-rolling enchants on this specific villager trying to get mending, and I got it. I traded all of their hay bales, and I do mean every single one of their hay bales back in towards the village, which they paid me handsomely for as I locked in a few mending books to make sure my gear was gonna last me the rest of this fight. As I was flying around nearby, I found a pillager tower and made note of that. It would come in handy later, as long as the border wouldn't deny it to me before returning back to the village very close to the stronghold, which was still just inside the border, grabbing a bunch of sand and taking a quick nap, allowing my machinations to run free. From there, it was time to fly home. From there, I took a slightly different route back towards the center of the map, passing over a desert and looting a few minecart chests that were just sitting out in the open. As I returned back to the center of the spawn though, to start to lay my traps, there was something waiting there for me. Okay. All right, look, this is the earliest, and I mean by far, <laughs> that you've arrived and you're not supposed to be here. And I know I said I didn't want to, to be alone, but um, that that's not what I meant. That's, that's not what I meant at all. The, uh, you, can, you can leave now. That'd be, that'd be great. Yo, whoa. Whoa. How'd you do that? How did you, you are not supposed to have control out here. <laughs> How did you do that? What did you do? What did you change? Why are you here so soon? Normally takes you longer. And almost as if to answer my question, all of a sudden, other players, other travelers started appearing around the map, each one dressed differently, but looking quite familiar to me in one way or another. And I instantly knew that they did not have my best interests at heart. After taunting them briefly with my superiority in gear, my preparations, the intuition that I had, extremely correct, I legged it, flying away as fast and as far as I could into the setting sun. Day 24 and 25 had basically been wiped away from me, stolen from me. So I spent the time looting additional gear, finding a looting three sword in a nether portal. I promise this isn't a fake speed run. And I used it for gunpowder, which came in very handy to increase my reserves. I didn't have time to set any traps. So mobility was gonna be the biggest thing that was gonna keep me alive on this hunt. There were far more of them than there were of me. And while I knew I had superior gear for 25 days of preparation, there was 45 
50 of them. And if they moved and worked as a unit, they were gonna be able to take me down. I found another village, dropped my shulker boxes for supplies, and while I was, you know, liberating their hay bales, I had my first interaction with somebody in person. He just stood there, menacingly. When he just stood there, using his shield to block my arrows and holding an axe out threateningly, those cold, dead eyes just staring deep into my soul. But I wasn't about to let that happen, and I was going to show them what my true combat prowess was. I downed a quick potion, since I had far too many of them, and quickly hunted down and made my first kill. In this world, I was going to have to fight to survive. At this point, I figured everything in this world was hostile. Everything was out to get me. So I just continued sailing, moving. They could all watch me, see me as if it was being live streamed directly to them. So my location was always available and suspect. And they had these compasses that said that they were pointing directly at me. Something told me that they were going to know where I was, where I wanted them to or not. And I couldn't trust anything in this world until I saw an old friend just pop out in the middle of a field and my prerogative and my directive immediately changed. Okay, this is pink sheep number seven across multiple universes. I honestly don't know why they happen to be so common, but it's a meme and I'm leaning into it, okay? We're gonna make this work. As I put the time in to create a pen for my new friends so I could secure them in, I had a few people just taunt me and tease me down in the corner. And there they were, multiple of them preparing to attack. They didn't have as much gear, but they did outnumber me and I didn't wanna get surprised. It was then that the one I struck down was flying through the sky as if granted some ungodly power. And I was worried, I was concerned that they were gonna break some of the rules and the laws of this universe. But they just stood there to observe, floated there to observe? I got my pink sheep friend locked into a box and then went to hunt the hunters, cutting down one of my own hand and then sticking the spiders to end another. As it rolled over into day 27 though, I had my first real challenge in combat. With that out of the way, I knew that they'd be targeting me over my pink sheep friend, or at least I hoped. So I got out of there, drawing their attention and their ire in a different direction. As I flew back towards spawn, trying to get progress on what they were doing, what infrastructure they were setting up, get intelligence, I found a merchant just setting up, making a space for himself, a self-declared demilitarized zone where no one would attack me either. I left a few fish and continued on my way, heading back into the setting sun, trying to harvest more gunpowder from the creepers that were around me. I was just moving, getting as much distance as I could, making them continuously chase me into day 28, where I had made a lap around the whole world, finding my companion just dangling a little bit dangerously. You know what you did, they said, and I wasn't about to have any of that. I used a little bit of water to damage the fall and then shot down the lead so that they'd be safe, knowing that I'm gonna have to take this fight to them if I'm gonna truly protect my friend. I flew back towards the center of the spawn and teased a little bit, taunted, killed, saw somebody with a really cool appearance and kind of felt compelled to let them go. Flying over towards a jungle, capturing more ender pearls and just maintaining up on resources. As it started to get late into the night on day 28, I had an actual encounter of multiple people this time. Less gear, but damage from more directions meant that I had to think about it a little bit more carefully. The first one was easy enough to get around. They didn't have a shield to prepare themselves. And the second one, while shielded, eventually succumbed to the fire. Everything eventually dies to fire. Day 29, I sailed back towards spawn and left another small donation for the merchant. I don't know why, I feel like they're kind of on my side. As I sailed around glaring at the obelisk, because this is not what I meant, I ended up toying with a few of them. They seemed to respond to me, know about me, seem somewhat connected or in awe or friendly, but I never knew which one of them would turn. Like I did to this person, throwing them a pie as a peace offering and then an arrow to the face to end the conversation. That one, that one I felt bad about. As I had some pity on the least equipped and this almost felt like I was fighting children, I just continued sailing around. 
as I made another lap, I returned back to the planes and saw that the few of these players that were gifted with powers and manipulation, reality changing, the creative spark, they were upping their game as far as trying to mess with me, and I wasn't having any of it. I called their bluff and saw some slime at the bottom. Knowing my pink sheep friend would be safe, I continued focusing on the task at hand. And that's when another prolific reality hopper came my way. As the minutes began to tick down, I could hear this clock ringing in the distance. I knew that I'd have some peace and quiet, some respite soon. So I went and I checked on my pink sheep, which had been fallen down into the cave, luckily safely bouncing on the slime. I'd have to relocate them as soon as I had some peace and quiet, finding a last minute enemy or two before the world became quiet. On day 31, with the voices gone and the other players no longer in the world attempting to kill me, my main focus was moving this pink sheep somewhere where no one would find it, so that way I could actually keep it safe. I did some flying around, seeing a floating island in a shattered savanna, somewhat relatively close by. Checked my resources and thought, yeah, I can make this work. I started bridging up towards the island, which took a good chunk of the day and triggered that whole feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're about to fall to your death all the time in Minecraft. I dug out a little bit of a spot to be able to hide the sheep in, who we named Error, by the way. Grabbed a few straight ender pearls just to re-up on the stock that I had used during the hunt, and then started boating my sheep friend over, being extremely careful in the dark oak and birch forests because I was starting to have flashbacks of a time when I lost another pink sheep in a situation like this. Once I was at the target destination, I was clearing a beachhead fighting creepers and skeletons, and I was able to capture a zombie villager in a boat might be able to use them later. Day 32, it was time to do that whole climb the staircase and get anxiety again, but this time with a sheep, which only increased that level, using wheat to lure them up, just casually holding my breath every time we had to take a turn. I got them into a boat just to hold them on the island for right now, flying back towards the spawn to do a little bit of investigation into what the players were up to. I searched through the different platforms, looked at the mines, went into that chief mart to see what was going Going on here, finding some slimes and another pink sheep behind their house? What is going on with this world? I flew back towards my village and found the sharpness villager that I had lost at some point. I had no idea where they went right before the hunt, leaving them in here. The rest of the villagers were still underground, but only a few blocks so, and if you were to walk on the surface, you'd hear them. And I know more people are coming, so I want them not to be heard. I started digging down as far as I could, hitting a water cave, making a chute through it, and getting to a point where I had a large spot of stone that I could dig out and make a villager breeder down at this level. I set up the water, and while making a chamber right next to the breeder for me to operate out of, dug into a massive cave, something that would be really useful later. All of that setup and mining with an unenchanted pickaxe and everything else takes a really long time. So in day 34, I'm just getting the potatoes and everything set up, the water channel in place, and digging up to a higher level of the same cave to find a zombie volunteer who wants to nibble on my friend's ankles to help them give me better prices. Capitalism is just strange sometimes. I planted all of the potatoes, and in digging up to go get the villagers from the upper chamber found one had already fallen in the hole so that was a bit of jump start that was nice as i made it up to the surface it was starting to get a little bit late so i slept and on the morning of day 35 i found a wandering trader who didn't really have anything super useful grabbing anything i could out of the chest and well the sharpness villager was gonna be hard to move now that they won't find sharpness, I was harvesting melons, grabbed all of the work blocks, and pushed the villagers down into a cave where they would work forever. It's totally not a prison. I set up the last little bit of the spawning area, an enchanting table, iron bars to make the curing process go faster. It just works, don't ask me. And then harvested all of the wheat from the surface so that this village would look abandoned and raided. It's all about psychological warfare, not just the weapons that I'm wielding. And then traded that wheat for money because woo! 
On day 36, I wanted to make this village look well and properly abandoned, so I tamed the cats so I'd be able to get them down into a lower level. I could potentially use this for a gunpowder farm later on if I have the time and resources to do it, so having them tamed would be useful. I flew around from village to village and... Okay, look, I'm not proud of this, but I did take some time to make sure that my enemies would not be able to acquire villagers. <laughs> As I was flying around, I remembered to turn on shaders so everything actually looked nice and pretty. Finding the corner of the world border, and it was contracting inward. Over here in the taiga, though, there's a lot of brown mushrooms, which is awesome because I'm going to need that for potions to start with the cure and infection loop for villagers. I flew back over to where the stronghold was and was checking coordinates and a screenshot that I had pocketed. And yeah, now the portal was on the other side of the wall. The end was no longer accessible to all players, and that's one less thing I had to worry about. I spent the rest of day 37 running around and grabbing sugarcane, and um, uh, mm, uh, okay. All right, at least I'm gonna spare the kid. I flew back towards spawn to continue on gunpowder collection and researching what my enemies were up to on day 38, making sure to go back and get rid of that dirt path so you wouldn't be able to get, you know, a big sign that says sheep up here. I also buried error with some light, don't worry, protecting them on that island so that they would never be captured. And with everything out of the way, it was really inconspicuous. With mushrooms in hand, I flew back to my outpost, making some weakness potions. While that was going, I was just getting the villager breeder set up, which took a good chunk of day 39, giving them enough potatoes to hopefully start making some more. The first one that I infected was my Fletcher, trying to get that stick trade down as low as I could for additional resources, doing multiple infection rounds in the process. On day 40, I'm now in a proper loop, with transport all set up and more villagers being infected and cured. I'm looking for some core trades. The Fletcher as my main resource generation. I'm looking for Unbreaking 3, a Cleric for Ender Pearls, so I'd have a lot of mobility during combat, and other books like Protection, Sharpness, Thorns, Fire Aspect, Flame, anything that will give me an edge in combat. Because I only fought and killed about five or six players in the first hunt, and everybody who had survived was going to keep their progress going into the next one, and I knew they were planning something. But villager work is a slow process, so while it rolled over into day 41, I went down into the dark parts of the cave to fight a bunch of mobs, mainly creepers. This is a very manual gunpowder farm, but an efficient one to some degree, running around and getting everything I could use. As I was doing that into day 42, doing the occasional villager loop whenever I went up to check, I saw a little bit of cobblestone peeking out of one of the corners and went over to find a zombie spawner, which itself was a huge win. And then I opened the chest. <gasps> no! No! No way! All right, a god apple? I know I'm in a race to find them across the universe with Tanisha, but that's really only in the hardcore world. How did I find one here? Well, that's great. It means I have one get out of jail free card whenever I happen to get really jumped in combat. But for the rest of the night, I continued with my villager restoration fortified loop just to get that infinite money glitch and heading back up to the surface, chopping down any tree that I could find and any house that I could find, basically any log that I could find so I could get more sticks. That continued into day 43, where I finally got an unbreaking three trade from my librarian. This is gonna make my gear last so much longer. I put that on all of my diamond gear so it would be able to survive more combat because player versus player is really tough on your armor. From there, I jumped back down just to get more gunpowder for traps and for rockets because I still think mobility is gonna be my biggest factor and being able to kill a bunch of players really early automatically from a distance is huge. One of the creepers exploded, revealing a second spawner very close and then I opened the chest. <laughs> You're kidding me! Look, I'll show you my mods folder, okay? This is all legit. I'm not one of the people who faked this. These, these spawners were pretty close to each other, and I wanted to see if there was a way that I could get them both active in a single farm, which would give me all of the levels that I could ever want for enchanting. 
I spent the rest of the day digging, just trying to find a clear path where I could get line of sight to both, but they were just out of reach. From there, I was mainly doing trading, stocking up on pearls, name tags, gunpowder from the creepers, and then calling it a day. On day 44, I went back up to the surface and I'm really in prep mode. I grabbed all of the obsidian that I could from around the world, completed the nether portal that was right there at spawn, then went off into the nether and found other portals from there and then proceeded to trap them all with lava. You know, if I'm gonna be hunted by a bunch of people, I'm gonna take that time to prepare to my advantage. I also spent a good chunk of day 45 clearing the nether fortresses, breaking any blaze spawners that I could find so that they wouldn't be able to get blaze powder or nether wart that I found in the gardens so that potions are denied to my enemies as well. Lava is gonna be a big part of my strategy, going through portals to find bases and mine shafts and uh, an enchanting table, which I absolutely borrowed. But I wasn't completely alone in this world as Filza's killer decided to visit me in one of the caves. Thankfully, I was very prepared. But all this lava made me remind myself that I could potentially get trapped as well. So I brewed up some fire resistance potions as the sun started to rise into day 46, where I was mainly working in the villager breeder, getting a bunch of arrows from the Fletcher, so I'm prepared for ranged combat, pearls for mobility, and started organizing my shulker boxes that everything would be just so and ready for a fight. As I returned to the surface, I found a few pillagers just sitting on the surface, and I'm thinking, I could start a raid? Totems? That would be huge for combat. I didn't want to risk it at the actual base and have everything just get obliterated over there. So I started flying around trying to find a village. The world border though was closing in more and more with each passing moment and the tower that I had seen, as well as the village that was near the stronghold that I thought would be pretty good since it was surrounded by water, both of those were now outside of my reach. As I was flying around, however, I found another way to get totems, this woodland mansion embedded into the side of the hill. I snuck in through the roof, bowing down the first evoker to grab my first totem of undying, and faced the second one head on, but my combat wasn't quite strong enough before they were able to summon a few Vex. And Vex are really terrifying. I think they're probably the most dangerous mob in the game because you can't block them from getting to them. There's another evoker around the corner with more spells flying my way and I got down to three hearts as they forced me out of the house purling away. I reset the mob spawns, flew back towards the mansion and was able to eliminate the third evoker grabbing my third totem of undying which is just a huge win when it comes to player versus player combat. From there, I started flying back to the spawn to lay my traps and prepare for my grand machinations of evil. And then this world is just as cracked as series two. This is the third naturally spawning pink sheep in this world. <laughs> what? What is going on? Okay. Okay, so we have a backup. What? What are you? Okay, let's make sure that they're not in the dark. There you go. Unless they're pink sheep escaped. No! There's another one right here! <laughs> How? 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 I ended day 46 by using my best deceit brain tactics. I might not have set the trap for Tanisha in her base, but I definitely took notes, making several different TNT minecart traps at a house, at a base that I had seen with a pressure plate there, and continuing to pour lava over all of the portals that I could possibly find. I continued that on day 47 as I was mining out a cavity so that nobody could place blocks on the floor. While there, I found a piece of ancient debris, which is pretty big. That makes me feel that I could probably go find more. I found a spot where I was able to dig down into the Y15 range where ancient debris spawns naturally and then just got to branch mining using my pick and just obliterating as much netherrack as I possibly could. I found several different chunks of ancient debris, continuing my way through, running back and having to use diamonds to repair the pickaxe just so it would be able to make it that far, before going back to the nether and making a bit of a mistake on my way to where I dug in. 
With that little near-death jump scare out of the way, I went back down into the debris mines, using chunk borders and mining along them to double my chances of exposing it, since only one vein of ancient debris will spawn in each chunk of Minecraft. And right near the end of day 48, after three days non-stop of mining, my boots were complete and I had a full set of netherite armor. I kept mining around though for the rest of the day because I needed a few more pieces so I could make that one last ingot to upgrade my sword. And I'm really ready for a fight now between that, the god apple, and everything else I've done over the last 25 days. So on day 49, I did final preparations, converting as much as I could in the way of emeralds into verifiable resources that were immediately useful just in case this place would get discovered. I brewed up my final potions, organized my inventory, and prepared for battle. And when I returned back to the center of the world, now there wasn't just one obelisk, there were several. And this odd obsidian structure that I didn't know what its purpose was, until I started seeing names of the people that I had slain in the previous hunt reappearing over it. This could resurrect them, bring them back, and that, that was extremely dangerous. <gasps> Yay, it worked! <laughs> I died from a melon. Tee -hee. On day 51, when the hunters started to reappear in the world, I saw a familiar face. Initially, I was really concerned, but not 30 seconds later was he immediately killed by a skeleton. I spoke with the voices in my head, that's Twitch chat, and they agreed to give him another chance because he didn't know that it was hardcore. I would actually come to regret that later. I operated around spawn for a little while, shooting down anybody who seemed even vaguely hostile and giving a little bit of food to the people who seemed oblivious to my presence. While continuing my travel around the server and uh, culling the, the, the villager population to make sure that my enemies would not be able to get some. On day 52, as I flew back over the spawn, I was challenged and I wasn't about to let that go lightly. What's your sign say? The influx is battle tower. Try me legs, you won't. What? You what, mate? You what? The audacity. There you go. I'm trying your battle tower. I've tried it. Feeling very much prepared for this, knowing I've had 50 days when some of them have only had a tenth of that, I went on the hunt instead. I was searching down and trying to track down players I saw who were well geared, not wanting them to continue to snowball into actually decent weapons and armor. I was tempted to follow down this one wide tunnel to a random thing down underground, and no, that's totally a trap. But I did have others come my way and continuously harass me. Flame bows aren't super effective underwater, but you know what works? Stabbing people in the face. Oh, ooh, cool. Hi, you're dying now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Grey Dog. I did feel bad about that one, though, so I did store all of their gear underground in a chest. I wonder if they actually went back and got it at any point in time. Seeing other players start to make advancements in the nether, I made a brand new nether portal, hoped it was far enough away from anything that I had trapped, and went over into the hellish dimension. From there, I found another nether fortress, and that several of the portals had since been untrapped, meaning that they were starting to make progress. I flew around for a little while, trying to see any potential targets before heading back to the overworld, finding another village and handling it. I went back to the nether, flying around to try to track down people in a fortress who I had just seen get blaze rods. This one player walked in front of me at the worst possible time. I followed them through the portal and immediately kind of just Sorry. I was at the world border, which meant we were pretty far out, and I wasn't sure if the dimensions were linking properly to each other. So I broke the portal, returned back to hell, and ran around searching for a few people who were teasing me. This reality temporarily broke down for a little bit, and we were all shunted back to the hub. Don't worry, we fixed that. And I saw Mongo in my skin. That, that felt like a threat, I'm not certain. Once back in the reality though, I saw something that felt even more like a threat, and the fight was on. They're going to die for this. 
A few of my fellow deceivers had given me specific coordinates to go to, a challenge, a threat, a thought that I wouldn't take them up on it. I would. There's no way I'd walk directly into a trap. Well, they overestimate my intelligence. I walked directly into their trap, but I kind of saw them coming. Don't make me use this. Okay. Okay. Alright, that's three. Who else is coming in? Bring it on! <laughs> no one? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did that not happen? <laughs> GG's though, good fight, good fight. I'm just talking, I'm just talking, I'm talking trash, but that was a good fight. Yeah, sure, I had to burn my god apple to go 3v1 because I was doing more damage to myself with the pearls than they were doing to me, but the last thing I wanted to do was give them the satisfaction of ending this video early. I went back to the overworld while I still had the god apple effects running all the way to spawn since I was out of rockets and mowed down a few extra players with the strength and extra power. A few of them slightly abused the whole no fighting at Chufmart rule, which I feel is just a little bit unfair so I chased them out of that space and got a pretty good solid fight out of that. There were three players in full diamond armor with diamond tools, two of which I was able to take out in the open field, one tanked in a corner with a shield up. That shield will not protect you from lava dumped onto your head, my friend, I'm sorry. But as we continued into the night and the sun started to set on day 56, the world would go quiet again. Day 57, now that I was alone with my thoughts, I did a quick sweep over the central space to see if anything was still left sitting around and went back down to my villagers, who were somehow still here undisturbed and had been undiscovered. I returned to work, starting with more infections and curing, setting up a little bit of a zombie conga line, and the work started to meld together into day 58, where I was doing more villager trading and setting up more trades, trying to get a few of the books that I was missing to completely max out my gear. And when I say this melded together, I'm not kidding, it melded together for three solid days into day 59, as I continued with the trading cycle and had to expand my villager hall, and the villagers started being being a little stubborn on actually taking their jobs into day 60 when I finally got thorns three, which would be a nice deterrent for incoming damage, enchanting that onto my armor and then going down into the caves to get additional gunpowder to just re-up on everything. The world was moving faster. The world border was actually starting to close in and I could see it from my base here. This would be the final time that I'd be able to access it before the next hunt as I traded everything that I could for additional resources and went back up to the overworld to just continue to deforest it for more raw materials, for more stick trades, I slept and just continued fighting underground, re-upping on experience to repair all of my gear in a really slow way overall. This was a slog. I continued working through all of the mine shafts and caves, finding any gold I could to make additional golden apples and any creepers for additional gunpowder. And on day 66, as I was continuing on this 10 day economic journey, I heard this sound. I ran up to the surface to see what was happening and the border was far closer than it was supposed to be. I went to the spawn and there were even more towers and there was this hum in the air. There was more corruption over the ground, more of the grass turned to endstone, obsidian everywhere as far as the eye can see, and even more towers. They were early and they were gonna keep respawning this time. It was no longer a battle of survival. Now it was a fight of attrition. I quickly evacuated as they started connecting in the morning of day 67, landing a good chunk away, but not being able to really go too far. The world border was far too small. And with them being able to just infinitely respawn, they just started throwing bodies at me, using whatever items they had on hand to just continuously try to poke and prod at my defenses. I found somebody who had killed a pink sheep in an earlier iteration and ended them. You will pay for your crimes. Yes! <laughs> While being chased by just dozens of low gear players, and it lulled me into a bit of a false sense of security. I thought I'd be fine, but 
something told me that there were others preparing something big. I want an actual challenge. Send the actual challenge. I'd probably regret that. On day 68, I respected the neutrality of the merchant's lands, not killing anyone inside, but the second I crossed the border, they tried to jump me into a cave. I was thankfully able to fight using my wings and my feather falling to keep me alive, checking in on the very top of the world to see if they were building anything up there and eliminating the water so no one can make that trip. As they just continuously started throwing bodies at me, my armor was starting to take some hits and the phantoms after me didn't really help either. I saw a few better geared players and got hints of a base out off in a corner of the world, so I sailed off there on day 60 nice. I found a horse with diamond armor. I stole the horse and started patrolling, looking for them to make some sort of sign of their power, their strength, or their coordination. Another one stole my horse, so I ran back to where it spawned to try to get it. I accidentally killed the horse with a bow. That seems to be a trend of things that I do. But as another round of the people who were just throwing their body at me over and over started to play through, I could hear trumpets in the distance and an actual crew of equipped players made their way in. It was time for a fight. Multiple players with diamond enchanted armor, swords, shields, and they were fighting in a coordinated fashion, speaking with each other. I stored a bit of the resources, wanting to be somewhat even, and thought, you know what? At this point, everything is on the table. I went back to my space with everyone watching, because soon this was gonna be on the other side of the world border anyway. They only had a few minutes to be able to access any of this. I ran and grabbed as many pearls as I could from my cleric and as many arrows, re-upping on as much as I could before heading back to the surface. Killing any of the sheep that are around so food would be denied, I was back to the center again, fighting iron armor equipped players almost constantly. There were so many of them and my armor was starting to show the damage, even if they weren't really attacking my health. As I moved into day 71, the constant onslaught and combat was starting to take its toll. I saw even more equipped players cresting over the hill, and where I respected the neutrality of Chufmart, they certainly didn't, stabbing me regardless of where I was. It was 1v12 in any given moment, and they're trying to use poisons and cobwebs to limit my mobility, set me on fire, but thankfully I had potions and preparations to make sure that I was going to be mobile and free. The pearls were excellent for being able to get a few hits in and then whoop away before they'd be able to actually come and take me down. And using crossbows and bows, I had them on fire pretty much constantly, being able to eventually get a few kills. The constant chase from one direction and another, back and forth, juking left and right, I started seeing names repeating themselves as players were re-upping on their own gear. I tried to pull a big move play downing some fire resistance potion and then and then climbing my way up the lava. Unfortunately, they could see me in the lava and they shot me out of it. I went to throw another pearl and realized my pockets were empty. My resources had been depleted. I was gonna be on my feet only now and they were getting close. It was down to just a few of them, a half dozen or so, as the respawns had stopped, but they were some of the most geared players of the group. I got cornered to a small peninsula, two of them standing at either side, another one hiding down in the water as I downed a little bit of food and took close aim. I was able to catch them as they both lowered their defenses for just a moment, sniping them and finding a little... Oh! <laughs> yes! Yes! That was close. That was super close. No matter what else he has to say, we must discuss. We gave you a simple task. Collected you from across the multiverse by the dozens, and you still failed me. We will not forget this, but do not worry. I will grant you a second chance. There will not be a third. My journey through the multiverse is one that I've had very little control over. The obelisks keep pulling me from one reality to the next, to the next, to the next. And it's time for me to learn how to fight back. Iskal85 created the Vault Hunters mod pack, where you go and get a bunch of resources and then create a little pocket reality 
and run through it searching for loot. And I thought, being able to control reality? That seems like a great idea. So let's give this a shot. A hundred days in the Vault Hunters mod pack, trying to run as many vaults as I can, unlock as much knowledge as I possibly can, and get a coveted piece of vault gear. This video is a ton of fun and it takes about 200 hours to make one of these 100 days when you're actually doing them legitimately. So do me a favor, leave a like and leave a comment. Something about how amazing the loot was on day 31 or how awful I was for killing that stone golem. Don't worry, that'll make sense later. All right, let's get started with 100 days as a vault hunter. Here we, here we go again. So we loaded up a brand new world and spawned in day one. Now there's a couple extra things on my screen. Don't worry about them just yet. First, we have to Minecraft before we can even worry about vault hunting. I spawned in a prairie shrubland kind of biome with these kind of weird looking trees. All of the terrain is fully modded, so it's completely new stuff. I spent some time taking down a tree, the entire tree, Tanisha. You know, as a proper Minecrafter does before making some rudimentary tools with a sword and a pickaxe and then checking out my skills, the things that I could potentially unlock. Before I'm gonna spend any of those points though I need to take care of the base necessities going through and you know eliminating a few of the local cow population grabbing some coal from underground building a furnace making some steak killing some sheep for food and a bed and sleeping in you know you want to start well rested going into day two where I found a desert temple and these really huge trees off in the distance I hit up the temple first breaking all the TNT so I don't explode right away and hitting up the chests the golden apples are huge finds as well as some early books and gear I found a village that had a meteor that had absolutely destroyed half of the town this is the kind of terrain we're looking at before looting a few of the chests and finding the most satisfying thing in Minecraft. But as I walked back and I looked over the meteor, I thought, you know what? I've never lived by a meteor before. Maybe there's radiation that will give me superpowers. This is probably a wonderful idea. So I sit down a few chests and my bed and called it a night. Going into day three, you can pick up villagers. You can pick them up and hold them like a totem. Easy villagers is the best mod ever. So I carried my friend Timmy here around, just keeping them down in the corner. They're gonna hang with me for a little while, grabbing iron and other resources from the impact site of the meteor. I can't actually mine the meteor itself yet, so it's all of the glowy ores and other things from around the village that are pretty interesting. And I don't know, I felt as the whole time while I was working on my base, this little guy was just judging me down in the corner, just hurrying away while I made myself an iron chest plate to better protect myself. Day four, I checked in the crater again to see if there's anything else left over, and then checked on my mini map, trying to find other potential points of interest. I saw what looked like a desert temple just off the edge of the minimap render distance, ran over to there, went downstairs, and found a diamond, as well as some other golden apples, which are huge in this mod pack. You'll see why later. I jumped down into a cave and found a mine shaft, because of course I did, as well as a few endermen that quickly dropped a pearl. My friend got out of my pocket quickly, but no, nope, you get back in there while I go to mine more iron. It was late, however, deep into the night as I was running back towards the base, to just try to get some sleep, stopping in the village because I was completely out of food. Day five, it's time to spend some skill points. I have five of them to use, so I plan to unlock five unique skills just to give myself the biggest selection. I spent one in dash so I can jump around the map a little bit faster, twerker so that I can crouch near crops and they'll grow near instantaneously. Don't think about that one too hard, it'll hurt your brain. I picked up vein miner so I'd be able to mine resources faster. I'm loving the hammers over on Dominion, it gives me kind of the same thing, as well as experience which gives me a flat 50% buff on all experience gains which is huge, especially this early. It took a little while to figure out how to make these things actually work because the controls, there is so much in this pack. So I spent the rest of the day just harvesting acacia wood, tearing down more of the village and marking potential waypoints for lava and villages once the light was available and visible on my mini map. On day six, I started heading over towards the lava pool because to really get started in this mod pack, I need to beat the game, the vanilla game as quickly as possible. And since we're doing quick things, I'm gonna do the speedrunner strat and try to make a speedrun nether 
portal. And, uh, well, it didn't go exactly as planned. I set both myself and Timmy on fire at least once, but I did eventually make a valid portal frame. I except I didn't have a flint and steel to light it with. I went down to the caves, grabbing some iron, searching around and smelting that while looking for gravel to eventually get a piece of flint very late in the night, having to fight zombies because, well, it was night, and killing a few more sheep and then a child, their sacrifices giving me a bed where I could eventually sleep going into day seven, where I made a flint and steel, a set of iron armor, fully upgrading, and went off to the nether. I spawned in a basalt delta, which is the worst biome ever. I used the minimap to mark where my portal's coordinates actually were and then headed off in a direction that I could see on the map off to Netherrack, which was more easily traversable. The piglins hate me in this reality. I'm not only their champion on Dominion. And I very quickly found a nether fortress on the map and then in the world, diving through the tunnels, just trying to search around and look for the blaze spawner. I didn't find the spawner, but there were so many stray blazes and I don't have fire resistance and I am super squishy. Iron armor is basically nothing in this mod pack. So I hate to do it, but I actually had to eat one of the golden apples really early on just to stay alive. I grabbed all of the nether wart that I could find and found a few diamonds and some bombs in a chest. There's just explosives sitting around here. Okay. On day eight, I was digging a tunnel back over towards the waypoint so I could head back to the overworld, brew up some fire resistance potions. When this piglin just jump scared me in the tunnel, absolutely terrified me and would have killed me if they were hostile. I did a little bit of trading, trying to get a fire res potion and also just trying to get them out of the way using all of the stone and all of the iron I had to make multiple picks as I was mining to the waypoint, which was at the wrong height. I started digging down to get to where the portal actually was supposed to be, and my pick broke. And I had to walk all the way back, all the way back over to the fortress, run all the way back over through open nether, which included being attacked by a fire dog, apparently the new Pokemon are already here, making my way back through the basalt delta, fighting off magma cubes from basically every direction who were just constantly bipping me, heading back to the overworld and sleeping to end day eight there. The next day, I needed to bank the resources, kept my inventory was very, very full. And I wanted to look what it would take to make a vault altar. And it turns out I need to beat the game to do it. Oh boy, here we go. I fully looted the village, grabbed all of them and shoved them in my pockets, right with their workstations, and just hit all of the different fields, harvesting all of the wheat, which took literally all day going into day 10, where I started setting up a rudimentary trading hall. You can also cycle trades with just a button press, which is extremely useful. So I got a couple farmers that wanted wheat, and I can just crouch and hold down right click with a hoe to harvest infinite wheat, but there is so many particles this looks ridiculous. It does generate emeralds and seeds, lots of seeds, at a pretty decent rate. Day 11, I'm realizing that I need to get some bookcases going so I can actually do some enchanting and or get some librarians going. And I need to get a closer portal, which means I need to get a diamond pickaxe. So I lured a few cows over towards the base and started breeding them, including a sheep that was just stuck there. I also grabbed sugarcane and cactus just as I saw some laying around. But unfortunately, you can't pick up cows like you can villagers, meaning regular mobs are now harder to move than villagers. What kind of backwards reality? is this but right as the sun started to set the first cow was born in captivity and i was started on a leather farm day 12 i planted the cactus and did a little bit of potion brewing so i can make some fire resistance potions so i can more easily tackle blazes in the nether i also have some safety if i happen to fall to my death i made a bunch of obsidian and then forgot i didn't have a diamond pickaxe i left the diamonds at home so i couldn't harvest any of it but i set my spawn point went through the portal and then was back in the nether heading back over towards the fortress throughout the rest of that day and into day 13 i was basically doing fortress navigation and being very, very careful. Iron armor is only four armor bars in this bound pack. It is paper thin. I did eventually find a blaze spawner and started mining out the blocks to make a little bit of a scuffed farm. Thankfully, it was enclosed, so I didn't need to worry about anything else fighting me while I was fighting the blazes. In between blaze cycles, I checked all the other tunnels, see if there was any loot remaining, and fought wither skeletons, hoping to get a skull, even though there's no way I would take on the wither anytime soon. But as it started getting to about midday, I went back to the nether portal and then returned back to my village, and I'm really banking on the cleric here. I traded in all of my gold and then a bunch of emeralds for glowstone blocks just because they were the best trades for potentially leveling up, and I'm really hoping for a pearl trade here. And 
Thankfully, I got one. This means I can very easily prepare for endgame and craft ender pearls instead of having to worry about killing endermen and drop rates and the potential for death. That means more particles and more trading of wheat for emeralds and then emeralds for pearls, which we would craft into eyes at the end of the day. Day 14, clad in only iron armor with very little food to my name. Yeah, why don't we go kill a dragon? It'll be fine. I threw my first eye and headed off in a direction, boating out to the ocean and then running over land. I'm really hoping for ocean exposed right here, but unfortunately the pearl turns and goes back the way that I originally came. I found a sunken ship that had a treasure map in it, pointing me off towards some loot that was actually relatively close and had some decent things inside. But I had spent almost the whole day trekking right now early game travel is so time consuming going into day 15 i finally found the chunk that the eye pointed down into and made my way into the stronghold the first room i encountered was the library reminding me that i had no reason to set up a leather farm i could just harvest everything here if i wanted to after killing the dragon there were some amazing books in here things that could push me past the normal vanilla enchants they will come in very handy later but anybody who's watched my scuff boy speed run or me in the hardcore world knows that i am absolutely trash when it comes to stronghold navigation and finding that portal well, it turns out I turned the exact wrong direction and went through everything else in the entire stronghold, going through day 15 into day 16, where I eventually gave up, returned back to the starting stairway, turned the other direction, and the portal was right there. Unfortunately, as is tradition, I was a few eyes short, having accidentally right-clicked them all right through a wall at one point in time in the stronghold. Thankfully, I had a few spare pearls. Unthankfully, it still wasn't enough. Gee, this is a roller coaster. I looted the remainder of the chests and rooms, and I started hearing lava at one point. Mining out, I dug into a huge lava-filled ravine, finding some diamonds and other ores just sitting there, and being able to craft a new portal with buckets, making a fast travel between one point and another through the nether. If only it wasn't through a basalt delta, which is the slowest fast travel that you could possibly have in Minecraft. I ended up back at my original portal, which is still a bit of a hike from the base. So by the time I got back and slept on day 17, I was doing a little bit more gearing up, just getting the last few things I need, a diamond pickaxe, so I could grab all of the obsidian I needed to make a portal all the way back at the base, running back over towards the stronghold, slotting in the final two eyes, and jumping in the portal. And yeah, on day 17, we're gonna kill a dragon. I I could do my really dramatic voiceover for the dragon fight, but this is really the beginning of this mod pack. This is twice now that I would have speed run the dragon in these hundred days, so I can get to the point where I can fly and travel quickly, so I can focus on the exploration, the building, and the journey. And you've seen me do this maybe two dozen times at this point now. So, arrows to the crystals, arrows to the dragon, stabbing to the dragon's throat, get yeeted once or twice, and save with a quick water bucket clutch. The problem I had here was the dragon was refusing to perch, and I'm out of arrows going into day 18, and I can only do damage then. And then she throws me up as high as she can, and I don't have feather falling, so I use a pearl, so I only take the pearl damage, and I'm forced to eat another golden apple, which is just such a huge loss in this pack. She perched down again for what I thought would be the final time, and as I'm swinging my axe, she just flies away and i had to wait an additional two or three minutes before she decided to perch again just standing there waiting i quickly bopped her in the face went through the end portal and thankfully had freed the end unfortunately my spawn was right here because i had reset my spawn for some point forgetting that i probably would have wanted to return to my base so i mined up to the surface and just off the coast i saw a mushroom island which this is huge Having this here, a safe spot where I can grab a bunch of steak from mushrooms, I basically saved my life. Plus, I saw this pretty amazing looking tropical island out here with these rainbow eucalyptus trees. I'm gonna make a note of that. I might wanna make a base there. All right, day 19, I have a bunch of steak in my hot bar. I'm feeling a little more confident, like I can actually, you know, survive at least one fight with an enderman or something like that. So I went back to the end, pillared up towards the end gateway, threw a pearl, 
cranked chunks up to 64 and started looking on the minimap for clues. As I'm going through the outer end islands, there's these huge blue spires, which really don't do anything, but provide some really easy to get blocks for pillaring. With vein mining, they break near instantly. So I'm using those to go from end island to end island. I occasionally find a city. It's a really tiny one, but it has some of the stuff that I need, including my first shulker box, which I had to kill with a pickaxe because I forgot to bring a weapon. Thankfully for me, there's some really good stuff in the chest at the top of the city, which helps me fast track my way through and not have to spend resources. Unfortunately, however, it didn't have a ship and I didn't have enough food. So I ran all the way back went and bridged my way over. On day 20, I'm eating only chorus fruit as I bridged my way up, went through the gateway back to the end. Then I broke my bed, went through the gateway again to return back to the world spawn, which would get me closer towards the village, which I slept in to go to day 21. From there, I banked all of the end-related resources and just kind of tried to take stock on what I had. I bred up all the sheep, did a little bit of harvesting to trade some more. I quickly took a new profile picture for Raiseworks just so, you know, help them out for crafting up all the books and getting an enchanting setup set up that I would actually never use. I started mining down to be able to go searching for diamonds, finding a huge cave with a ton of mobs in it, and I was just getting pummeled from all sides. I went back up to the surface, and on day 22, I need to invest some time and attention into getting proper enchantments. I spent literally all day, all of day 23, just jamming on that C button and refreshing enchants. I did it for the entire day until I eventually just had to give up and settle for protection three instead of protection four. It'll at least keep me alive. Day 23, I went mining in a game called Minecraft. Really unexpected, right? The mine shaft being here in the ravine and down at diamond level is really convenient. I spent some time clearing out the poison spider spawner just so they wouldn't be dropping on me all the time, grabbing all of the ores and searching around for diamonds and other things that I desperately need. I used a little bit of iron to repair my gear because it's not in the best shape and I don't have enough diamonds yet. Using vein miner to harvest as much as I could from everywhere around the ravine. I used the end to basically fast travel back to my home base, banging all of the resources and getting jump scared by my golem. Can you imagine if they hit me, this would have been the end of the video. On day 24, I made a diamond pickaxe and finally completed another portal here at the base using that and the combination of the portal for the stronghold to get back over and head towards the end. I farmed a few ender pearls just very quickly and then back out to the outer end islands I go, bridging over all of the void, holding that shift key down as hard as I possibly can, searching around for a full two days before I found my way to an actually decent sized end city on day 25. I pillared up to the ship and started looting from the top down, grabbing my elytra, looting the chests at the very top of the end city and shooting any shulkers, just trying to get a few extra shulker shells. I flew back towards the gateway, pillared up, jumped through, back through the portal, and finally I'm feeling good and I'm able to explore the overworld. With Dash and Elytra, I don't need rockets, so I'm able to quickly travel from village to village, acquiring additional friends that I'm just storing in my pocket, as well as hay bales and other job blocks and materials and just useful resources from all around my local area. That includes searching nether portals for gold blocks because golden apples are far more expensive to craft in this variant and way more useful. Continuing my search into the night where I found another desert temple that had a bunch of golden apples, each of these saving me nine blocks worth of material in crafting. On day 27, I'm continuing that exploration of the local area and being able to fly and cover distance is just so satisfying. I'm hitting up all of the villages for additional workers, as well as additional job blocks to be able to get more of an economy going, hitting up portals and desert temples in order to get more golden apples and high tier resources. I stopped by a pillager tower. There was a couple things up at the top. Grabbing all of the golden apples I could find from portals, I thought that was the best it was gonna get before I saw just a little bit of obsidian sticking out of a coast. And unfortunately, I didn't have my mic on, but let me give you an idea. Oh yeah. I was happy. I marked that location because 
it's worth saving. Before heading back to my camp and organizing my inventory, storing off all of the villagers, as well as all of the high value gear that I had looted from around the town. Day 28, I need to go mining. I started digging down directly underneath my base, finding another abandoned mine shaft, because of course I did, and searching around for diamonds. I grabbed a couple extra ones, which gives me the diamond block worth of materials that I need so I can actually craft a vault altar, and combined all of those to unlock the core mechanic of vault hunters. Now all I actually need is a vault rock to stick into this thing to be given a recipe to be able to actually open the vault. Before going and doing that though, I did a little bit more trading, locking in a protection for villager, finally, and the economy continued into day 29 where I got both infinity and unbreaking three desperately needed when everything is so tight on resources now. On day 30, more trading is required. I got fortune three, so I have a better chance of getting fault rocks as well as additional diamonds in future mining sessions, as well as silk touch for only seven emeralds, which was a steal. I still need sharpness, looting, punch, and power, but at least now on the resource end of things, I'm pretty much solvent. With a new fortune pickaxe in hand, I went back down to the mines and hit all of the diamond ore that I could find to just grab a whole bunch of them. But I'm really also searching for vault rocks. They look almost identical to normal stone, aside from a little bit of a glow they give off and a very distinct sound when you mine them. I got three rocks from that ore, which is three runs through the vault if I can complete the required recipes. And that gets a little complicated. We'll talk about that in a sec. But I grabbed all of my resources, went back up to the overworld, slept on day 32. It's time to show you why I need golden apples. You need them to brew healing potions and each of them costs nine blocks worth of gold. Now you see why those temple runs were so important. I built a blackstone portal, which I'm gonna need to actually get into the vault. I did a little bit of extra trading just to get sharpness five, which I quickly enchanted onto my sword. So I'd actually be able to do damage in the vault and then slotted in a vault rock and looked at the recipe. Now here's how this works. You get four random resources of which you need to give increasingly large amounts of to the vault, just throwing them at it, and it'll mark that certain category as complete. Three of these were super trivial for me. I had everything. The fourth was the rare item, which I had to go over to the nether and to a soul sand valley to punch a bunch of ghosts to get some soul beads, which I was able to come back and pop those into the altar. And then, yeah, I completed my first vault rock. That little ding is very satisfying. On day 33, it's time to enter the vault, the thing that this whole mod pack is actually based around. I popped a crystal in the portal and jumped in. Luckily, there were no modifiers, and I'll explain what those mean later. But it's really a game of looting what you can, surviving any mobs, and doing the best you can in a limited amount of time. There is no natural healing in the vault, so health potions are extremely important, and mobs hit way harder than they do out in the overworld. Everything scales. And it's a roguelike, so each room and each vault run is completely random. I'm looting all the chests, getting basically vanilla resources, things like diamonds, slime, leather that I hadn't been able to find anywhere else, but also compressed blocks, so I have tons of resources on hand at any point in time. And I'm just fighting off all of the zombies that are constantly attacking me. There's a village room here with a large statue asking for three hearts with one potion that's easily healable and inside the chest was a trident as well as a few other things. Also underneath one of the village houses was a stronghold which had quite a bit of really nice chests inside but my pockets were starting to get full. I'm running around getting all of the ores, looting all of the gilded chests, which have better things in them. And the stronghold is actually just pretty awesome for a first run. I'm using pillars to avoid the zombies, doesn't always help with spiders, while organizing and I am completely full. Pockets absolutely bursting. I accidentally triggered a large TNT trap. Don't touch any TNT in the vault, it's all unstable and explodes immediately. But after a witch got the jump on me and poisoned me, since I didn't have any really healing left over, I ran back to the portal and bailed taking some time to store so much stuff and even after a vault run i'm pretty diamond poor with only nine to my name organizing everything took a little bit of time and then i opened up all of the loot boxes which gave me a set of pretty godly diamond boots so 
maybe my need for diamonds is a little bit lower than I thought. But on top of that, I cleared out the shulker boxes, I smelted up all of the gold ore that I had collected, I opened up all the packs and got a relic piece right away, which is huge. Repaired my pickaxe with the experience bottles, had a quick snack, and took a quick nap. So I got a lot of diamonds in those loot boxes, and just one day later, I'm no longer diamond poor, as I upgraded all of my armor to diamond and started working on enchanting it. I took the cleanse ability, letting me quickly clear poison effects whenever I'm in the vault, which is going to make a big difference when I can't heal naturally. I also upgraded Twerker, so now it works on melons. So I'm able to just sit here and silk touch melons and get a heck of a lot of emeralds a lot more efficiently and with fewer seeds in my pocket. But from there, it was time to complete another vault rock. About three quarters of it was super straightforward. I had the resources on hand. It's that rare item, phantom membrane, that really messed with me. For that, I wouldn't be able to sleep for three days. And if I can't sleep, I might as well get some major building done. So I upgraded all my armor, compressed all of my resources into block form, everything into shulkers that I could, burned all of the seeds, and flew off, heading off to that island that I had found a while back, dropping all the shulkers down, and thinking, yeah, this can make for a good forever home, or at least the next base in line. That night, again, I can't sleep, but I also don't want to be harassed by mobs. So I went down to the ground level and just started torching up everything. And thankfully, mobs hit a little less hard over here in the overworld. That took over a full stack of torches, and I'm barely done. Going into day 36, it's time to actually start planning out what I want this place to look like. I built a new blackstone portal, planted some bamboo around, and looked at what the different blocks can actually give me. Mahogany and rainbow eucalyptus all look really cool together, so I built a new villager trading hall to store all of my potential money makers in their, you know, holding cells, as well as a three by three grid just to get more seeds and more wheat as is tradition. I'm using some of those blue blocks to get a nice wall. I think they're called Moria, as well as displaying the dragon egg prominently with a nice little floor pattern around it. It's also chest organization time and having all sorts of different chests from the end, from acacia, from oak, just makes it look a lot more colorful and alive. I kind of like it. I also thought, you know what? This little portal right here, this isn't going to do. So I put down a lot of soapstone and other materials that look similar to blackstone. And into day 38, I started building a platform to actually have as my upper treehouse, the place where I'll keep my bed and my most important resources. I stacked all the shulkers on the wall just so everything would be safe and tucked away and moderately organized. Realizing that it takes two dashes to get up there is something that I don't think I ever fix in this entire hundred days. I went back down to the surface though fighting off zombies and wouldn't you know it one of them happened to get towards all of my villagers that's kind of a bummer because i don't want to waste the golden apples on them but finally late in the night on night 38 phantoms actually spawned I took some time to bow down a few of them so I'd have multiple phantom membrane in my pocket so I wouldn't have to worry about not sleeping again for some time. But once I had the resources that I needed, I called it a night. And on the morning of day 39, I got a new farmer set up with trapdoors in front of them so no zombies could actually get to them, which would be important later. And went over to the nether to get a little bit more blackstone so I could make a larger vault portal. I want this thing to look impressive. From there, I did a little bit of mining for netherrack just to complete the last item on the vault altar and found a random piece of ancient debris, which was kind of nice. No complaints there. I went back to the overworld, threw in the netherrack, completing my second vault rock. There, I made the portal a little bit bigger and doing a little bit more battle with more phantoms to get another phantom membrane. On day 40, I'm prepping for another vault run, which means I need a lot more food to make sure I don't, you know, take hunger damage. It won't exactly heal me. So I flew over to the mushroom biome, and in preparing for my future steaks, one of them came out as a baby brown cow. It's so adorable. It's the only one I left alive. From there, I head home to cook my new food. I made a vending machine to shove a person inside. These will trade different vault resources for other vault resources. It's a great way to get certain things pretty usefully. I made a quick little infinity bow and on day 41 it was time to go.
And I got safe zone and easy, which is huge. That means there's no trapped chests and all the mobs will be easier to fight. I made a quick waypoint to find my way out of the vault if time was going to get short and then started looting through rooms. Since it's easy, I can tank most mob hits directly to the face and take next to no damage. And since it's safe zone, I wanna hit every chest I possibly can because there's no traps, which means ultimate loot. Now this is where the Lagundo luck started to really kick in because shortly into the run, I found a wild west room and that's really hard to say but inside is a ton of both regular and gilded chests meaning i was getting a ton of loot and since none were trapped all of them were paying up i just need to make sure i don't punch the tnt and i'm gonna do well and then immediately following that the very next room was a village room which has some chests again but if you go down into the stronghold underground it has an opportunity to potentially have an end portal and instead of taking you to the end it makes 12 gilded chests and i had an ender eye that's all it requires which meant i was able to loot absolutely everything from all of these chests and get geared up super quickly i am no longer diamond poor i'm no longer anything poor i have everything i could want but with three entirely full shulker boxes as well as not a single empty inventory slot in my pocket i quickly made my way back towards the spawn grabbed a few blocks just for decoration dropping some of the less valuable things and bailed out of the portal it took all of day 42 just to organize i just paused for a second to relax but from there i started building some columns using those to make the area right in front of my portal look a little bit more grand dropping some bamboo and then going to actually organizing things all of the blocks went to the lower level all of the packs got opened all of the boxes got opened for more vanilla resources that i just kind of threw into storage sorry if you hate unorganized messes. i then dropped down all the chests and put down the statues now these will generate a specific resource at a very slow passive rate and you know i had to represent my dominion friends over here mongo's giving me prismarine tanisha giving me some snow and i also made a few netherite ingots which i was able to use to upgrade my gear first my chest plate so i'm going to be a little bit easier survival all of the valuables were organized in barrels up inside the treehouse and things are looking good i used the experience bottles to repair all of my pickaxe and then used my skill points to make those experience bottles pay up even more later from there i filled up a shulker box stashed my elytra and i'm ready to go again day 43 i returned to the vault this one had no modifiers which was both a good and a bad thing you'll see why later the first couple rooms were relatively uninteresting i found a few chests with some moderate bits of loot i'm actually starting to get a little selective just because of inventory space there was this cave that had a ton of spider webs which was fine but the big thing was this bird cage room the bird itself is supposedly full of ores i only learned that after finishing this whole video but the chests downstairs had a bunch of diamonds, loot boxes, and other things that were really useful. I'm no longer diamond poor. I found a small mini cave full of chests that had some decent results inside, but then the city room. This was a big win. There are tons of chests in here scattered throughout multiple buildings, and it took a good while to loot. Then you go down into the sewers and things get even better. That is, as long as the chests aren't trapped and trapped in ways that explode. Okay, I got the hint. I left the city, went to the small town country just to relax, finding the stronghold underneath the village. And this one didn't have a portal room, but there were a few gilded chests that had a bit of what I need. But I was starting to run short on time. With only a minute 30 remaining, I was able to make it back to the portal room and thought, ah, I can steal a few note blocks before leaving. Dropping out of the vault on day 44, which was all organization all of the time. I crafted all of my items down into their block form, ate the vault cookies to level up, open the loot boxes for more random assortment of goodies, and then upgraded my speed, giving myself some nice fancy shoes so I'd be just moving a little bit quicker with a base level of a speed enchantment at all times. Day 45, I'm out of vault rocks, so we're going to need a new mine. I started digging a 2 by one tunnel all the way down to the bedrock level where the vault rocks could actually be, and then just used excavation to carve out a huge swath right through, grabbing a few right off the bat. I made my way back up, secured it with a water platform so I wouldn't 
go cursed flat if I ever tried to come down to the mines and did a little bit more mining. Heading up to slot in the vault rock and find out I'm gonna need honeycomb for this one. That's gonna be complicated. Cobblestone, emeralds, and the ink sacks are easy. The rare item is the one that always gets me. I slept and the next day it's time to go out searching for beehives. I traveled generally north because bees are north, I guess. I don't know. I don't have a reason. I just picked a random direction. But being able to dash and fly over was pretty nice. I'm flying through all of this different modded terrain and grabbing a ton of villagers to take back to my base. And I had a new Timmy down in the corner hanging out with me as I was flying. They look so happy to be here. Can't you tell? Finding more villages and more new friends. But unfortunately, it took two full days to find a beehive. I made a small little hut to contain the bees inside. Thankfully, I got here at night, so that would be easy easy, and a bunch of flowers so they would pollinate quickly, hopefully quickly, and spent the next day looting around random points of interest while trying to keep the bees loaded so they'd make honey. I found a portal, which didn't really have a lot, made a way into the actual beehive, and checked. It was on honey level zero. I was going to be waiting here a while. I made a quick campfire and just sat here and watched bees dry. <laughs> this was really exhilarating stuff, I swear. We did eventually get to the point where it was full. I grabbed shears and grabbed a few honeycomb and then started flying back towards the house, landing back on the tree house, banking all of the things that I had collected, including my new friends, into a box. This is kind of problematic if you think about it too hard. Before heading over to some nearby squids to grab the squid ink as the last ingredient to complete this crystal. I slotted the next one, and oh boy, there was honeycomb again. Of course there was. So I flew all the way back to the beehive, this time with the silk touch axe, and grabbed it and collected it all, bringing it back to the island. On day 48, I also needed ice, so while I was still out that far, I just kept flying around in random directions. I eventually found a patch of ice on top of a mountain, and thankfully, with silk touch and an axe and vein miner, I was able to collect it all relatively quickly. From there, I flew back towards the base, biting my nails as my elytra was just about to give out as I landed on the platform. That one was very, very close. I threw the ice in, repaired my elytra, and then started building a little glass beehive with a bunch of happy little flowers for happy little bees to give me honeycomb so I never have to worry about a vault crystal again. And as I went to sleep, the person in the vending machine was very happy to be watching me. Creepy. Day 49, it's time to reset the economy. Since I lost all of my villagers to zombification and then an unfortunate unforeseen end, it's time to get new ones so I could actually get the books and emeralds and other things that I need. I set up three farmers as generators for emeralds using both carrots and potatoes as trades and then started working on librarians, naming them so that way I'd know which one they are. I was able to get loyalty three so I could use my trident, unbreaking so all my gear would last a little bit longer. And in between this, I was harvesting the honeycomb from the beehive to complete vault crystal number five. Popped in number six, and it also required honeycomb, three for three, but I was prepared this time. All of the other resources were really quick, and that one was able to pop in. Having three vault runs in my pocket felt pretty good. I spent some time upstairs in the loft, brewing healing potions, making them splash potions so I could apply them faster to myself and potentially damage any zombies who are around me before putting mending on those amazing diamond boots that I had gotten from a loot box before so they'd last a little longer. Going into day 50, it's time for another vault run. This time, again, no modifiers, which is both good and bad. There are positive and negative ones. I was standing over a lot of lava, grabbing chests that were hanging from the ceiling, which honestly wasn't worth the time. I'm punching obelisks as I go, just trying to potentially be ready to fight off a boss, grabbing a few honeycomb blocks, thinking I could craft them back, but that doesn't actually work. Loot was kind of middling in this one. There wasn't a lot in one way or another until I got to another Wild West room, and that's where things started to take a turn to the positive. I found a protection bow <laughs> in a train. This seems like the weirdest enchantment. I wonder if this would actually work. Finding my way into an end room that had a ton of ores inside of some glowy semi-translucent blocks down on the bottom level. I ended up in a dojo room that had a lot of chests up high, as well as many more or inside of a basement that you had to dig your way into. Luckily, I had watched one of Iskel's videos and knew that this place was here. But as time was starting to get a little short, there were only three obelisks for this one, and I entered a room that 
everything was basically flat. There'd be nowhere for a boss to escape and I felt pretty well equipped. So it's time to try taking on a boss. As I summoned the vault robot, I was able to bow it down to do some damage, but the power bar here is what really made things work. It gives you an insane strength boost for about 30 seconds, way better than a strength potion. And since I had a sharpness five sword already and I'm critting on every hit because I'm good at Minecraft, I was able to eventually take it down. That was terrifying, but I picked up the huge crate and returned back to the overworld of Victor at this halfway point in the journey. And inside the vault crate was some decent stuff. There's a few really good things in here, but the biggest thing is the crate itself. It's double the size of a shulker box and just as easy to move. I spent some time organizing all of the loot, collecting all of the relevant things together, throwing more people into the vending machine and finding mystery boxes as a potential option, opening all of those, getting some eh, okay stuff, eating the cookies, getting myself up to level six, unlocking a new skill point, and had to compress all of my items items down to blocks, getting a new statue, which I turned into Looney because we got to keep the deceit representation going hard. I made a new netherite ingot, upgrading my helmet and unlocking the cover me in debris advancement, bringing up some new health potions because I'm about to go back into the vault the next day. And that's what I did. This vault run was with unlucky and plentiful, meaning chests were dangerous, but there would be a lot more vault ores around the map. The very first room was a village room. And even though chests are dangerous, I am going to be opening as many as I can because it's really useful to, you know, get more stuff. I went down into the stronghold and there wasn't a portal, but again, ores are all vault ores. So I was able to get some rare ores and collect them as well as some diamonds and other things from chests. But the name of the game here is mining. I'm bopping obelisks just in case I want to fight another boss and go two for two. I came across another altar chest that asked for a minute of my time in the vault. And since it was an unlucky one, I went ahead and gave that in, having a ton of zombies around my ankles as I was organizing my shulker boxes. And despite it being plentiful, I wasn't getting a lot of vault ores. There's the occasional gem here and there, but the big thing that I was getting was a lot of compressed blocks. And these resources are huge for future vault recipes because they take maybe 900 andesite at one point in time. That might be something that I exactly found once. But overall, I went through a few more mediocre rooms before heading back to the village, not remembering that I had some rocket arrows in my pocket. So any bow shot just decimated half of the town. I'm the worst thing to ever happen to these villagers before jumping into the portal and returning home. There, I banked all of the loot, took all of the compressed blocks and stored them downstairs because that's where I'm gonna want to keep them, therefore the altars. Before doing a little bit of additional enchanting, putting some more books and increasing the sharpness level on my sword to sharpness six. The next one is strong, but hungry. So I hit really hard, but I'm always craving a snack. And that's a problem because I only have 20 golden carrots with me. The first few rooms were barren as far as chests, barely anything that I could find and not a lot of ores. That was until I got into the Wild West room. And once again, this is pretty much a decent payoff. Immediately following that one was another village room. And heading down into the stronghold, we had another portal. This is why I always keep an Eye of Ender in my pocket whenever I go into the vault. The chests here were pretty nice, except for some of them being trapped. So there's a lot of mobs to worry about and deal with. In all honesty, this one was starting to cause me a lot of trouble. But in all honesty, I was out of food. I had three bits of hunger left to my name, no food to eat. So with five minutes still on the clock, I bailed and just got out of there while I could. Day 54, I'm going through the loot. And there was a bit from this, even if it was somewhat underwhelming. Not my best run by any means. Ate up a little bit of raw potatoes just so I could get my hunger back up, finding some steak in one of the boxes that I had left behind at some point. I opened a bunch of loot boxes, got some pearls, some more books, and looked to see what it would take to make a knowledge star to be able to unlock one of the mods that's hidden behind this gate in the mod pack. And it takes a whole lot of Laramar and an entire block of vault diamonds, for which I had four vault diamonds overall. Oh boy, this is gonna take a hot minute. Day 55, it's time for some more economic takeover, mainly harvesting carrots because it's always carrots, especially on my community SMP. Trading those into villagers for emeralds and then converting some of those emeralds into more books that I could find really useful. Flame was the next thing that I wanted to purchase, giving my bow a little bit more staying power with damage over time. But my villagers are just refusing to refresh. I sat here for over half the day, nobody's refreshing, nobody's restocking, I don't know what's wrong with them. 
them. So I thought, you know what, let me go out and get some new villagers and maybe they'll be better. I flew over to one of the nearby villages that I had gotten some of these villagers from, broke the work blocks that were there in case somehow they were still bound to those or something was overloaded in some way. And wouldn't you know it, I found a pink sheep. The objective immediately changes whenever you find one of those and it immediately becomes protect the asset, RIP the asset. So we got the pink sheep into a fence, collected some new villagers to work in their new remote destination getaway, slept and the next day started looking at what it would take to transport this pink sheep back to the base easily. I can make a pokeball basically with the industrial with the industrial for I can make a Pokeball, basically, with this mod here, but it costs 20 Knowledge Stars. That's 20 blocks of Vault Diamond, and I don't even have one. So instead, I just sailed around. The sheep would be safe where it is. I collected a few more villagers from around, keeping them in my pockets, finding a desert temple, and inside, you won't believe me, the glory of the pink sheep shines brightly on me, for I am blessed. I collected all of the resources, returned home, put all my new villagers inside the box, and go figure, the ones in the training hall just suddenly wanted to work again. I guess they don't want to go back in the box. I got a few books that I desperately needed, repaired everything with some enchanting bottles, and went to sleep. Day, day 57, it's time to spend some of those skill points. First thing I picked up was haste, so I'd mine everything a lot faster, followed by a level of unbreaking, so all of my gear would last a lot longer, and this goes on top of unbreaking three, so basically I have unbreaking four. I upgraded haste again, so I have haste two always. This is gonna make building really easy. I went and I tried to trade with my villagers, and they're stuck again, and this just, this just can't slide. Frustrated with them, I went down to the mines and searched for more vault rocks. And you really only get one vault rock ore per chunk. So I really need to mine out in a pretty wide swath if I wanna potentially find any more. I grabbed another vault rock ore and got three rocks from it, meaning I can do a bunch more vault runs. Doing a little bit more trading with my villagers, just trying to find ones who will actively refresh and trade. I don't know what's wrong with all of them. In today 58, it's time to check what those recipes are. The first one required saddle which was good for me that I'm a hoarder who collects everything from desert temples because I had all the saddles, bones, and gunpowder that I needed to make that work. Most complicated thing for this was oak logs just because I hadn't harvested a lot of logs because I hadn't needed any. So I went over, just vein mined a few trees and found a pillager raid where I captured their captain in a boat. If I ever want to do a raid, now I can just come back here and, you know, bop them quick. Vault Rock 1 complete. I slotted the next one in and I needed a heart of diamond. This is something I've never heard of before. Coal was easy, basalt was easy enough immediately following that with some quick mining in the nether. And I spent the rest of the day for day 58 searching around trying to find sunflowers. I sailed around and saw a desert temple, but I had already raided that one. Then finding a glowing forest as the night came to a close, which was beautiful. The next morning, however, just as the sun was starting to come up, I saw a peak of yellow off on the coast in one of the plains biomes and grabbed a few sunflowers, a full stack of bone meal worth, plus a little bit more, sailing back over over large mountains towards the base. From there, I had to actually look it up and see how you get a heart of a diamond. And it turns out you need to kill a stone golem, which really the best place for it is immediately underneath a mushroom biome. And lucky for me, I have one right next door. I found a spot and just started mining down and then started excavating out a huge area. This went into day 60, as this took a large area to actually make the proper spawning conditions for them. We're getting a lot of these tortoises that are also spawning, these gemstone ones that are chilling out. And then this little golem, look at them, they're so adorable. They brought me a golden apple and then I stabbed them in the face. It's about a one in three chance that they actually drop their heart though. So, so I needed to do it again. And ooh, did I feel guilty about that one? That actually this is the first time I feel bad for killing a mob in Minecraft. But I had what I needed. So I towered back up, went back to the vault altar, threw the heart in and completed another rock. Day 61, I need some cakes for the third of those rocks. So I went all the way back to the old base grab the sugar cane, some wheat, and some sugar, some other things that I knew I had left behind because they weren't immediately relevant. I harvested up a few of the cows, grabbed all the sugar cane I could find between my base and my new base, and just wanted to make progress. And then the next day made a few bottles so I could make some honey, which I didn't actually get, I don't think. But I started making a little quick chicken spawner. I thought those eggs would do more considering they had 60 charges, quote unquote, but I was able to quickly spawn two chickens inside, which would give me a very slow but rudimentary egg farm. 
Ditto for cows. I have two of them there just so I can get milk so I can bake a couple cakes. I planted all of the sugarcane around everywhere that I could find. And late in the night while I was flying around for more sugarcane, I found another beehive, which I was able to grab and bring back, doubling the capacity of my honey farm. I actually found a third, but I don't know where that clip is in the edit. Sierra! So I was able to triple the capacity, which is kind of nice. Honey bottles can also be crafted to sugar, so this is another easy way to get a lot more. Also, there was a pride bee in one of those, which is adorable. Look at them. They're so awesome. I also needed some end stone, so I flew over towards where the end portal is, did a quick little bit of excavation, and then bopped back through the overworld gateway to return back and drop that in immediately. And there it's all cakes, which is all I really need to make. So I spent some time organizing my inventory, doing some brewing, getting more health potions ready to go because I wanted to go into the vault on day 64. And oh boy, this vault was a doozy. Strong, crowded, and plentiful. So double the ores, double the mobs, and double the damage I could do to those mobs. This one's gonna be interesting. I found some decent resources in a few of the chests, but it's starting to get a little bit underwhelming knowing some of the loot that is just over the horizon when I get to a higher level. Level. I had to do an altar that sacrificed half of my hit points, but I had extra potions, so I thought that was a worthwhile trade. Grabbing some of the rarer ores before falling into lava. Thankfully, I had a health potion and a cobalt apple in my back pocket, so I would no longer take fire damage. Finally, I found my way into a city room, and I thought Plentiful was only for vault ores, but there was a block of netherite just sitting there, and you know I was taking that. After the city, though, it was kind of underwhelming. The last room that I was in was just a mob spawner underneath a forest, and there was maybe one or two vault ores, but nothing else. I got poisoned, so I was booking it back towards the portal, and I exited in under a minute to go. Day 65, and now I'm in the vending machine. Look at me. I'm the vendor now. I spent some time organizing the resources, took a quick nap, used experience to repair all of my gear, and then had to keep organizing into day, and then had to keep organizing into day 66, using the lower levels to drop off all of the items and eating cookies to get myself up to level 12, halfway towards my overall goal. I wanted to look into catalysts as a way to manipulate vault crystals to add predetermined modifiers onto them, as well as making a few more netherite ingots to upgrade my sword and pick. They desperately needed it. I started experimenting with what the catalyst would do to a few of my vault crystals before going over and baking a few cakes really quickly, throwing them in and completing my next vault gem. This one would give me gilded, but faster, meaning chests would be better, but I'd have less time to loot them. Maybe if I could find another modifier to put on top of that, it could work. My next vault rock required a Nautilus shell, and that one was going to be complicated. I hadn't seen any of that so far. And on day 67, while that recipe was still waiting, I was going to do another vault run. On this one, I was weakened, which meant I would be doing a lot less damage, but I could still move pretty quickly. I dropped in a quick minute in the first room, grabbing some compressed blocks and some packs from chests to be able to potentially complete another relic set. I had to give 24 levels to this altar to unlock its chest, 22 of which I had right away. The other two I had to grab from killing mobs inside the vault, and the loot was... I'm not sure if that's worth 24 levels. There was another altar really close by that just required some good old fashioned murdering, so I got straight to that. And in that altar was a totem of undying, which is huge, absolutely huge. There's no way I'm running a raid in Vault Hunters, so getting this means I am infinitely better prepared. But with only a few minutes left, I found another forest room that really was conducive for a boss fight. There's not a lot of places where the boss can teleport to and be unexpected. So I downed a power bar, a bunch of hardy apples so I would have a lot more health, and took on another Vault Robot. And despite being weakened, the power bar does pretty good as long as you don't forget to damage the boss so that they don't just constantly heal themselves. After I recovered from the damage I lost, Fire was a big player in here, kept the boss from healing. They teleported into my final arrow, so I was able to take them out, grab the vault crate, one final chest, and head to the overworld. Here I dropped down my crates, one of which was the loot that I had harvested, and the other was the loot that I had earned from killing the boss. There's some okay stuff in here, but my chests were better. I ate the cookies, which got me up to level 14, opened up all of the packs, which got me a few random items and dropped in a few more statues representing the rest of the Dominion SMP, which is an amazing server and you should go watch everybody who plays on it. We're all giving me some fun items that I can use for building or some of them are vanilla, which means they might show up in the altar. From here, you know the drill. More potion brewing and we're ready for another run. On day 60 nice, I got both strong and weak. So I think they canceled themselves out and it's technically a normal vault. Ah, but now we're level 14 and now the zombies have swords. So 
that's a new twist on things to make it interesting. First couple rooms, really boring loot. Room number three, also kind of a boring loot. And then I get into the mine room and oh my goodness. First I get an epic murdering altar, which had so much good stuff in it. That was already a great start. Then there is just so many ores in this space. And I'm talking so many gems available. I spent over half the run in just this one place to the point where I'm starting to run out of time. So I down a power bar thinking, I gotta fight the boss, I gotta fight the boss. And this was an, this is the thing that I had already activated. So yeah, with less than a minute to go, I just yeeted myself through the portal. Day 70, I'm going through the loot and there is so much in here. Like I said, so many gems from that one mineshaft room, which is basically the entire run. But on top of that, I had more boxes, more experience. So I compressed everything down, brewed up new potions, checked in on all of my friends and Shadow is dressed as fix it. Should I be concerned? From here, it's time to unlock some skills. I unlocked the finesse specialization for my vein miner, as well as a new level in dash, a new level in experienced, a new level in twerker, and another new level in experience. And then finally, reach plus one. So I can reach a little bit further and open chests more out of reach. But it keeps me safer from traps. On day 71, I made a new catalyst fragment and I had to get a nautilus shell and some ice. So I went searching around, trying to find some drowned that I could stab for shells. I found a portal that had a gold block in it, which is nice. And then I found the space where I'd collected the ice, which had no ice in it. I also forgot my silk touch pickaxe, so that was that. On the way back, however, I found a bunch of glaciers, which is a way better way to get ice. So I was able to grab a bunch of those, fighting a few drowned, mainly with the trident, but none of them dropped a nautilus shell. They were all empty handed, except for the ones that have tridents that they were throwing at me. That continued into day 72, where drowned spawns slowed to an absolute trickle. I did look and see what it would take to craft a Nautilus shell, and while expensive, it does save me a little bit of time, because we're kind of getting late in the game here, and I don't want to get blocked on running another vault. So I invested a few Beniotite, a little bit of quartz, and some rotten flesh into completing my next crystal. With that catalyst on, I would get healing, crowded, and slowed. So it would be harder for me to move, but I would have natural healing inside the vault and that's kind of nice. I was potentially considering combining it with another one for just all of the modifiers but I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. For my next vault crystal, wheat, iron, and the soul bead were actually super easy. Jungle wood was something that I didn't know where to find. I'd seen a bunch of different biomes but none of them actually had jungle wood inside so I went sailing off in a random direction finding sunken ships and amazing mossy cliffs and then this city, which is supposedly a jungle city with all sorts of temples, I'm absolutely gonna build something like this in the hardcore world. But it was in the mahogany forest. And then there was these massive cliffs right here going into day 73, where I'm just searching and sailing and searching and sailing. And then I saw what looked like some jungle trees somewhere on my mini map. So I flew over in that direction and wouldn't you know it, there was some jungle wood just waiting for me. Oh, I really need to check this thing. Spent some time vein mining down the tree, which makes it super satisfying completing my next vault rock and then checked the catalysts and both of them seemed really rough, not gonna lie. But I ended up with speedy and faster just so we can do one quick run maybe that was entirely focused on a boss kill. And that's what we did for vault run number 10 and this one would come down to the wire. I was looting chests right away, finding some decent loot in the first couple and finally remembering that I had the cleanse ability so whenever I got poisoned, I could just turn it off. I got that thing on like day 12 and I didn't really use it until day 60. Room number one was a bunch of chests that I was able to quickly get out of it and then immediately off into a wild west room where I would get so many more chests and a lot of mobs. Plus I kind of accidentally blew up half of the map. Since this is a speedy vault, I thought sacrificing a little bit more time would probably be fine, right? So I popped a minute in and I got not a minute's worth of stuff back out. Running around and finding another altar in a village that required half my health and that was too risky. I didn't even bother going to the stronghold because I saw this room off in the distance and this, this is massive. This is a puzzle room. And if you can get all of the required blocks, most of whom you can find in the chests in this room, you get 20 
five gilded chests. So I spent the time, invested it, going through each chest meticulously, one after the other. And while I found a bunch of puzzle blocks and some other loot that was honestly pretty good, I, the time started getting away from me. And then I realized I had under a minute left. I'm downing power bars a full room and a half away. I dove across a gap, just barely missing a one by one hole that would have trapped me and ended me and hit the portal with one second remaining. I had to pause because that, that was way too close. My trophies for that near death experience, a globe, which was cool. And I kept all the puzzle blocks inside of a crate inside of my vault kit, which is just ever increasing in size, just in case I happen to find another puzzle room. I also got some more statues, and since all of Dominion is represented, it was time to rep the mods as well. Going into day 76, I had healing crowded and slowed, meaning I would have to use less healing potions with natural regeneration, but there would be far more mobs spawning around me, which would test that regeneration. And being slowed just meant vault navigation was gonna be even trickier. The first two rooms both had obelisks and it was only three to some of the boss in this one. So that would be a quick way out if necessary, if I was really deep in. And candy bars are a great way to counteract the slowness, even though it's kind of expensive just spending them over and over. I found another village room, which is at this point my favorite room to potentially find. I know there's cooler ones at higher levels, but right now this is the best I can get. I went down into the stronghold and I don't remember Silverfish hitting this hard or being this full. Then I remember that it was crowded so there was so many more of them i was able to get to a few of the gilded chests one of which had a spare netherite helmet as well as another vault diamond which was a huge find one step closer to a knowledge star now i still had 10 minutes on the clock and i wasn't planning on doing this but i accidentally hit the obelisk when i went to eat my candy bar summoning the soul blaze now with 10 minutes left i thought eh, is it worth it but i don't want this boss just following me around so I took the time, invested, and just stabbed the boss in the face a lot. And then we're back in the loop. Restock, compress, brew new potions, and prepare to go back into the vault. This thing is pretty addictive. But on day 77, I had one more statue and one more mod to represent. Mod Squad is now all here. I ate the cookies to get myself up to level 17 and then level 18, going to my villagers. I noticed half of them gone, which was weird. I spawned a few new in and had to get them leveled up again. This is something I'm repeating before making another catalyst fragment to try tinkering with vaults a little bit further. But I'm out of vault rocks, which means I need to go mining. And if I'm gonna do that, I might as well go mining over in the mushroom biome where I know A, I won't be attacked and B, I'll make more spawn space for those little friends of mine that could bring me all sorts of fancy nice items and I could kill for their hearts. I mined for what felt like an entire day, but when I came up and checked, it had barely been half of the time. Going and slotting another vault rock and finding shells. Again. What is this with the back to back on things I don't have? Terracotta was easy. I just went and obliterated a nearby mini mesa. And then I went back over to where I knew the drowned were spawning, just trying to find one who had a seashell in their hand and a wish for death in their pocket. I found one that had both a shell and a trident. Unfortunately, it only gave me one of those two things and killed just a few extra on the way while completing that and getting all but one of the rotten flesh that I needed. I went over, bipped a zombie, went back to the base and completed the crystal. Day 79, my next crystal was something that I was actually pretty well equipped for. I had everything I needed except a little bit of charcoal, which was fast enough to smelt up. All of the andesite came from compressed blocks. All of the seeds came from my many, 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 many seeds. And I just stood and waited a little bit for one furnace to get me the nine charcoal that I needed to complete my next gem. I immediately slotted one and here's where things started to get expensive. Four diamonds, that's okay, I have spares. Cobwebs is actually tricky because I've always been breaking them for string, which I also needed for this altar. So it's a lot of kind of duplication to some degree. But the big thing was oak logs, dark oak logs. That was 277 of them. String was easy, diamonds was easy, dark oak and cobwebs, not so much. I navigated over to a dark oak forest using some vein miner to excavate a lot. And I know I'm using a pickaxe. I forgot my axe, okay? I went to where I remembered finding that mine shaft very early on. And with a pair of shears, grabbed just a few cobwebs, just enough to get me complete. Then I saw a spawner. And since I have so many spawn eggs, 
I can turn that spawner into one of basically any type. I'll save this location for later. I pillared out, flew home, dropped in the logs, which was not enough, about a stack short, and all of the cobwebs, which was more than enough. So one thing completed. The next day, back over, I remembered my ax this time. So I was able to get a few extra and complete my next gem. I slotted the next one after that, and this one I actually had everything for right away, thanks to some foresight and getting some extra phantom membrane earlier than the last time I needed some. Four gems in. I started playing around with some different catalysts and saw one with super healing, daycare, and hunger. That could be fun. I made that one to save for a later date. And then jumped into one with random modifiers, getting trapped, unlucky, weakened, and healing. Oh, this was gonna be a tough one. Plus, it had seven obelisks, so finding and killing the boss in this one was gonna be basically impossible. So I thought, let me get as much as I can, mainly focusing on compressed blocks, which I know won't kill me, and grabbing a few chests from a village before heading down, finding a stronghold with a portal room. And so many silverfish. Lots and lots of silverfish. Silverfish that just caused the lava to spew everywhere instead. I threw the eye in and trapped really reared its ugly head here, with the first two of the gilded chests that I opened being trapped right off the bat. The rest had some decent loot inside, mainly cookies, shulker shells, the occasional pack or golden apple. But from there, I was off to a graveyard, finding more gilded chests buried inside and mobs sneaking up right behind me. The next couple rooms are relatively not worth mentioning with the exception of I fell in lava again. This time the cobalt apple was on my hot bar, so I took even less damage before finding my way into a second village room with a second portal room down in its stronghold. Thankfully, these were less trapped and I only got exploded at the end instead of at the beginning of the whole process. Unthankfully, I only had four minutes left, so I had to absolutely book it back to the spawn, getting there in just over a minute. With three crates, I can transfer a lot of loot, to the point where every time I'm unloading is taking even more time. And that was day 81, opening all of the packs and getting a mystery box, eating all of the cookies to get me up to level 20, which is my next major milestone, and then opening all of the boxes to get a bunch of random items, including a whole bunch of statues. Now Shadow's dressed as me. I'm even more concerned. But with these old dead statues, we can actually make something bigger if we combine them all together. So I invested seven netherite ingots into a statue cauldron, where with some water, you can throw statues in here to build up towards an omega statue, which can give you a ton of resources permanently. It's a forever statue. But with everything I threw in, I'm only at 20%. Yikes. Day 82, it's time for another vault run, and I got slowed and plentiful. More ores, but gonna take me longer to get there. I went for candy bars right away, and there was a village right out front of the door, which is a pretty good start. There's some decent ores in these as well. But the chests are what I'm primarily looking for, and the silverfish are hitting hard at level 20. All of the mobs were a lot more painful. Some of the zombies are armored, they all have swords now, some had fire aspect, which was a whole new thing I had to deal with. I found my way into the upper branches of this large tree, and there's several small spots of chests dotted around. Since I'm slowed, candy bars are priority. I should really see if I could craft these. Grabbing star essence and gems, I made my way into a second village with a second stronghold with so many more silverfish. That's the closest I came to death. It might not look like it, but they had me on the ropes. No portal on that one though, so I continued working my way around, hitting all of the obelisks and checking from room to room to room. Navigation in this one was a little bit harder. I kept doubling back and ending up in rooms that I had been in before. I was going in more of a grid pattern instead of actually progressing in one direction. And that loss in navigation hurt me quite a bit. Despite looting quite a few chests, I was under two minutes and then under one minute before I could even realize. 30 seconds out, I was still over two rooms away from the entrance, so I chugged a candy bar and started booking it just barely, dodging my way past all of the mobs and getting over the last wall and into the portal with only a few seconds to remain. On day 83, it was time to sort all of that loot using the boxes to get random items and the packs to get more boxes and the cookies to get up to level 21, always progressing. I organized my inventory, brewed up new potions, and I'm addicted to running this vault. It feels silly that I'm just kind of repeating myself whenever we prepare to go into one of these things. I grabbed the unmodified crystal, threw it into the portal, and was ready to go again. 
And this is another one where it seems like it's gonna start badly. And the first few rooms have barely any chests in it. And if I go mining for ores, it's all regular vanilla ores. And then I get to a wild west room. And there are so many chests and so much loot. Everything I could ever want is in here. And I'm getting basically all of it. Until I open one chest that goes badly. That... That was ridiculously close and honestly would have been a cheap way to die, not gonna lie. Followed immediately by a poison was just insult to injury. Now I had a bunch of stuff in my pockets, but I wasn't about to be disrespected like that. So I got out of here with well over two minutes on the clock. Just no, 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 no thank you. I'm finished for the day. I got back way late in the day, in day 84. So literally all I did in the overworld was grab my elytra out of the chest, dash my way back up to my treehouse, and slept in my upstairs bed. On day 85, I was organizing a lot of the resources and these barrels are starting to get pretty full. And the statues are doing their job in generating resources that I could use in further builds or in vault recipes. I made myself a new bow to repair mine since it was almost broken. Eating the vault cookies, I ended up just a pixel short of level 22. I went back down into the mines and most of day 85 was just excavating, searching for more vault rock ore, which I eventually found one very late mining for a couple of vault rocks in my pocket, grabbing a little bit of deep slate just to round things out and then heading back up to the surface. On day 86, I realized that in my last run, I had gotten the last vault diamond that I needed to craft a star core and conversely a knowledge star. This unlocks my first knowledge point and allows me to research new mods, unlocking all of their potential. But I couldn't decide what I wanted, so I was gonna focus on making progress. I had six rocks that I needed to convert into charged gems. The first one required a wither skeleton skull as its rare item, and that I had in spades a little bit of oak wood from across the valley and bam gem one complete gem two i had everything basically on my person or in chests within 30 blocks of me as soon as the recipe came up and that was a quick one to bang out on day 87 i'm focusing on more cobblestone was really easy to put in i needed mushrooms if only i knew where to find mushrooms somewhere close to here completing that gem and immediately slotting another soul beads was the one that i needed for this Gold was relatively easy. The hard thing of this one was actually netherrack, and I used basically all of my compressed resources. From there, it was just a little bit of time hitting gravel with a fortune shovel to eventually convert it all to flint. I wish you could just craft this. It would be so much easier, but another rock was done. Look at this, cobwebs, potatoes, jungle wood. I know where all of these things are. I've controlled this world enough, and I've completed another vault rock. Day 88 actually had me stumped. There was a bell in the recipe, and I could have sworn that I had grabbed one at one point in time, as well as a lot of rotten flesh, more than I was carrying around. I had actually been throwing that out, thinking it was trash. Turns out, no, nothing is trashed in Vault Hunters, so I need to go zombie hunting. And, well, I know a place that's going to have a bell and some other things that I'm going to want to preserve, as well as potentially some rotten flesh if I let the zombies spawn. I flew over to the village that my pink sheep was at, leaded them, and started leading them through the forest, making sure to not see any wolves in any direction. Once I got to open water, I was feeling pretty safe, sailing past the mushroom biome and just parking them in the bay right next to my base. I don't actually make a spot for them, but it's good to have them here. Boat sheep it is. But the bell turned in is down to rotten flesh, and the easiest place I can think of to get that is actually going and killing drowned. This way I could also potentially get another nautilus shell, but just killing drowned and any zombies that happen to be on any of the small islands nearby was a great way to just passively farm up over a stack and a half of rotten flesh throughout the evening. I did a little bit of combat with a trident drowned on day 89 as it rolled over and dropped just under a stack into the altar while taking a look at some other utility items that I could make. A vault magnet would be very useful, allowing me to pull items to me pretty quickly. So I made one of those and threw it in my pocket. Then I thought I'd hop over to the nether for some quick resources, but there was an assassination attempt made on me. Turns out there was a creeper right here and a wandering trader. 
I'm beginning to think they were conspiring. I sail back over to the nether portal that closely connects to the stronghold, which is the next closest one to my actual base portal, killing a few husks and skeletons to get enough rotten flesh to complete this gem and turn it into a win. Instead of going to sleep, I spent the night down in the ground, harvesting until I found another piece of vault ore and four more vault rocks, which I would immediately take to the altar and start carving in on day 89. I wanna complete as many as I can. I need to go collect a few ink sacks from local squids, their donations being greatly appreciated, soul beads, and everything else that I had meant one more rock was complete. And as I slotted the next one in, three out of four I already had. Iron, nether wart, honeycomb, easy. Diorite, well, that took a quick little bit. I went over to the mushroom biome, found a patch of diorite, vein mined it out, and everything I needed dropped in quickly. Vault gem number nine complete. And with the next one, it was just a ton of netherrack, another bell, some string and some iron, most of which I had on hand. I was about a half a stack of netherrack short and in searching around, I could have just gone to the nether easily, but I was searching around for another bell. I found a ruined nether portal that had just enough netherrack sitting around it that I was able to just mine that out, dropping both of those into the altar to completing gem number 10. All right, and with that, we're in the end game now. And let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Do. Running each individual vault at this point feels comfortable. It's something that I've done several times already, 14 times already in this video, but we're going to up the challenge. For the remainder of these 100 days, I'm running vaults back to back to back to back to back, and I'm not going to be able to re-up on potions too much between. I'll allow myself one brewing between each session to be able to just re-up on the few that I use. So this is a game of attrition. I'm also gonna store all of the loot and go through it all together at the very end with the exception of vault cookies, which I'll be eating just to continue leveling up so each vault is harder than the previous. And if I get a piece of vault gear, you know I'm gonna bring that in with me. All right, now let's get started. Vault number one of the run is unlucky, meaning it's unlucky. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more trapped chests and not as much good loot. That's unfortunate. And I'll be honest with you, I was feeling unlucky with this. The very first chest that I touched was a poison trap. There were no chests in the next two rooms and very few vault ores, only some basic vanilla ones of which I had way too many. And there's nothing in the dojo room except for a singular obelisk. I activated the third obelisk and continued searching around, found my way back to the start room and then heading off in another direction where I actually started finding some chests. There was a village room there. I went down into the stronghold to find silverfish and only silverfish, having to burn through a healing potion just from those little buggers, not what I like. With only a few minutes left on the clock and very little loot in my pockets, actually, I summoned the boss here in the forest and was able to just constantly bow and beat them down. They did sneak away for a brief second, but lucky for me, it was okay. The boss loot was okay, tons of emeralds, nice, and the enchanted netherite axe, I can't really say no to that, it's useful. I ate the cookies to level up, and I'm very close to my goal, cleaning up a few of the dead statues and throwing all the other resources into the first chest of my runs. Next one up, healing and hunger. This is a weird combination, but I think I'll be able to make it work. I should have made sure that I was full on food before entering though. I got a wild west room right off of the bat and had quite a decent bit of luck with some of the chests in here. But as I'm starting to get up in level, the mob density is really starting to increase and these are becoming a little bit more tense. I have skill points that can make me harder to hit or give me more health, and I think they are going to be essential coming up soon. The next room only had a few chests and an obelisk and an altar that required two minutes of my vault time. Now, this was a risky play, but it was relatively early on. It was only four obelisks for this one. I figured it was worth a shot. In the very next room was obelisk number three, but also a baby zombie with a fire aspect sword. So I'm getting filzed inside the vaults now? As time is ticking down, that's always on my mind as I ran into the city room, finding a lot more gilded chests and one of those trap chests that, you know, goes kablam in your face. Thankfully though, there's quite a decent bit of loot, even though half of it's trying to kill you. I ended up doing a complete loop back into the Wild West room and organized my inventory, heading off in the one direction I hadn't taken yet. As time is starting to run down, the second room that I accessed had an obelisk on an island with just water around. Everything was accessible. Bosses don't teleport into water. This is a good boss fight location. I downed a power bar and it was a soul blaze and being in water meant I couldn't be set on fire, which was fantastic. I ran around, did the whole bunch of jump, crit, stab, 
that you know whenever you're fighting a big mob in Minecraft and was able to take it down. Only when I returned to the overworld did I realize I didn't end up with the vault crate. I'm guessing my inventory was full and I just didn't pick it up. So that's a huge loss on potential loot. But I took everything from my chest, banked it in, and ate the cookies to hit up to level 25. Now these cookies are worthless to me. It's all about burgers, which with only seven days left, I don't think I crafted one. Level 25 also indicates the next big jump in difficulty, adding two new classes of mobs to those that attack you. Skeletons will now spawn more frequently, and other players are in here to take you out. The graveyard room was good, but I found my way into another village room, getting down to a portal which I was able to complete and loot all of the chests for a big come up. Vault diamonds are becoming a little bit more common, and I'm very glad to have them. The first vault fighter that tried to kill me was me, and I think there's a metaphor hidden in that somewhere as I went into a wild west room grabbing a few more of the chests and fighting off more players and tons of zombies I'm going through all of the chests using some of the hanging ones as well just to catch a breather and yeah it's weird seeing other players in here with swords and weapons I summoned a soul blaze inside the wild west room using everything I had at my disposal the problem here is I'm on fire which is doing pretty significant damage as I ran around though to collect the boss crate I'm assuming it must have fallen into to the flames because it wasn't there despite making sure I had an open inventory slot for it. That is a huge loss on potential resources. I realized that when I was doing my looting the next day and depositing everything off into the chests, there's quite a bit here, but less than what I had expected given how successful that run went. I used my singular brewing to make three additional splash potions, took a quick nap so phantoms wouldn't be harassing me, and on day 96, I did a little bit of gearing up and then it's straight back into the vault. This one is difficult, like literally the modifier is difficult, which means there's a lot more players and a lot more mobs. I found my way into another mine room, hoping for a ton of different vault doors, but unfortunately no loot, just cobwebs sitting in these carts. It was also a five obelisk temple and I was not having luck finding it with only two at the halfway point. I found a quick cake hidden in a wall, which was delicious. Running around and fighting players, including those riding on chickens, I ended up in a treasure room. This could be massive. Underneath that X is either a ton of loot or an empty room, and well, you guessed which one I found. I was thankfully able to find the fifth obelisk, however, summoning yet another soul blaze. And being able to stand in the water and fight this thing, yeah, it makes it pretty easy. My bow does decent damage, but my sword is my main weapon, and this time I made sure to grab the crate. And on coming out, my vault idol leveled up, giving me a withering one cloud, meaning I could wither things that I attacked. That is pretty useful. I banked all of the resources, added another catalyst that is going to make this last one really interesting, and jumped into the vault for potentially my final run. Gilded, difficult, and slowed, so it's going to be harder to get to all of these chests, but there's a lot more of them. This immediately started paying off in the graveyard room, where every chest has a gilded chest hidden inside. However, difficult was doing a lot of damage to me, and I just spent so much time fighting off mobs, just trying to hold my own. In the next room, I had a murder chest which was easy enough to do and I got another vault idol in the loot there I'll have to identify it later I'm starting to think the Wild West is my new personal favorite the village was good but this is far more consistent and knowing where some of the chests are I'm able to maintain a good path throughout this one grabbing everything that I can finding gilded chests just sitting out in the open is a definite bonus every room becomes a valuable one I went over to an end room where there was far too many fighters down on the lower level for me to even think about it. In the hallway, I actually collaborated with Tubbo. It's probably the only time you'll see us in a video together. As I was walking into the dojo room, seeing more gilded chests around, I forgot traps exist. And that explosion messed with me mentally. I was still looting any chests that I could potentially find, but now I was very nervous with every single one. As time was starting to tick down, there was no way I was finding two obelisks and doing a boss fight in this time, so I ran back towards the portal and bailed. From here, I shoved all the loot in the chest and identified the vault idol, getting one with cooldown reduction. Now that could be useful. I also found Pandora's box and opened it, getting a piece of coral. I'm not sure that that means what I think it means. It did die immediately though, so maybe it does mean what I think it means. I unlocked a level in strength and three new hearts, making myself a little bit more durable. Some of those fights were getting a little close. I also sent I also spent a skill point to unlock furniture. 
because after a hundred days in this world, of course I was gonna decorate it better. As I'm looking over all of the loot, it's a pretty good haul. If I ever was gonna return to this world, there would still be quite a lot more for me to do. Maybe we'll do that one day. But as I organized everything together on the morning of day 100, I crafted a second knowledge star and quickly researched RF tools storage. So we'd be able to do a lot more in organizing these chests one day. From there, I grabbed all of the different trader cores and shoved more people into my vending machine so they could watch me rest once this challenge is over. Using my furniture mod, I made myself a quick little trampoline so I could bounce to celebrate my 100 days. This felt like an awesome accomplishment and the first in a mod pack that I didn't make myself. I made myself a little couch so I can sit and look at my dragon egg and relax as the night came to a close. The next morning, as it hit day 101, I thought, you know what, let's do one more vault run for posterity. As I grabbed the last crystal out of the chest, they arrived. Have you heard of the Origins mod? With it, you can play Minecraft as a snowman, or a ghost, or a piglin, or a fish, or a blaze, or so many other options. We use it a lot on the Dominion SMP, which is awesome and you should go check it out, but I wanted to push it to its maximum. So here's what we're doing. I loaded up over a hundred mods, which added all sorts of new structure, new items, new bosses, and I'm gonna take it on with a random origin every 10 days. So I'm gonna transform from a blaze to a fish. I mean, I don't know, it's random, but you never know, that might happen. But now let's get started on 100 days with random origins, day one. Before I could even check my origin, I was in the middle of one of these giant structures surrounded by skeletons on phantoms and just taking shots from every direction. I punched out some wood from the wall to create a basic crafting table and gear hiding and just trying to peek around, the little particles telling me I was an Indarian, which would help a lot in finding my way out of here. I made basic tools and used my inherent ender pearl to jump from spawning into the wall to one of the bridges that was nearby, trying to look around for loot, but the mobs here were no joke. And being surrounded, I did the only sensible thing. I yeeted myself off the tower, throwing a pearl. Luckily, it hit the ground before I did and was safely able to land. From there, I headed down to a small graveyard, which was right underneath, having to work my way through some cobwebs, finding a book called The Arrival, that's not spooky at all. Which talked about being in this world on day 102 and the dangers that they had experienced. I'm gonna have to try to do a better job than they did. Going down, I found some candles and some brewing stands, some wither skulls just casually sitting everywhere, a golden apple in one of the chests, and all of these structures. This gives you an idea of just how populated this world is. There's just pillagers who have taken over this one town. I tenderized a little stake as I was on my way heading south, finding an abandoned house with candles still lit, torches still on the outside, and water out front, which sucks because I'm an enderman, I can't touch water. But eventually I found my way inside, finding a decent bit of loot amongst several of the chests and decided this was as good a place as any to sleep for the night. The next day I thought, the house is abandoned. If anybody does live here, they'll probably come back and I'll have to kill them. But I started trying to make it my own, putting up some different bits of storage, looking around and seeing what I had to work with. The field directly next to the house is just filled with wild boars and those things hurt. So while I was looting a grave, I just did it from on top of a couple blocks, finding some diamonds, which was huge. Honestly, those boars are the most dangerous thing that I've dealt with right Right now. They hit for about a third of my health really quickly, and with only wooden and golden tools, they're really hard to kill. I ended up multiple times just having to pearl away to the roof of my house, staring down at them to try to avoid them. You win this round, pig, but I will come back for my revenge. There was also this airship, which was right on top of the house I that I decided that. to live at. And I threw a pearl seeing if I could make it and oh no, no, I could not. So I just took the diamonds that I had found in the grave, made myself a diamond pickaxe. And you're thinking, wow, Lagunda, you're so geared so quickly. Don't worry, things will get better. The next day I scaled a nearby mountain to find a little bit of iron that was sitting in the side of one of the chests, working my way through and being chased by more boars, having to pearl my way off of the mountain. And then it started raining and I can't touch water, 
So I'm stuck out in the rain, going from tree to tree, and then I just duck into a little cave, digging into more water, which hurts me, while I'm just trying to cook up the iron and make food, while just running from tree to tree to tree, taking damage whenever I'm in between anything, just trying to make it back home so I could get the rain to stop. I made it into the house with only a few hearts left, having to dig in through the back wall before sleeping and going into day four where I found a larger graveyard a little ways off from the house. Inside was a bunch of bones, a bunch of amethyst, and other treasure and loot that was definitely gonna prove useful. But the gravestone, I just made a little preemptive grave for the enemy that I had made so far. But I'm not really ready to act on that yet, so I'm constantly using pearls to just avoid the boars. <laughs> Went home and banked all of the resources that I could, checking some natural tunnels that existed under my base, finding a bunch more iron and a zombie villager, which is, honestly pretty huge. I made a quick boat, got them trapped inside and torched up the area so I'd be able to, you know, keep myself from getting killed by what the hell is that thing? It's coming for me, oh my god, no! But I continued exploring and mining around underground. At least it can't rain underground, so that's good for me. Got my way down into the deep slate and then dripstone, finding a dripstone creeper, which you can only damage with a pickaxe. There's a ton of different mobs in this, including this undead one, which blinds you if it explodes. That's terrifying. But as I started to run low on torches, I'm trying to dig my way back up and I keep digging into the water. And I can't touch water, cause it'll kill me. I eventually found a dry space to dig up, breaching the ground right around the morning of day five, accidentally throwing my pearl into the lake and then doing it again, landing on this brief little island with only a few hearts and just, just casually walking back to the house in shame, cooking up whatever food that I possibly could on the campfire. And I'm just sitting in the house, eating rotten flesh in the middle of the day, trying to get back up to full health, when I started doing a little bit of farming. I had a ton of bones from all of the graves that I had looted, so I spent time just growing up some bread as quickly as I can, and then started fishing, trying to get all of the different monsters in the lake to eventually give me food. The first thing I picked up was a puffer fish, which feels horrifically on brand for me, so I just quit while I was behind. Day six, I really want to go check out that airship. All of the loot in all of these structures is bonkers, so it can get me up to high tier gear pretty quickly. I made a cobblestone pillar trying to just close the distance so I'd eventually be able to pearl, but I threw one and it's still not enough, so I need to go higher. I mined and hollowed out about half of the island, expanding the porch so I won't accidentally hit the water right outside my front door, and then continued on the pillar, just figuring I'm not gonna bother with the pearl. I'm just gonna pillar all the way up to the sky ship when Phantom jump scared me out of nowhere Throwing me towards the ground and I had to pearl to clutch myself with only like four hearts while I'm still sitting here on fire That place is super dangerous The next morning I crafted up a bunch of ladders and then was attacked by the creepiest cousin to myself that I had ever seen ever It's an enderman covered in blood. It's almost as bad as an adapted enderman I put ladders all along the cobblestone pillar, running out halfway through and having to go harvest a bunch of trees before making my way up to the top, digging into the side of the building and seeing that this thing is covered in spawners. I worked my way out onto the wing to break one of the spawners and then headed inside, opening up the first chest that I saw and whoo, that is a lot of diamonds. That's 48 diamonds and a totem and a bunch of carrots and boots with feather falling six. The place was also populated with a bunch of wither skeletons in diamond armor and super tanky. Oh, and there's enemies with flame power bows too. So I got shot and set on fire and almost murdered right away. Boxing myself out onto the wing where I was only being harassed by regular phantoms, crafting up a full set of diamond armor with a ton of falling protection. I don't think gravity's gonna be able to get me. The wither skeletons riding on zoglins though, yeah, those are a little terrifying. So I went back down to the ground and Thought, I'll, I'll go back there at some point. The next day I was looking around on the minimap and saw this multicolored menagerie down in the bottom corner and figured with being able to run and throw pearls basically freely, I can cover that distance pretty quick. When I got there, it was a bunch of piglins wearing mushroom heads riding cows. Mm -hmm. The mod combinations in this is just honestly super weird. I worked my way through the space just clearing out all of the spawners and checking out all of the different chests and barrels and everything else that I could find. This 
was honestly just hilarious. I loved this space. Finding a diamond sword in one of the chests, which is huge. But in all honesty, some of the coolest things that I saw were these different player heads that were around, a beehive that was just placed there that I could use at some point. But by far the biggest find was the lodestone, which was just sitting here free netherite ingot based blocks yes please as it started to get late i found another one of those cottages just hovering over water what is it with these houses and water i looted everything that i could from the chest which included a bunch of lapis and obsidian from the upstairs chest which is a good start towards an enchanting table but i crashed here and the next day was my final day as being an enderman i was already kind of starting to miss it i spent the start of the day getting home and taking my very full pockets and emptying them out into the chests and i'm just just gonna tell you now organization is pretty bad until like day 60 when I had a little bit of time to build a lot more chests so sorry I spent the remainder of the day just killing all of the boars since I'm in diamond armor now and they're only doing like a half a heart of damage before seeing a pile of cobblestone digging into it and seeing that it's a giant spider dungeon this place is covered in cobwebs with spider spawners everywhere I started working my way through back to one of the tunnels finding another spawner at the end of one, and then a chest at the end of the next with a bunch of different potions inside, including weakness potions, which would let me cure that villager. But when I got back up to the surface, it was both nighttime and raining. So for the last time, I ran and purled from tree to tree, just trying to get my way back, getting to about half health from too much of a bath, blocking the door, taking a little bit of food, and heading to bed, wondering what I'd be in the morning. Please don't be something that lives underwater. Please don't be something that lives underwater. Okay. Uh, Blazeborn. So I'm immune to fire, immune to poison and hunger. Oh, I can go ki ta kill those spiders now. I still can't touch water. And I'm an archer. Well, since I'm immune to poison now, going down into that spider dungeon just feels like the right play. I worked my way down through multiple levels of it, breaking out all the spawners and finding another treasure chest with a golden apple, a fire protection book, which seems worthless right now, and a bunch more potions. It's worth noting that even in my second origin, I still can't touch water, except now I can't teleport over it, so it makes things even harder. I worked my way back towards spawn though, finding that camp that's right next to the giant windmill and the evil looking towers. That's also taken over by pillagers, so that's a little difficult to manage. I did find a power bow inside one of the chests though, so that was good to upgrade me pretty quick, and a ton of coal for torches and for cooking. I found this tower that had broken off and fallen over, with a waystone in the middle of it, and that was gonna be really nice. I broke it to take it home, sleeping in the pillager camp, and the next day just trying to fight my way through the pillager camp a little bit before they all noticed me, and check out some of the other structures that were around. There was an abandoned and infected village also, right around the windmill, so a bunch of farmer villagers with mushroom hats and hoes just tried to beat me down. Honestly, this place is really ridiculous. Inside the windmill was a bunch of enchanted gear right off the first chest that I looked at. And then a ton of witches and pillagers, where if you've seen me in a 100 days video, you know witches are like my curse. Sorry, Joy. So I just, were, I'm just, nope, 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 I'm out of there. I did find a few copper golems sitting around and some copper buttons, which I checked out deoxifying them a little bit but they never followed me so i had to come back and do this a couple times actually i did open a door and find the one normal villager amongst this whole place and buddy you gotta move but my pockets were full and my food was starting to run low i only had a couple steaks left so i ran home banked all of the potions and the resources and then combined two power one bows to get a power five bow Maybe that's from being an archer, I'm not sure. But I put down the waystone to finally mark this place as home, and then the next day figured it was time for a little bit more mining since I'd done all of the dungeons runs lately. I just tried to explore a lot of the caves. I wasn't putting torches down because I could see via the torch in my hand thanks to shaders, which honestly probably wasn't too smart. I did dig into a huge deep slate cave area with a chest just sitting there and well, just watch. That legitimately scared me. My mic was not on and I jumped. What the heck? 
That was terrifying. I thought that was gonna be loot. I was so excited. Thankfully, the smoker, the campfire, and the jungle sapling were not mimics. I put little post-its on them to remind me that that was the case. I saw a little bit of lava that was directly next to it, and since I can just jump in, woo! Spending a little bit of time doing the most exciting, amazing thing, harvesting lava with an unenchanted pickaxe. That basically took me the rest of the day. So as I got back up to the surface, I used some of the obsidian to make a quick enchanting table, turning the attic into an enchanting space using the bookcases that I already had on hand to get some decent level gear. I was also attacked from a lamprey from out of the water, which just decided to bite me out of nowhere. Seeing that I could get looting three as an enchantment on my sword, if only I got a couple more levels. So I thought I'm immune to fire. What a better time to go to the nether than now. And then it started raining and I had to run inside. So the next day I crafted up a golden helmet, popped that on, made myself a compass, went through the portal, went through the portal. The game was bugged, so I had to restart and go back into it. And then I was actually able to go through the portal. I was really worried. I had just broken everything with the mods somehow. But I used the lodestone that I had gotten from the mushroom village to just use a compass. I know I can use the minimap for waypoints, but I don't know. This feels more fun for at least this first time into the nether. There was just nether wart sitting around in some of these cooler biomes. So I grabbed a little bit of that before running into a piglin tower. Just a repurposed pillager tower. And since I'm immune to lava, I just popped a bucket down, took a bath in it, waited for everybody to run next to me and just get immolated right away. That was awesome. There was a ton of gold and pork chops and enchanted gear at the top of that. And in a very nearby blackstone little ruins, there were some rubies directly underneath it and a bunch of stuff in chests. That was just nice. Not having to bridge over lava saved me a ton of time on blocks, just being able to swim through the rivers of this place. In all honesty, this is probably the best play. But there's so many new biomes. Eventually, I built my way into a nether city. Now, this isn't a fortress. This is something different, and it had a ton of different aesthetic blocks and these chested drawers, which looked really cool, although they don't make a sound when you open or close them. That's a little weird. There was also a bunch of books here, and I thought I could get myself up to level 30 enchants and don't worry yes i did forget to put looting on the sword before i did that but the main thing i wanted to find was a fortress i spent all of the day just running through different biomes before eventually i saw a little bit of nether brick and warp forest and started working my way through killing a few of my cousins just making my way up there now i'm immune to fire so this is the best time to go blaze rod hunting. I ran my way through, eventually finding the blaze spawner guarded by a blaze guardian, the big daddy cousin that I was a little bit worried about. Now, this was just honestly just a huge fight because it couldn't set me on fire, so all of its attacks were relatively pointless. I was able to kill that and then start farming blazes for blaze rods to just get everything that I needed. I wanted to get a dozen, so I'd have a full amount and wouldn't have to come back here in case I had another origin that just couldn't survive in the nether at all. I was very worried about that. So I made a little blaze farm, made a little room, and just constantly ran around and bopped them. I did that for basically the whole day, going into day 16, finding a ton more nether wart and a bunch of soul sand to be able to farm it. And then the second blaze spawner, and I thought, let me just kill the guardian here so I have nothing to worry about. You know what I said about none of their attacks being able to do anything? Um, Spontaneously blow up somebody from zero health? No, 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 no. And I thought, what the heck? Instant kill from full health in diamond armor? Like, come on, modders, I love you. You make amazing things, you really do. You add so much to the game, but balance is not your strong suit. So I teleported back, grabbed whatever hadn't been set on fire, which was about half of the stuff that I had that I lost, and I figured that was a fair trade. Thankfully, I still had the blaze rods. I hadn't lost my god tier diamond boots. I did lose my diamond pickaxe and a few other tools, so that that felt fair. It also felt like a hint to get the heck out of here. I bopped a few wither skeletons before yeeting myself off of the fortress, following the compass, grabbing a little bit of nether wart since I had lost everything that I had found before that point, getting to the portal, and then just getting the heck out of the nether. 
The next day, I was back into the overworld while it was still... The next day, I was back into the overworld right as it was the morning. So I spent a little bit of time organizing, using the chest of drawers to store all the nether materials, crafting myself up a new diamond shovel and a new diamond pickaxe to plant all of the nether wart and to start on some paths just to make the place look a little bit more lived in. I made the entire front porch out of oak instead of just random blocks that I had happened to find anywhere, throwing down some torches and making the whole place just feel a little bit more like home. Day 18, I headed off in another random direction just to explore the local area, finding a horror windmill with a bunch of those revenant skeletons just trying to nom on my face. And there was a lot of these things, and I forgot torches, so, so many undead bobs. I did eventually make my way in, breaking all of the spawners, finding an Eye of Ender in one of the chests, and some emeralds and wither roses on the other side. In all honesty, not amazing loot, but it was fine. I worked my way back home, avoiding all of the water, running back just in time for the sun to be setting. And on day 19, I banked all of the resources and then checked out one thing that I had gotten that I didn't realize was super cool the first time around, a pair of running shoes. Once I put these on at the trinket slot, whenever I ran, I really ran. I was really fast with this, which allowed me to run around and grab resources, avoiding all of the boars. And I had a ton of wood and then I remembered, oh yeah, that's right. I have a zombie villager down in the caves that I can go do something with. So I spent a little bit of time waiting for it to turn to night before breaking the boat and just leading them up through the tunnels while they tried to nom on me, making my way up as it was dark, plopping down the boat and just moving them up to the surface. I'm not gonna cure them now in the middle of the night because there's way too many mobs around and they could potentially get bit. So I'm gonna go to sleep and that's a problem for the next Gunda. And when I woke up, oh, what a problem it was. <laughs> Okay. All right, cool. I get to be, I get to, wait, can I? I can hide under here. I get to be fix it. This is going to be so much fun. Wait, does this mean I can go, I can go in water. I can finally touch water. It's been 20 days and I can finally take a bath. So I'm an inchling lumberjack. This is huge. I'm the thief. No, seriously, if you haven't yet, go watch the musical episode of Dominion Only, and if that doesn't convince you that that series is amazing, nothing will. And, well, just just enjoy this 100 days. Oh, you. I can cure you. But you screw it up right away. But I was also a lumberjack, which solved the main problem that Fixit has being an inchling on Dominion. I can just chop down an entire tree by just bopping the bottom of it. So I spent the whole day just getting myself a big stock of wood of every type. And the perspective on this is so weird now. My house feels like a mansion. Chests are way taller than me. The things that I had planted up on sides, I need to jump to get to. And boats, boats are absolutely worthless to attempt to ride in as an inchling. But with my now cured villager, I quickly pushed them back into a room and trapdoored them off, just so no mobs could get to them before taking a nap for the day. And honestly, the next day, it really sunk in how much the changed perspective is really going to change this gameplay. I had to build just with random fence posts to try to go up and get some leaves and fell some trees that didn't really work right away. But being able to finally go underwater, I was able to get some flint and make my first fletching table. And all of that sticks that I had just made were really gonna come in handy. I figured since I was tiny and since mobs wouldn't really notice me too much, it might be a good idea to head back to spawn and do some more raiding on all of the structures that I could find there. And I was right, none of the mobs really noticed me until I hit them and I could just camp up on the ladder and get away with it. I did accidentally trigger the self-destruct button though. Thankfully, the machine on the other side of the building, that just gave me a ton of emeralds and gold. So that's a plus. Don't mind the crater. I worked my way up towards the upstairs and outside and just not being able to be noticed was awesome. I found my third diamond sword with different enchants, finding again that one villager who lives right here next to all the awful things and stealing their bed. The next day, I just had to run home and the grass being taller than me is, it's kind of disorienting. It really is. I get where Fix-It's coming from. That this point of view can make Minecraft just kind of weird to play. Spend some 
time banking all the resources i have over two stacks of emeralds now so i'm feeling pretty rich by villager standards throwing in all of the gear because i have more than i could possibly use but i just wanted to head back and keep looting to take advantage of basically being in stealth mode since i could climb up the walls i grabbed a bunch of blocks and just climbed up the side of one of the towers not having to worry about ladders or anything else like that and being able to dig my way in a lot quicker a lot of these mobs just did not notice me, but I only have five hearts, so I have to be really careful. And I mean really careful that they don't, because I'll go down hard if they do. I spent most of the day and night of 22 as it stormed outside, just bowing down mobs and running from spawner to spawner to break them before I was even noticed. Getting a decent bit of loot. My pockets were full as I ascended to the top of one of these towers. And I double checked my origin just to make sure this was a thing before jumping off and landing. Now I nailed the water clutch on this, but I wasn't gonna take damage anyway. And that scared at least three of you. So I'm kind of here for that. I made my way back home, banked all of the treasure and I'm starting to feel like more of a dragon than an inchling with how much I'm hoarding. Before going upstairs and checking a little bit of enchanting, forgetting that I had missed out on the level 30 enchant. I tried taming a dong thinking that this would honestly look pretty ridiculous but I can't see where I'm going if I'm in first person in third person I can just see their butt and I can honestly run faster with the running shoes than the donkey can this is a fun experiment and now I've tamed a donkey but in all honesty that's kind of just silly for me in my current design to try to keep them so I just leashed them up it, fun way to spend the day. On day 24, I remembered being a lumberjack means I cut down a whole tree by breaking just one block. And I thought, old growth spruce, like the big, tall giga spruce trees, I can get so much wood so quickly by being a lumberjack. So I ran over to that, chopped down a few trees, and then found a spruce pyramid, which had wooden pressure plates, which are far easier to trip accidentally. Guess I'm not getting any of the loot from in there. I came across this house with invisible skeletons in chainmail armor and was just able to casually sneak past them quickly. Finding a set of feral claws in one of the chests that increases my attack speed, that's cool. And a bunch of diamonds, obsidian, and a map, which would lead off to some random giant dungeon structure off in the distance. I slept in the woods and made my way to the coast where I was kind of left with a difficult decision. I could swim or I could ride in a boat both of which would look ridiculous. So I chose option C and just went back to the base to re-secure all of my resources. From there, I just started swimming, making my way to another one of these houses, just sleeping there. Before eventually thinking, yeah, let's try the boat. And in third person, I can see practically nothing. I mean, look at me, my head is just barely above the top of this thing. So in first person, it's worthless. I just used third person to sail away, finding another smashed down tower grabbing another waystone, and then finding a village, which this is huge. Now I can warp between the two of them at just the cost of a level. I jumped into the ocean to head towards another tower with another waystone potentially on top of it. And I was stung by a jellyfish, which blinded me. That was honestly kind of scary in the moment. But I climbed to the tower, grabbed the waystone on top, jumped it down since I could just do that. Finding this giant mushroom structure at one point, that's what the map was pointing to. And this looks like it could be a lot of fun. The next day I realized it wasn't actually pointing to that. It was pointing to a copy of the giant towers at spawn. And since I had one of those at spawn and I barely even scratched the surface of it, I figured, no, we're, we're gonna do the mushroom thing instead. This seems a lot more fun. So I warped home to empty out my pockets for the inventory, finding a wandering trader out back and, um, <laughs> Uh, sorry, Mongo. I worked back with the waystone and stealth mode here was awesome. At one point in time, one of them shot at me, but I was so tiny that it hit the mob behind me and it was just all out mob civil war. And that was hilarious to watch. I pillared up towards the hanging chest, the first one, which just looked like here's where the best stuff was. And I was right. <gasps> yes! Oh my God, I can't believe that that was here. With a God apple just casually sitting in one of the chests. Yeah, you knew I was looting this whole thing. I found a bunch of diamonds up on the top floor, hiding underneath the tables to prevent them from being able to get me while I would just bite at their ankles and loot all of the different chests. 
At one point in time, though, I did get down to two hearts, where I panicked, ran, jumped off, yeeted myself, landing on the beach, running and seeing just, like, some horseshoe crabs that were almost as tall as me. It reminded me just how tiny I actually was. From there, I ran back to the Waystone, warped back home, banked all the resources, and framed the God Apple. That was such a huge find for such a short-lived world. I had also, and I forgot to show this, at one point found these Aqua Dashers, which uh, then solved the whole boat problem for me because I can run on water. As long as I don't stop sprinting, I can run on water. That's huge. I walked over to the village, found a few of the guild masters and grabbed a bunch of emeralds to pick up both the fishing and lumberjack professions where I have to turn in supplies to be able to just immediately get more emeralds. Lucky for me, I also have these forester villagers who will sell me logs for emeralds and I can literally just buy what I need and then get it back and turn a profit. There's also a house here that looked somewhat abandoned. I walked in and it was trapped. Lucky for me, I could just climb over the log to escape. So I figured, no, nope, that's, that's enough for today. And I just took a nap here in the village. The next morning, I just kept doing trading. Now I know that there are several of these origins which can only breathe underwater. So I figure it makes sense to spend a lot of emeralds investing in this oceanographer to try to get a trident roll at the absolute top tier, which is something that I can get. I ran back home and used my, I'm guessing basically at this point, ATM to trade sticks for emeralds. And then I realized that with the travel, I'm losing a level every time. So it seems kind of silly. So I made another Fletcher here in the village, buying up a ton of sponges and just enjoying the fact that I can business my way through practically everything. And then realizing that this is the last day that I'm an inchling. I'm about to become full size again. So... Let's see what's about to happen. The next day when I woke up, I was full size and well, check it out. I'm fast? I'm fast. What? I have sparkles. I know what that kind of trade is. I'm a business, whatever I am. Truffle. So I can switch between spores. Red is offense, green is defense, blue is speed. Food is decomposed before it's consumed, nullifying any status effects you would otherwise gain. So that probably means like golden apples and stuff don't work. Also, a merchant. Ah, this is so good. So being a merchant right now is huge. It means that trades don't destock if I'm the one trading with them, meaning I can trade infinitely meaning I'm about to get a whole lot richer on the emerald front. So with all of those emeralds, I was lucky enough, the oceanographer did roll for a trident and I was able to pick that up really quickly along with the components for a conduit if I would ever need one. And then it was time for a casual bit of kidnapping. First up was the nitwit, who the village would probably thank me for this later, getting them out into the water, and then the next day, moving one of the spare oceanographers, figuring I could just breed them to make the third villager where I need, where I started move making a little bit of an iron farm just outside of the outskirts of town. Now this is a slightly different design, I've seen it in a few places, and it's just like a really early, really basic version of it. But I waited until it got night, used my trident against a bunch of skeletons. Oh, I forgot, I did enchant it somewhere. I think I might have lost that footage. Before grabbing a zombie in a boat, just getting and preparing the whole iron farm together. The next day, I threw a bunch of bread to the two of them who were maybe too scared to make a baby. That was, that could potentially get weird. And then threw down a bunch of buttons to spawn proof the area that I could eventually have, you know, golems dying here. I used a bunch of signs to hold in a little bit of lava, you know, D on one of them. I don't know why those letters are all there. And then at this point I slept and we're just waiting for the villager to grow up. I spend a little bit of time in speed mode with being able to run on water, which is so cool. And I keep accidentally turning my shaders off every time I go to switch spores. I did run back to check if there was a baby and they made an escape attempt, which that could have gone really badly, but I was able to sneak them back in and then just close them up. And I just kind of stood here waiting for a little while, just waiting for that villager to become old. This is the kind of live, exhilarating, amazing content that you all are tuned in for. Me standing in a hole, waiting for a kid to grow up. 
near the very end of the day on night 33 they did eventually grow up so i broke down the dirt barrier killed a bunch of zombies that had actually spawned in the farm or fallen in at one point and then ran back towards the village sleeping there checking back in on the iron farm on day 34 and things were actually starting to make progress the only thing is, I had to make sure to keep the render distance high enough that that would be loaded while I was at the main village just doing a stick to log to emerald loop, which was net positive on my part, meaning that I was going to be able to get pretty rich pretty quickly. If you want to see more about how this works, go watch my Dominion episode 2. I'm a businessman over on that server as well, and being able to be a merchant is really, really powerful. I also used it to buy all of the logs to complete all of the guild chests really quickly, making a smithing table, knowing that I'm about to get unlimited iron, so I could start trading that for more emeralds as well. And that was the whole day. The whole day was just business, no pleasure. Day 35, I leveled up the toolsmith, trading in a ton of the iron that I had for over a stack of emeralds. And then using that to grab a bunch of diamond tools from the same character, so that way I could finally be off of iron altogether. From there, I used the fact that I could both speed my way through and have the running on water boots, and I'm pretty much the flash at this point, running around the ocean, hitting up all of the different monuments for emeralds, gold, lapis, and finding a treasure chest that I had grabbed for some diamonds and another heart of the sea. There were portals and towers, all with middling loot, uh, another drowned who had a trident who, they didn't give me one, it's okay, I can buy them, we have tridents at home. And then on day 36, doing a quick little turnaround to be able to pick up my spare waystone. You can craft this one-time use item, which will let you warp to a waystone. So I was able to pick up the one back at the mushroom area, crafting a new set of diamond armor and enchanting it, getting some relatively good enchants on all of them. But you know what? We're over a third of the way through this video, and I don't know if my next origin is going to be able to even survive in the end, so it makes sense. I'm super fast. Let's go find a stronghold. And I'm not kidding. With the running boots and the speed from my truffle origin, I am super fast. Like, ridiculously fast. So I already cleared half the distance to the stronghold right before the sun even set. On day 37, passing by more ruined towers, a stone brick version of an igloo, and another one of those houses with the invisible skeletons in it, just looting whatever I could. I ran by graves. I saw a village with a giant dojo in the middle of it, which just had a ton of mobs and spawners that I needed to break to be able to clear everything out. And I rewarded myself with a cookie because cookies are delicious. Day 38, I'm just continuing running to try to find the stronghold. These are really far out with the better strongholds mod that I had installed. So I passed by a pirate ship and a vindicator dang near jump scared me, taking me down to a heart and a half where I just had to sneak in through the bottom and break the spawner so that more wouldn't jump on me in a one by one tunnel. From there, I looted everything and then kept running on water, which is just such a cool power when you really think about it. Finding my way through the frozen biome, through more towers to grab more waystones, grabbing an honestly really awesome book with impaling five on it for my trident, and finding a giant zombie crypt where I threw a waystone down there. I honestly don't know if I ever came back here. But eventually the eyes started pointing down and I started digging down, digging into one of these better strongholds and quickly setting up a waystone and sleeping, going into day 39, where I banked everything that I had collected throughout my trip, like, Four days just running across the world, hitting up multiple different structures. I was basically out of food, so I spent the whole day just preparing enough food that I could be ready for a dragon fight, and then doing some end city looting, and then as the sun was starting to set, I'm going over my inventory, my armor, my potions, everything else that I possibly had, and I realized I'm going to change again. So here's hoping my next origin can survive in the end. Alright, what am I... I know what I am. I know what I am. Because I can see my arm. I'm a slime! Um, bouncy, this is the best. But we gotta bounce. I gotta show you all how this works. This works. Bounce! <laughs> All right, so I don't have to worry about fall damage when it comes to the dragon fight, so that's actually kind of nice. I worked my way back to the stronghold and then just started searching through it. Now, there's a ton of different chests and structures and rooms and spawners inside of these places when you have the better strongholds. They're just so cool to explore. I did eventually find the end portal, setting up a waystone immediately in front of it, throwing in all the eyes, setting my respawn point here, lighting it, and let's go. Now I spawned 
so ridiculously far from the end island. This is the furthest I've ever seen it. Thankfully, I had enough blocks. If I didn't, this whole video would have been over right there. I pulled onto the end island, and while the arena definitely looks a lot fancier, and it is, the overall mechanics of the fight are relatively unchanged. I did work my way up to one of the towers at one point, so I'd be able to hit that crystal, and a few of the others that were relatively close around there. Being able to just jump down without a care in the world is honestly pretty great. Oh, time to, time to bounce. Ditto for when the dragon just throws you up in the sky. Which she kind of does a little bit more with the way that this is all laid out. I'm not sure if that's a bug or a feature. So since stabbing was kind of off the table, I had to rely on my archery skills. Thankfully, a pretty good shot. I left the dragon egg here for now because defeating the dragon, yeah, that's a huge milestone and a big step, but it's not what I'm really here for. You know me, I'm gonna wanna fly. The outer and islands though are not just barren wastelands. There is so much more lush and activity and different interesting things to explore, including this ender mineshaft, which I found at one point. Being swarmed by endermites, which were coming out of a spawner, I thought that was a shulker that was gonna shoot me at one point. Turns out, no, it's just a shulker box. Two of them with a bunch of different resources. That's already one big thing checked off. As I made my way out of that mineshaft though, I found this strange ruined portal. It's half complete with these pillars around that you could put items onto. I threw whatever random things I could think of on several fish, chorus fruit, chorus plants, but nothing seemed to work. That's a mystery for another day. But next step was to crank the render distance up to 32 chunks and take a look at the minimap, seeing if I could find an end city anywhere nearby. Thankfully for me, I had a pretty good direction towards one of them, including an ender tower, which I needed to explore. Using a bit of pearls, a bit of blocks, and a bit of bridging, I was able to make my way towards the tower, getting myself up to have an end waystone, as well as a few rockets in my pocket, making my way to find a few of my cousins from the end who tried to bite me. Not cool. I finally made my way into the end city around day 43. And while bouncing does make the parkour a little bit more complicated, thankfully it makes the falls pretty much trivial. I worked my way up through the end city, fighting all of the shulkers, killing them for shells, and got ridiculously high drop rates, as well as some decent loot at the very top. But the main thing I wanted to go see was that ship that I had marked. And then there was a whale just chilling. Look at the space whale. Ah, they're so awesome. I really hope that that thing is not gonna like, oh, it disappeared. <laughs> oh, it's behind me. It teleported. Space whale. Space whale aside, I bridged over towards the ship, killed the one final shulker that was standing in my way, looted the chests, grabbed my wings, stored everything into the shulker boxes, and instead of having to fly home, I had a waystone. So I popped that down and was able to warp home, saving my progress in the outer end islands while heading in for a nap. The next day, it was just going through all of the loot from those end cities, and there's a lot of decently enchanted diamond gear here, and I'm running out of chest space to actually store it in. So I spent a little bit of time just flying around thinking about maybe there's another structure I could take over, seeing this tower over here digging in and going from the top to the bottom, which definitely kind of undermines some of the challenge of it because you have the high ground. I was able to work my way through finding an kind of creepy enchanting room, working my way down, grabbing a bunch of coal blocks, finding a bunch of spawners and a little maze, and I torched up a few instead of breaking them just in case I decided to move to this place. Honestly, having a few skeleton spawners right there is kind of nice. But that took basically all day, and then I thought, you know what, we can do a little bit more organizing over here. So I made some more rockets, and I remembered I'm a rancher, so it makes sense to do a little bit of things, you know, with these mobs, so that they'll always birth twins, meaning I can create so many cows, and I have a villager stuck in the pen to kind of watch them forever. I saw another one of the abandoned houses, and then remembered my lesson. I'll let it blow itself up instead of me. But I just kept flying around, exploring all of the different structures and areas that the world had to offer. Without having to worry about fall damage, being able to bounce is kind of nice. I flew through multiple cities and a pillager camp, finding another village camp around a very spooky looking well that had a bunch of kind of creepy looking particles down in the bottom. I tried throwing a few things in, you know, thinking make a wish and everything, and it gives me haste when I'm inside it, 
but I have no idea where this is supposed to lead. I threw in a gold ingot and nothing happened. So I went to a nearby windmill structure and just returned to my looting ways. And then I found a map which led me off towards another illager camp where I was able to just kind of hide inside a little cobblestone box and work my way from tent to tent, finding a harvester and a bunch of other resources. Uh, this thing explodes. I'm not sure how this is actually designed to work. I slept in the attic of a nearby house, being surrounded by pillagers the second I woke up. They were, they were very much here for me. Luckily, I had bees. The bees weren't really cutting it, though, so I just kind of stabbed them through the door, flying in, finding a mushroom relatively close by. I warped back home, realizing I had forgotten a diamond chest plate somewhere along the way. I think I banked mine. Being able to warp back and nothing had spawned because, you know, spawn radiuses. So I just went in, snuck in, grabbed all of the different redstone components from there, and then grabbed the waystone, took a quick nap on top of the mushroom, went to a nearby pillager tower, and figured, let's get Bad Omen. Let's do a raid. I'm actually in relatively good spot gear-wise. It's time to get a totem because somewhere along the lines I had lost mine like I didn't break it I just lost the totem I don't know where it went I think I might have accidentally stored it in a loot chest somewhere when I was organizing unfortunately there were no pillager captains so the next day I figured you know what I can fly I can bounce so I can jump off of it if I really need to let's check out that airship that's right above my house now there's wither skeletons with flame bows riding on hoglins and this place is crazy dangerous but lucky for me, I'm actually pretty dangerous myself. Tons of diamonds and loot amongst all of the chests until a phantom got me down to one part and I just yeeted myself off again before I could regenerate and then return back to it. I was attacked by a couple of children, but between my gear, the golden apples, the potions and other things that I had found, I was feeling pretty good. I went back towards spawn and realized one of the airships here at spawn was basically the same structure, so I knew how to fight a few of the mobs. This one had way more spawners though, so I had to be super careful. I also tried to clear the spawners from the tops of the nearby towers, but this dungeon was probably the most resilient out of all I had found in order to crack it, and my elytra broke, which didn't really help. Thankfully, again, no fall damage. What? That was too solid minutes of the most dangerous enemies I've seen in all of Minecraft. What the heck was that? And then my elytra breaks. Oh. All right, well, uh, I guess I'll run home. And that's what I did. It took the rest of the day to get home and to get myself back into some modicum of safety. I banked what I had collected, got a pair of night vision goggles, which is gonna make the rest of this video honestly really bright, which is kind of nice. But then it was time to change again. So I went inside and head to bed. Oh, oh, why do I have bubbles? Why do I have bubbles? Why do I have bubbles? Oh no, 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 oh no, oh no. I'm a fish! Oh no! I, there's a zombie at my door. Okay, hold on. I'm a fish gundo. Merling. Oh. And okay, cleric. That actually can help. That's actually pretty good. But a fish is a problem. Well, that kind of changes my objectives for the next 10 days. Now I can only breathe underwater and I suffocate on land. That really changes the game for me. I grabbed a lot of resources out of the barrels, just try to get some, a little bit of everything so I could carry it with me because this house, this house is basically worthless to me for the next few days. I worked over to the village, which was by a bunch of water, and then just started swimming out into the ocean, seeing what there was to offer. There's a whole school of sharks nearby, jellyfish that once again stung me and blinded me, which was kind of unsettling, but being able to loot sunken ships and grab treasure maps and then just dig out the treasure from underwater is honestly kind of cool. I can see why Mongo enjoys being able to be Fishman. I slept under the waves and then continued searching around, finding a sunken mine shaft that the actual mine shaft portion of it was a bubble of air, which didn't really work for me, but there was a huge pocket of diamonds right next to it, and that, that very much worked for me. I found another waystone on land, swimming all the way back to the village and finding a ravine. 
that was completely flooded right next to the village. And this kind of works as good as anything else. So I started digging my way through. I have aqua affinity, but I really have to flood this. Considering I'm digging into a wall, I'm making an air pocket. So it took a while to just get a bunch of water into it as well, making a waystone and sleeping here as we were starting on our underwater journey. I was originally gonna set up an enchanting space over here, and then I realized that I could just flood the attic of my house. So I ran into the village to grab as many logs as I could from the forester, just to get myself enough to make a few more bookcases. Crafted up a new set of diamond armor, and I'm just looking for a few specific enchants now. Aqua affinity, that's pretty nice. But unfortunately, the water blocks the books for enchanting. So I have to basically enchant really quickly, and then before I run out of breath, throw more water on top of my head, and doing that loop several times to get the high tier enchants I wanted. From there, I warped back to the underwater and made myself a quick anvil to finish off the last little bit of repairing and combining for enchants. And I'm feeling a lot better, although feeling very disconnected from everything I've set up for the last 50 days. So basically now when I want to trade with villagers, I have to stand in the well in the middle of the village and then quickly run, find the one that I want, trade everything I can with them, and then quickly run back just standing in the well. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I have an oceanographer. And I got all of the components that I needed for a conduit. So I went and I quickly went to the base and built the first level of a conduit because of that I can breathe on land. But also I'm a cleric, which means I can make some super strong water breathing potions, which for me are breathing on land potions, meaning I can actually manage to do a little bit of trading with the villagers, sleeping in the well, because, well, you know. So I was able to solve both of the problems relatively quickly and I drank a quick potion and I had 16 minutes taking this one who was copying me living in the water and figured, you know what? Let's try to get mending. It's the last enchant I really need to be able to get anything going. All of my gear is relatively good. The only problem is it would break. I got mending within like six trades. So my 16 minutes of water breathing felt pretty redundant as I filled my inventory with 10 mending books, which is more than enough to enchant and repair all of my gear and get myself set up. The thing I was mainly down on though now was levels. And I figured I'm underwater. I can breathe underwater infinitely. The best chance I have is to go find an ocean monument to be able to do some XP farming. So that's what I did. I sailed off through the ocean with that trident that I had collected, being stung by jellyfish repeatedly, just trying to find any underwater structures that I possibly could, specifically looking for guardians that I could kill. I found another one of those buried mine shafts, which didn't really have a lot. I found a spawner, which, Thinking back now, I shouldn't have broken and should have just farmed, but there was some decent loot in the chests. I also found this huge caldera of lava just sitting out on the ocean, which seems like the antithesis of anything that I would stand for. But then I found a bunch of pirate ships frozen in the ice, stuck here in the glaciers. And this, this was a lot of fun because one of the first barrels gave me a flint and steel, which gave me an idea. Your honor, I swear it was like this when I found it. Don't you question me. I'm not sure in what lore mermaids just set boats on fire and are underwater aquatic arsonists, but I'm more than willing to play that role. It was kind of my go-to strategy for both of the boats that I encountered, and they had a ton of loot on board that I was able to get from, you know, burninating everything that lived inside. And then I turn around and right next to it was an ocean monument. And the first room I encounter is a sponge room. That is absolutely huge. But with the trident on board, no need to worry about air bubbles. I was just quickly skewering all three of the elder guardians, making this temple basically mine. It took a while to wait for mining fatigue to finally wear off. I slept in the middle of it to just get it to go away before grabbing all of the gold blocks and all of the dark prismarine, which is my favorite block ever, as well as all of the sponges from here in the temple, just to be able to fully loot and collect everything. I found this amazing stone skeleton with sea lanterns embedded into it. I'm not sure what this was supposed to be, but it was pretty massive built into the glaciers. But not being able to breathe on land was honestly pretty delimitating considering all of the different structures and dungeons and everything else that I put in this mod pack, they're all on land. 
So I focused my time and attention on things like collecting buried treasure, being able to just flood myself while grabbing diamonds out of chests. And with all the prismarine on hand, I went back and com fully completed the conduit, getting up to level three, so I could spend some time just improving the house. I was running out of space, so I blew out the back wall and started building an extension that I could use almost exclusively for storage room. As I did a bunch of trading with the foresters back at the village for wood, and then leveraging the fact that I could breathe on land thanks to the conduit to just continue with the style of the house that was here and just build it out, make it look like a natural extension. The whole idea was I was going to make a large grid of double chests, which would be more than enough to store basically everything I could want as far as all of the loot that I had collected, as well as an upper area that I could just put some different cosmetic things into. But losing track of time, I realized I had just spent the last two days of my fishman personhood with a conduit, thankfully, on land, building out my house, and it was time to change again. Okay, I have an emerald, and I'm holding my armor. Oh no, I see wings. I know what happened. I'm an elytrian. I already have an elytra. Okay, well, I can fly. I take way more falling damage. I'm a wandering trader, basically more experience, which is kind of nice. But the big problem is I can't wear my diamond armor. That's a bit of an issue. Welp, all of the last time that I'd spent investing in my armor kind of seemed worthless right now. So I spent a little bit of time just crafting myself up a basic set of gold armor using some of the enchanted chain shirts that I had found throughout fighting all of the mobs and enjoying the fact that I could fly again, considering I didn't have to worry about repairing an elytra. I spent a little bit of time breaking down some wood just so I could build more chests, but in all honesty, between crafting the armor and then crafting chests and starting to organize things into different categories that were actually all labeled, that was all of day 60 spent right there. The next day, I started by just drying out all the sponges, just kind of for inventory management so they'd be easier to move around, and then realized I needed a bunch more logs. And then when I looked at my ender chest, I had some, which was convenient. I planted up all of the bamboo, went quickly back to the village to just breed up a few more cows to be able to make more bookcases. I accidentally released the villager no, there, no! But I went back to the iron farm, collected over two stacks of iron, so that's doing its job kind of nicely. I needed a bunch of glass though to be able to finish out the windows, so I just found the first patch of sand I possibly could, mined all of that up, and then did some quick rounds of buying the logs from the forester and then trading them to the guildmaster for more emeralds than I spent. These y'all don't really know economics. The next day, it's just organizing, really. I'm planting different bushes around the house to make it look a little bit more aesthetic. I'm planting candles everywhere so it all looks nice and moving the inventory and items from the side room off to the actual back storage room. I crafted up a second bow so I could fully repair my bow with power five because I don't want to lose that and then made another ender chest so I could move things pretty quickly from one place to another. That plus using a few shulker boxes to get everything nice and neat and organized. Like I said, day 60 is when things actually start being kind of nice. But now it's time to do a little bit of potion brewing. I'm no longer fire resistant, so a potion that lets me do that is going to make our next little trip a little bit easier as I headed off to the nether. Now I'm wearing gold, so I don't need to worry about the piglins fighting me, but I did find a wandering trader just kind of stuck here in the nether, so I helped them. <laughs> before going and flying, heading back over towards the fortress to be able to pop down a waystone and be able to get blaze powder whenever I need it. I quickly grabbed the return to sender advancement completely accidentally before flying off and finding a blackstone pyramid. And I've seen this one before, that chest was trapped. So I grabbed all of the TNT, finding just a casual piece of ancient debris sitting right here next to me and a ton of gold and other resources in the books. A lot of these are really good. I also found a whoopee cushion. And I spent quite a little while just trying to figure out how to make it work. And it didn't really seem to work on whenever I wanted it to, but you're gonna hear it just casually for the next couple days. So don't worry, I do get rid of it pretty quick. I the portal and went to the overworld, finding a little bit of diamonds and a little bit of gold, both of which were really nice to have. But in all honesty, there was not much there. So the next day I was back to the nether, running around to all of the different structures, grabbing different blocks of gold, coal, and finding another one of those pyramids, disarming it and grabbing all of the loot inside. That portal also led to a bunch of underground caves where I was jump scared by one of those evil skeletons and just nope no thank you I'll go 
go back to hell instead. I made my way over to a bastion, planting myself in a place where nobody could reach me, but I could bow down all of the brutes, and then my gold armor would take care of the rest and making sure we were good. I looted all of the chests around here, grabbing everything that I possibly could, finding another spot that had a piece of ancient debris, just buried inside of a bunch of sandstone bricks. In all honesty right now, I'm just flying from nether structure to nether structure to grab all of the loot and do all of the treasure stealing that I've been doing in the overworld primarily. And since I don't have to worry about electric durability, it's definitely kind of nice. The only thing I need to make sure is I don't run out of rockets. But I eventually got back to the waystone and warped myself back home because I never actually put a waypoint at the portal because I had the lodestone compass for that. And the next day, it's just dropping everything off into all of the chests and trying to make sure that it stays relatively organized. I did build a few of the new cosmetic blocks, like these wood walls, which are just like walls, but made of wood. And they help make the place look a lot more lived in. From there, I flew over towards a giant stone structure that I've been seeing on my map. And it was like a giga stone temple where I found my second god apple, a ton of different gold blocks, and then right next to it, an oak woodland mansion. And I figured, you know what? Just quickly break the window, bop an evoker, get a new totem since mine had disappeared somewhere. And oh boy, did I, did I blow that. Oh, that was too close. I thought I got him. Oh, crap. That was too close. And they're still alive. Heart and a half. Heart and a half surrounded by vexes. I'm terrified. Oh, heck no. Heck no. Heck no. Oh, no. That is too many. Let's just fly away so they all despawn. Okay, real quick. Get the totem and get out. We have what we're here for. We're gone. <laughs> Oh! The new totem in hand, I cleared out another mushroom type dungeon. This one was filled with poisonous spiders instead of brutes with mushroom heads on. There's definitely a lot of variety with all of these different dungeons, and they're a lot of fun to just work your way through. The next day, I put mending on my regular elytra. I don't need it now, but once I no longer can fly from my origin, it's definitely gonna come in handy. Made a whole bunch of rockets so I'd be able to fly around a little bit more, and then returned back to the end. This time, I was gonna be doing a little bit more looting. I turned the shaders off because the end doesn't seem to like my shaders. Landing in a shadow forest, being tracked by all of the things that were trying to kill Doctor Strange, I think, before grabbing a bunch of glowy crystals. And that's honestly pretty cool. There's this huge, like, end warthog which tried to kill me. Bows are really overpowered, in all honesty. Flying through all of these different biomes, it really makes me hope that we get an end update. And then I saw a sunken ship and... Oh, well, okay, I guess there goes the totem. These end towers had waystones and flight three rockets, you know, the fancy rockets, which helped me get towards the top of a few different end cities, mining for shulker boxes, and getting a few different things, including a flamingo floaty. Near the top of one of these end cities, I found a crystal heart, which would increase my maximum health if I put it in replacing the magnet that I've been using for so, so long. I did, and it's five extra hearts. That is massive. And those five hearts came in handy as I worked my way towards another one of the repurposed pillager towers. This one being surrounded by phantoms and shulkers, making my way then to another end city where I found a lot more of these different artifacts in chests. They're making the loot really a lot more interesting, if harder to manage. I popped, uh, I popped an abyss watcher to return back to the home and empty out the shulker boxes, which had become completely full. I have so much music from the end. So many mixtapes that needed to get dropped. But on day 69, I had seen a new type of structure off on my minimap and I decided to fly over. This one wasn't hostile. It was a huge city, just city. It was a villager town that had been built with this amazing dark prismarine and oak sort of style. And in it, it had a map that would honestly take me almost a full 10 days to clear, but I didn't know it at the time. I flew as far as I could finding this massive pagoda just 10 levels of combat and carnage and so much stuff already just in the chests on the top there was just endless streams of wither skeletons with diamond swords and spider heads creepers of all different types and then i walked around the corner and there's a bunch of archers standing on the ceiling shooting me with punch bows this place this place is going to be a lot of fun and then i remembered you know to turn shaders on ever since i got out of the end but i was out of time it was time to head home 
and go ahead and change again. And when I woke up the next morning, I was in for a surprise. Okay, no breathing. Or anything like that. Am I transparent? No, okay. Um, do I have a power? Oh! I'm magical! Oh my goodness! I'm an evoker! 10% uh, pillagers don't like you and pillagers- Oh no, my villagers hate me now! Ooh, Archer is gonna come in really handy. Archer was definitely gonna come in handy clearing out this giant pagoda, so I quickly just repaired and replaced my bow and put on my diamond armor since I can wear that now. Feeling a lot more durable, I started working my way through the different corridors, finding gold blocks inside of obsidian and a ton of spawners. I did at one point spawn an iron golem using an artifact item and then remembered, oh yeah, that's right. Iron golems and villagers hate me, so this that could have been really, really bad. And if there's something true about these 100 Days videos, it's making just constant combat really interesting. There are so many different rooms, so many different puzzles, and so many mobs in this space. I broke probably close to 100 spawners in this structure alone. It was really, really something, just constantly working my way down from room to room to room. And if I had come in here in anything less than full diamond gear with five extra hearts, especially when I walked into this one space where there was like, I kid you not, 15 different wither skeletons conga lining to try to eat my butt, it would have been really devastating. Those things hit hard and the wither ability that's really painful. But the loot in here matched the challenge, finding another god apple, all of the emeralds, diamonds, and gold I could possibly carry, to the point where at one point I needed to dig out the side of the wall to just figure out how far down I had made it, and I would barely been two floors down at this point, but my pockets were full. So I slept up on the roof, flew back down to where I was, reorganized all of the loot amongst several different shulker boxes, crafted a few extras, and then just returned back to the grind. This dungeon was a lot of fun, and you're gonna see it for basically this full 10 days, unfortunately, because I just kept fighting my way through all of this, and there are so many mobs. The problem I had, though, is as I reached down to, like, only three floors remaining, is I was out of arrows. I had nothing on me. So I grabbed all of my emeralds, and I figured, let me go over to my arrow telling machine so I could just get everything I wanted, and they wouldn't trade with me. And then I remembered. Oh, that's right. You hate me. Oh, no, they hate me. I can't trade for... Oh, oh no. I can't trade for arrows. Because they hate me. And my armor is, is struggling right now. Oh, wait, I have mending books. All right, so that's that's gonna be a problem. I quickly went and just repaired my armor with mending books so it would last a little bit longer. Checked all of my shulkers and just, nope, nothing. Looking for my trident to try to find it since I was out of arrows, I could use that and that would be an infinite resource to be able to just bow down things on the ceiling. But unfortunately, I just couldn't find it. I have no idea where I'd lost it. That's twice I've misplaced something now. So I found an artifact that would allow me to summon a dog, which was great, just having some extra combat assistance, but not being able to archer the ones on the ceiling, that was really honestly kind of tough. I fought my way through several Filza killers, kept breaking spawners, and eventually, three full Minecraft days, over an hour IRL, I was able to clear down to the bottom floor, being surrounded by the horror mobs on every side, so unable to sleep until you find just the right corner. Day 74, I'm just cleaning out the last little bit of loot from this space as I continue to really secure it. There was no door, so I just kinda had to dig out of the wall on one side, finding the occasional mob still standing on the ceiling that I had missed at one point in time. I went up to the ceiling to mine out a full stack of dark prismarine because it is my favorite block, before continuing to just look around in the local area surrounding this pagoda and seeing what could happen next. I found a scarf that would increase my looting chance and then landed in a pillager camp, getting ready for a fight and then remembering, oh wait, 
they love me. So they're not gonna mind as I just walk around and check out all the treasures that they've stored throughout their looting and pillaging. I found several different artifacts, including a scarf that would just straight up make me invisible 100% of the time. And that is so ridiculously busted, but I love it, so I immediately put it on. Then the blood moon rose, and the night was about to get pretty interesting. You see, you can't sleep when there's a blood moon. It's far too spooky, and there's a ton of extra mobs which spawn. Now, I'm at a place where I can just stand up and they can't get to me, and despite their best efforts, I'm in near god tier gear, so the damage is not really super bad, it's more about just being overwhelmed that I had to worry about. The ghouls and other monsters, the horror mobs were probably the hardest hitting. And then at one point I saw an orc just randomly come down the hill and try to attack me. Now, that doesn't mean much right now, but that but missing that orc pelt that dropped, that's gonna be super important later. But I had to fight my way through the whole night flying over a village, which again, if an iron golem even saw me, it was gonna try to kill me right away. And finding another one of those weird wells with the smoke at the bottom. Yeah, nothing is at the bottom of these. If you know what happens with these, please let me know. That didn't stop me at the time from digging all the way down on day 75 and finding basically nothing before I found a map which led me to a giant mining colony, which I had to dig my way down into, but oh man, did this terrain look really awesome. And the loot inside? You, you get the drill by now. There's a ton of stuff in all of these different dungeons and structures, but a ton of spawners and mobs to make sure that you're really gonna be paying for it. I found a couple different unique pieces of armor. On top of the different artifacts, there's all these different things that you can collect. And you know it, another god apple sitting in one of the chests. That made for four or five at this point. I don't really remember exactly what. You know what the scariest part of this thing was? When I saw creepers riding on top of skeletons' heads and the skeletons had speed boost so they would run at you at full speed? Full on kamikaze bombers in Minecraft, that's ridiculous. I kept looting the mineshaft through all of day 75 and into day 76, getting several stacks of gold, several stacks of diamonds at this point, and just storing it all off into one shulker. I'm casually richer than I've ever been in basically any Minecraft world I've ever played. Once I flew up, I just watched a boar just yeet a sheep. It wasn't a pink sheep, I would have interfered, but I did avenge it, don't worry about that. I found a waystone, quickly named it, and then warped my way back home to bank all of the resources that I had been collecting. And my chests, even though I started trying to organize these things, are already looking pretty full. So you know what I thought? Let's just flex my wealth. I know there's no one else in this world, but you know, Hermitcraft is doing the whole diamond tower thing, so let me make a diamond tower. Flew around my local area a little bit more, finding another house that looked to be a fishing village, and inside was potions of luck. Was that Dunumancy? That's really interesting. Did I get some critical role in my Minecraft again? Seeing the sunset and just taking a quick little beachside nap with the sun resting at the bottom of my feet. Flying back around the area, just continuing to explore since I have near infinite rockets at this point, I found another one of those dojos making my way in and breaking all of the spawners. Since it was daytime, this one is actually a little bit easier. Since I have so much health, I can just kind of tank hits for some of the lower level mob. From there, I saw an airship up in the sky, which looked super imposing. Found a tower, which I was able to just quickly mark to add it to the portal network and then made my way in towards a castle this was a witch's castle apparently and witches they love pillagers so i'm totally fine i can just walk around this thing i don't even have to fight any of the mobs i can just break the spawners and loot all of the treasure the only thing i had to fight here was a few skeletons in the basement and just grabbed all of these little potion heads and things to decorate my place from there i flew up to the most intimidating looking airship yet and Oh man, was this one pretty ridiculous. This is wither skeletons riding on hoglins with diamond swords and the loot, the loot matched the risk. Another god apple sitting in one of the chests, potion brewing ingredients and just, this place is terrifying because when you think you're out of range of the ones who are riding hoglins, yeah, the ones riding phantoms sneak up behind you and try to kill you. Another one. That's five god apples that I found. These places are cracked for loot. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's a problem. 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 But I kept doing strafing runs, flying out and then flying back in, trying to jump on any of the spawners to be able to break them before different waves of mobs could be spawned. And I found six netherite scrap just sitting in one of the chests. 
I thought that was the best it was going to get until I started working my way towards the center deck, breaking off one of the spawners, and while the mobs were chasing me, I found three netherite ingots and a god apple in a single chest at the top of this thing. That is ridiculous level loot. Are you freaking kidding me? Another one? And three ingots? I am going to be in full netherite by the time this day is over. If I survive. Oh, this place is scary. When I got home to bank all of the treasure from this run, that's when I noticed a huge mistake I had made almost 10 days ago. I just noticed that my trident was right here. I was looking for this when I was clearing the pagoda. I just couldn't find it. I looked in every chest that I have. Wait, I'm still invisible. I looked in every chest that I had and I couldn't find it. It was just sitting in my inventory the whole time. Okay, well, at least now I solved the whole problem by my trident being missing, but I spent the rest of the day just labeling and storing everything in all of the chests so it was all organized neatly. And you know, 80 days into a world is about the time where you want a basic storage system. But now it's time for a new gundo to rise on the next day. Okay, my health went down. That's a B. Am I a B? I'm a B. I'm a B. Uh, Stinger, when you punch someone, they get poison. When I'm near flowers, I gain regen. Oh, and I can float. Okay. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I eat golden carrots. I'm okay. Beast master. I'm a bees master. Eh? Eh? My first thought was, since I have all of this netherite and I can wear it in this armor level, that's actually the whole reason why I waited, I made all of the netherite ingots I could and upgraded all of my main armor and my main tools, a sword and a pickaxe, to netherite. From there, I flew back to spawn and figured these airships have been amazing for all of the different loot. Let's check out this different style that I had seen right here. This one appeared to be all redstone based with the skeletons having like a very steampunk kind of vibe with the heads they were wearing and all using gold or leather armor. They did blind me at one point, which was a little concerning, but in all honesty, it was relatively easy to clear. And I have a full shulker of just redstone components for whatever builds I'd want to make in the last 20 days of this. And then, and then there was a, just a small bit of a problem. Okay, I'm really upset with myself. So here's what happened. Here's what you missed. The disc that I record to was full, but I didn't hear the notification. So I just lost the last maybe about hours worth of recording. This is the second time this has happened. This is frustrating. And I, ah, oh, I can't go back and do it again, right? I can't go back and do it again, but let me just show you where we went. There's this underwater buried looking asylum place. It's just nothing but husks everywhere and tons of spawners. Come here, you. And it's all underwater and my bow has cobwebs on it now, which is a thing. But the thing to know is that these things are filled with ridiculous potions. I'll go back home and I'll show you what these things are filled with. I've looted all of these, I've looted all of these. But this place was a nightmare to just navigate around and get through. It's all flooded, so it's... I spent three days just walking around this thing, because this is probably the most ridiculous to navigate out of all of the different structures we've seen so far. And you get none of it because the recording failed. And if I just did it again, it would be super boring and I want to get this video out on time. There's like a jump scare out of this that you just need to see. So we'll go down this one. This one, this one will have nibbles. It has the, the little bitey things from that, oh, from this spawner. So just imagine killing a ton of husks for just, and they were like all getting one shot by me at this point. This is the ridiculous potions that I found. I found potions like, Poison 5, Wither 5. That one would really hurt. Poison 5, Wither 5. Bad Omen. I could just drink this and have a raid happen. Super easy. We're going to do that. We'll do that now. I wasn't going to do it. We're going to do it now. We're not going to do it right now, but we'll do it. Levitation, levitation, instant damage plus health boost, which that makes no sense. 
but a ton of them, oh, there's this one. It's just everything, everything bad right there in one bottle. So yeah, that's what happened day 81, which was entirely just flying off in that direction. Just look how far off the asylum is. Yeah, the asylum's all the way over here. So it took like a day to just fly out that direction because it was already late in the day after doing the redstone thing. Two days of just clearing that thing. Ah! I'm annoyed, I'm frustrated. Professional YouTuber, everybody. Oh yeah, and the diamond pile got like six blocks bigger. All right, that's it. And I think I've spent most of this day just explaining what happened. Yep. All right, we're, we're back on day 85. We're back on day 85. This is the most scuffed part of the whole video, hopefully. Hopefully this is the most scuffed part of the whole video. All right, I'm just gonna stand here until I go to sleep. Okay, since we had that little bit of a technical issue, let's just catch up a little bit. I quickly ran to the nether to get a little bit of soul sand, just so I could spawn withers at some point eventually. Grabbing a bunch of different iron blocks, and then flying around looking for pumpkins, so that I could craft up iron golems, because I'm going to want some help. I started by setting up all of the different iron golem spawns, crafted them all into jack-o'-lanterns, and then hired a little bit of help building robots to fight throughout all of the village, enchanting my cross... Enchanting my bow with a cobweb shot be able to prepare for the raid the next day. And the next morning, using one of those Batman 5 potions that I had found in the weird asylum, I just drank it and started the raid right away. In all honesty, my golems were putting in work. They were spawn camping some of the waves. And as I killed my first banner captain, I got voluntary exile after a raid had started. Potions are weird like that. Modded can be kind of wild. But as I'm just bowing down the enemies stuck in the ravines, the golems are just, nope, I got it, and they run in and get him. They also apparently killed an invoker that had made its way down to the center of town because I picked up my first evocation robes and my first totem from the raid without even seeing the mob that it had spawned from. My golems are basically spawn camping them right now. I got a totem, I didn't even see them drop, and they're just, where are they? I only see my golems just doing doing work. At one point in time, there was only a few raiders remaining, and I found them just trapped inside of that one house that had tried to kill me at some point. That was fun. The Vex were annoying. I quickly slept in top of one of the houses and then just started getting back at it, being able to tank a hit from a Ravager with only a few points of damage. Protection for Netherite, that's actually pretty great. Being able to cobweb shot everything while having it burn from flame arrows is honestly pretty busted. And in all honesty, with mobs not being able to move at all, the outcome was pretty easy to figure out. Now that had taken about a day and a half. I dropped off all of the resources that I had collected, ate another golden carrots, grabbed another potion and figured, you know what? Let's, let's just do it again. Don't know why drinking this potion gets them so mad, but they hate it. So let's go. I played this one a lot more fast and loose. A few of the golems had died during the battle, but I was also feeling, feeling pretty invincible at this point. With the hero icon up in the top right hand corner, it felt pretty great to be taking on another raid so quickly. Being able to use a trident and cobweb the ravagers, taking quick naps in the middle of the battle because I'm feeling that confident, and tanking hits from a vindicator, yeah, this is feeling pretty great. I know I'm a B origin right now, but if you look at this battlefield, it's covered in cobwebs. You'd swear I was a spider. Even ravagers that made it to the middle of the town weren't able to kill any villagers as I quickly built them down and then found one vindicator in the house and yeah, two raids in a row, one. I spent a little bit of time cleaning up, unbarricading everybody, banking the six extra totems that I had gotten in a new chest of drawers, and quickly enchanting a few books, trying to find infinity for my bow, and then realizing I should just enchant it with mending instead because cobweb shop is too overpowered to miss, using bottles to quickly repair it. From there, I went back to the village the next morning, did the final little bit of cleaning up and removing the house arrest that I had put some of the villagers under, breaking the waystone and putting it back on the ground, and then just surveying all of the cobweb damage that I had left. It was pretty extensive. All of the saddles were back at the base, and I figured, I'm feeling pretty good. Let's continue this invincible streak, brewing up a few potions, and then checking on what I can do with some of the mods for bosses. One of them is a blackstone golem that I can summon if I just got a few more blackstone shards. So I prepared a full two stacks of gold blocks down into ingots and got ready to head to the nether, which I would do in my next life. And we'll see what that one is. Okay, 
something else that's down two hearts. <gasps> yes! I know what this is. I know who I am. Piglin. Merchant. Oh, I know how this works. This is easy enough. I know how this works. I know how this works. Piglin Gundo is here. Piglin Gundo is here. Well, my house is actually pretty dark without the night vision. Huh. All right, this is feeling pretty great. I know how this one works. Unfortunately now, I can't eat any of the golden food that I had had, not even the god apples. So I'm down to steak. I banked all of them, just storing them off almost for posterity at this point, dropping off the strength potions as well before heading to the nether and then flying over to that bastion. With no brutes remaining, I'm perfectly fine. And I'm a piglin, they wouldn't even attack me anyway. But I made a quick little bartering spot and just dropped a ton of gold into a hole and let them go at it. I spent literally all of day 90 just standing here and doing trades, getting all sorts of different resources, every different type of obsidian, multiple stacks of pearls, quartz, leather, blackstone, and four of the blackstone shards, which was what I was really here for. I threw away any of the trash and then flew over towards that nether city, figuring that might be a pretty good place for combat. It would make for a nice backdrop for another boss battle. I made a 9x9 platform of blackstone, placing the four different shard holders on all of the center, and then throwing the shards in, watching the golem be built right in front of me. And I would love to say right now that this was a really exhilarating and amazing fight, but I think Cobweb Shot is somewhat overpowered. Really, all I did was stood just out of reach, I spawned cobwebs at its feet constantly, and then just bowed it down with spectral arrows doing extra damage, killing the two little offspring golems that it made immediately following. From there, I flew back home, flew back through the portal, and accidentally right-clicked with the Blackstone Heart. I think I shoved it into my chest because I got a couple extra hearts. That is, that's probably a little concerning. But I took all of the different obsidian, banked it with all the redstone, because I think of obsidian as a redstone block, and the next morning flew off to the end to continue my boss killing rampage. I grabbed a few end rods from one of the cities, thankfully I had left a waystone basically right here, heading back to the stronghold to get me to the main island super quickly, and then finally collecting the dragon egg, getting the next generation advancement. From there, I built an altar to the eye, which was a layer of obsidian, then a layer of crying obsidian, and then the egg sacrificed for it right on the top. It started emitting all of these particles, but it took maybe 10 minutes for anything to actually happen to the point where I was actually tabbed out of Minecraft when this thing actually spawned and I was looking at the wiki just wondering what would happen. Again, being able to just freeze everything and render it basically immobile is pretty amazing. Until I saw a second one of those eyes just casually exit from behind one of the pillars and I started to get a little freaked out here. This boss, this boss could multiply itself. Thankfully the secondary ones didn't have it nearly as much health and the beam attacks only did a few hearts of damage. So I was able to out heal it with just keeping my saturation up from stakes. This was a ton of arrows invested, just over a stack. And what did I get at the end of that? Well, I got a prime eye, which is an ender pearl that I could use infinitely and I can fill it with ender eyes at a smithing table. That's actually pretty amazing. And then I also got the egg back as well. And then I was famous, which was kind of weird. No one was there to see me kill it, but okay. I planted down the egg, put it back in its trophy position since I no longer needed to use it to spawn anything else, and then spent some time organizing. I had over a stack of golden apples and I couldn't even eat them. That, that kind of hurt, I'm not gonna lie. I spent a little bit of time harvesting up the sugar cane to make more paper, to make more rockets, and I'm really trying to figure out what fame does. Like, I don't have a clue. I'm not 100% certain, but if I'm feeling famous, I'm feeling invincible. So I went off to the far tower and spawned a wither. Now, this is the fight that I take probably the most damage in out of all the bosses. And if you watch my health bar, you can see how little that actually is. Doing all of these fights so late into the game with full netherite, with extra advancements and enchantments, Enchantments on top of what you have in vanilla, some of these bosses, they feel kind of weak. I, I think I might have needed to install something to make them a little bit tougher. But the God of Death had nothing on me as I was able to bow it and then sword it down, completely obliterating it. From there, I used the tower to return home, cooking up a bunch of eel meat, since that was basically all I could eat right now, and then smelting up a bunch of glass to craft a beacon the first thing on day 93. Now, I'm a piglin, so I'm gonna want a gold beacon, obviously. 
play. Unfortunately, I just traded out a ton of my gold to get the Gilded Blackstone shards to be able to actually summon the Blackstone Golem. So what's the next best thing to a gold beacon? Well, a gold-plated beacon. I core of iron and then a bunch of gold around it and nobody would notice. Nobody would look at that and think that it's not solid gold. That's perfectly legit. So with my base, almost perfectly protected at this point, I returned back to spawn, wanting to fully clear out this airship and these towers in order to say that I had accomplished everything I wanted to do. And this is very telling about Minecraft. You had multiple mobs and multiple damage sources are way easier to kill you than a single target, even if it happens to be a boss. Warden, probably notwithstanding. I had to bail out of here twice for being at five hearts or less, but eventually I was able to break both of the spawners, head down into the hold of the ship, and oh my goodness, that final chest was so worth it. From there, I flew home, crafted up a few golden and diamond blocks to continue to enhance those piles to show off my wealth to no one else who lived on the map, and I was surprised by suddenly having somebody else living on the map. Whoa! Uh, hi. Hi, are we friends? Hi. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second, let me rebuild the wall. Cause this is really cool. Dragon, can I ride you? Can we be friends? Let me get a saddle. Can I ride this? Can I ride a dragon? Hey, okay, I need to make a dragon saddle. So I need to go kill orcs. You remember when I said not picking up that orc hide a long time ago was really gonna hurt me? Yeah, looking back at the footage, I'm pretty sure it dropped multiple. I might not have needed to have done this at all, but I flew out to a plains biome, just searching around trying to find orcs sitting somewhere. I found another wither skull in another graveyard and then another little dojo, which had another god apple sitting in one of the chests. Okay, maybe it's not bad that I had to go do this exploring. I also found a Moo Bloom, which is gonna make like the 10% of you who voted for that in the mob vote very happy. But near the end of the night, as it was raining, so the YouTube video is gonna look awful, I found an orc and was able to quickly slay them, grabbing one orc hide, finding another a little bit later and getting two from them, and then getting jump scared by a creeper, put myself down to three hearts and practically almost killed. Could you imagine after killing four different bosses, I go out to a creeper? What a chump. That would have been totally embarrassing. When I woke up, it turns out I had slept through the harvest moon, which was a lucky moon. Whoops. Okay, I need to pay a little bit more attention to that kind of thing before flying back towards home. Just checking on the iron farm, grabbing anything that was there, and then warping back to the house, trying to craft a dragon saddle. And they're too small, I think, right now. They went down into the ravine and grew up inside of it, being partially fused inside the blocks. And I'm thinking, oh no, can we not have this dragon just suffocate in the middle of nowhere before I get a chance to potentially ride this thing? So I spent a good chunk of time just pushing it up out of the ground and then going and getting whatever blocks that I could to cover up that ravine. I don't really need to go mining much at this point, so we could just make sure nothing dies there. I started making a little bit of a shrine just for my own gear after this challenge would be completed so I could store my things. And then when you get the world, if you happen to support me on Patreon, you can check it out and have everything that I had when you start your adventure in this place. The next day, I'm just continuing on that, refining the ceiling, putting up different oak struts to make sure it's all looking nice, making a floor. And then I was finally able to put the saddle on the dragon and you can hear the excitement in my voice. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. No way! I can fly a dragon! Oh no, oh no. I got off, I got off. I can make it breathe fire! Yes! Oh, you're so cool. Okay, I have a dragon now. Completely satisfied with being the better version of Aragon, I called it a night basically there. The next morning, I thought, let's use the dragon to fully clear out that airship. There was that ring of spawners of skeletons riding phantoms around the airship that I couldn't get to on foot. So I thought, why don't I fly over with the dragon and then it can just hover and I can break the spawners. And I was totally there for that. I got three of them before the dragon started taking damage and I immediately noped out when it took like two hits. I did not want to risk this thing dying. That just seems like a really bad idea. So instead I got it home and did a little bit of trading with my villager to get a shulker box half full, I think, with arrows 
And here's my plan for how this is all going to go down. I want to fully clear out those towers at spawn. Then I want to spawn a wither, then I want to kill that wither, and I want to fully be able to say that I conquered the place that I had started this hundred days at. So that's what I did. I flew back to where it spawned, and for the next two days, just spent the time fully clearing out everything that I could. Killing any mob, looting any chest, at several points in time getting down to relatively low health. I went to attack one of the phantom chains, and they got me down to just a half a heart at one point. Now, I had a totem on board, so I would have been probably okay, but it's hard to say for certain. But breaking all of those spawners and being able to potentially move in and claim this structure, that felt like the thing I really wanted to do. But before I could do it, there's one thing left. All right, 100 days, oh my God, I'm a pin cushion. 100 days ago, this is where it started. And now, this is where it ends. Let's go. Now I'm fighting this wither my, with my elytra on, flying through the towers. We're not just tanking this in an open field. This, this is a dog fight. At one point in time, I was standing on one of the roofs just trying to find it and it flew up directly in front of my face, which was a really dramatic entrance as I had to dive in, trying to find my way into one of the doorways, being able to just bow up towards it. As it's throwing skulls everywhere, eating through parts of the towers, I eventually got it down to its enraged mode, and from there, it was just a sword fight on the bridge trying not to fall. Once I had killed it, I grabbed the nether star, stood on top of the tower, and celebrated. Flying around, doing one final check, and knowing that the area was mine. From there, I crafted up my last few diamond blocks, placed them on top of the tower to have the final show off of my wealth, set a barrel down in the shrine on top of the beacon that I had made, and took all of the gear that had gotten me through this hundred days, dropped it off, and headed towards the portal to return back to my piglin people. If you wanna know what happened after that, we're gonna go have to check out Dominion to find out. Because there's a whole new adventure, and in that one, I am far from alone. I hope you all enjoyed the video. New episodes of the Dominion SMP coming very, very soon. New 100 days, if I get a good idea at some point in the future. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other. Bye. Hey, I'm Lagundo. I'm gonna survive 100 days in hardcore modded Minecraft, and I have a whole bunch of mods in here, and one specifically that made things get really weird. Let's get started. And you know how early Minecraft goes. You punch trees to get stuff, except this time I was able to punch them to get apples and all of the different modded flowers to get all sorts of awesome dyes. Speaking of dying, I used an ax to kill a bunch of cows to get myself a whole bunch of steak and a pickaxe to get myself some stone to be able to craft upgraded tools. Then I walked across this weird rift in the middle of a bunch of stone bricks and I just threw a piece of cobblestone through it and it just disappeared. That's gonna be very important in like 80 days, but don't worry about it right now. And then I have no idea where that pig came from. It just walked into my vision and I had no clue. But as I was walking north, I saw this awesome space with these huge stone spires carving up out of the water and I knew that's where I'm gonna wanna live. And then I also remember that I need to turn shaders on to make this all look great. I dyed a bunch of sheep red just so I would have the same wool color from all of them, crafted a quick good old fashioned classic bed and slept through the night into day two where I was just looking over the area that I was gonna call home. There were several caves and an exposed ravine nearby with a mine shaft down in it because this is a hundred days video for me. So I went down, grabbed a little bit of iron and was just searching around in the mine shaft looking for things that I could use. Iron, copper, and a site is going to be extremely important. But once my pick broke, I just got the heck out of there and I don't remember if I ever visited that mine shaft ever again. The chest organization gets bad quick, and I'm just telling you right now, it doesn't get better until day 63. So just buckle up if that makes you uncomfortable and close your eyes whenever you hear a chest opening. I made myself a full set of armor. I made two helmets, because I'm a pro, and some basic starter farms of wheat and sugarcane, grabbing coal, copper, and any other resources I could find, and the second it turns dark, running back towards my bed. 
On day four, I realized there was another one of those stone arches floating on top of the water here, but the portal inside doesn't play nicely with shaders, so I didn't quite realize it was active at the time. I walked through and things got spooky. Oh. Oh, shaders make some... Oh no, I have to play this without shaders on to see those. Okay, well, that sucks. What? No, no, nope. This is a really weird flat dimension with only a few floating blocks around and random connected hallways just exposed to the void. And I'm telling you right now, the silence and the weird non-organic, non-real geometry of these spaces makes this entire playthrough get kind of creepy. It also makes it very deadly because these rooms are extremely trapped. There's no way you just get a diamond block in the wall. Oh, hold on. Can I disarm this? Oh, is that void? Oh, that's just the void. Okay. Can I mine this with the stone pickaxe? Oh, that hurts. And working my way through several of the doors, even over lava, before going through one that sent me back towards my bed and corrupted a lot of the ground around it in a very weird reality is breaking down kind of way. What was that? What is it? Unraveled fabric. Okay. Right. Fuzzy unreality? I was just gonna play around with some cool gears and stuff. Okay, all right, so that made the ground weird. When I went back towards that void at the end of the day, the portal is gone, and now there's just a little tear in reality. Yeah, I'm sure nothing bad will come of that. Everything's gonna be just fine. Day five, it turns out I do go back down to the mineshaft. I don't remember actually doing that. It wasn't in my notes. So yeah, I go down there again, and I find a diamond in the first one of the chests, which is pretty dope. I also find a spider dungeon, a ton of glowberries, a golden apple. All of that is really awesome and sets me up pretty well for moving into the early game with some basic resources. I swam back up through a flooded cave, was jumped by a skeleton right at the end, hit myself right into bed to recover, and then using doors the next day to mine underwater iron, I'm able to complete all of the resources I need for a set, digging into a massive cave that heads all the way down to bedrock. There's a geode right here, which is gonna be really nice. I get the cool little jingly blocks and I have everything that I could want going down to the deep slate level grabbing gold and redstone and other rare resources including a bunch of zinc which unfortunately doesn't glow in the shader pack and then when i hit the surface that rift that rift was starting to get weird oh 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 that's growing oh no that's not good can i go through it now no okay oh no okay that's 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 probably not good that is Probably not good. Yeah, don't worry about that or do worry about that. It's kind of an existential threat to this entire reality and things are about to get really complicated. So just don't don't think about it too hard. It hurts your brain. The next day I did a little bit of research into how all of those doors and dimensions work and I'm gonna need ender pearls to craft those, which I'm not gonna get quite yet because I'm very scared to fight endermen this early game. So instead, let's get into the mod that I originally created this pack to work with, the create mod. It has all sorts of additional mechanics and it feels like something that expands on vanilla instead of replaces it like a lot of other mods do. You use a lot of gears and cogwheels and rotation and mechanical things to make things happen. The first of which is a water wheel. Now you've seen me make this in several different mod packs. I've used create several different times over. I really love it. So I'm excited to actually spend time digging into it really early and getting deep in on this mod finally. Going into day eight, I need to look into making a press so I can start on a lot of different automated farms and I need more iron to do that. I found another portal 
pretty close by, dug around a lot of the different blocks, realizing that there wasn't a chest there after spending maybe about half the day. I did a little bit of door mining and my pick broke. So I made a diamond pickaxe really quickly and then created the press and it started raining, which felt a little depressing, but okay, fine, we'll roll with it. The next day I went over to the lava and since I have a diamond pick, I mined up all of the obsidian and I know this triggers people every time I do it, but I love having my nether portal in a very specific place, okay? I'm sorry. But while I was mining up all the blocks, I was jump scared by a goblin trader. Oh God! You scared me. Ooh, pearl. I need a pearl. Stay right there, friend. I threw them down in a hole and ran back towards my base, knowing that I had seen an emerald ore in one of the towers and that could get me some pretty good stuff right away. But when I got back to the portal, no, they despawned. No. I had all my copper on me. I had the emerald. Uh, I'll just go back to mining obsidian. Look, I can't make mining obsidian seem interesting, but it's something critical that I needed to do. So that was what I basically spent the rest of day nine on before working on my farms and then setting up a few pens that I'm gonna have to lure some animals into for long-term sustainability. Which is how I started day 10, getting all of the different animals into a single pen. One cow did refuse to comply, uh, they left. It was weird. Spent some time building just a quick little bridge over the few blocks gap right over the water, and it's not the best, but it's looking okay. I grabbed some more soapstone so I could work on a few more cosmetic blocks and just make the base look a little bit more interesting, but that was really the rest of the day, eating a whole bunch of steak, taking a quick nap, and then going into day 11, where I bred up all of the animals, got them ready to go, and then walked around murdering a whole bunch of other cows. That's weird, they all just kept leaving as soon as my ax hit their skull. But I checked on my mini map and I saw a village just on the edge of rendered chunks so I knew if I headed over that way I could get a lot of resources that I need to continue progressing. Then I saw a floating stone arch with another one of those portals inside. So I popped through and it was a minecart track and I thought this is kind of cool there's a roller coaster. So I rode it and that was a mistake. No! What just happened? Does that put me back in spawn? What is this place? Oh god! Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, there's a portal. Okay. Oh, 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 no. No, 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 leave me alone. You, no, leave me alone. Can I shoot this thing? Ow. Oh, it. Oh, no! Oh, I'm fine. Okay, there's no fall damage? There's no fall damage. Okay, that's great. Um. Well, um. I didn't know this mod was in this pack, and I'm objectively terrified right now. So let's just, let's, let's just leave. This rift doesn't lead. Oh, no. Going into day eight, I need to look into making a press so I can start on a lot of different automated farms and I need more iron to do that. I made myself a quick diamond pickaxe and then picked up the emerald. Why did I pick up that emerald? Before walking over towards the portal and I know I know this triggers people every time that I do it, but I like having my nether portal in a very specific place. So I can't make mining obsidian more interesting. If only something else had happened to distract me. That's weird. And it's raining. That's a little depressing. So I went back and head to sleep. Day nine, I made the press and got that all sorted and put together. And while mining underwater, I found a cave that leads down to the bedrock level. I grabbed all of the gold and redstone and other resources that I needed from down here, including zinc, which is weird that it doesn't glow with the shader pack. I fought a couple different creepers and set the iron to go press underneath that plate. Bonk. On day 10, I 
made a whole bunch of pens to pull a bunch of the animals and corral them in that I'd be able to use them for resources. And that's what I did for most of the morning, breeding all of them up and getting everybody just trapped inside with their matching types. Uh, I did breed a pink sheep. This doesn't count as finding one though, because that pen is almost entirely full of pink sheep by the time we're done. I used dirt to cover up all of the water for the just few blocks, making a bridge just seem silly. What, what am I talking about? I never made a bridge. Before running around and just murdering every cow that I saw. I found an arch here that was inactive. That's strange. Maybe a cow walked through that one. On day 11, I saw a village right at the edge of my rendered chunks on my mini map. And I thought, that's a great idea. I should head over that direction to get a lot of the resources that could help me out to move towards the late game. As I was walking over this time, I saw a floating archway and thought, this is another one of those doors I should go through. And it was only a hallway leading towards another door which just kicked me back out. That, was, that wasn't the same. But I arrived at the village, stealing their bell. I saw another one of those archways, went through, and spawned into a graveyard. Oh, this isn't ominous at all. This is... One of these is absolutely gonna kill me. Yep, that's just ground. Oh, I hate it. This place is creep. B? That's a ghost. That's a ghost. That's a ghost. That's a ghost. Oh, I hate it. Okay, I'm out. I'm out of here. What is it with these things and floating on top of water? Alright, one more. One more. You can't hurt, right? Why would I say that? Do I have a bucket of water? I do. Good. Alright, let's go through this one. Oh, well, we're back here. Is it the same one or is it a different one? Can I maybe get to that diamond block room? Oh, I can. Oh, this is a different version of the diamond block room. Okay. Can I disable? Oh! Yo, that is big. Three diamond blocks. This was a worthwhile dungeon. Oh yes, this was worthwhile. I still don't know what's going on with this reality, but this was worthwhile. Do I get greedy? Yes, yes I do. Oh, no! Ooh. Flame and looting! That is huge. Okay, that's good. That is diamond armor. That is a full set of diamond armor! I am not going down there. That's, that's death, right? Yep, that's death. I am not going down there. Once I exited back through the door that I had spawned in, it was basically night, so the next day on day 12, I dug into a little bit of wood I saw at the bottom of the lake and found a buried mine shaft, which was able to score me a few quick chests. Grab a few more pieces of diamond and some quick resources. But with everything accounted for, I ran back home and I have a ton of diamonds and other resources now. I planted the bell down, bred all the animals just to shore up my friends, even though I never expanded their pens, and then used those diamonds to craft a full set of diamond armor and an enchanting table. This is a really great start for this world. Day 13, it's time to get an automated farm going for wheat for the animals as well as for myself. Now I wanna use create for this because it can fully completely automate the process and I had to go back and relearn a lot of things. I thought I needed plows, but instead I needed harvesters, but in general I needed magma blocks to make the whole thing run. So I went back over to the nether portal, finding a gold block underneath one of them, which was a definite bonus. On the way back, I saw a creeper just floating on the lake chilling, which despawned right as I walked up, or it went invisible and tried to murder me. I'm not sure. I started setting up the fan, which would rotate, and I put it into a radial chassis, but 
that doesn't work all on its own. It turns out I'm gonna need slime to complete this because I need a mechanical bearing. It turns out I'm gonna need slime to complete this. So I have a mechanical bearing, but I need to super glue everything together and I can't do that unless I find some slime. But I plowed all of the land and started getting a little bit of things set up and it's time to go off and find a swamp. But first I found another one of those weird doorways and just popped on through. This led immediately to one of those rooms with the trapped diamond blocks and I've resolved this a couple times so I know what I'm doing. Three free diamond blocks for me and I continued on searching for a swamp. I found a ruined castle just crumbling here with stuff in the chests but I kept getting randomly poisoned. I think there was literally poison ivy somewhere. So I slept on top of one of the towers so I wouldn't be attacked in my dreams and then moved on to day 15 where I finished looting the ruins. There was apples and bells and books, just a bunch of useful stuff. I continued north looking for a swamp, just picking a random direction and hoping I had chosen right. I found another one of those doorways that had a bridge and then a little prison room with some basic loot inside and then another one a little bit later with a trap floor and then again just a prison cell. I started looking for alternative ways to make slimes. Sometimes in all of these mods that I install, there's a different way to make it and I can craft it with lime dye and bread dough. So now I have a second option. I can find a desert to get green dye, to make lime dye, to then make slime. So the biomes I'm looking for just doubled. I saw what I thought could be a really small desert just off in the direction of my minimap, went there and turns out, nope, it's just a way cooler beach. Day 16, I'm just walking around murdering every cow that I see and continuing the search for either of the blocks that I'm looking for. No desert, no swamp, just an abandoned nether portal with some basic loot inside, and then another one of these doorways which led directly to one of the diamond rooms. This seems to be a very common end state of these little mini dungeons. And I ended up just doing a big loop back home. And it turned out there was a couple different modded flowers which could also give me lime dye, but the best option was probably sea pickles which would give me lime directly. And I'm going to need a bunch of kelp anyway for belts for a bunch of different things to create. So it's off to the ocean, I guess, on day 17. I crafted a boat and just started sailing away, finding kelp almost immediately. That would be the easy part. But I sailed up on what I think is one of the most beautiful biomes or structures or anything I've ever seen generated in Minecraft. Like, literally, I want to build something that looks like this and finding it here naturally was amazing. And thankfully at the bottom of the space was a bunch of coral, which meant a bunch of pickles, which meant I finally had lime dye. I enjoyed the scenery briefly before sailing back home, planting the kelp and sea pickles underwater, thinking that they would grow, forgetting that they wouldn't, and started smelting up a few of the sea pickles for lime dye, which is half of what I need for slime. The other half requires making a grindstone so I can grind down wheat into dough and then combine everything a little bit later with another step. Now the cool thing about Create is the gears, which work both vertically and horizontally. And if you puzzle them together just neatly, it just, it feels like redstone, but a lot more satisfying because it like ka-chunks into place. So I have a grindstone running now and grinding down dough and iron plates being pressed down into more harvesters to make the whole thing automated. Crafted my first block of slime, created a mechanical bearing, which is what I need to be able to get the whole thing spinning minus the chest. I can figure that out a little bit later, but I planted all of the seeds just so everything can get started, lit it up, and we're into day 19. On day 19, I'm just starting to get it all working. The machine isn't perfect, but it's mostly functional. I don't really understand how the funnel works. I'm going to have to come up with a different way to actually get the items out of the system. So I went through the ponder menu to figure out what I had gotten wrong. And right now it's just fine keeping the items in that chest. I'll get them out later. But it's time to start on the next project. I crafted up a few quick iron plates and then a blaze burner. And then the next day it's time to go to the nether in full diamond armor. I'm doing this kind of out of order. I lit the portal and went through ending up in a large quartz based biome, which is awesome. I'm going to have all of the quartz I could ever need for redstone contraptions. Finding a spawner and check my reaction. This is the most cracked box I've ever seen. Nether wart, other side, chirp, pig step, coal, bunch of gold nuggets. That's actually, fire protection too would actually potentially come in really handy right here. Gold! More quartz. 13. Creepy music, sure. 
Ooh, a looting sword. That would actually come in handy. Oh my god, if that was a fortress, I would have lost it. My inventory is trash already. And we just walked into this place. Alright, so the thing that I never seem to get in these challenges, which is potions, is now already secured. All I need to figure out now is finding blaze rods. And wouldn't you know it, a few minutes later, I walked straight into a fortress in this very biome, was able to capture one blaze in a burner. They are my Pokemon now. And fought all of their cousins for blaze rods for Eyes of Ender whenever I decide to finally go that direction. I ran out of food while on fire, and that's a good signal to just leave. Day 21, I emptied my inventory and then emptied out part of the cow pen, getting some additional steaks and re-upping on my food supply. But I realized that that I also needed soul sand to plant that nether wart to get it to actually grow. So a quick trip back to the nether, finding just a few blocks of it along the different layers, making a little area where I planted the nether wart for right now. From there, I went down into the caves and grabbed a whole bunch of iron that I'm gonna need to smelt up, some diamonds that I saw just kind of laying around and getting cheated by the reflection, making me think that there was two when there was only one. But the biggest find was a zombie villager who I got into a boat and then I don't think actually ever did anything with, and a spawner, which I was able to light up before they decided to kill me in this hardcore run. I found some music discs, some food, and some general resources, and this would be useful. So I marked it, slept right here next to it, and then the next morning headed back up to the surface to get back to work. I crafted up a gold dimension door, which should be something that should allow me to access the dungeons. And as I place the door in different places, I end up in different rooms. It's a way to kind of peek into the void. So I climbed through and ended up in an entirely black room and I had no idea where anything was. I was kind of confused and scared. Much experimentation later. Well, okay, sorry, we're breaking canon here for just a second. The mod got updated, which means no dungeon run from the gold doors. It just leads to this little pocket dimension, which is useful. We can do things with this, but not as useful as being able to run the dungeons. We have to go find random rifts be able to access that. So I destroyed the door and then saw it was gonna make another one of those rifts that might eat the world. So I just put the door back and okay, I have a little pocket dimension that I can do things in and keep valuables in. That is potentially useful. Bag of holding. The next day, all of, the next day I need to add to my create machinery, which means I'm gonna have to add a lot more gears. I quickly just added a few to make the bonking machine faster and then worked from the back to create a mixer that I'd be able to mix together brass, which is the basically tier two really truly automated stuff in the create mod. Now you have to spin that faster, which means doing multiple different shifts of small to large gears to just increase the speed. But eventually I got everything hooked up and immediately overstressed everything. So I had to disable the grindstone so I could use the mixer instead. That was all set up and finally working on day 24, but I was short on andesite to be able to make the basin. So I ran down to the caves to just mine andesite for the better part of this day. I crafted up all of the andesite alloy, which then allowed me to research the recipe for brass, throwing everything into the basin, and then feeding the blaze, which causes the mixer to come down, put everything together, and I have my first brass ingot, and I'm making a lot of progress now. But the water wheel is not going to cut it. I'm going to need sails in order to actually get something that will deal with the stress of all these different machines. So these sheeps are going to come in handy. But that was enough for today. Day 25, a quarter of the way through the challenge, and we're making in progress. I crafted up all of the different sail frames, set up a sail bearing, and then turned on a sail with it just gently spinning and generating a lot of torque. It's not very fast, but it will power multiple machines. The placing of these sails though is a little complicated, like frustratingly complicated. So that took a good chunk of the day. While the sun was starting to set, I harvested a bunch of kelp made by first belt, which I was able to hook to the back of this thing and then hold it down on the surface. So instead of needing a bunch of gears, I can just use one long strap to generate all the force down to where it's actually usable. And that, that feels like a huge step in the right direction. On day 26, I hooked up the belt to a series of gears and had it go through several small to big gear changes so that it would remain, you know, a little bit faster. Getting the grindstone hooked up in that and then grabbing my enchanting table and avoiding any risk while enchanting, moving it into the little pocket dimension. Now the weird thing here is when you use a block on the black blocks, 
it replaces it. So I had to build kind of everything twice and created a platform where I was able to keep all of the bookcases in place and that's all set up. I did accidentally dig behind the door though and I can't fix it. So that's just kind of weird. Day 27, I wanted to see if there was a way that I could use Create to smelt everything without having to use up any of my fuel. Anything that just prevents me from having to spend resources to get resources is a plus. If I put a bit of lava in front of a fan, that totally works. So I have a bunch of different gears which I can use to hook up to a fan, which would be blowing super fast. I went over to the nether, grabbed a single bucket of lava, popped that back down in the overworld, and set myself on fire almost immediately. Honestly, I don't know what I expected. Once I realized hot fire bad, I threw down a bunch of copper ore in front of it and then had to set up a block just to hold it in place so it wouldn't go blowing off in one direction and very quickly had a whole stack of copper smelted in one go. Day 28, I started the day by just using the mixer to make up a whole bunch of brass and chopping down trees just to get more resources so that I could feed the blaze. But I went back over to the nether thinking that I could get more ender pearls through some bartering. I bridged over a bunch of different lava and worked through a crimson forest trying to set hoglands on fire and things almost went very, very badly, very quickly. A hoglin hit me several times, getting me down to just two and a half parts. I had to spend a gamble and use whatever lava I had just to get across, bowing down anything else I saw to avoid more problems. Thankfully, I was alive, happy, healthy, and ready to do some capitalism as I trapped a bunch of pigs into a hole and threw gold at them until they eventually gave me what I wanted. I was fighting more hoglins the whole time the trading was going on, but overall, it was a really productive exercise. Then finding a blackstone pyramid, remembering to disarm all the TNT underneath the chest, and getting a decent bit of loot, including a ton more gold, before going through the portal and being absolutely swarmed by zombies thousands of blocks from home. I did a little bit of exploring, just seeing what was around finding a much cooler looking jungle temple. This isn't as cool as the one that I built for myself, but it's definitely something kind of nice. But I am very out of food, so I spent some time just setting a bunch of pigs on fire and killing them to make sure I got some cooked pork chops and didn't have to worry about cooking my food before seeing an archway. And this one was weird. It was literally just one room, and the second door immediately warped me back to my bed, corrupting the land out from under me. Whoa. I mean, that's one way to get home. <laughs> that was actually amazingly convenient. Honestly, these doors creep me out. And as you watch this video, it's only gonna get weirder. So I hope you don't have the same sort of eldritch horror trigger that I do. Day 30, I started by reharvesting all of the crops and then checking in on the automatic harvester, which was doing pretty well. From there, looking at all of my resources and riches, I just need a little bit more of everything. I jumped into a geode to grab some crystals and then immediately fell almost to my death. Thankfully, the water caught me. Uh, I just saw my life flash before my eyes. From there, it was iron, gold, and diamond, finding a second zombie villager, putting them in the boat, and then never doing anything with them again. I did grab a whole bunch of amethyst shards going up to the surface, and then on day 31, I smelted all of what I just got by just throwing it down in front of the lava fire. This is the coolest invention ever. To avoid an unfortunate gravity-based death, I threw some feather falling onto my boots, so that way I would last a little bit longer, made a whole bunch of paper, converted some of it into to sandpaper, which I could use to take redstone quartz and polish it to get some better resources and materials, which I would need for some more complicated aspects of the create mod. I made my first brass casing, which I can then turn into a automatic crafting grid, which when powered by gear power would automatically craft different materials if you have the proper thing set up. So I threw a whole bunch of andesite and wood and stone in place and check it out. Oh, this is so cool. Did I build this right? Nope! Oh, no, I did it wrong! I think these two need to connect into the bottom. Okay, let's try it again. Go, do your thing! Come on. Did it work? It worked! Oh, this is so cool! Oh, I get two! 
This is so cool. We're not gonna use this here. We're gonna use this up there. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Now this is officially the furthest I've ever gotten into the create mod. I've never actually made it to the crushing wheels before, but we have other parts of the game to do. I smelted up all of the raw gold that I had collected and went back over to the nether, trapped a couple more piglins inside of a hole and gave them about three stacks of gold just trying to get enough pearls and other resources to beat the game. And I got about three pearls. All right, six eyes is gonna be enough to find the stronghold, even if I won't actually be able to go into it just yet. So I threw down my first eye and started making progress. The eyes took me over land and then back through a similar, but not the same one of those gorgeous areas of all sorts of arches with amazing terrain just floating in the sky above me. I went underwater finding a drowned spawner with some decent loot inside the chest and this quickly swam and quickly slept in the shallows going into day 34, where I'm walking through the woods, just trying to find that last little bit. The eyes turned around and I was able to dig down directly into the stronghold. I saw a zombie here, uh, I saw nothing. Now my stronghold nav is getting better. It's not as bad as it used to be, but I could definitely still be improving. I got jump scared by a goblin trader at the bottom of the steps and I almost killed, Never mind. I did actually, Never mind. I didn't kill them. That, that makes no sense. I totally killed that goblin and then they popped back up. I don't get it. But they had everything I need to finish the portal of a trade of one emerald for ender pearls, and that could be huge. I quickly found the portal room, slotted in all the eyes that I had, and I was about four short, and then I accidentally threw two of them up into the wall, which I tried to dig in and find, and just couldn't. I slept quickly and then thought, well, they'll trade cobblestone for emeralds, better just get mining. I grabbed all of the cobblestone that I could from the stronghold itself and traded a few of them in for blaze rods and pearls, getting four more eyes in place, but there's still four to go. The only problem was I was down on the deep slate level, so I had to go up if I was gonna have to. So I had to go up to get stone. And in going up, I think I went too high and the goblin despawned. That was a bummer. Day 36, I'm thinking, what should I do now? I can't complete the portal. I'm stuck down in the deep slate level. So I just dug straight up to the surface thinking I'll reset. I'll get all the resources that I need and then I'll be fine. I grabbed a bucket of water to make the drop down in the stronghold a little bit safer and using it with the lava in the portal room to cast a nether portal that I could use to get back towards my base and then try to farm resources from there. That took literally all day just figuring out what my strategy was and getting home. So on day 37, it's time to grind and get everything done. I was about to enchant a brand new diamond pickaxe, but I realized fortune two would be available if I just gained three more levels and didn't enchant anything in the meantime. So I stored that off on the side and then went back over in the nether towards my portal, thinking I have four eyes left and I had one in my pocket. Well, at least I'm making progress. I dug back up to the surface again, marked the entrance with a cobblestone pillar and started killing skeletons, realizing that there's been a lot of loot in these doors. So why don't I go and check those out? except I accidentally got stuck in the door, so that one was kind of a wash. I found another one immediately after with a pressure plate that oddly looked like it was gonna kill me, but this time, this time it was safe. The next one though had a very obvious diamond trap, so I broke all of the blocks and all of the pistons so that I'd be able to use those, finding a swamp village, or at least this mod's version of a swamp village. I should really build my own, that would look cool. But there's just nothing but fishermen here. So instead, I went ahead and made a Fletcher so I could be able to use all of this wood. These modded trees just hit different with how much ridiculous amount of logs you can get. I spent all day chopping a singular tree. That tree gave me several stacks of sticks, which I was able to convert into emeralds and do a lot more trading every time they restocked, just sending everything their way. While I was waiting for trades to reset one time, I thought, let me just climb this little bit of water, finding the highest ruined portal I've ever seen, bridging my way over, grabbing a gold block and some decent things from the chest. A little bit of obsidian never hurt anybody. I clutched the MLG water bucket, slept watching the sun set over that gorgeous terrain, and then absolutely nailed landing in the boat as I continued to search around for more archways to get more resources. Now these things make me skittish. It says hit this block and if it just break what's underneath me, I'm not gonna fall to my death, but it does shoot different tipped arrows back at you. So I grabbed a few of those. They'll definitely be useful. At the end of this was just a room that freaked me out to a really emotional level. This mod freaks me the heck out.
What is that? Okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay. That sign, this room. Oh, it's very solid. Okay. No, no, I'm, I'm out. Once I was out of that one, I found another arch nearby and I am not proud of what happened next. No, 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 no. Oh. First off, that needs to go on. Where am I? Where? Ah! <laughs> I forgot that that was up there. What do you want, my friend? What is it that you want? A door. What are you? Nope, 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 nope. Leave me be. Leave me be. Nope. Oh, that's right, there's no fall damage. No, leave me alone. Mm, I hate the noise. This limbo dimension freaks me out. It's just void and fog and particles going everywhere with these eyes that open and I don't want to see what happens when that purple particle attack actually tracks onto you. It freaks me out. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna just... I'm just gonna try. This has to do something. Oh god. Whoa. Lagundo bathed in reality. I bathed in reality. That's not creepy at all. But thankfully, I was able to find my way home. Did I say home? I meant where I had slept last. I went back to the stronghold, hit the portal, went through the nether, threw a little bit more gold at one of my piglin friends, got no pearls, went through the portal that is linked to the portal that's actually inside my base, took a quick nap, and reset mentally at the end of that day. Day 41, I sorted everything and then started the day by crafting a brewing stand. Don't worry, I'll be okay. This isn't the main hardcore series. If you're wondering what that means, go watch this video up in the corner. From there, I headed over towards the village, plopping it down and making a cleric, trying to get them leveled up to be able to get pearls. Now that's level three. Thankfully, they rolled pearls, which was good for me. I kept them stored in, made a whole bunch of sticks, traded those in with the Fletchers, and then went and did a little bit of enchanting since I hit level 28, getting myself that fortune pickaxe. On day the meaning of life and everything, it's time to go fight the dragon. I have enough eyes now, so a quick trip through the nether and then going into the end, jumping through, and it's time for a dragon fight. It was an enclosed end spawn, so that was perfectly safe. Digging up into the island, and I don't have any mods for the end in this pack, so it is a fight that you know and love. The most dangerous part is when you both aggro an enderman and get hit by the dragon breath magic, but thankfully, I'm in full diamond armor, so I'm doing pretty good. And actually, I had a few extra pearls, so the one time the dragon yeeted me up into the sky, I was able to pearl to the ground and avoid all falling damage. With a well-placed shot, I bopped the dragon, and that was the end of mine. I quickly grabbed the dragon egg and some opal that was in an ore here in the end because I do have some custom stuff for the end, it just doesn't affect the main island. I went out, cranked the render distance up to 32 trunks, trying to find an end city, and then realized that I had forgotten all of my blocks and anything for rockets, so returned back to the main end island and went back to the overworld. On day 43, enchanting all of my gear, so it's as magical as my personality, and then, you know, I messed up. Ugh. My recording was paused. I'm here with the little gundos, and I paused my recording for like two minutes, and I forgot. So, real quick, what I just did is I just enchanted, well, I crafted up, since I've had all of the diamond blocks, you can see we're down four of them now. I crafted up two diamond hammers, so I could just start resource gathering way more efficiently. And I got good enchants. I have one with fortune and one with silk touch, which means this 
while fun is now effectively obsolete. <laughs> we can just yeet that into the water. I'm never pausing this video again. All right, now that I have the hammers in my inventory and enchanted just using them, <gasps> I love hammers so much. On day 44, I went back through the nether to the stronghold and then back to the end, grabbing a few extra levels of experience that were just sitting in the center of the island that I had forgotten about. I did my best bridging and holding down that shift as hard as I could, going across multiple different islands, finding a reclaimed desert pyramid that had a bunch of different shulker boxes inside, as well as diamonds, eyes, ender pearls, chorus fruit, and a bunch of other useful resources. My first end city was a bit of a bust. No boat, but some good loot in the chests. I pearled down off of the roof of that, running around on day 45, and I mean most of day 45. Like an overwhelming portion of day 45 was just running through all sorts of different biomes, finding a crashed ship but not one with an elytra on it that went ditto for end city number two but from the roof of it i saw another with a boat just floating there i used water to get up into the side nad myself some wings organized all of my inventory and from there i had the supplies so rockets to the roof and shooting down at shulkers is the way to loot these cities i went up pretty high grabbing some of the blocks from those floating islands that were above everything and it's so cool with the different biomes seeing different terrain in the end. I really hope we get an end update one day. But now that I can fly I'm back in the overworld and it's time to conquer these spires. This is where I've wanted to live since I first saw them and now I can finally get up here and with a hammer excavate out a section pretty quickly. Day 46, I'm going to need a lot of wood for chests, floors, other decoration. So I went sailing around finding a forest pyramid with a ton of creepers inside. It actually seems like they were the things designed to be the trap up on trap doors behind you. And the loot inside is comparable to a desert pyramid. I slept on the bridge here before going and continuing my search, finding some ruins and a ruined portal on day 47 and another one of those portals into the weed void dimension. This one was relatively simple, just a ton of gold, and I went around a corner, not looking where I was going, fell through the world, and landed back in limbo. I know I say it every time I end up in this dimension, but it's strange. The world corrupted, broken, as if everything that was useful here, valuable here, was taken, snatched away, and siphoned somewhere else. The husk of a reality left behind. Something about this just deeply unsettles me, but it feels familiar. I don't know how to place it. Thankfully, I know how to escape. I dropped down to the lowest level, finding some of the red fuzzy static, jumping in and being sent back to the bridge that I had just slept on. From there, I hit up my elytra to be able to cover more ground and found a few more of the trees with this beautiful orange color to the wood that is gonna really stand out back at the base. So that's what I'm gonna build most of the structures out of. When I got home, my inventory is a mess. We're really gonna have to clean this up when we move up to the spires. On day 48, I did a few amusing things for myself, grabbing a little bit more steak and just culling the herd, one would say. Cooking that in front of the lava, which didn't work, it just burned it to smithereens, I had to switch out to fire, which would set up the smoking process to be able to actually cook steak very easily. I really love this create and everything that it can automate. From there, I rocketed my way up, and yes, this wood looks amazing up here amongst the stone. Bright, vibrant colors is very different. I have three separate rooms that I want to use for my main set of the base up here in the spire. Using a hammer, I'm able to excavate them all out into day 49, where I set up a bridge of more weather looking wood since that would be what was actually catching water and the elements using the orange much more paduke looking stuff and some bricks in the sides to make this look like a structure not just a cave I happen to inhabit but chopping trees chopping chopping trees we're halfway through the world and I still have to chop the trees <laughs> I did start working on getting everything moved up to the upper level though I want the automated crafting grid set up on the lower section which can be kind of the create section of the base and as we crossed the halfway point, I needed to fly back towards those modded trees to get more of that beautiful orange wood. On the way across, I found several more of the arches, going over rivers, realizing that I should not trust minecarts, and ending up in a parking lot? Okay. Oh, that's just void. Okay. Nope. I think I've pegged what these little pocket shards of reality actually upset me with. It's the emptiness, the void that exists 
far off in any direction as far as you could go. And the fact that it feels like everything has had something stolen and brought into this space. I mean, you have a full beach, you have what looks like just one small tunnel, and you have to drop down into what you think is complete void, and you'd only have a few ladders on screen. It's upsetting. Aside from like a dozen blocks. And then all of a sudden you're on a beach, and then all of a sudden you're in a parking lot, and then all of a sudden you're in the end. Oh yeah, just a fun little mod. Just, you know, some doors. It'll let you just access some things. Oh, this is so creepy. Also, half of it blows up, which is kind of dangerous. And I found my way into one of those three block diamond rooms, grabbing all of that looting and returning when my elytra broke and I was back confined to the ground. Just a reminder that I might be powerful, but I'm not invincible. On day 51, I used all of the phantom membranes that I had to fully repair the elytra. I'm gonna have to get unbreaking and mending because there's no way I'm not sleeping for three days in this world. So I spent some time just enchanting books, trying to get, you know, unbreaking that I could combine. And unfortunately, I completely struck out. Nothing really great on any of this. So I flew over back towards these modded trees that I've been trying to get for two days now, finding another rift that's literally just a book in a chest. Why? Why me? It's just not fair. Yep, that's how I'm feeling right now. You really shouldn't be playing this at like two in the morning. I was getting spooked. Thankfully, I'm starting to see some of these traps multiple times, so I'm able to grab diamond blocks and avoid all of the lava redstone that's been set up around me. Heading back home, making more chests, and putting a little bit extra work into the details. That way it's not just solid planks. On day 52, it's time to move the windmill. And for as much of a pain as this thing was to put up, at least now I know how the mechanics of placing the sails work, so it only took, it still took all day. It still took all day because I love Create, I love everything about this, but placing sails vertically is honestly kind of a nightmare. But I set up the same belts and gears and interchanges to get everything moving just a little bit faster, so things would be a little bit more reasonable as far as power. And this is a heck of a decapitation hazard, but it does look so cool. Day 53, I spent a lot of time just moving all of the create stuff up into our base. The first thing was the fan, getting the auto crafting grid fully connected with gearboxes and getting a shaft running over that direction, moving the mixer, moving way faster than it was down on the surface, and blocking off the fan so it wouldn't kill me. Day 54, I'm starting to research all of the components that I need for this elevator that I want to build. A lot of it needs smooth stone and I have a hammer, so hammer go burr. Before making a quick piston so I could block and unblock the fan at will. I'm a redstone wizard. I figured all of this out. I'm so smart now. But I set up these wireless redstone receivers and a toggle, setting up all of the gears, which would go into the crankshaft, which would control my elevator going up and down. Day 55, I made a stone door and absolutely didn't hide anything behind it. Don't worry about checking that when you get the world download on Patreon. Added a few additional sails to the windmill, grabbed a little bit more wood, and set up the platform for this elevator, which works a little too well because it actually pulled up some of the floor with it. I quickly broke that off and had the whole thing coming up, realizing I'd have to build a wrench to be able to toggle how many blocks the elevator would actually pull so it wouldn't try to pull any blocks that it wasn't basically supposed to. I made some brass and gold plates, crafted up the wrench, and I was able to use that to tune the linear chassis so they only pulled themselves up my internal elevator that's a full success now that i have the design i'm going to make another one that'll take me down to the surface just with a longer rope everything should be relatively easy then and then i found out that there's so many new decorative blocks and i'm so excited are you telling me that there's finally a use for regular deep slate here we go so I went down into the caves to grab a whole bunch of deep slate, finding some scoria and a whole bunch of diamonds just sitting there. You know, thank you. And with silk touch, these are gonna look awesome. Day 57, it start to build out the lower area towards the bottom of that elevator. I figure I'm gonna use scoria blocks and deep stone columns so that it looks distinctly modded. And I'm gonna have it up over the surface of the water like it's suspended instead of floating. I was building what I basically thought was a mini mod bay of stars when I suddenly saw a bunch of pillagers floating and one of them looked special. What do you do? What kind of bad guy are you? Oh! 
Oh, you're magic. Oh, no. Okay, you're magic. Oh. Instantly blind. That was a little terrifying. Thankfully, I don't have any villagers at my base, so I just ignored that potion effect, finished building the bridge so I could walk around from where I'm spawning all the way around to where the elevator is, and you bet I put those columns all the way down to the surface. I am not an animal. Day 58, I crafted up some inventory extractors, which allows you to, when you stick two of them together, automatically transfer resources from one to the other, meaning that I could use that to automate the collection out of my wheat farm finally after like 30 days of building this thing so with the inventory extractors connected setting up a funnel into a hopper into a chest a little bit of old and new working together it's working perfectly and i couldn't be more excited day 59 i crafted up the final harvester so that was actually fully operational somehow i had missed that and never set that on this farm at some point but that was actually my last bit of andesite so i went back down into the caves using a hammer to just grab all of the andesite i could ever want, building up a bunch more chassis and another rope pulley so I could set up the exterior elevator to get me from the surface all the way up into my spire base. The next morning, I needed to harvest up just a little bit of redstone for the final crankshaft to get everything connected. I had to disconnect the automated crafting to get this to work. Setting up the wireless redstone transmitter and receiver with buttons on them, it activates everything and then the system was overstressed. So this is actually where I disconnected the automated crafting grid. I did those out of order, but I'm gonna leave that in there so you know that I'm not perfect when I make these videos. But once the rope dropped down and came all the way back up, my elevator to the surface was working. It just needed a few blocks to stop it so it would have something to collide with. And now with the press of a button, I can go down to the ground and up to my base uh, where I would avoid being attacked by two invisible spiders. But you know what? That's the kind of things what happen when you just set foot on the surface. It's a silly place. All right, here we are on day 61 where I promised you everything would start to get organized. Well, if you remember, I said it actually happened on day 63. So I'm just talking for a little while while all of the footage of me organizing is going on between day 61, 62, and into day 63. Why don't you just do me a favor and leave a comment about how excited you were that it was all finally done on day 63 and the base looked amazing. Believe me, I would appreciate that so much. And it would let me know that you made it this far into the video. This is like the secret call to action. And don't worry, that work continued into day 64, where I'm starting to pull the final scraps out, but I'm using the elevators, getting them a lot more set up, just yeeting myself down, breeding animals, and setting up a new gold dimension door, thinking that that would connect to my gold dimension door down on the basement, since it appeared to be like the little pocket reality. Now that didn't work, and I slept on it, realizing I'd have to move everything up to the upper door to get it all to connect and switch for quartz doors. The problem is if you put it down where you had a previous door, it stays stuck to that pocket instead of making a new one. So I went in and made the actual quartz door and woo, this place is bright, like eye bleedingly bright, like discord light mode bright. I don't know how much I'm actually gonna use that because it feels like the video would be near impossible, but it thankfully does connect to the door up on the surface as well. So since I'm not gonna have the void to work with, I started carving out a new room to just continue to expand on my spaces, working it being a little bit lower down the spire so I could continue working with different create tools and have the space to do it. But I don't wanna set up another elevator. So I started on a staircase down in the middle of the night before going down and fighting creepers first thing in the morning, just trying to get a little bit more gunpowder. I'm also chopping trees to make all of the trap doors so I could put a little great fence railing around the staircase and have it look like, you know, I'm not actively trying to yeet myself off of a mountain, except for when I actually am landing down in the water, harvesting up all the kelp so I can make a few more belts and more trees because you always need more trees in your life. Day 67, I remade all of the bookcases since I didn't have silk touch when I broke them off in my pocket dimension and set up the enchanting table up on 
on the upper level, doing just a little bit of enchanting on my axe to get unbreaking on it so it won't break so quickly. I also set up the dragon egg in the lowest level of the basement to have a little bit of a trophy, and in the next morning, there was once again time to move a few cows off into their next life. Now my elytra is broken, so I need mending and unbreaking three to make sure that it's gonna last a while and it won't break on me. So I grabbed a few lecterns, boxed a villager in and told them no. You will learn magic now. I spent a majority of the day just resetting their trades, eventually getting Unbreaking 3. It wasn't the most important, but it would still be useful. So I started harvesting logs in order to convert them all to sticks to go for the stick to emerald trades on Fletchers so that I could get the resources that I needed to grab my first Unbreaking 3 book. Then I grabbed a second lectern and worked with a second villager, resetting the trades again for a majority of the day at this point before they eventually offered me mending and actually at a pretty good price too. So once again, harvesting every tree I possibly can, converting it into sticks, but I couldn't find my Fletcher. They had just wandered off somewhere. So I had to make a new one and trade with them to get just a few emeralds. I was actually only one short at the time to grab my mending book and then start running back home, heading up into my base where I had an anvil to combine the books and then combine them with my broken elytra. And once I got a little bit of experience, I'd be good to fly again. And the next day on day 70, I know where to find a lot of experience. I'm gonna build the laziest Enderman farm I possibly can. I went off to the end, made a little platform that was only two blocks high, and then just made eye contact with a whole bunch of Endermen and then stabbed them when they got too close. I was like a YouTuber at VidCon, actually. Once my wings were repaired, I figured it might be a good idea to get a second set. So in case one breaks, I'm not completely stranded. So I headed out to the outer end islands and we're not gonna talk about what you just saw right there. I totally didn't just smack my face into the wall and bring myself down to three hearts. I'm a professional Minecrafter, I have standards. Eventually I found a city with a boat outside, grabbed a little bit of the loot from the chest, grabbed a second set of wings, which is extremely important, and looted everything at the top, grabbing a whole bunch of emeralds, which will help with future trading. Day 71, I combined one of the axes I found in the end cities with the axe that I had to get a pretty much match tier one and was flying around to go harvest more of those trees so I would have that awesome orange wood for in my base. I found some sunken nether portals and sunken ships grabbing the treasure from around there, finding another kind of ruined mansion house village thing and sleeping there really quickly. The next day I'm following the buried treasure map and this was a weird choice of where to bury it but okay that kind of makes sense. While flying back home I saw this interesting looking tower outpost place flew into it and it turns out to be an upgraded pillager tower. I love the structures that you see like this from all these different mods and everything else along those lines. It really shows the creativity of different people and I'm probably gonna be building something like this in my hardcore world. Make sure to keep an eye out for that. Speaking of modded structures, I was flying back home and also found an enhanced and upgraded jungle temple. And this place is a lot of fun to raid. It has three or four spawners, just a few barrels, and a quick little parkour course, which can bop you off if you step on the wrong place. So a quick little diversion before finding a portal with some gold blocks sitting right there and another archway into the void. And this one got weird. Okay, it's a prison. I mean what I said at the start of the video, this mod is not one that I like commissioned or was involved in, but it fits with my idea of the multiverse so well. Let me just run you through a few of the highlights of this specific dungeon. Oh, come on. This is very bright. I am very sorry to whoever has to watch this part of the video if you were not expecting it. Oh, it's amazing. Ooh. Okay, cool. Ha! Hammers. The fact that there's never any sound in these actually creeps me out. Oh! No, I missed! Oh! Oh! That was so close! Oh! My goodness. Oh, great. Okay. This is creepy. I don't know how the people who made Dimension Doors snuck into my brain and stole my lore on the multiverse, but this hand room and a few other things is just uncannily like what I have in my own lore, including this book that I found. 
Oh. <laughs> One must overcome their biggest fears. But with every room and branch of this specific little pocket dimension explored, I return to the overworld. On day 74, that was over a day. That was over a day, just in that one space. I used the shulker boxes that I had, pocketing all of the different resources that I had collected and looted from that little dimensional rift, and then flew home. And then it took basically all day for, and you know it and love it, inventory management montage. Well, inventory management time lapse, but you get the idea. I'm trying to keep everything organized when you all get this world, which you can download on my Patreon. Day 75, I turned on the new sails and set up a belt to a whole bunch of gears because it's time for the next big tech thing in Create, and that's the two grindstones. Now, to get this to work, I need to have two stones spinning very fast, but in opposite directions. So doing all sorts of different wheel configurations to get things spinning in, you know, opposite directions was actually kind of complicated. Like, it took some work to get figured out. And they don't spin at the same speed. I'm sorry, I'm going to ruin this for you. I tried everything I possibly could to get them to spin at the same speed, but they don't. And that literally led into day 76 for me to actually keep trying at this. And you know, okay, it works. Like I can throw a block in and it'll get ground up and smashed up and then it'll come out the other side. I don't know what would happen if I were to go in there. I'm not about to try it though. I started setting up just some bricks and a little bit of a decoration behind it so it looks a little bit more intentional along with a couple chests and a couple funnels so that the whole thing can be fully automated. I just put a bunch of stuff in the top and I get a bunch of stuff ground up down in the bottom and this, this works super well. This is awesome. It still bothers me that they don't spin at the same speed though. Now for the reason I built this, you can make all sorts of crazy stuff with this crushing. And the first thing I'm gonna need to do is go to the nether to be able to get a whole bunch of netherrack, which you can crush up to go ahead and make other things. And this portal, which is up in the mountain, now links to the portal, which is here on the ground. Nether portals are weird sometimes. But the next day, I started grinding up all of the netherrack and then started investigating into pipes because I have to get into fluid dynamics as well to make the thing that I actually want to make. I made a few copper pipes by bringing the press up into the main base, which now it runs way faster than it was running down on the ground floor. That's a definite bonus. I made the tank, I made some pumps, I spilled a few potions into a bucket of mostly water, which didn't work, but I didn't know about that until later. But I actually need brown mushrooms, so it's off into the world I go. While I was out there though, I found another gateway right next to that giant jungle temple that I had looted earlier. And this one, this one was weird. First off, that first room is super bright, apologies. And then it led to a giant parking lot and then a beach now i've encountered a few of these rooms before but just seeing them connected in this way seeing how this dimension works it always freaks me out if anyone can figure out what those coordinates at the bottom mean that would be awesome but just when i thought this place couldn't get any weirder this was the next room i entered this room is creepy after the giant room of infinite eyes and spookiness I ended up in what kind of looked like a game trust. show room, there was obviously some sort of plan for it. The obsidian like in the floor should have been a bit of a dead giveaway, but I didn't think about that. I just saw that I had to fill a chest up with stuff. So I put in my axe, my shovel, a whole bunch of carpet, and... No! Oh! That was so stupid. Yeah, to be fair, I really should have expected that. I, I legitimately, honestly should have, but that's on me. That's not anybody else's fault. I did grab some harming arrows, which was nice, and made my way to a large hallway with six different doors, just out and around, and everyone led to a new pocket reality. So I just marked each one and started going, knowing to not trust the most obvious direct path about half of the time, and that was serving me very well as I continued working through all of them until I almost got skewered. That could have hurt. That's just mean. 
When I was exploring the third run, though, I found a door which kicked me out of the entire dungeon, warping me back to the base to my bed in the spire. I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to go back to that at some point soon, but the rift is gone, so off for brown mushrooms I actually go now, flying off to a spruce forest, finding a whole bunch on the ground, and really, that was a quick mission. In and out, 20 minutes. It actually worked that way. I found a few more rifts as I was exploring in the overworld, and, well... These places are really starting to creep me out. But now I'm starting to get colored altered fabric in the chests. It makes me think I'm progressing somehow. I did end up in what was only be described as a waiting room. I was afraid the floor was going to break out from under me, but this one was safe. Places but I noticed a chest place. behind the door that I had entered in, and the book gave some ominous advice. <sighs> to achieve certain goals, one must overcome their biggest fears. I'm going to try something that might be very, very stupid. Oh! That does freak me out every time. Put the chest plate on, because I don't know if there's anything hostile in this dimension. I legitimately, honestly don't. Blink, I dare you. Let's just go oh, down. Bathe in, what does this thing do? I'm afraid it just like kills us. Yeah, cause that's, that's not a happy sound. Not a happy sound, not a happy sound! Oh, God, this is... Okay, so I know, like, there's mobs and stuff that are actually scary. Being alone, being objectively alone, but also potentially not being alone, this is the most terrifying thing I've ever done. All right, there's some red. Swim in the red. Bathe in reality. I'm gonna try something stupid. I'm gonna put the book in it first. Did something happen? That's just water, okay. All right, up we go. What is going on with these doors? Honestly, I don't know, but I made a quick shovel and ax replacement and called it a night there. Day 80, I realized if I'm going to get into potion brewing, I'm going to need to automatically harvest nether wart as well, in addition to just wheat. So I grabbed all of the tools I would need to be able to build another one of my farms just with a different crop inside. I did realize I was out of magma blocks though, so I had to pop over to the nether for a quick little trip, grabbing a few stripes and patches of the hot stuff from wherever I could find it, and bowing down a few people who I'm not family with in this reality. Returning back to the overworld quickly, on day 81, I was actually building the farm now that I had all the tools necessary to do so. I think this one's gonna work, but the problem here is now I have two different things and I want them to condense their resources into one final spot. So I'm gonna build a conveyor belt to grab all of the items from both of these farms and collect it down into a single chest. Now I had only really done a singular belt before, so different belts that were working on multiple levels or other things like that, it actually kind of messed with me. I thought I could put two belts onto a single shaft and that was not true at all. And that took me most of the day to honestly figure out. And then once I had it, realizing that I not only needed to power it, but power it in the proper direction made things even more complicated. The next day though, I had things mostly figured out. I did end up being a little bit short on soul sand, so a quick pop over to the nether to scoop up some spicy dirt to be able to use that for my growing needs. I set up all of the last little bits of the belt and everything was ready and good to go. All of the resources were now being collected in the chest and riding that conveyor belt was extremely boring, but satisfying to make my way towards the end. 
I did a little bit more work with some interchanges, trying to make the conveyor belts just move a little bit faster. Collected wood to replenish all of the slabs and buttons that I had used to craft up the absolute mess of gears right here. And then moving on to day 83, I crafted up the final funnels, put them in place, and now the system was actually running. Transporting everything on that conveyor belt nice and visually from one end from the actual farms down into a central collection system. I took some nether wart downstairs to plant. I grabbed all of the supplies and brought them upstairs to be organized. See, I promised you I'd be organized eventually. And from there, I brew up a set of harming potions in the mixer, which was pretty awesome. So with this, I would get four potions instead of three. It's just more efficient to do it this way, but I don't want them for bottles. I want them for something else. And for that, I'm gonna need to pump them into the tank and then use them somewhere in something else differently. So the size and the space that I had here was definitely not enough. These gears make the base look so much more alive, so much more intricate, but it does take up a lot of room, kind of similar to redstone. So I see why these two things work so well together. So on day 84, I figured if I'm gonna set up a proper potion creation system, I'm gonna need a lot of glass. I was originally gonna go dig up a bunch of sand and then thought, wait, can I just make sand? And you can by throwing cobblestone to gravel and then to sand through the grinder, along with some obsidian to give me near infinite obsidian dust. I was then able to use the lava blast mass smelting to be able to convert all of that sand into glass and it worked pretty perfectly, honestly. Once I had all of that crafted up a few additional pipes, I moved the mixer downstairs and set another set of gears over towards it to be able to power it, and it was moving just as fast as it was before. And then I had to set up different gears for pumps and the tank so that I could actually move the fluids out of the basin and directly into the tank to be able to store it to be able to then use it for crafting a little bit later on. Day 85, I'm just doing more research, trying to figure out how the pumps and the fluid and everything work. And when I went downstairs to do some work, there was just somebody crashing in my home. I realized I had actually put the pump into the system backwards. It was pumping out of the tank instead of in towards it. So that explained why it wasn't doing anything. Getting that flipped around, all of a sudden the harming potions were collected inside. From there, I set another pipe towards a spout that I would have to craft to be able to put that and spray the potions down onto stuff that I would put into a depot, which I would make later. Set up another pump and then started working on some gear shafts and crank shafts so that I can activate and deactivate these pumps when the time was right. This way I'm not removing things before they're finished and everything's working according to plan. It is an absolute mess of gears. If you were to fall into this thing, you would be ground to bits. But I kind of love this vibe for this world and the kind of base that I'm building where it looks like the spire with gears and steampunk and technology. So yeah, it's a mess, but it's my mess and I love it. Day 85, I crafted up the depot, grabbed some of the cinder flour from the crushed netherrack, and just watch my live reaction. Yes! <laughs> oh, so excited. That was, what, three days of effort? More like eight days of effort, honestly. But we can now basically farm gunpowder from netherrack and a bunch of other renewable materials. I don't even know how much is left in this thing. <laughs> Maybe I should make one of the, you know, core items to the whole mod pack. So I grabbed some gold and made some gold plates, crafting that up with a little bit of glass pretty quickly. And I made the goggles, which is like the second thing that Create ever expects you to make. That made, that made 40 gunpowder. And I have goggles now. Woo, goggles. Okay, that made... 40 gunpowder. What? Why does this obsidian, this obsidian keeps like going through and powderizes, but it doesn't break? I think I've found an infinite money glitch. So since one set of potions makes 40 gunpowder, I made another set of potions right away. Crafting up a full bucket of potions instead of just three and spraying it on more cinder flour to get even more gunpowder. And that 
two stacks of gunpowder with 14 days left in this world. That is basically all the rockets I could ever ask for. And this is just so dang cool. Day 87, I have a whole bunch of ender pearls in my inventory. So I crafted up a whole bunch of oak dimension doors, thinking that I could put this on some of the broken rifts to potentially recreate the portal to be able to go back through. I flew back over, popped the door down, and I got an advancement, which made me think this is actually gonna work. Going through, I ended up right back into the same dungeon that I had been exploring before. Now, I knew exactly where to go through some of those early islands, just checking around for other hidden secrets, making my way back through the room of many eyes, down the spot that made me think that I was gonna die, through the second room of many eyes and then into the room with all of the seven doors. It literally legitimately okay. took me most of the day to re-navigate this thing, even though I knew where I was going. These places are a maze. Oh, you tried. Oh no, the door got blown up. Okay, well, we're not going that way. I don't know if there's some sort of reality shattering massive consequence for that kind of error, putting a pocket reality inside of a pocket reality. And I'm just gonna pretend it didn't happen and hope I'll be fine. As the day rolled over into day 88, I continued along another path, finding a very large, very tall room with what looked like a building that oh. was partially under construction. I'm nervous about opening any chest or interacting with basically any block. And I'm smooshing myself into the wall to try to find treasure until I noticed four lodestones just as a part of the foundation, which is honestly pretty huge. Four netherite ingots in block form, even with extra utility. That's awesome. I poured some water down a hole thinking there might be something hidden underground, but nope, nothing there. Going back up, throwing everything into a shulker box and then heading back to the parking lot before stepping through what I think is the scariest room I've explored in any of these. Oh, oh. okay. This is creepy. I wonder what would happen if we had eyes. Do we have any eyes? Unfortunately, I didn't have enough eyes, which meant I wasn't able to complete this portal. I don't know what it would do, but I'll have to come back here for it later. I did realize that I could collect the solid static, which feels like something that a monster is gonna crawl out of and suck my soul, I don't know. But I got out of that reality as soon as possible, and it turns out the door stays, meaning that I can come back here whenever I have the resources I need. I did go to another quick portal and this one was super boring, leading me directly to the hand room and then to another diamond block that then tries to kill you room. Kind of nothing. But then I thought I have doors and I went back to the very first rift that I encountered, throwing a piece of cobblestone through and having it disappear. And yeah, it worked. The block I threw through. Oh my goodness. That is the block I threw through on like day one. I continued going through finding rooms that I recognized until I eventually found one that I didn't, having to break all of the glass and shooting all of the bullseyes. Now I was ready to just fly out of here at a moment's notice if necessary, but a hole opened up in the ground and I made my way down towards the door, making sure to check for traps on any chest that I found because I trust nothing in this space anymore. I was able to grab another block of diamond from another very obvious this hallway will kill you sort of trap before checking in and around all of the prison cells, seeing if there was any sort of other secrets hidden here, but unfortunately not. Back in the overworld, it was already getting pretty late, so I just flew back towards the spires so I could bank all of the resources and all of the chests, repair a few things, throw a lodestone here at home, look at a very weird glitched light that I was able to repair and take a quick nap. Day 90, 10 days to go and there's a bit more to go still. I started looking through the create mod as that was what I originally really wanted to dig into with this 100 days and then I saw it, a potato cannon. All right, this honestly, feels pretty straightforward. The one thing I need to make is the little brass hand, which does all sorts of basically player interact events, but mechanically. And that wasn't too hard. Just setting up a few brass plates and some ingots, a little bit of the electrical Nixie tubes and everything was good to go. From there, I pressed some glass and then had the hand smush the glass together and then smush some gears into the gold and having to repeat that cycle several times to get enough 
you know, if you just smash electronics together, eventually at some point you get a microchip apparently. That whole process took overnight just to get everything set up. And then it was time to use the automated crafting to actually build the machine. And I got this so wrong. It was pipes instead of ingots and ingots instead of plates. I just kept having everything one step off in the whole crafting recipe. And then additionally, you couldn't have this whole big grid. You instead had to make it so that the mechanical crafting was exactly the shape of the thing that you were trying to craft. At least that's what it felt like for me. I'm not sure if that was actually the case. Let me know down in the comments if I got that wrong. Yes! Give me a potato cannon! <laughs> oh my god! Oh! I am so... What did I just shoot? I think I just shot a golden apple. Oh, it's loaded with a golden apple. Howard, while wearing no durant instead of air pressure, shoots a suitable island from your... I need potatoes. Where's potatoes? No. <laughs> I'm a super villain. I'm about to become a super villain. No. That sound. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I enchant this? Potato recovery. <gasps> I bet you that means it doesn't. I need to enchant this thing right now. Love how it just says fwomp. On day 92, I collected all the spoils of my potato-based cow hunting and set them up for bulk smoking in the tower and that worked oh so wonderful. I was also able to make a compressed air backpack, setting it up to just get a lot of resources and air powered into it, which would mean that my potato cannon would lose no durability as long as that was on my back. So I'd be squishy, but I'd have a potato cannon. As I was heading back down to the surface though, the rift inside where the door was, was starting to get pretty big, like well over a block, and I'm starting to get concerned about that. But I quickly checked on all my farms, made sure everything was good, and thought, what if I put a door down? Would that just fix it? And well, yeah, that's kind of anticlimactic, but it absolutely, totally just fixed it. I went through several different hallways, ending up at a few of the different doors that I had seen, but just not ended up exploring in this very close to home dungeon, finding what looked like a sunken ship chest just floating in the void. But since we're in really late game and I had an elytra and everything else, I did start to get a little bit careless. Nope. No. Oh, <laughs> you can't get me now, game. And it turns out, in all honesty, I could kind of afford to get careless. I was able to rocket my way back in, and balancing on certain things seemed relatively easy. I did find a random hole in the wall, just smushing my face against all of the walls using video game logic, oh. finding a red sign that said blue in red, wait, no, that hurt my brain, and grabbing a diamond block in another this is the room that kills you kind of trap. But this place had so many different ways to try to spook me. I forgot that was there. I forgot that that was there. I forgot that that was there. I don't know who you are, the authors of this mod. I mean, I do because your name is on the mod page, but I don't know how you reached into my brain and grabbed some of the lore of this multiverse series and also made it part of the lore of the world that you are building. You're amazing and I appreciate it so much. All right, but I'm done being creeped out. So let's look at a few other items that I can craft and I can make an extendo arm, like a full on inspector gadget, little punchy thing. Oh yeah, 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 I'm here for this. It did require smushing together another microchip. So I grabbed all of the gold and the ingots and everything else to get that all set up, reconfiguring the automated crafting grid into the shape that is needed for the extendo arm. And that's right, I forgot. I needed to actually connect it together. So I got a few gears, hooked the whole thing up and did it wrong. It was just bouncing between the middle. I reset and then finally it all smushed together at the bottom of the grid, dropping off something that is just silly and fun. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is so cool. Can I like reach? 
Oh, that's right. I had to disconnect that to let this work. So I'll have to... Oh, uh, we should really get a clutch for that. No shot. <laughs> okay, so... Oh. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. <laughs> so I have a potato cannon. <laughs> I have a little extendo arm. <laughs> Hold on. Sword. This is my new favorite thing ever. Honestly, between that and the potato cannon, I'm in love and those could be the only things create ad and I would be so dang happy. But then again, there was also Nixie tubes, which would allow me to put text and numerical displays in the world. And that sounds super cool. So all I had to do was craft up some redstone infused quartz and then sand it to make polished ingots. That was super easy. I grabbed a whole bunch of glass by smashing down some andesite through all of the levels into sand and then blast smelting it to get a whole bunch of glass, made the display and I was able to set up, well, my name. I've been playing in this world for 94 days or I think it's 94 days. This is the coolest thing I've ever done in Minecraft. This is so cool! And it didn't even consume the name tag. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that is such a neat, like good detail. Oh, I, I just, I come up, that is so cool. And in all honesty, if I just dedicated day 94 to my own ego, I get one day of video where I can just do that. Day 95, I needed to craft a few of the rockets and I was right. This is definitely gonna last me for the remainder of my time in this world. But there's a few little housekeeping things I need to get done. I used all of the diamonds that I had to repair all of my armor. We can't go ending this world with me and broken things. That's just not right. And then taking all of the diamond ore with fortune and getting that set up into diamond blocks. From there, I went behind the stone door and just started crafting a little bit of a room. But don't worry, there will be absolutely nothing in there when you get the world available for the world download on Patreon. There's no secrets. Don't even go check. I took all of the diamond blocks and put them up on top of the spire to flex a little bit, as seems to be tradition with me in these worlds lately, grabbing a little little bit of string to fully repair my bow as well because we're not running around with broken gear anymore. From there, I crafted up a whole bunch of additional dimension doors thinking that we have five days left in this world. Why don't we go exploring? And on day 96, that's where I started going through the first rift and ending up directly in jail, not passing go, but still collecting the equivalent of $200. Flying over and seeing some animals absolutely vibing. I was just about to do a bit about their losing their minds break. Nope, they're still losing losing their minds break dancing. <laughs> they they're still losing their minds break dancing. Flying over to catch some positive vibes before continuing on my adventure, just going from arch to arch. The next one just sent me through a series of hallways to another one of those three diamond block areas, which is free TNT at this point. I understand how it works. Heading over to the next one, which put me through another prison cell. And I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm starting to become even more comfortable with these random dimension doors. But I'm yeah, I'm starting to understand the layout, even though it doesn't always work. That does not stop me from getting spooked though whenever one of those giant eyes peeks out from amongst the flat matte black world. You notice I turned the shaders off in here because all the blocks are deliberately untextured and I want to experience it like that and it's creepy. As I made my way into another S bending hallway, I just barely missed the string which triggered another set of traps, skewering me on a set of stalactites. And then the next one just had me bounce on a set of slime blocks. Every pressure plate freaks me out to an existential level. But the thing that will really get me is if you make the first few instances of a trap do nothing and then have the later one do it, even when I saw it, not noticing, and then dropping stalactites on my head, which is what I think happened. From there, I was back into the barren, corrupting, decaying world of Limbo. Is it just me or is this place getting more empty every time I visit it. I put on my wings and I flew. I flew for a while, like until I was starting to see the day change over. So I just thought it's worth a shot. I put down a door and escaped via that. 
and it actually worked. I ended up back in my bed with more of reality breaking down on the ground around me, and this this is starting to get upsetting. Oh, that's right, the Eyes of Ender. Remembering that, I, I threw all of the diamond blocks that I collected from inside these dungeons so far, grabbed a few of the Eyes of Ender, flew back over towards that door, went back through, retraced my steps through the parking lot, and did what I thought would be one of the most pivotal, important things in this entire 100 days. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. So I just flew around in the void around this parking lot for a little while with shaders so I could actually see some of the edges. And yeah, I like it without. It really fits the vibe so much better. I went back to the overworld to explore more of these different dungeons, finding another one of those random truth books that says to achieve certain goals, one must overcome their biggest fears. I don't know what I'm afraid of, honestly, at least in the context of this world, other than being alone. And these places, yeah, they definitely hit on that being alone vibe. The next hallway that I was in was more overtly a stronghold. Every time I enter one of these, it seems to have more to it. I really wonder if that's how the mod works. This is more and more like a stronghold every time. Finding a new bridge room and then another quick catwalk before ending up in the spookiest room for the weirdest of reasons. Just this being perfectly flat colors where you can't even see the corners. This really messes with me. It's day 98 and we're still in this one singular dungeon, the biggest one that I've explored to date. Working my way through that large stronghold looking structure, I walked into a door that played little ditty and then the hallway started to disappear. Gotta run. I don't even know if there's space. I just panicked as soon as I heard music. This is gonna be a nightmare to come back through. What do you mean it's for pocket dungeons? Does it work? <laughs> the door doesn't work. Oh God, this is the most terrifying thing I've done in all of these so far. And it was right here when I started to feel like I was getting some sort of deeper oh! understanding or meaning or I was on the precipice of intense. understanding these dimensions okay, when so my game crashed. That's really strange. I've never been freaked out by a crash before, but that scared me for some reason. It's so quiet. That's what I think messes with me, is it's so quiet. I checked the counter and we were actually on day 99. So it was time to stop exploring this place and head home so we could finish off this 100 days well. I ran through all of the dungeon and then was reminded that I had to confront my fears. So I dropped it down into limbo for one final time, thinking that maybe this is what I needed to be able to actually figure it out. I actually crafted up a full set of the altered reality armor from the tattered fabric that I had found, thinking maybe I need to wear that in here to unlock some final boss, some final answer. And all I really had was my identity erased. And I've been through that before. I'm not having that happen again. I went back down to the bottom of Limbo, grabbed a bucket of the red fuzzy water, warped myself back to reality. And this doesn't work in this dimension, so maybe it's only the ones that have that failed. I but I ditched the armor, throwing it on the ground right here, going up to the main floor and thinking, you know what, actually, I should preserve that, I should keep that. So I made an armor stand, threw all of the armor right on there so it could stay in my base and give me nightmares while I went to bed. And as I walked over to do the last little bit of organizing, book, those tubes had changed. Okay. Okay. Oh no. No, 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 no. Okay, give me the gun. <laughs> what is. What? Nope. What is going on? What is. How is this changing? This. This doesn't make any sense. I am. No! <laughs> what? What? No. No, 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 no. I'm in single player. Who sent that message. Yo! Yo! No! No, no, no! No! 
No! One hundred days in Minecraft, but I'm about to make it a whole lot harder and turn off the sun. I'm in a world where it's always night. Mobs are always spawning, and I've added a ton of mods to make it the spookiest, scariest version of the game you've ever seen. These videos are always a ton of work, so if you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment to let me know your favorite part. So let's kick it off night one. I spawned in and immediately was taken aback by the fact that the sky was dark. I jumped on top of a tree just to avoid any mobs that were around, grabbing a few logs and immediately making myself a wooden pickaxe and axe while I just stood back to appreciate the scenery. Oh my god, look at this terrain. This is so beautiful! Now I don't have anything and there's mobs everywhere because well, it's the middle of the night. So being mobile and killing skeletons while just trying to run around grabbing blackstone for all of my recipes and the little bit of iron that I could see exposed on the surface was the only thing I could really do right now. I spent some time breaking down flint while I was waiting for things to smelt because a piece of flint would be super useful and made myself a quick furnace to smelt up all of the iron that I could eventually make myself better tools and weapons. Now I installed a tree felling mod, which means if you use an axe anything that is a natural tree just all gets chopped down in one go that's partially so i can do it while on the move and then i was wondering so what is this thing <laughs> new night oh it it makes it night so is this world always gonna be night oh no <laughs> That is so bad. Okay, so there will be no respite from constant mobs and horrors and spooks for the entire duration of this 100 nights, I guess. Let's get at it. My first thought was get some light. That will fight off all of the mobs making some torches and then being jump scared by a much creepier version of a skeleton. What is this? Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I really only have rotten flesh to eat right now, so while I'm fighting the horrors of my psyche, burning some sheep alive, yeah, that's gonna get me a meal. There's also coal and iron as I climbed up the mountain, being able to find it mainly by using the shaders and the iron that was glowing. I dug down into a little pocket cave and there was tons of iron here, enough that I would be able to fully equip myself so I took the time to just gather what I could. And getting a chest plate on, that was a great way to end the second night. Night three, I finished up my iron armor set and made myself an iron pick in case I could just be able to break a whole bunch more blocks. Grabbing some cobble and with my shield, I'm actually able to fight the skeletons head on instead of having to run around in circles. But if I'm gonna wanna see where I'm going, a torch in the offhand is definitely gonna keep things bright. I just spent a good chunk of this night harvesting more iron, getting all of the resources I think I would need, looking out in the landscape ahead of me, a constantly dark night, the stars above, it's gonna take a lot to try to survive this place. Being constantly jumped by skeletons and so many different versions of creepers, I figured my best way to survive was to get out of this valley and find a safer spot. Night four, I realized that there are baby skeletons in this world and they are super annoying. You'll see more about those later. But I was able to use the bones to immediately tame a wolf. Dog, 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 dog. Yes! Now not alone in this world anymore, I spent a little bit of time just felling trees and cooking and killing sheep to be able to have mutton so I could eat so I wouldn't starve to death. There's also a bunch of iron just exposed on the surface in all of these different biomes and using that is making life so much easier. But just as I started to make my way out of the valley and into a birch forest, tragedy struck. No! No! Oh, that took all my meat. That was really worth it. What was that creeper thinking? I know what that creeper was thinking, boom. But I was thinking, hey look, a village. There's gonna be a bunch of supplies there that I can steal. I grabbed the brewing stand and saved them from all of their potential drug habits, finding cats and taming a few of those mainly just so I could have them. I didn't want to feel lonely since it was night all the time. But as I lay down in the bed, it said no amount of rest can pass this night. Looks like I'm gonna have to take this one just like the hardcore world. Day five, where as I was standing around, I saw wisps of fire off in the birch forest and yeah, something about that seemed ominous. My dog friend helped me a ton. As we continued to make our way into the woods, things got a little hairy pretty quickly. 
There were creepers and those corrupted skeletons everywhere, and I accidentally killed the fire? I didn't know that that was something that I could do, and that probably won't come back to bite me later or something. I've read fairy tales. Nothing bad comes from killing the forest spirits. But as I banked some resources and fed my dog to make sure that they were full health, I went back into the forest, and the first of the enchanted mobs reared their ugly head. What the heck is that? No, dog! No, 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 no! You killed my dog! So if you're wondering what this is, it's a super zombie, basically. It's a yeeter weakness sprinter zombie. That's super clear, right? One of the mods makes for all of these randomly enchanted mini boss mobs that spawn all over the place, and they are always a problem. This one just yeets you up into the sky if you're not careful. I slowly dug my way down the tree, throwing down different blocks that I could set to a pedestal where I could kill the zombies and they couldn't hit me, and eventually I was able to take it out, clearing out a lot of the other creepy mobs right behind it. I was able to get an enchanted diamond axe out of that, and oh boy, is it good. I am not okay with the fact that this cost me my dog's life. But I'll take a diamond axe, I guess. What did it cost? Everything. Night six, it was a harvest moon, meaning all of my crops would yield more and grow faster as long as I was able to get them planted and before the moon sets. I did a little bit of breeding with the sheep before scouring the entire village, grabbing as many potatoes as I possibly could find and starting to get them planted as quick as possible. While I was smelting up the iron, I used all of my bone meal on the crops and they harvested like crazy. I only planted about eight and I got 44 that I was able to cook up, which was my food supply for a good portion of this entire video. From there, I tried to see if any of the villagers would take jobs. They have specific hours that they're willing to start on a new position, and I think the night and night air keeps us outside of those times, meaning I'm gonna have to go through this whole trip without any villager trading. Well, actually, wait, that's a lie. I just won't be able to re-roll anybody, so if they have a job, they just will never restock. And Kent here had efficiency five. So yes, I absolutely wanted to save them, blocking them up inside of their house. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I do not remember whether or not I ever came back and visited Kent. So when you watch this whole video, please let me know if I should go let them out because I think they might still be waiting inside of that box and I'm not sure. The rain finally stopped as I continued looting the last few houses throughout the village, grabbing a ton of apples and finding some other villagers with jobs, meaning that some of them might have been able to connect, it just for some reason won't let them do it anymore. The blacksmith though, they had everything I needed. <laughs> Yo, that is genuinely huge. Okay, let's get you, can we get you unstuck? Juliana, you're very stuck. But now knowing that some villagers had jobs, I went back around again, just confirming anybody who happened to be employed and blocking them into their house. I might've put this entire village on lockdown, thinking back. Night eight, I spent some time shearing all of the sheep just to get a few more wool blocks. But in the process of trying to fight the skeleton, one escaped and no witnesses. I was still trying to get people to become employed. So I was throwing down different workstation tools inside of houses, thinking and maybe in that brief second when the day shifts it was still inside of working hours but i don't know if i was ever super productive on that i made my way through the birch forest killing zombies and cooking and killing cows to just set up different food supplies as both the demon and regular skeletons were just constantly trying to kill me and no i didn't have a harder time killing a cow than i did killing the hostile mobs that were actively trying to attack me what are you talking about there is no evidence of that nobody would ever see that i have no idea what's happening in my notes right now. As it rolled over to night nine, I went into one of the rooms that I had tried to force people to get a job, and it worked just barely. My stonemason actually picked up a job, so I'd be able to trade clay to them for emeralds and have a bit of a positive trade loop going. I gathered all the clay from the village that I could, threw it into their house, and barricaded the door, making a few more torches so that I can start clearing up a little bit of a light source and space around here, and also making my diamond pickaxe on night nine. 
That just feels awesome. But from there, I headed out from the village, trying to explore what was around and see what was in my local area and if there were other things that I needed to explore or tackle. And having this diamond axe, yeah, that's pretty great. As I crested the next mountain over on night 10, being very careful to avoid powdered snow, I saw a huge castle and village embedded into the side of the hill. Now there was a bunch in here and a bunch more villagers, but the arrows, string, emeralds, and other resources were the main thing that I was super excited to find. But the castle looked abandoned, dejected, and overgrown. There's just trees in the courtyard, which with a little bit of clearing out would make for a decent base. Oh yeah, I was absolutely gonna make this castle my home. I mean, who doesn't wanna live in a castle? It's the kind of thing where everybody, eventually at some point in time, wants to live in a castle. And with multiple villages immediately surrounding, I had a pretty good chance of potentially finding at least one trader that would go my way. The trick now is fighting all the mobs who are constantly spawning outside. As I was walking through, I found a chest that was sitting in the middle of the field, and I was thinking it's definitely trapped. Oh, what is all of this? Okay, turns out it wasn't trapped, and it was loaded with a bunch of useful stuff. I grabbed all of that, threw it into my pockets, fought a few mobs in this little underhang underneath the spruce village, and nobody here had jobs, but they did have a waystone, which would be super important once I decided to set up my base. From there, as I was leaving, there were multiple zombie villagers, and I'm thinking, oh, this could be huge. I could use them to get decent sized trades and technically re-roll them at least once. Except one of them was a mini boss with all sorts of powers. The Ender Duplicator Gravity Speedster Zombie Villager was kind of hard to deal with. But they did drop something amazing. Another Silk Touch Axe. Wait, a fire? <laughs> Hold up. Oh my god, that is so... That's literally impossible! Oh. Fire aspect on an axe? Yeah, I'll take that. I ran back to the castle, throwing down the waystone in the courtyard, setting this as my base, at least for right now in this world, and combined the axes, so I had the ultimate tool of both logging and murder. Night 12, now that I had established somewhere that I wanted to live, it was time to do a little bit of organizing. I spent some time smelting up a lot of the resources and cooking up different foods and starting on a mine down from the castle so I could see what was there. I found this Glow grease? I, I don't know what it is, but it's shiny. It's probably radioactive and I maybe shouldn't take it, but I stuffed my pockets with it. Night 13, as I continued digging a staircase down into the mines and harvesting any copper that I found, thinking that I could probably do some kind of build with that, I did stumble into a skeleton spawner, which would be pretty useful for bones, arrows, XP, and other resources. The only problem is, since it's always night, spawn rates are gonna be kind of garbage here. The good news is it was actually relatively close to the surface, where on night 14, I continued exploring caves. I had built a mine shaft kind of of my own design, but caving is way better in 1.18+. As I started making my way down the dripstone spikes, I eventually saw Skulk, and things got interesting. Oh, <laughs> it's time for the wilder wild. Oh, I'm piglin' me, don't mind that. But yes, I have the Wilder Wild mod installed, which made this really interesting. I did find a golden chest down here, which was locked. I wasn't able to access it. With Silk Touch, I was able to get a little bit of Skulk and continue exploring as it rolled over to Night 15, checking around the general area and just trying to see where the borders were and if there happened to be an ancient city here. As I continued caving, I ran into a goblin trader who would trade raw copper for copper ingots at a profit. So A, I didn't have to do any smelting and B, that was massive for XP and for trading purposes. I dove back down into the deep dark and did a little bit more looking around, but I wasn't seeing anything. There was surely infested caves, but no city structures around here. So I headed back up and continued my way up to the surface on night 16, where this one was mainly about putting out all of the copper and thinking that I would let it oxidize and then remembering that it was far too close to each other while I banked a bunch of the resources, picked up all the copper, made sure the iron golem wasn't gonna kill me one of these days when I walked out the door and kept running over to where I'd seen some 
some lights. Finding a different kind of spruce village that was built in with a bunch of different sheep who I was able to breed, emeralds that I was able to grab from the chest, and different resources that I kept collecting on night 17. This place was completely abandoned, probably because it was loaded at night and zombies had taken care of everything. But as I was running around grabbing wool, thinking that if I ever do happen to find a deep dark, I'm gonna want the wool. Plus having a bunch of mutton on board to be able to cook that for food, that's definitely not bad. Night 18, the second I walked out the door, I was blinded. So I immediately noped my way back inside and made sure that I was set up for combat with the shield in my offhand instead of a torch. There was a creeper camping out in the boat with the villager that I had collected. So I quickly dealt with that situation. Okay, I didn't really deal with that situation too well, but I thought it was time to set up an actual food supply. I found a little area just on the outskirts of the village that I was holding up in and thought I would set up a little potato farm since I had a bunch in inventory. And wouldn't you know it, right as it rolled over to night number 19, the harvest moon rose. So this could not have been better time. I immediately got down a bunch of torches so that I could plant all of the crops running back to the castle for bone meal, which I spent on the potatoes as much as as I possibly could, growing and harvesting them, being able to go from about 10 potatoes to fully filling out this farm with over two stacks sitting in my pockets. But I was out of bone meal, so I kept running around trying to find any skeletons to see if I could get a couple, but as the harvest moon set on night 20, I didn't find any skeletons, but I did find a pretty scary regenerating creeper. Thankfully, the mini bosses don't really have a contingency for when the mob chooses to unalive themselves by exploding, so that worked out in my favor. I ran back towards the secondary village that I had found, thinking I'd head over to the tall spruce trees to just grab a whole bunch of wood, and I got jump scared. Oh, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. We're gonna kill it. Oh my god, it hits like a truck! Oh, I hate it. Yeah, the corrupted mobs are kind of spooky and playing this game late at night, I genuinely had nightmares about that specific Enderman. But before the night closed out, a couple different boss mobs, including a boss skeleton appeared. This one was relatively easy to kill. They didn't have a lot of modifiers and they dropped a pickaxe with unbreaking two. That would definitely come in handy. Night 21, I'm still exploring, this time going by sea instead of by land to see what I could find along the riverbeds. As I started to crest the mountain, I just caught the top of a pillager tower a better one honestly i really love some of the ways that these mods enhance vanilla structures inside the refrigerator was tons of pie bread meats and a bunch of resources at the top including a mending book which was absolutely huge i also found an lay in a cage so i gave them a potato and made them my friend while i was running around just asking a few pillagers some questions i jumped down the mountain hitting the water right on night 22 sinking me right next to a coral aquatic themed one of those chests. I broke it, letting all of the resources fly up to the surface and oh my goodness was there a ton here. The guardian of that space though didn't want to give me their fork, just their shell. As I ran over towards yet another village that was plunged into darkness, I saw another one of the chests there and thought, you know what, it's time for more loot. Yeah, maybe some of these chests are mimics, so I need to be careful instead of just thinking it would be a win. I did get attacked by a mini boss spider, who I was able to eventually take down, getting an enchanted sword, which was honestly pretty great. In the library, it asked me if I believed in gravity, and I said yes, being rewarded with a hugely OP book immediately following. Oh, look at this book. Well, that's going on that sword right away. Night 23, I was looting the second of the churches where it once again asked me if I believed in gravity and I said no, using a bucket to break my fall jumping off of the roof. As I was running around though and the golem was fighting all of the corrupted mobs, phantoms did start to spawn. I'm guessing that's how it works with this whole flipping from night to night to night. It only just now counts. There's no waystone at this village, so I had to trek all the way back home manually, making my way back over and around the mountain, falling into the powdered snow and trying not to panic, but things worked out fine. 
I eventually made my way back to the castle, dropping off all of the spruce, which is really all I had headed out for in the first place, as well as all of the treasures I had found in. Organization is already starting to get a little rough. I threw mending onto my fire aspect axe, so I would never lose that because that's just overpowered. Crafted a new anvil, and just on the morning of night 24, used that OP book to make an even better sword. I'm grabbing wool from any sheeps that I happen to see, thinking that if I eventually, or when I eventually find a deep, dark, ancient city that I'll be able to navigate it safely. The constant flow of mobs though did make it interesting and putting fire aspect onto them did mean that I was burning a little bit more than I had been in the past. The jump scares from the corrupted mobs though are probably the worst thing in the whole trip. But being reminded that phantoms still exist, yeah, okay. Nights are gonna start to get a little bit frustrating. It was raining on night 25 as I made my way back over to the spruce village, just continuing grabbing wool and wood and string so I could craft up additional bows. The villager that was standing in the courtyard had still not moved. I don't think I've seen you move in 25 days. <laughs> I, I got here at like day 10. You're standing at, you should, you should move. I think they're broken. Okay, Rebecca. You stay right there. Now, a small note, for the next couple nights, I scuffed up the recording, so you're not gonna hear game audio again until night 31. But at this point, with all the wool that I had collected, I figured it was time to jump back down into the caves to either loot an ancient city or get some lava that I could turn into obsidian to be able to go to the nether. As I was on my way down, I was jump scared by my mans, but spelled a little bit differently. He's also a goblin though. Nothing super interesting on the trades as I headed down into the deep dark. Now I didn't find an ancient city yet and there's a lot more to be worried about with this wilder version of the deep dark. So I slowly made my way through breaking shriekers whenever I could to avoid summoning a warden. I saw this thing that looked like a cat that was made out of redstone and who oh, does it hit hard. And despite my best efforts, I could just not kill that thing. So I let it wander off and do its own thing, grabbing some diamonds, being attacked by way too many mobs, and one of the abominations broke my shield, leaving me defenseless with multiple different enemies right there. And I'm under half health. I'm just waffling down potatoes, killing anything that comes close, seeing a little bit more diamond blue glowing out and mining those all up because I need the resources, accidentally setting off another shrieker, strike three. I kept collecting on diamonds, making my way over towards a golden chest. Now, not the one that I had seen earlier, but this one's still unlocked with the key, and oh, there was a ton of loot inside of here. That is genuinely wonderful. That redstone cat was back though, so I pillared up as high as I could, fired off a few shots, and they definitely hit, but I don't think they were hurting at all. I'll have to figure out how to deal with that thing later. Making my way up to an overhanged area and starting to dig through the wall, just trying to find into a different cave or something else like that, but I'm not finding anything. So I dug my way back out of the tunnel, rounded the corner, and oh, there's a warden standing right there. I ran as fast as I could down the cave, hoping that it had not yet logged onto me. Digging into a wall and straight up as fast as I possibly could to get out of the range of a sonic shriek. As I dug up into a lava pool, I'm thinking, Thinking, oh great, this is the end. But then remembered that I actually needed a little bit of obsidian. I dug over a few blocks back up and what do you know, there's a pool here that is perfectly useful. Throwing down some water and mining obsidian in the most annoying way possible. I grabbed as many blocks as I needed, digging up into a huge dripstone cave and then just continuing to staircase my way up before making my way back to the castle and into the courtyard. Throwing down the golden chest is another place to store it. The animations on all of these is actually kind of funny. They all opened and closed together like nom, 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 nom. But I spent a little bit of time organizing my inventory and putting away the things that I didn't need right away so I have inventory space for looting. As I took the obsidian down to inside of the greenhouse here, figuring it was a great way to keep the portal contained and kind of in the antithesis of the nether. It worked pretty well. And for once, going through to the nether, I did not spawn in a basalt delta. Instead, I was on top of a tree in a warped forest, which is maybe the second most frustrating biome in all of the nether. Now, this is one of those situations where I did utilize my map to try to get an idea of other things that existed in the world to be able to find the structures a little bit easier. Be lining my way across towards a bastion that I had seen in the distance. I saw another one of those chests in the corner, and at this point, I'm paranoid. I played enough D&D 
see to know that one of these is gonna eventually just try to eat my face off. So I shot the chest and I'm not proud of it. With no immediate reaction, I bridged my way over, put it inside a box just in case it was a very patient mimic and then opened it up to a ton of loot sitting inside this would come in handy. With all of that and the chest itself safely placed within the bundles in my inventory, God, I love bundles. I continued digging through the wall, emerging overlooking a bridge bastion, just waiting to be looted. From there, I ran across the bridge, dodging hoglins and piglins alike, making my way up towards the large pile of gold, because I might not be a piglin right now, but that is definitely useful, especially for bartering. I captured one of them in a hole and threw all of their gold right back to them, and they rewarded me with a ton of useful items while I spent some time checking the map, trying to find a fortress somewhere nearby. Night 32. I'm still looting the bastion, just trying to run around tunneling through the walls and not looking for a direct confrontation. I'm not on Dominion, so they hate me here. But if you want to see a series where the piglins think I'm the absolute best thing ever, go watch Dominion. It's amazing. Lava buckets do a lot of the work, or just shooting them from range is definitely how I want to take this. I am not in good enough armor to take on a bunch of axe-wielding brutes right now. The chest near the top had a bunch of decent gear in there, too. Some blocks of gold, obsidian, and some soul speed boots. A bunch of golden carrots, a diamond shovel that was enchanted, and that would work well, and my first piece of ancient debris. But the fire res potion was probably the most useful thing I got from the bartering and I was able to hurl off of the end of the bastion, bridging my way across and just continuing to search my way through this nether. As I cracked through the soul sand valley and using my world map to try to find a fortress, I'm no speedrunner, I did eventually dig my way directly into one, killing my first wither skeleton and literally getting a skull on the very first one. With that inadvertent advancement out of the way, I was mainly looking for a blaze spawner, making sure to put the little bars across so the wither skeletons couldn't come and jump scare me from behind. And since I was fire resistant and I had a sword that already had looting on it, this was actually a relatively straightforward fight. The problem I had was when I accidentally bopped one of the zombie piglins and they all started coming at me from different directions as well. I was eventually able to clear them out, grabbing all of the blaze rods that I needed finding some nether wart and gold in the chest, and then heading over and finding a bunch of nether wart in one of the garden rooms on the other side of the fortress. Night 35, these zombie piglins were still mad at me, and I wasn't really prepared for that. They kind of jump scared me, but I was able to barricade them off and make my way back towards my entrance, seeing a ghost stuck up in the corner. I tried to smack it with a sword. I don't know why I thought that that would be smart. Using bundles to store all of the different disparate items. I am team bundle now. I made my way back through the Soul Sand Valley and just had to deal with being watched. What is it with me in these series and eyes just watching me from the void? I don't need this. Get this away from me. My own personal horrors aside, I continued through the valley and on night 36, made my way back into the warped forest, continued working my way across and then digging a tunnel straight over towards where I knew my portal was, going through and returning back to the greenhouse, back into the overworld. I banked a lot of the resources into the chest in the courtyard and then stored the gilded blackstone inside the castle itself, hoping to set up some sort of treasure room later on to store everything. I did a little bit of exploring, finding a few rooms that I had missed before with bottles, potion ingredients, and some different plants right next to a bed, which was useless because I can't sleep. Night 37, I'm continuing to work my way across all of the battlements, finding my way down to a small section of one of the towers that was blocked off from the courtyard, but also really only accessible by scaffolding which was kind of weird. So I moved the scaffolding up, placed down a couple doors and a little bit of an entrance to set up an enchanting space here. You can actually put sticks down as part of this mod pack, so I made myself a nice little pre-bamboo, bamboo-looking entrance. And on night 38, I'm using all of the paper, leather, and the books that I had collected to start building out an enchanting room. Now, I ran out of leather very, very quickly, so I needed to venture out and kill a whole bunch more cows, being attacked by all of the nightmare golems and other nightmare monsters, plus phantoms all throughout the night. It was raining, so I wasn't getting cooked meat from all of the cows that I was killing, but at least I was still getting leather, and a looting sword definitely makes that go a little bit faster. I jumped into one of the rivers, fighting a drowned that was just frozen and completely unaffected by anything that I was doing, and a crashed ship with a bunch of barrels floating around. That had a bunch of diamonds in it, so definitely a great 
find. I continue my way to the other side of the bay, just slaughtering cows for leather. Don't call PETA on me. I promise that it's for a good cause. But just as I was finishing that up, one of the phantoms attacked me and my chest plate broke, my armor dropping to about half of what it was and making me a lot more susceptible to damage. I continued running along the coastline, running into a blacksmith with more iron and diamonds and obsidian sitting inside, plus a waystone as the westernmost point of where I was headed so far. I grabbed a little bit of sugar cane down by the water, which I could grow for more paper, and as I went to rename the waystone, I got a little bit of a jump scare. That, that was close. Okay, let's just get this thing named and uh, probably get home. Unnecessarily scary. With that though, all the diamonds that I had found while out on that trip were enough to put me up to be able to make a new diamond chest plate and I'm feeling a lot safer. Night 40, a harvest moon rose again, which meant that it was time to head out for the farms or to plant the sugarcane so it would grow a little bit better. A lot of the potatoes were ready for harvest, but I first spent some time planting down the sugarcane right next to it and then grabbing over 10 stacks of potatoes while being attacked by phantoms. About a third of those went directly back into the replanting as I kept shooting the murder pigeons up in the sky, but I thoroughly took advantage of one of the more friendly special moon events and just put that space to work. Night 41, as I was putting away all of the resources from the harvest moon just after it set, I started randomly drowning in the courtyard. Now, I didn't know why, but I had a feeling it was gonna be some kind of boss mob with some sort of drowning ability. So I just headed out, just trying to see what I could find. That's when I saw a cloaked, withering, yeeting, drowning phantom, which really was just a set of eyes in the sky that was attacking me and constantly making me drown. This was genuinely, realistically, a really scary fight because I had to constantly pick out these two little green specks in the middle of the sky as it was constantly damaging me and I can't roll a perception of 30. So no, I didn't catch it most of the time until it was too late. And worse yet, near the end of the fight, I ended up running out of arrows so I could only kill it when it came in to try to dive bomb me. But thankfully, when it did die, it dropped a sharpness four sword, which was a big upgrade to my overall damage capability. And then right next to where I was fighting that phantom, I found another one of those chests. How did I not know this was here? Oh my God, I need to get all of this inside immediately. I don't know if you noticed that, but there was a trident in that chest just sitting in my backyard basically for 22 some odd days and I had no idea. What is it about me and not noticing tridents and chests in these 100 days videos? If you know that, just leave a comment what I'm talking about. But with all of those supplies banked and combining the sword that I had with the sharpness four sword that I had just gotten from the Phantom, I headed out west again, just recovering from the checkpoint of the that village to just continue and see what else I could find. There were these massive trees just sitting on the savanna biome with a really beautiful orange wood about them and I couldn't fell the whole thing. It had to be less than 100 blocks. So I spent a little bit of time just constantly chopping at the tree until it got under 100 when poof, the whole thing just disappeared in one go. This is all the wood I need for the rest of the series. But I'm out and about. Every time the night ticks over, I stop and I take my notes so my commentary isn't completely incoherent. But as I was rounding the hill, I went to open up another one of those gold chests and this is why I have trust issues. Between the phantoms and the mimic, I was actually taking pretty bad damage, going down to half health pretty frequently because they were attacking from all different angles. I thought at one point I had to cut my losses and get over it, but there was a ravine in my way, meaning there was no way to get away from these mobs. But I was determined, just running forward until I saw a cliff in front of me, and then I full on did the movie style dive. Just as I made my way towards a sandbar that was in between what looked like basically the two continents, 
that were on either side of this little straight. Another super phantom attacked, blinding me out of nowhere and then throwing me up into the sky where I would break my ankles on the ground. Thankfully, I was surrounded by water, so this one was a little bit easier to kill, except it has a totem of undying. So yeah, killing this one phantom took more than a full in-game night because I basically had to kill them twice and I was out of arrows and I just constantly had to wait for them to come down and attack me. You know what the biggest scam of the whole thing was? They didn't drop anything, or at least nothing that I could find in the moment. I used a lot of that awesome new wood to make a quick boat and just started sailing away. The continents look like they've been eroded away with lush caves visible straight out to the water on both sides. And oh my goodness, it's, it's just beautiful terrain generation. Plus, there's a coral reef right in the middle. But on top of the Mesa side was what looked like a Western town, like something you'd see out of Westworld. Oh, and by the way, it's haunted. So yes, it's definitely something out of Westworld. I started looking through a few of the chests as doors and chests would just open around me, finding a cowboy hat and you Bet your butt I definitely put that on right away. After exploring around and fighting mobs throughout most of the Western Village, I realized the biggest thing I could grab from here was completed bookcases. I had silk touch on my axe, so why not? With all of those in my pocket and running away from what is the largest creeper I've ever seen, I jumped back off of the cliff, jumped into my boat, and I yeehawed my way over to another ship that I had seen built with a fisher villager just camping out right here. And the best part, they had a ton of stuff in their barrels. And the best part, they didn't care when I looted through all their barrels to grab a bunch of string to potentially trade back to them for profit. But the cool thing here was how deep the oceans are in this mod pack. They're about three times as deep as it normally is. By the time you get down to the surface, you're at half your breath already. It makes it feel so much more realistic. Even more so when a mimic chest decides to try to attack you and is just swimming in place. But I cowboyed my way around not seeing anything with the fog and the rain as continents that were eroded hovering over the ground would just come into view. And then I saw a fleet of ships. At first I thought it might be pirates, but when I got up onto the deck and rang the bell, it was all villagers. This was a merchant fleet. And there were actual merchants here, multiple different villagers of all different professions, all of whom had trades. So there were some opportunities for some really good rolls if I got lucky. I kept grabbing any emeralds, lapis, apples, or anything else useful from the chest, finding a luck potion on one of the brewing stands and that will come in very handy later. But despite going through several different chests and seeing some diamonds just randomly on the floor of the ocean and running down to mine those, that clip looks really weird. And that clip does look very out of context, but I promise I saw them. I had spoken to basically everybody and there was unfortunately no good trades. By now, I had forgotten the villagers over in the birch forest that I had locked all into their homes. So I'm thinking I'm never gonna get good trades here. My pockets were also very, very full. So I banked everything, smelted up some stone to make a stone cutter, used that to make some stone bricks. And while I'm cooking food, I think, Oh, wait, I can probably make a waystone. I grabbed a single bucket of lava and used water to convert it into obsidian and breaking that without efficiency. Yeah, that's annoying. Thankfully though, you can craft waystones. Using that obsidian, emerald, and some stone bricks, and an abyss watcher, I was able to make a waystone, throw it onto the deck, and link the fleet in to my network, warping back home in an instant. Night number 50, now that I had all of the books, I started working on the enchanting room, and my chest plate would roll with protection four if I could just get myself up to level 30. So my thought process was, I know a place that has a bunch of experience stored there. I went down back through the caves towards the deep dark area that I had seen earlier and it turns out if I had just gone over a different part of the hill I would have seen the ancient city that was literally waiting for me right there I was here 20 days ago and I completely missed out on this so night 51 I'm in puzzle mode I'm breaking shriekers and slowly making my way towards the center of the ancient cities and this city is made with the wilder wild mod which means that it's a lot harder to navigate and there's more different variations of skulk with stairs and slabs so many other things shout out to the whole wilder wild team they're one of the first mods i added to this mod pack go show them some love there were riptide three books diamond horse armor no enchanted golden apples as is my love 
But I did find some more diamonds, which would help me get up to a new set of armor because I desperately needed it. As I continued into night 52 though, I am smart enough to be able to use the wool that I have to block off chests and make sure that I wasn't setting off any of those skulk sensors so shriekers wouldn't get called. But the eyes, the eyes always mess with me. Oh, come on. Why? Why would you add that to the game? Why? Why is it always eyes watching me? And then, literally just as I was thinking, I missed the swift sneak enchantment from my hardcore world. That popped up in the very next chest, so I had swift sneak 3 again. That was kind of the point where I realized I needed to get out of here and just collect all of the resources I had and head back up to the surface. Not before I would go absolute goblin mode, though. Seeing another chest and opening it up for some protection for unbreaking three pants. Basically a god roll with Curse of Vanishing, but who cares about that? So with that, I thought I had found everything I wanted until I opened up another chest and saw an ancient horn. <laughs> time to go, 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 time to go. It heard me yelling, it's time to go. With a warden spawned, I was just trying to sneak my way out of there and not setting off more shriekers. Running my way to the edge of the space and then purling up to a higher level to get further away from the warden that was already spawned. I jumped into the water channels, saw my glowy blue friend down there. Bye. Headed all the way up, got knocked down, jumped back into the water and was barely able to recover from a catastrophic fall. Getting back up to the surface and using that horn for the very first time. Time. So my microphone was muted there, but I think I can recreate what that sounded like. Oh my god! What? That is crazy! Yeah, I was excited. And well, yeah, I spent all of night 54 Sonic Boom! In every single mob that I could possibly find. The thing was though, I think it causes less experience to be dropped. If anybody knows the mod, please let me know. And actually, I'm also pretty sure I had just put mending on something, so I wasn't gaining any levels, which was a bit of a problem. It was fun to do all of the murders, but I did need to get up to level 30 so I could get protection for from my chest plate if I wanted to make sure I was going to survive. And that continued into night 55, and here I realized I had a problem. You know those diamond pants that I found just a few nights ago? There's a reason I'm not wearing them yet, and that's because the iron pants that I'm wearing currently, they have curse of binding on them, which means I need to break them if I want to be able to wear better armor. So I'm just running around and killing any mobs that I see. I did loot another one of those chests and it had a bunch more bundles in it. And honestly, bundles are just amazing now. But that continued into night 56 where it was a blood moon, which is good news for me, more mobs for me to kill, meaning more experience. But also I needed to be very careful that when my pants broke, I wouldn't just immediately get killed. This child eventually did break them, getting me down to half health before I could throw on my protection four pants, and the horn is great for just clearing out crowds and saying nope. This was getting hairy until a little bit later in the night when I ran up a mountain and headed up towards a volcano, grabbing a few blocks of emerald ore and then making a big mistake in the center. That, that was very, very close. Turns out lava and snow don't really mix well together. Who would have thunk it? I continued working my way around the volcano. Uh, I continued working my way around the volcano, peeking inside of the mountains, and oh, that's the problem. The, the the mountains are hollow. I know several members of my community who will be upset with that. But I continued working my way around the mountains and the volcano on night 58, grabbing any emerald blocks that I could potentially see and using the horn to kill any time a single mob was anywhere close to me. It's my favorite weapon of the entire 100 days, or basically any video I've ever done, I'm sorry. Going into night 59, I headed back towards the village and I was originally going to head home but I realized I had a little bit more inventory space and I wanted to cross over to level 30. I was hunting the last couple mobs grabbing any iron ore that I saw which had a little bit of experience and tried to kill an enderman before they snuck away and teleported somewhere. While I was continuing to dig out the last little bit in the mountain though I had a friend stop by. Oh you're so cute! Are you a friend? Okay okay I need to figure out what you eat. Bug friend. New knight, new friend, new knight, new friend. Okay, come on, bug friend. <gasps> bug friend! 
So now I have something to live for. My wolf didn't really fare too well, all the way back on day like seven or eight. I really hope this bug just isn't dead within a few days or two. As I crossed over the hill though, I found a jungle well with a creeper that was stuck inside. I was able to shoot them out and then checked underneath. There was no treasure there. It's just like the desert ones. But as I was fighting more mobs, a giant bat, seriously, what the heck is this thing? Sierra, get a screenshot of this. That, that right there is absolutely cursed. I ended up fighting a lot of mobs right here, taking out any zombies that happened to get close and bowing down that demon bat from as far as humanly possible, but there was no loot that it dropped. I did drop down through the hole in the middle of the mountain here, landing back onto the water into one of the lush caves where I just reset on all of my food resources, swimming my way across and making my way back over the terracotta, killing what looked like a creeper that was a stack of potted plants, hitting up at the waystone, which would cost me a level, but I had one to spare, and teleporting to the wrong place, ending up over at the merchant fleet and not back at home. In one of the chests there, I did find a pair of Frostwalker boots though, and I pulled my best and I pulled my best Tanisha interpretation from the Dominion SMP and started running across the ocean, carving my own path. I looted a quick fisherman vessel for all of the food that they had on board, just having fun with this. I continued using my new boots to just have me walking down the river, making my way into a new birch forest and a new birch village that had a bunch of chests that had items just waiting for me to take. As I crested up to the top of the mountain with snow all around, I saw another one of those ancient pattern chests that had more bundles waiting for me inside, but the second it closed, I felt this weird sensation, like something was watching me. My heart started to race, and then I flew. Come home. With whatever the heck just happened, I'm standing back on top of the mountain. I grabbed all of my stuff and ran. Anything with Curse of Vanishing lost to me as I booked it down the mountain, heading over to the water. So if that phantom happened to swing by again, they wouldn't be able to pull me up and make me fall to my death? Huh. I saw another one of those coral chests underground with a bunch of emeralds and just other resources that I just threw into the bundles and kept using my Frostwalker boots to run over the water. I'm single-handedly destroying the ecosystem, but we are pantsless, so we need to run. I gotta say, running with Frostwalker boots on top of an ocean monument to get away from a phantom that can pull me up into the sky is a brand new sentence in Minecraft, and I don't think anybody said that before, so that's special. On the night of the absolute best video game console ever, I was running along the ocean I saw it drowned with the trident. I thought I could use the horn to blast them through the ice, and oh yeah, that totally works! But they didn't drop the battle fork, Sag. I did find another chest underground, which had some okay loot. Nothing too crazy to write home about. The next one, though, was Bonkers, a suspicious eye, which could potentially turn a chest into a mimic? Great if we were using this on a server where I could prank one of my friends may be potentially useful for me here. But I continued running along the ocean until I saw Torchlight in the distance, a more vanilla village generated just on the edge of the coast here. And the vanilla ones are the ones with the waystones in them, so I can use that to get home. I'm not level 30 anymore, so level conservation doesn't really matter at all. And I returned back to the castle feeling that something was wrong but I still had more to do. The next morning as the harvest moon rose, I was busy organizing my inventory. I had four bundles of just assorted items of so many different stacks and not enough chests to store them in. I took some of the diamonds to make up a new set of diamond pants since I had lost mine with Curse of Vanishing, checking to see what it would cost to put Swift Sneak 3 on them and it wasn't the right time for that yet. Realistically, I just kind of walked around the castle for the better portion of the night just trying to think of what I should do next, how I could recover from all the progress I had lost and where I should go. On a night that is just pretty accurately creepy for what I've been dealing with recently, I threw an ender eye and thought, let's go kill a dragon. I found another one of those chests that had a netherite hoe just sitting in it. That's two for two on endgame loot just being delivered to me without warning. I kept following the pearls and of course they started leading towards the volcano, but I did take a quick moment to check out the rival castle and grab all of the loot that they had nearby. As I started walking back over, it rotated to the next night and I'm just trying to triangulate which chunk to dig down in to be able to get down towards the stronghold. 
My LA friend also just happened to pop back towards me, and at some point I threw an eye and it went down. But this would be a little bit wrong. I spent all of night 67 digging down and 68 right there, finding a goblin trader who I could trade for both pearls and end rods, which is an amazing sign. They always do this trade somewhere near the stronghold in case you're one or two eyes short. But as I kept digging down, I ended up in caves and I ended up in the deep dark, which is concerning, but no stronghold. On nice number 69, I was all the way down to the bedrock. And despite having caves to explore and an ancient city just chilling here with no warning, I think I might have made a mistake and dug down one chunk over. The problem now was I didn't remember where I was in comparison to my original spot, so I dug all the way back up to the surface, and I thought, you know what, let's just move one chunk to the left and then dig straight down again at 4-4, and maybe it's there? Maybe I was just right over the chunk border and I didn't notice. And you know what? Yeah, I actually fell through the stronghold entirely before making my way back up to get the I Spy advancement. As I started navigating, I saw what was a door where the button was the only thing visible in the wall. Going through that, I made my way towards a library that was covered in ash and cobwebs. I didn't know it was ash at the time, so I'm just trying to dig, and I broke one of these stone brick blocks, finding Deep Slate immediately underneath. Now, originally, I thought this was the ancient city, so I just dug in a little bit to see what was going on here, and nope. This was very much not the ancient city. This was a massive crypt filled with ash, lava, cobwebs, and a lot more craziness that we don't get into for another 10 nights, but who oh boy does that get spicy. But that, that's something I'll deal with later. So I went back into the stronghold, going through another one of the passageways, eventually making my way towards the portal room. And guess what? Yep, you know it. I'm one eye short. Welp, it's time to make a quick little nether portal using the water and lava casting from the lava underneath the portal itself. And I headed back into the nether, ending up also in the warped forest and according to my map, not too far away from where I had been. I threw down waypoints at both ends and basically just dug a tunnel from one location to the other, knowing where I needed to go, heading back up towards the portal inside the greenhouse, heading back over towards the castle, grabbing another blaze rod and making an eye of ender, heading back over through the nether towards the portal. And then, okay, now that we've actually done it right, go kill a dragon, woo! So my thought process here is pretty simple. Kill the crystals, kill the dragon. We're not using any of the modded ends for this specific pack. This one felt a little bit more safe. Maybe I'm further away from where Jessen is kept. The only downside was the horn didn't work on the dragon, which, oh, believe me, was such a bummer. I so desperately wanted to be able to kill the dragon with this horn. But I've improved as a Minecrafter so much over the last two years that shooting all of these crystals with a bow is second nature to me. I usually nail any of these shots within one or two and get a few good shots on the dragon directly. I wasn't going to give up on using that horn, though, to do damage, even though it totally did nothing. I did end up underneath her, throwing a few quick jabs into her throat, being yeeted up into the sky, but I had pearls on board because a phantom tried that with me and now I'm prepared. Well, I'm not prepared for everything, that's just weird. The only problem was I was watching that progress bar on my bow dip further and further and further, and when it had only one shot left, well... All right, bow, you served me well. Let me seriously out of arrows. I, I'm one arrow short, so I can't break the bow. And you know I definitely had to try the horn again after that. But at this point, I'm just camping inside the space and trying to crit the dragon out using pearls whenever she throws me up into the sky and just avoiding breaking my legs into my torso. Despite a very, very live dragon fight, I was able to camp out underneath her and bop her to death with the sword, unlocking the end and claiming this dimension as my own. Yes! I gathered up all of the experience, which was potentially not the optimal version, but I'll take level 60. Walking past the sign and saying that it would lead me to a village? 
I think they put this in the wrong dimension, actually. Grabbing the egg and throwing it into my inventory and into one of the bundles, I am far from done in the end. Building up a chunk of cobblestone and throwing a pearl through the ender eye, making my way to the outer island and checking my map to see if I can find an end city. I had a little bit of an idea that they were off somewhere to the north, so I kept running past more signs that really didn't give any clear indication of a village, bridging in certain places, seeing a city with a ship just over the horizon at max render distance. I came across a purple ender chest, an end locked chest that I couldn't open. Even trying to use a gold key from one of my bundles, it just was completely locked to me. And there are several of these things. I wonder what's inside. Hello, welcome to your ender city. May I interest you in your lord and savior, Horn? But in general, I didn't have a shield and I didn't have a bow, so I had to do the best I could to make sure that I wasn't dying while constantly using the levitation effect to move up to the upper levels. I'm just chugging down potatoes like a Skyrim player and using the horn to be able to kill any shulkers to make it a little bit less chaotic. There's a bunch of diamonds and high tier enchanted books at the upper levels of these, including a protection for unbreaking three diamond helmet, which put me to the best in slot gear and was the end of my cowboy days. The generation here was a little wonky though, there was additional towers generated out of the tops of roofs of other buildings, and it took a little bit of time to try to navigate my way around, dropping down into a space that had an ender chest inside that I had actually never crafted an ender chest before this point, and I tried to not do that until after I'd killed the dragon. I don't know, it's just a weird thing with me in Minecraft. But as it crossed over to Night 75, I made my first few shulker boxes. And Shulkers Plus Bundles allows for a ridiculous amount of miscellaneous storage, and I'm able to keep so many different items in my pockets. That's wonderful. I used water to drop down to a lower bridge, killing any Shulkers in my way for shells, and then bridging my way across towards the ship, getting hit and using the levitation plus an ender pearl to knock my way over to the deck of the ship, grabbing the potions out of the back and running over towards the grand prize of an end city and an elytra. The armor's not bad either, but being able to fly, that's my favorite thing in Minecraft. I flew my way back over towards the end gateway, flying through that, running over to the portal and returning to the overworld. Night 76, it was everybody's favorite Minecraft minigame. Inventory management. I'm really hoping that we're gonna get an inventory update at some point in time in the future. I organized all the loot, putting up the wither skulls that I had found somewhere along the way, and enchanted my chest plate with protection four, my boots with protection three, and then did a little bit of enchanting on books, getting two feather falling two books, which would come in handy, then a feather falling four, which kind of invalidates anything else, unbreaking anything that I could find. And I saw Riptide, but I had that. So I just kept enchanting books, trying to find whatever else would come up. On night 77, and combining other books to get Swift Sneak back on my pants, Riptide onto the Trident, and a few other things that I just desperately needed. Infinity was the next thing that would roll on my bow, and considering how much I've struggled with getting arrows, that definitely seems like a big win. And since I haven't found any mending anywhere, that's basically a perfect roll. But we're gonna need to get up to level 30 to be able to use that, so I stocked up on what I could and headed back over towards the Stronghold entrance. Having to fight another one of those undying skeletons. Go ahead, Sierra, play the clip. It has a totem of undying? But the ancient horde makes it so easy to just blow things away. I jumped down the hole right as the night rolled over and the blood moon rose, realizing that I had forgotten to put water down at the bottom, throwing a pearl at the absolute last second to avoid going cursed splat and dying. From there, I put a waystone down to get this into the waystone network and then went back to that crypt that I had found underneath the Ashfield library and just started exploring. There was a lot here and this place kind of gave me the creeps. Inside all of the different graves was copper, books, and other useful things, but sometimes ghosts would attack me if I opened it. I'm starting to think they might not like me looting through their things, but heck, there was a lot here, including black iron, which looked like something that, I don't know, something about it felt off. As I continued making my way through, bridging out over lava, there was a ton of different supplies in all the different chests and barrels around here. Cobwebs everywhere, and a large, huge, ominous potion or cult room of some kind with crying obsidian and end crystals just 
casually floating in the middle of the room. There were cultists with daggers who I was able to kill over the fences since my reach was just a little bit longer with the full sword. And even with protection, they were hitting for decent damage. I used the horn to blow away all of the crystals, checking underneath the different areas and seeing blood and flesh everywhere. Yeah, okay, this is feeling a little concerning. With corrupted versions of pillagers coming to attack me, glowing eyes running at me through the night. This place feels like they've meddled with something dark or corrupted, and with certain parallels to things I've seen before, this worries me. I need to learn as much as I can about this place, which means opening every chest and leaving nothing unturned. On night 80, I saw a barrel with some fire res potions buried inside of it and thought maybe there's something hiding behind the lava, jumping in and checking, and no, there wasn't. So I went back towards the lab, finding a book that was blank, ominous, and some golden carrots and all sorts of different potion supplies in the barrels sitting around here. They're definitely trying to brew something up. The thing that confused me was that my frames were absolutely tanking right here. Apologies that the video looks a little scuffed. It gets better in a day or two. So there had to be something more to this space. So I walked around digging through the floor, finding an entire another floor just beneath where I already was. There's a ton of spawners here for those corrupted pillagers and a huge library of information. Und undoubtedly holding all sorts of dark secrets and messages about funerals and some dark corruption spreading over the world. Maybe this is why it's always night. I grabbed the books and fighting all of the mindless enemies that were attacking me with skulls and wither and darkness shrouded around them, grabbing a second book that talked about the spreading. I don't know what that is. There's more cultists down in the lower levels. I grabbed one of their daggers and kept that with me, working down to yet another level deeper where this place started to intersect with the deep dark itself. And the sounds of the deep dark in the space like this made me feel like maybe they had something to do with it. There was yet another book talking about a plague for centuries to come I'm starting to think that they had maybe tapped into a power that they were not meant to have. Finding another layer buried deeper down, I turned off the shaders, which helped with frame rate issues, sorry about that. Dealing with another level down that was more deep dark than the sanctuary itself, with even more of those corrupted brainless pillagers just running around at me from there. There was copper and tinted glass with all of the different blackstone and shriekers and sensors that had wormed their way up this high, and having to deal with those while fighting the withered and corrupted mobs was definitely a bit of a challenge. I continued making my way around though, just clearing corner after corner and corridor after corridor, fighting off any cultists who were either somehow still alive down here or very clearly dead. As I got to the absolute deepest level, I saw a book in a large crystal room surrounded by books and amethysts, and it talked about how death shall cleanse the world. Okay, that feels a little ominous. Given how much though, this seemed to be either tied to the deep dark or causing it or maybe trying to harness it in some way, I dug right underneath this book and wouldn't you know it, right into the ancient city. Okay, if you're the modder and you made this, and you made this work like this, you are glorious, okay? This is amazing. I wasn't ready to go down into there though first. There were still more rooms to clear. I started finding emeralds and wither roses in the chests, which feels a little bit out of place. And then I opened up the next one and there was a god apple just sitting inside. And then two more in the next crypt immediately following. Seems like they were definitely preparing for something, trying to be equipped for it and something had gone horribly wrong. I made my way through one of the last corridors, digging down to yet another deep level. This one more skulk than stone, with so many more of those mobs just constantly attacking. I made my way out of the area to a small crack in the caves that had water, which I desperately needed, and instead put a torch on top of it, remembering that there was water all the way up in the potion room on the blue side, grabbing that so I'd be able to set a water column down to be able to head down and into the deep dark itself. Now, I wasn't fully prepared for this one. I knew it was here, but I was gonna explore the crypt, not the ancient city. That being tied together was a bit of a problem. So I made a set of shears and collected a lot of the wool that exists inside the city itself. Honestly, this is just a great design decision, gameplay aside. As I was looking around for more answers into what was going on here, or why I had been brought to this reality specifically, 
I found fragments of a music disc, maybe a message from another me or something else I had to hear. There's also tools, which would be extremely useful. An Efficiency 5 Fortune Ho, which was just perfect for dealing with this space. And I tried to do my best, throwing wool around any sensors and shriekers that I couldn't break in the combinations and breaking any shriekers that I could single out, finding yet another hoe, this one that had mending on it, so I'd be able to keep that one forever. And in the very next chest, two god apples oh my god that is worth that is worth the two extra oh that's another swift stick three okay 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 let's put that there okay we got to be very precise with our loot right now very low on potential strikes on shriekers i just tried to find a way out of here that didn't involve retracing my steps and having to get in the water and potentially setting off another i did find a dungeon nearby with not a ton of loot but being able to clear a zombie dungeon instead of dying into it and knowing that i'd be safe to loot all of my different inventory items here felt like a good respite as i headed back into the city on night 87 the blood moon rose again and i oddly felt safer here than anywhere else in the world. No mobs will spawn inside of a deep dark biome, which means, ironically, the safest place to be in the world right now. So I took advantage of that, using whatever wool I had left to loot as many chests as I possibly could, just trying to find answers or other loot that could be useful. The echo shards seemed like maybe I could do something with those, grabbing potions and just continuing to push my luck. The supplies here are especially useful. I found another ancient horn just a little bit after that and some decently enchanted pants right next to them. In front of one of the chests was a shrieker that I thought I could break missing another one just over the corner, which was my final strike. I willed it off thinking that that was it and I was safe to loot the chest right here and grab the diamonds nearby. There was another ancient horn inside, which was awesome, but there was also another route to another shrieker. Time to go, time to go, time to go. We're just gonna stay really far away and hope for the best. I'm in no shape to fight a warden right now, so I just camped out at the other end of the lava pit until the blood moon passed, digging my way back up to the surface on night 88 to get my bearings and get me somewhat closer to home. It took a good chunk of time making my way up to the dripstone caves before I would finally see the sky swimming up a water column and digging into a giant stalactite for a temporary base, using my elytra to fly through, realizing that that was mainly render distance, and then finding another way out through a crack in the volcano, which I always knew that there was something underneath that mountain. With my suspicions validated, I returned back to the castle and dropped in on everybody to celebrate. Sup everybody, how you doing? That night I did a ton of organizing, combining all of the books I could, placing down the soul braziers to give the castle a nice haunted spooky Halloween feel. I combined all the shovels to get the best possible version, organized my shulkers with all of the god apples and other resources that are there, emptied the bundles, putting everything there away and storing those into the shulkers for infinite storage. I then tried making some armor or different things from the black iron and I could make blocks, but they didn't craft back out down into ingots, so whoops. Blocks do look pretty cool though, so I just placed them around by the blacksmith using the pedestals, thinking that they could hold items, but no, I just put some torches on them instead. And at this point, I'm starting to outgrow the castle, but I can already hear the whispers in the distance, and I don't know how much more time I have left in this world. I ended the night doing a bunch of enchanting, finally getting Unbreaking 2 on the Elytra. It's not ideal, but it's probably good enough. The next night, however, there was more looting to be done. I flew back over towards the volcano, diving through down to the lower levels, finding a bunch of diamonds glowing out in the middle of here, and a distinct absence of lava. There was a golden chest, which thankfully I had a golden key for in one of my shulker boxes, which I used to unlock a chest and then immediately relock it with the golden padlock. Oof, 
That's a big fail. Just as the night rolled over, I used my second golden key after doing a little bit more diamond mining, finding yet another god apple and some diamonds, key pieces, and a few other things. Overall, definite plus. I used a little bit of water to head down into the ancient city, making my way over towards the dungeon, finding some diamonds sitting right there, and just exploring everywhere around. I was, once again, short on wool. I had used everything, so I made a new set of shears to collect all of the wool from throughout the ancient city yet again love that it's here but the reason i'm here is not for looting it's for the skulk actually it's one of the easiest ways that i can use to get up to different levels grabbing diamonds from behind any of it but you know me if i'm here and there's chests that i haven't opened yet you bet your butt i'm gonna open them finding a pair of mending diamond pants definite win as i rolled over into the next night and as i'm just passively looking around just trying to see what else i could potentially grab i saw a block of ancient redstone which that definitely seems somewhat interesting. I broke the shrieker that summoned a warden the last time I was down here, and the chest was thoroughly underwhelming for the danger that it put me in. But I'm making mistakes. I'm getting careless, setting off shriekers by hitting the traps and the pressure plates around here, and grabbing diamonds whenever I needed to run away from the noises that were freaking me out. But as I conquered my way through the city, diffusing the last few shriekers and looting any remaining chests, some of which are just completely untouched by Skulk, but had nothing worthwhile inside, I started to think that maybe I should try something different, do it differently near the end of these. Maybe that would break the cycle that I constantly get pulled in. Maybe the warden is what's holding me back for Decim. And in checking my inventory, I realized I'm gonna need a bow for what's about to happen next. I flew up through the volcano, finding a much easier access route down to the deep dark than how I was making my way down here before, throwing down a bunch of torches so I could easily re-find my way back to here, making my way all the way back over to the castle and checking through the loot that I had. There's an Infinity and Power 5 books, which I had just enough levels to combine, but I was going to be short to be able to actually put that onto a bow. So I threw an anvil in my pocket, flew all the way back over towards the deep dark, doing a lot of harvesting of the skulk in the walls as the primary way of getting even more experience. Once I was quickly up to level 11, which is where I needed to be to make this all work, I enchanted the bow and I thought, let's try something crazy. So the goal is to sew in a wither and then be high enough that it won't attack so I can kill it. I don't know if this will work. <laughs> let's try. I flew down into the city, just trying to find a shrieker that was relatively close to that high perch that I'd be able to maintain a higher position over the warden. And there wasn't one. There was only the one off by the lava. Oh, that was my last chance. The TNT would be my first go, and that did a decent bit of damage right away and immediately set the warden on my path. They were coming for me. With a power five bow, I was able to do some damage as they literally just walked across the water. But that sonic shriek, that is terrifying. Six hearts, unmitigated damage if you're not careful. Shoot. I'm trying to fly out of the way before it can boom me, and I didn't always succeed. At one point in time, I was debating whether or not I should just completely pull out and avoid this whole thing. But uh, no, I needed to do this. Oh, come on. Three feels excessive, don't you think? There were multiple in there, but if I could take just one out, maybe that would be enough to break the cycle, break the seal. Thankfully, I found enough god apples that I was able to tank a decent bit of this damage, taking a sonic boom without hitting my main health. I did run out of arrows at one point, and having to restock those while on the other side of a column, and getting hit by an attack there, that was a little nerve-wracking. But as I'm downing god apples flying back and forth, night after night, just constantly evading attack after attack, this might not be the best thing to look at, but it's definitely what's exciting. This is unwatchable for some of you, and I'm sorry, but I'm killing this thing. 
And as I rounded the pillar, the multiverse was changed forever. <gasps> yes! Yes! I've never killed a word. Ah! I've never killed a warden before! Oh, that was so cool. I have never done that before. That felt good. Alright. Warden killed. I don't even need a trophy. Let's get out of here. Ah, that feels good. Night conquered. Let's, let's go home. With the warden defeated and potentially a crack in my prison cell throughout the multiverse made, I flew back towards the castle, wanting to commemorate this accomplishment. I had some decent loot, but nothing that the warden dropped themselves. Diamonds were able to be crafted into blocks stored in my chest for hoarding for all time, but a skulk catalyst placed right here next to the wither skeletons, the egg, the dragon's head, and my first piece of ancient debris that felt good. I celebrated and did some organizing, taking night 96 to clean up and move the treasures to inside the castle proper in several different classified chests so that when you get the world download, if you support me on Patreon, you'll be able to go through and start with some decent gear. With extra horns stored in frames, multiple diamond and gold blocks placed and safely tucked away, I had dug through a wall to make that a little bit easier. I repaired that eventually. I flew out of the castle and back to where everything had begun, the initial valley where I spawned, landing down in the water and realizing that I had never revisited this machine after seeing it the very first night. Who? built this. Who would have made a machine to keep it always night? Wait. Warped. Copper. No. It, it couldn't be. There's no way. It couldn't be that, right? It only clicked with me right as I stood there in front of the machine that I had seen that exact build palette somewhere else. A bunch of deep slate bricks, copper, amethyst, all sorts of different redstones and machinery, potentially some kind of mechanism to make everything work. The blocks matched, but yeah, there is copper here. No, 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 that was not here before. Something's moving behind it, too. Is this seriously? Was this a lab? Were they? Did they answer to Decim? Are they trying to work for them? Nope. No. I need to get out of here. It's the quickest way out. Let's go out. I can get out through the... I don't want to go anywhere near that again. Maybe down? <laughs> Out's the way to go, sure. Since when does that... No. I mean, the obelisk didn't try to take me. It didn't... Is that where I should go? I don't want them to be able to pull me. I don't want to go that direction, but... This doesn't exactly feel safe either. I don't know what to do. Why did they bring me here? What was their goals for me here? Oh no. I don't have any. I have to go. Sometimes the only way out is through. Why are they always watching? Alright, you want to watch? I'll give you a show. Thank you all for watching this mega movie. I hope you all enjoyed the multiverse. I look forward to seeing some of you potentially solve this puzzle and who knows where things will go from here. Take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll talk to you soon.